Happy New Year. It is 2020. Um, and this new uh, video blog is just basically going to be showing what's happening at the shelter on a, a weekly basis. Sarah, she's our office manager. She's the public contact. So if you write an email, uh, you call the phone, you're going to be talking to Sarah. Uh, Tina is our equine management person. She's in charge of all the horses here at Horse Plus. Make sure that they're getting training, working with adopters, uh, adoption partners. Uh, Chloe is our health uh, and husbandry manager, and she is, also works with our vet office. So she's part-time with our vet office and part-time here. So she's working very closely with our veterinarian and make sure all the animals here at our shelter are getting top quality care. Um, Travis, we're actually hiring him today. It's his first day, so you'll probably see some of that process. He's, uh, he's going to be taking care of feeding, watering, um, checking eyes on the animals every morning, um, some maintenance around the shelter. And uh, then there's my wonderful husband, Jason, and he is doing all the videoing behind the scenes, and I'm sure you'll see him sometimes. And then there's myself, and uh, I founded the organization with my husband. I was 19, and it has grown so much, it's unbelievable. So. I hope you enjoy these video blogs as they just kind of follow the work we do so you can see firsthand how your donations are making a difference. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. You ready to start work? Yes. Yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to go over kind of the chain of command and how everything works here. Um, so he would be your your point of contact um, to talk to, and then I'm here for for everybody here. So there's Sarah, Tina, Chloe, Jason, and you. And it kind of goes over everyone's responsibilities this year. Put a few miles on her. Somebody's looking for a big. One. So who are you on, Todd? Huh? Who are you on? This is number. 613 Kinsley. I think that one came. So his number is 610. He was a former pro. He built. Yep. So we had a chain break on our manure spreader and Travis is working hard trying to get it to get back to work. What do you do with this poor guy? And then prick, they prick you a little bit. <laughs> what are you doing? Can I touch your nose? Sarah sends out our thank you cards. So if you mail us a donation, um, you'll get one of these in the mail. That's a nice little, uh, Nice little thank you. Um, and this is one of the horses that was at our shelter. Uh, she came in through an animal control type case and she was pregnant and she had that baby. So we, we like that horse. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, did you happen to get the, my message about the tax receipts? Yes. Okay. I have that right now. I think there was like 140 or something. Yeah. And those are just the ones we don't have all the on this is for, so we actually have to stuff them into an envelope and send them on their way. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Yep. So this is Party. She's a 9 to 12 year old Welsh pony that came in yesterday. She was our, our first one of the year of 2020. What is that, Shelby? <laughs> That's useful. This is Gloria. She came in with Party yesterday. And they said she's a quarter horse, about 15, maybe 15 to 18. I, um, and we just had her out a bit ago. And she stands nice to be groomed she stands nice to pick her feet up 
to be saddled, to get on. She's got a lot of energy, but she rides really nice and she's got a pretty light mouth. Um, so you don't have to pull hard on her. Todd's out here working horses. Who you got here, Todd? This is Molasses, three-year-old, basically halter broke. And right now, Todd's just working on desensitizing, making sure that it's not going to be spooky if a rope happens to come across her. Good. Do you know what we're going to do? We're going to dance, baby. And hopefully it doesn't end poorly. <laughs> I like to dance. I like to have fun. Yeah. So you're not putting a bit in her? Uh, no, sir. Start off with a side pull. Because with the young horses especially, I don't want to cram a chunk of metal in their mouth and expect them to know what to do. All right, come here. I need to do some adjusting, my sister. There's the problem. But by starting out with the same pressure you use on the halter, you give them a little bit of comfort, I think. It seems like they're not they're not gonna fight you, they're not gonna be worried about what that bit feels like in their mouth or anything like that. They're accustomed to the halter feeling, and it's the same thing across the nose, you gotta live on the chin. Try to make it as comfortable and as easy as the first time as possible. Oh. They look at him and think, oh man, that's practice. Just because it hasn't ever done anything. Critters want some of these treats. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's good, isn't it? Uh, so our, our old man, Chip, he's 28 years old. He got adopted today. I'm so excited because as much as I'd love to go spend hours with him every day, brushing him and spending time with him and feeding him all the goodies that he needs. Um, now he's getting one-on-one -on -one with a family that is just gonna spoil him to death. Uh, so I'm excited. It's, it's sad to see those ones go, but um, when you know they're gonna get all that attention, it, it's worth it. This party it's supposed to be a 12 year old Welsh pony mare. She may have been brave once or twice. I need a mounting pot. I don't ever do. Tacking. Uh, she did good. I'll give her a two. She stands, you know. She... Your turn to stand quietly. 
This is Gloria, 18 year old paint mare. Supposed to be trained to ride so far. Her evaluation on the ground is good. She yields well, very kind. She's not over energetic. <clears throat> I'm gonna lunge her, see if she can step out for us a little bit. I don't, I don't know if Tina rode her or not. Say she had a lot of forward motion. I don't know. Cool. I'd like to get her up to a trot, but man, I'm not a bad boy. Me and the ground are going to become good friends. She's really sweet and easy to handle and everything. So every horse owner has to face the difficult life-ending decisions. And here at Horse Plus Humane Society, because we do rescue so many critical horses, we have to face this, you know, decision a lot. And then when a horse is humanely euthanized, you know, medical problems, what is the best option for that? And um, across the United States, it's not just here in Tennessee, there's very limited resources for that. So our board of directors decided that we would start um, cremating horses. And um, that way when a horse comes to us and it needs humane euthanasia, it is um, cremated. And it's not only are we excited about having this opportunity here at our shelter to have horse cremation, but we are hoping to, you know, look into this to see if rescues across the United States may be able to utilize this. Because lots of rescues out there want to take horses in but if it needs humane euthanasia, what are they going to do? Euthanasia is expensive, and then after the fact, what, what's their option? So we believe that horse cremation is, is the best option out there, and we're excited to have this at our shelter. We were a little shocked when it came. I mean, we knew that it was big, um, but it was, it was so big when it was pulling up the driveway, and we had to have a boom truck to unload it. And because it's so wet here in Tennessee, we can have six inches of rain drop in one storm. Uh, the boom truck kept sinking into the ground, or the, the legs of it kept sinking into the ground, and they had to keep blocking it up. And finally, they were able to get it off the boom truck and safely on the cement pad. The company was so gracious. They donated almost $3,000 off the unit to help us uh, get this, this unit at our facility. I do believe that we are the only horse shelter in the United States to have the ability to cremate horses. Hey guys, come on. So it's gonna be raining over the weekend, and so we're gonna put the horses in the barn. Okay, well we will, um. We will check into it. We'll put her on our do not adopt list and we'll check into it. Thank you so much for letting us know. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. We do like it when people let us know when there's somebody that we shouldn't adopt to. And it happens from time to time. Uh, we do background checks on all everyone that wants to adopt from us. Uh, the state of Tennessee keeps records of anyone that's um, convicted of animal cruelty, so we're able to access that database. Um, we do criminal background checks because uh, animal cruelty goes hand in hand with, you know, child abuse, um, drug and alcohol abuse. So we do everything we can to ensure uh, that our horses are getting placed in, in the best homes possible. Um, so it's always great when the public knows, you know, this, this person is not good to adopt and they call us and, and put in a, a confidential tip so we can put it in our do not adopt to uh, database. The auction's tomorrow and all the fundraising goes to, to me. And if I don't raise enough funds, we can't rescue our goal of saving 20 horses. So it's always a little stressful for me because I'm like, you know, am I doing everything? Am I making sure all these Facebook posts are going out? Because if I'm not fundraising properly, it's gonna directly impact the horses at the auction and we're not gonna be able to save as many. So. So one thing I've, I've done differently uh, this fundraising um, is custom made. We've, we've purchased shirts for, from them for years. They've always been great in donating to our organization. Um, so I set up a fundraiser through them to sell 100 shirts to save 
one horse and um, people on the platform were making donations when they were purchasing the shirts. So we've raised over 2,000. Uh, this was last night. I'm going to refresh it and see if we reached our goal. Oh, not quite yet. We've almost sold 100 shirts. So I'm going to be pushing this today to get those 100 shirts sold. And this fundraiser will definitely help uh, at least two horses uh, will be able to save. Tonight we rescued 23 horses with your support. Also donkeys. This is our pen, one of our pens. Last night we rescued 23 horses from auction. It's a great thing to save so many horses, but if you want to see what the auction rescues process is like, watch episode five of Horse Rescue Heroes. It's raining today. Um, it's gonna make for an interesting trip, but we are going to be getting everyone loaded up and taken back to our shelters so they can get all the care they need. For her apple, I was sharing an apple and she wanted some, but she didn't come very good enough. All right, we're on the way back from the auction. Typically I am doing pictures and doing a little video, but I got a, a text from um, somebody that's gonna have us hosted on, um, it's the Nashville Opry radio station live. So I'm gonna be doing an interview here shortly. So just finished with the uh, radio interview. And I said we good. They uh, want me to come back to their studio and do another live thing with them. So that's cool. The more we can get information out about these horses and the help they need, the more horses can be helped. So we got the first trailer unloaded. Now our uh, Tina's trailer is going to be unloaded next. And then we're going to start the intake process. You got a wave there, that's a, that, and then that whole side thing going on. Mm -hmm. She needs it, she's a little keeper. But unfortunately, So Travis, first week on the job, how's it been? <laughs> a little crazy. <laughs> a little crazy. <laughs> that will be every week. Oh, three, Sarah? No, the bay. Oh, she just did it, so never mind. So she's getting her microchip. Girl. And then we have penicillin. Antibiotics. So they're exposed to a lot of stuff at the auction, and this just helps give them a little boost. Oh, you took that like a champ. What a great girl. I know. Oh. Donkeys are tired. She had her hooves trimmed and she's she's just a little sore, I think. She's just resting. What you doing, Sarah? Oh, just getting ready to feed the little minis. Aw. They fight over it. And he says he wants a bite first. So what are you doing? We're going to uh, put it in different spots so that they don't fight over it. Hopefully. Donkeys say they want some. You want some, some yum yums? I better give the yum yums to the donkeys. There you guys go. So it's a special day today. It is, it is. Uh, we're working in the office right now, but it's a special day because it's our 17th wedding anniversary. January 19th. Yep, 17 years ago we got married and we haven't spent a night apart since then. Not a night. A lot of people are like, what? That's crazy, how, how is that even possible? Uh, well, rescuing horses, we're always doing it together, so we always get to be together, so it's awesome. Um, a lot of people see the work we do and they're like, how can you survive? And, um, you know, we do take every Saturday off as our family day. You can't, can't reach us unless it's a flat out emergency because we have to take time apart um, for ourselves to recharge ourselves because our work is so emotionally and physically draining. Um, and then, 
you know, it's our anniversary. We're going to be taking off for four days. Uh, we have a great <clears throat> team of people here. So what I usually do first thing in the morning is I check my emails um, to see if you guys have any questions about adopting or you want to come see a horse or something. I want to make sure I get those printed off um, for Tina before she gets um, here in the morning. Um, I can give them to her when she first gets here. She can fill them out and then give them back. I can email you guys um, before she gets started with her day. So Tina's out here catching horses um, for the vet. He should be here soon. So let's go figure out where she's at. Party is waiting for the vet to get here. So this is Gloria. Just got her caught to uh, have the vet check her teeth today um, and see, see what's going on in there. We're going to fill out um, just the adoption form, uh, it's just on the phone. So you just want to fill out all of your information and then I'll fill out the horse's information. Okay. I'm going to chip in your name and you can go on homeagain.com and that way um, you'll set up an account and put your her number in and everything. So if she were to get stolen or um, she'd get lost or something and somebody would take her to the vet, they could scan her and then get her back to you. Okay. So, um, Self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah, it's super easy, super easy. You can actually have that whole thing. So that's all of her information. Let me make sure that you filled out all of this. So excited. I've been singing your song, girl. How's that? How's that song go? Gloria, Gloria. I think I want your number, Gloria. <laughs> 
for you. <laughs> She's ready. She's like, I won't lose. Gloria, ready for her new home. You're gonna be good with me. You're good at selfies. Yeah. <laughs> I need to hate that. <laughs> Tina and I have been making sure that the website is um, completely up to date, making sure everybody has updated pictures if they need a better one. We've been working on that, getting horses cleaned up and um, pictures up and everything. But he's apparently he's gated, so um, yeah. I'm glad I do. Dale came in about a week, week and a half ago. There's so much more to you than what meets the eye. A beauty that goes deeper than the surface. I've waited my whole life to find someone who gives love. So I'm working on a video for Chuck for uh, to put on Facebook so that he can find his forever home. So we're just going to watch it and just make sure it looks great. So Tina's just riding Kinsley, getting her some exercise today. Got a package from one of our uh, supporters. Super cool shirt. So awesome. Occasionally I get gifts actually directly to me and I feel like really fun. And this is just so awesome. How cool is that? It says horses make life better. Cool. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I will enjoy them. This is Boots. She is 19 years old. She's super, super sweet. We're gonna get her feet done today. Okay, well that, what's the difference between the two? She's had a recent abscess right here. This is Kinsley and she's getting her feet dressed. We got a package to see what it is. Check this out. This is so cool. This is cookies for uh, our horses. Oh, those are nice. How fun. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for this uh, amazing donation. The horses are going to love these. Oh, sorry. 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 I just swept it here. It's only exactly. Oh, it's the first horse meal. Oh, Finn. That's why it's swelling so much, maybe? Yeah, I love that. Sorry. I told you. Yeah. Because that, yeah, the lens came, the lens is dislodged yeah. on the other one. The lens is still there, but he's got a cataract on it. That's not bad. Yeah, 
Hooray for mommy. So Wilma has been adopted and she's being transported to the boarding facility that she's going to stay at for a little bit. So Wilma's been here for three months. Um, when she came to us, when we rescued her from the auction, she had stacks on her feet. So she's been in rehab for three months. Um, she's finally able to go barefoot. is the blind Belgium seeing eye pony and she follows him around and he is full of himself this morning Looks like she's gonna lay down oh nice time for a roll and the little mini is just hilarious he is like her seeing eye mini and they look the same, and it's just adorable, but he is so full of himself. She's like, oh, feels good to lay down. Well, I have started fundraising. Um, I've got a t-shirt fundraiser up again. Everyone really liked that last month. Uh, and I figured out how to add um, guy shirts and girl shirts, so now it's not just girls. Um, so definitely check that out on our Facebook page. And um, our goal is to rescue 20 horses. So far we've raised enough funds to rescue one, so hopefully that keeps going up. So it's Monday, and every Monday we have 14,000 pounds of hay delivered and huge round bales. The horses here at the shelter eat a lot, and uh, they keep our hay guy quite happy. Stay here overnight uh, if you need to. Yeah, a little crazy, huh? Right, I mean, you could fit like three bunk beds in here. Well, I could easily get one over here and one back there. Yeah, you could totally put a whole bunch in there. You could see the lines on my face if yeah, I fell asleep. <laughs> We would know where you've been. <laughs> you were out transporting the horse until 3 a.m. yesterday morning. Yeah. So it's time to work. So she's tired. <laughs> Never a dull moment. So we got some new mattresses. Um, I'm getting ready to put the plastic. We have some small uh, bales here that were delivered. And this is for feeding and stalls. Yeah. And uh, hand feeding little pens and these are the big bales for the big pens. <laughs> You're really into showing off your I know. I was, I was just 
showing that my job comes with gym perks. Okay, gotcha. She has so, a walking stifle. So you're yeah. turning her, yeah. and then you want to get another yes. horse? So let's just go ahead and get okay. settled in the stall. So I was just going through our kind of old, old things, old box, and there's this book um, that was made several years back, and um, it was by one of our adopters who adopted a horse that I rescued, and there I am in the book with the little horse that uh, she ended up adopting, and she wrote a book about it and had it illustrated, so that's pretty cool. I was just looking back through memory lane and thought I'd share it with y'all. So what do you think of our first snow day in 2020? Uh, it's cold. <laughs> Winter chill and the snow is falling on the cedar still and the freezing waters in an ethereal glow the warmth of my cold at the shelter today and it, it just is so beautiful but it is very snowy. Hi guys it's snowing out here but you're all nice and warm. What do you think of the snow huh? Is it just horrible? Oh is it horrible? It's so cold out here. Uh, but it's, a, it's a different day here in Tennessee. We don't see this often down in the south. Any so. more layers? Gloves. This is one of the babies from the, the slaughter truck. Oh, it's so, so good. Oh, so good. Come on, baby. Oh, you're a little spoiled. So this is Cowboy. Cowboy's being adopted. Uh, he came to us um, and a lot of people are like, oh, he'll never get adopted because he's a 10 year old Mustang with like basically no training and he's had um, trainers working with him here and he's a really nice horse and he gets to go, go to his new home today. So we're super excited for him. That's good boy. Good boy, Cowboy. So I decided while we had the snow in Tennessee to make a funny video for our Wisconsin friends, uh, Ponytails, who we mentored uh, last year. And so I kind of just, I, I was silly and I made a very silly video for them about when snow hits in Tennessee. This is a special video for our Wisconsin friends. The screen is shaking because it's freezing. There's white stuff all over the ground out here in Tennessee. We don't know what's happening, but we still have to go outside and endure. Okay, I got my hoodie on. Jason's trying to drive. The truck's kind of like sliding around all over the place. This is harsh conditions. We're trying to get down to the barn, but right now we're just sliding in the snow. We can't even get to our driveway. Wait, we were on our driveway. We drove off the driveway. Well, we're stuck. Oh, four wheel. Oh, I could put it. I could try four wheel drive. Oh. I don't know what four wheel drive does. Um, let's see. Oh, oh. whoa, Shoot. we're moving now. We just picked up this piece of mail and it is freezing cold. Like, 
I'll get to keep it out of the mailbox. But there is no heat to this mail. It's just cold. Okay, there is like snow everywhere. It's freezing. But we're making it. We have so much snow. Like there's there's like two inches of it on the picnic table. Oh dear. Here it goes. Ugh. Ugh, it's stuck to my boot. Ugh, stucky white stuff. Go on. Just gotta get all this snow off of my boots. Like, ugh. Oh man, I can't believe we have to work in this frigid cold weather. And thankfully I'm not walking on snow right now, but there's basically snow everywhere else, including falling out of the sky. I mean, this isn't supposed to happen, y'all. Are you surviving, Jason? My lips are numb. Feels like I've been eating ices and, uh, you know, too much coldness oh. enveloping everywhere. It's terrible. There's snow still on our truck. Yeah, it's it's so miserable. I don't know how y'all do it in Wisconsin. Like, I'm pretty sure I just I just freeze to death instantly. Okay, so then you made a little snowman. This is how how kids in Tennessee make snowmen. Because there's not a whole lot of snow and um, there's kind of rocks in the snow. All right, we got all the chores done. I need to drive back up to the house. Oh, it's been miserably just frigid here. Um, but the good news is it's going to be 62 degrees on Sunday, so we can't wait. Oh, shoo, this morning was brutal. I mean, there was snow everywhere, freezing cold, sun's out, birds are singing, it's melting off. Oh, didn't know if we were going to make it because there was some cold Wisconsin air blowing down this morning. But now this afternoon, it's back to Tennessee and, and this white stuff that's still kind of out there is going away. So we survived. And the coolest thing is after I sent their video up to them, they sent us a video. Hey, um, yesterday was a really scary day around here. Uh, you know, I watched your guys' video. Whoops, I don't know how to do this. Where you had snow, and then the sun came out, and I thought, oh, we come out here yesterday morning, and there was snow on the ground. It was really cold, but there was this bright, bright bulb or something up in the sky. I don't know what it was. And I thought, maybe, maybe that's that weird phenomena I've heard of called the sun. So I ran up into the house to get a sundress. I thought, oh, it must be warm. And um, came outside to soak up some rays. And I've decided it wasn't the sun because it was still very, very cold. Um, so I don't know what it was. At that point, I kind of began to fear for our lives. Uh, you know, you guys were getting snow, we had sun, was Tennessee was kind of switching? I mean, were we about to be faced with the summer as you guys have? No, no, I, I was terrified, it was absolutely terrifying. Um, went to bed last night, wasn't sure what today was gonna bring, but I was very happy to find, I don't know how to switch this around, do you? That way? No? Okay, hang on, I'll figure it out. There we go, I figured it out. Okay, so today, it's this. There, there's no big scary thing up in the sky. It's just snow. I mean, we were starting to get bare ground around here. That was pretty traumatizing. Um, now everything's covered in snow again. But everything is right with the world. I think um, we'll still have our normal summers. Um, and unfortunately, her normal winters. But yeah, just thought I'd share this all with you guys. How awesome is it that they sent a video back? So we got a package in the mail. We're gonna see what it is. We always love getting packages. Thank you so much, Sherry. We greatly appreciate it. It's so cute. is a nylon halter. I'll open it up in a minute and see what size it is. You can always use halters around here. So we have 
have uh, some new panels here at the shelter. We're replacing the fencing in our quarantine facility. And our quarantine color is red. And so the red panels will do great in quarantine. Shelter. The little minis from last month's auction are out of quarantine now. So they are going down to the shelter where they can have people look at them for adoption and stuff. I'm getting the first load off the trailer. Gates unloaded. They're coming off. There he goes. So if you wonder where I've been while well, it's been pouring rain and they're unloading panels, I've been standing out of the gooseneck. Just uh, documenting everything for y'all. <laughs> donkeys to their new home. Aww. Sarah's just giving all the information into the adoption packet for the adopters. We are on our way to the auction. We hope to rescue about 20 horses and um, with your help, I know we can do it. Um, we have no idea what type of horses we'll be rescuing. Uh, tonight because we don't know until we get to the auction and see how many horses there are and how critical they are. So we're going to be just going through the auction looking at all the different horses. Um, there's always some that it just it just pulls at our heartstrings like we, we have to rescue those but we just try to rescue as many as we can within that slaughter price range. So it's going to be a long night. Hopefully the auction doesn't get over until midnight and uh, then I got to send an email out to all the folks and see Hey everyone, we are at the auction and I am working on an email and editing the pictures that uh, Jason and Tina are sending me so I can send them out so our supporters can see what horses are at the auction. Um, and through this video you're going to see kind of a more in-depth of our process rescuing horses. Um, so we're not going to do a lot of filming inside the auction because we've already done that with some horse rescue heroes and they're very generous to um, allow us to come in and film in there so um, if you want to see what it's like to be in an auction and us rescuing horses watch episode 5 of horse rescue heroes the auction rescue episode and I'll go into full detail about um, what it's like in the auction um, but right now, we're just getting pictures. I'm gonna send it out to everyone so they can see what's going on. And then tomorrow morning, we'll do the initial intake process here at the auction. So they'll get ID tags. Um, we'll be taking notes to send back to our shelter so the medical team can be ready with what they need. And um, it's just a process. So I think you'll, I know a lot of people have questions about our auction rescues. How do you do it? What are you doing? And so I hope this video will explain some of that um, process because we, we you know, try to raise about a thousand dollars a horse that we rescue and some people are like a thousand dollars a horse that's a lot of money and yes it is but slaughter prices can be up to 50 cents a pound and then they have to be transported back to our shelter um, they get you know a host of vaccinations and antibiotics and deworming medicine and so, you know, that's quite costly, but it's on average about $250 gelding operations. And then there's the quarantine process for 30 days. And then they go on to have training with our, our trainers and sheltering while they're looking for their new home. So it's, it's quite the process. And so, you know, through experience, we found we need $1,000 to responsibly rescue and shelter each horse we get from auction. So it's going to be um, a journey I think you'd like to follow and see you know, what the process is with the auction rescues we do. I'm super happy because Jason's back and he's typing for me. Um, so we can get this email sent out and um, he brought me videos of a horse that's in really, really bad shape. Um, so I'm just gonna go back in and, and see if we can get that horse before the sale. Uh, just because a lot of times if, um, traders and kill buyers realize that we want a particular horse, they will bid that horse up quite a bit when it goes in the auction ring. Um, so we're gonna have the opportunity to purchase this horse. Um, how much do you say it's not for? 
He wants uh, 350. 350, um, and that's within the slaughter price range. Um, so we definitely want to try to get this horse. Um, it's in really rough shape. All right, I finally got the email published, and I'm putting a blog up on our Facebook page and a few more pictures, and then I get to go into the auction. So, I get this done before the horses start selling. He's great. You won't let him out the paper. He's eight years old. I tell you, I don't know if you see him around. I'll turn this horse around. How much go? Gotta wait till they're done. Okay, we got some donkeys, as you can hear and a bunch of other horses. Uh, we rescued over 20 tonight. So thanks to your support, couldn't have been possible without you. And um, so we actually were checking out for the horses we bought. And then we were checking our fundraiser and thanks to your support, we were able to go back and rescue some more horses and hire another trailer. This is one of our pens. All right, so there's a bunch of them in one pen. We're gonna try to divide them out a little bit just so they have better time for the night. They're still selling horses, but these ones are safe. So when we got done with all the auction, we came back here to check on our horses. There's probably about 22 crammed in one pen. So we just got done moving them and sorting them so that there was maybe a five per pen um, and they weren't so cram packed in there. Back here all by himself because he is a stallion. Hi. He is a Tennessee walking show horse and stacks. So we're just heading out to our truck. It's a big semi. It'll be loading up with horses here pretty soon. But when you've seen that happen multiple times, you just don't want to be around for it when there's nothing you can do. So we are headed out to get a few hours of sleep. And then we will be back here in Bright the morning and, early. and get them back to our shelter. <laughs> we're at the auction. It looks like the slaughter horses were the last ones to, to load up last night. Um, they close that off and they bring them through here. And run them up this ramp. And there's big semi here last night. After every auction, we get the horses settled down. Auctions get over really late at night, at least this one does. And we come out the next morning, we do an initial intake on the horses. So we're looking to see if they have injuries. We give them our, their ID tags, we take photos of them. We send all that information back to our shelter. So when we arrive with the horses, our, our intake team knows how to proceed. The veterinarian knows, okay, we have a critical horse coming in. Um, and that way we can get these horses the fastest care possible because when you're intaking 27 horses in a day you have to have all your ducks in a row. I'm a nice person. I'm not gonna hurt you. You like the apple. Want some more? Mm. I like to share. There you go. So we need hand warmers. <laughs> so we use um, sheep IDs tags, we just put them in their mane. Um, that way we've got a permanent number at our shelter with them. You gave me an apple earlier. Okay, silly. Back a little bit. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> she does not like that. <laughs> This guy has a lot of lameness issues. Um, it could be uh, his feet are a mess. <laughs> That's not good. We're gonna um, give her an orange tag so when she's at our shelter, she'll be a priority for the vet to look at. You can go ahead and grab the tag there. He holds its leg up in pain and last night I was seeing him uh, reach back and bite his injury on his leg, probably just from a lot of discomfort and pain.
This horse has really foundered and just every step this horse takes is agony. This horse is a standard bred, so he was raced in the cart racing, and that's his uh, number tied to his registration, so we'll be able to find out who he is. And maybe a little bit of history on him, but his legs are so messed up. But this is a little filly that pretty much got weaned from her mother last night. I take pictures of their auction tag and our tag, and that's sent back to our shelter so we can start um, getting files and everything ready for them. So it's total coincidence, but the number with us is 50, and then the last two digits of the auction number is 50, so. That's pretty sad when a horse is skinny enough that they have a shelf on their back called the blue part. I leave for a second and you catch the horse. <laughs> well, I was just going to scratch her, at least to get her comfortable with me, and then she just stood here. I always call them boys or girls, but I never know what I'm catching. Skinny, so I could use some groceries, but... So last night, we, we couldn't rescue more horses. We stopped. We were like, okay, we're at 20. We can't rescue more. And then Jason was in the office paying for them, and... Um, we checked the fundraiser and we were able to rescue more horses. So I told Tina, I'm like, quick, get back in there. And she, she won the bid on this horse and three more we got. And we were able to hire another trailer to, to help transport. So it's all thanks to your donations because it may not seem like, oh, I, I should give a donation. But when we're at auctions, we're depending on these donations to help rescue these horses. And it really does make a difference. Looking up here, his bridle path was trimmed back. That's very common with Arabian show horses. His mane is just, feels like silk. <clears throat> so somebody was taking really good care of him up to a while ago. And then he ended up in the wrong places and got really skinny, but he's super sweet. How old are you, buddy? Oh, he's just a baby. You're like three, four years old. He's like, quit that. Just no kisses. It did. a treat. He's a sweet pony. He's like, go away. Aww. Crazy lady, go away. One thing we didn't um, post out publicly last night is we rescued a big lick horse in stacks. Um, so this horse would have been trained to do the big lick and associated with that is soaring. So they put a diesel oil, mustard oil, anything that would cause irritation to the skin. They put it on their pasterns, they'll wrap their pasterns um, with a saran wrap, let those chemicals sink in and then they will put a chain around their pastern with these stacks and when they move the horse flinches. Go outside, they can't live a life the horse should because they're stuck in high heels basically. I'm gonna get you help. Sometimes we run them in, um, it just depends on the group of horses and what they're used to. So when we're moving them around, we're kind of evaluating, are these horses that are going to want to follow somebody or are they horses that have been bounced around so much they just want to be herded down a situation that's less stressful for them. So. Yeah. 
I just ate. So did I. <laughs> yeah, but you probably. Just, I mean, I think the coffin bone's like right there, isn't it? This hoof's gonna come off. Come up. I, I can still see <laughs> the same part of the oh, the thing. The worst is underneath and on top. Poor guy. did get sedated just uh, she was the one wearing this morning at the auction and we didn't want anyone to get hurt so the vet sedated her and we're just giving her all our vaccines now <laughs> See all this right here? Yeah. All that'll slough off, so it'll probably get a little bit bigger before, before it gets it better. <laughs> Eight fifty. Okay. There's your, that's a baby tooth right there. But I don't think these are coming in. These got kicked and they're not coming in. He's got. Well, that's a bad the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is not the crater for cancer. Yeah. <laughs> Big word today. I'm just having a hard time with the small word today. It's definitely found there, but usually donkeys, donkeys do pretty good with it. Yeah, donkeys come back really quick. A lot of times, ooh, that's a bloody hand. A lot of times they try to twitch the ear to hold an animal to get it to restrain it. And if they do that, they twitch it too much, they can paralyze the ear. So he's you a lucky. see one that's got the ear down like that. So she's lucky. I think it's confirmation. Look how straight he is. That's a, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is he straight on that side too? He is. Well, yeah. So a lot of people are unsure of what happens during our intake process and the horses get vaccinations, deworming, microchipping. It costs roughly the intake 
per horse uh, $250 for the veterinarians to evaluate. We have two veterinarians here today, we have two farriers, and these horses are getting everything they need. So uh, just the initial intake, about $250 per horse is what we're looking at with all the vaccines and, and medication they need right off the bat. So this little guy's getting gelded. He's such a cute little guy. And now he's gonna be a cute little guy. Donkey. Donkey recovery. He just got gelded and he's gonna hang out on the bale of hay. There's two for here, here, and here. All of us know that horses are, are dangerous animals and we handle a lot of horses here at Horse Plus Humane Society. And this week we had a really horrible accident happen. Um, Travis, who started working for us earlier this year, got ran over and kicked by a horse. And he had to be life flighted um, to the hospital of Vanderbilt. And um, we're just so thankful that it wasn't as serious as it could have been. And he's getting better, uh, but it did put a big damper on all of us this week because, uh, you know, Travis is a great part of our team and, you know, we're all pitching in and, and doing his jobs. Um, and he's, he's expected to recover, he's doing better, but, you know, still we just feel horribly, horribly sad for Travis. And um, we'll continue the work we do here, but, you know, it's just, uh, please keep Travis in your thoughts and prayers. I like wolves. Yeah. Because I'm, because I'm, I'm golden break circles. Good, good, good. Tight. Keep holding that tight. Can you hold that so it doesn't blow away? All right, so this is the folder that has all of her information in it. So you have her microchip information here. Okay. Those are her Coggins. And then um, this is why we microchipped her and what you need to do with her microchip. Okay. So she gets lost or stolen or whatever um, and they take her to the vet and scans it, she can come back to you. 
and then um, this is her vet stuff so everything that we've done with her and then like I called the vet and stuff this morning and then this is just our information which you already know about the TV show and all of that so it's super exciting that Esmeralda got adopted today um, we are so excited for her and her little new um, family Only cases where you know horses have been churned out and people just neglect them Look at those little guys, they're just sleeping, sleeping in the hay. Someone was so sweet to bring us this bouquet of flowers. They're real and they smell so nice. This makes our office so nice. Got his teeth flooded, hopefully that'll help him out with uh, eating. Such a sweet boy. So we have a little gift shop here at Horse Plus and I ordered some stuff wholesale that we're going to be selling here um, at Horse Plus and online to help raise money to rescue more horses. We all check out these awesome hats. So now all these cool little things that we have here in our shop are available on our Facebook store. So if you see something you like, check out our store. Nikki, did you roll? Huh? Did you roll? I went to move this bucket. Uh, we've moved it around a lot recently, but we haven't been able to use it because it's kind of occupied. She's got a whole bunch of eggs under there and um, we need to use the stalls. He looks good from here. We need to get him trailed first and see what he does. He probably needs some ear corrective. Needs some corrective shoeing. track him if he ends up getting out or stolen or something. Um, whoever adopts him will get that information and they'll be able to register him in their name. And then right now she's just getting his height and weight. I think her big problem is pneumonia. She's not moving any air over here on the right side, moving very little air on the left side. I just, I don't know if she's going to pull her As far as quality of life, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty tough. Did she do better after the steroid shots? We've been giving her the I mean, the, the whole time it's been up and down with her, so. I mean, I don't know. And she's, she's pretty skinny. She is. What, what, con she what concerned me this morning is she didn't have an appetite. Like, up until this morning, she's always eating. Like me. This week, we've had a lot of kind of um, negativity against our organization out there in the internet world. 
And we've written a blog that um, is primarily the people are about euthanasia, and we totally get it. Um, nobody likes to think about euthanasia, but the fact is 10 out of 10 die. And running a, an organization that's taking in all kinds of animals, we have to look at it in a serious matter, a scientific matter, and um, on our website, uh, you can see the, the blog post. It's, it's just our history with euthanasia and working with uh, dozens of veterinarians across the United States. And I just want to take a moment to just thank all of our supporters that have been defending us on online. Um, there's a lot of misconstrued information and, um, you know, we, we just gathered all the information and then put the facts out there. But we just appreciate you all, um, you know, trying to bring the truth to light. And um, if you see anything out there, feel free to share that blog post and it will help educate people. So we have an adoption partner program at Horse Plus Land Society. We get so many different horses into our shelter that uh, we rely on adoption partners for placing some of the horses so they can take them and work with them and train them and then adopt them out through our program. So it's a successful program. donkeys move down into the barn so we can start their halter training. Yeah, yeah, we're halter training real fast. And we've been working on leading her today and she's doing really well. She, before I started working with her, she didn't want to lead at all. She would pull, but now she leads really well. So she's doing really good. The vet just got here and so we've got Coggins to do and feet check and So now they've got a nice pasture to themselves. They're able to hang out and uh, just enjoy being horses. We'll get them, uh, we'll be able to give them a wonderful home. They're both really nice horses and really well taken care of. So um, we're happy they're here. She has some great news today. Uh, Travis is coming back. His doctor cleared him for light duty. So we're gonna have some easy work for him to do. We're so excited that he gets to be back here. Uh, he's a great part of our team and um, we have a little something for him when he comes in. We got him a nice carrot cake. Yay! We got you a carrot cake since we give carrots to the horses. There's a special <laughs> carrot cake for you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We're so glad to have you back. Sarah's not talking today because uh, <clears throat> She was doing a good thing yesterday. She was singing at a nursing home, bringing cheer, and she lost her voice. So she can talk a little bit, but she's not as talkative as normal. But that's why she's just silent right now. Last week, Cherish passed away. We worked really hard to save her with our vet, but sadly there was nothing that we could do in the end. Our veterinarian did a necropsy and found that she uh, had lung failure and um, he sent blood work off to the state and the blood work had a little bit of concern and so he's just going to test some more of the horses here uh, before they go out of quarantine from the last auction rescue group. Um, Shelby, can you turn the scale on? They 588 last time we weighed 610? 610. So he's gaining weight. I thought maybe it was rhino pneumonitis, but it, at the lab they said, you may want to check some for flu. So uh, we're sort of doing the cultures on some of them to see if it's spreading, trying to do a little disease control. Her name is Velma. She came in in the January auction. 
she's just shedding, so I thought I'd clean her up and maybe get some of this extra fur off her. Carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, but don't let it make you older. They say, settle me down when I can't see. The kennels that we're building are, are doing great. Uh, soon we'll be able to accept dogs and cats at our facility. We're not focusing on a dog and cat shelter, but long term, if somebody brings us a dog or a cat, we need a safe place to put it. I we're gonna go get a bale of hay. Okay. So this is Copper, I'm just brushing him down right now and then we're going to evaluate him and see how much training he's had in the past. I'm just filling out his evaluation form right now, he's doing excellent so far. So I just finished Copper's evaluation, he did really good today, um, he was really good with stopping and um, he did really good with turning as well and he did really well with um, everything that I asked him to do, so I'm really proud of him. So this is Ember, I worked with him a couple days ago. Um, he is still a little shy and timid, but he's definitely warming up. Oh, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> oh, why am I stinks? <laughs> Sorry buddy, I need it. We had made the decision because of the coronavirus affecting so many people across Tennessee, across the United States and across the world, that our shelter will be closed to the public and we're just going to shelter in place as long as, as, long as uh, we feel necessary with this coronavirus. Our horses are still going to be receiving veterinarian care daily, all their daily needs. Um, our staff will be here taking care of the animals. Our thoughts and prayers are with you and the whole United States as we are in the state of emergency uh, with the coronavirus. We do have one horse in our quarantine facility that has influenza, it's tested positive, and there's some others that are suspected. So uh, we haven't done any auction rescues or anything because we're, we're waiting for that to clear up, but now with the coronavirus hitting and um, you know, not even groups of more than 50 people coming together, we're not going to be able to do auction auction rescues and stuff because we don't want to jeopardize our staff and our team. So we're going to still continue taking care of everybody at the shelter and giving them top quality care. This is Ember. We're just um, building trust right now. If I had one breath left to spend, I'd go to you and take your hand. Tell you that I wouldn't have spent my days any other way than We understand with the coronavirus pandemic going around that, that there will be horse owners that are not able to take care of their horses anymore. And despite our shelter being shut down, we will still accept um, those horses that need our help. So we just got four um, new horses surrendered um, today. Um, they are very healthy, they're sweet. Um, so we're gonna see how much training they have. They have been ridden in the past, um, but it has been a little while. So we're gonna have them seen um, by our vet this week, and then we're gonna go from there. She's been in the trailer before. I don't know, her, but it's been a long time. Okay, should, does she lead? She should lead, yeah. Oh, there she goes. There she goes, good job. This is Kinsley, she's 20 years old, and we're going to be working with the saddle today. I'm working 
with the babies today and we're going to be building trust and desensitizing them and just getting them used to people. This is Flicker. We're just giving her a good brush down and some extra love today. He's a little shy and timid, but he's quickly warming up. We called the co-op. We asked them if they could start delivering grain to us so that we didn't have to go out every week and do that, and they were able to, so we are excited that they are here and we'll get it all unloaded. So the veterinarian is here, um, he's setting up his x-ray machine. We have um, eight horses, I believe, for the veterinarian to look at today, and uh, we have x-rays that need to be done. That part almost looks like that, like it goes yoop and yoop. <laughs> Autumn is eating out the, a coffin bone, mm. and it's probably trying to fill in. That's where a, the coffin bone is filled in with almost pure bone right there. It's not supposed to be sort of, supposed to be sort of that flexible. He's three. shelter down than we did so we didn't have the public coming in here um, for chance making one of us sick because our jobs are vitally important we have a lot of animals depending on us we're just going to focus on just taking care of the animals um, this week and next week I mean we don't know how long the coronavirus is going to continue so we'll just keep everything to to minimum um, no public is allowed inside the shelter um, for any, any reason, you know, because we just, we can't have the spread of this disease. This is Thunder, he's 19 years old. He's just a big love bug. I was grooming him earlier and he just stood still. He didn't go anywhere, he was awesome. This is Dakota, he's got a goobery eyeball so the vet's gonna look at it and see what's going on. Do that twice okay. a day and keep her in the dark. Send keep me a picture to tomorrow. <laughs> so this is Smoke. Um, we're just getting his shoes off and he's getting his feet trimmed today. My name is Papa Penny. I am three years old. So this is Boots. She is 19 years old and she is just absolutely amazing. So we found out some exciting news the other day. Boots is eight and a half months pregnant. This is our medical stall. Um, I just cleaned it out. I'm getting ready to spray it down to disinfect it. This is Copper Penny. She's got something going on with her knee, so we're going to go get some x rays of her. Her just walking, she's not. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm replacing the fence that used to be here. This is Velma. She's 20 years old and I'm just grooming her right now. Flicker is all done with her date and she did excellent. He's 10 years old, and right now we're working on building trust and getting him comfortable with people.
There's some horses out there, they just want to mm -hmm. And those are the ones that you want to find and work with. Yeah. Slide it in and keep it in there. This time. Okay? Thank you. So despite our shelter being closed and the coronavirus going around, we still have lots of emails coming in, people asking questions. And so that's what I'm just working on this morning. This is Velma. We're giving her bath right now. We're just disinfecting water troughs. Hey, Tony. Yeah? Well, so we got the letter from the state of Tennessee. So it says, it has been determined that the crematory unit will not receive, require a permit at this time. Awesome, awesome. So, so we got reported to the Tennessee Department of the Guard Control System uh, because we do do cremations of horses here at our facility. Somebody report us, uh, reported it um, to them and they came out here, they said, well, everything falls within the guidelines, which we knew it did, um, that it's exempt from getting a permit. And so they just sent us their official letter. So it's all's good. And they said if anyone else complains, just show them the letter. So we're good now. That's awesome. Over the years, I've been bashed on the internet. And um, this one is just, it's something else. So I'll pull it up here. You can look at it. And people have a right to their own opinion. Sometimes if they can't say something nice, they shouldn't say it at all. Um, but yeah, this one's just kind of interesting. You can uh, go ahead and come over and so <clears throat> they didn't quite get my name right. It was Tawny Price, <laughs> a first most name society without her makeup on. <laughs> um, <laughs> the funny thing is I normally never wear makeup unless it's like major photo filming thing. So this is Sancho. I worked with him earlier today. He's in the round pen right now and we're working with leading. He's really patient and sweet and really willing to learn, so I'm really happy with his progress. We are now under a stay at home order. Um, stay for a home order. I know there was one horse scheduled to come in. What's, what's happening with that? So I talked to her yesterday and she is talked with her um, sheriff department and they said that she was allowed to leave the state. So she's still planning on bringing the horse when she's allowed to leave the state. The coronavirus has just turned the world upside down and we're seeing it, we're feeling it here at Horse Plus Main Society. You know, we've, we've been cutting hours back on our employees and, um, you know, we're closed down uh, unless it's an emergency now. Um, we do need your donations. Donations have slowed quite a bit with the coronavirus. We haven't been able to go to do auction rescues, but we're sheltering a lot of horses here at our, our facility and they eat, they need bedding every day. And your, your donations to continue our, our care of these animals are greatly appreciated. So thank you so much. And our thoughts and prayers are with the entire nation during this difficult time. So he weighs 641 pounds, 640 pounds. Hey, this is, this is Bo. He's a lot stronger than I remember last time. He's had the, uh, uh, the flu since then, but he's just gained from 588 pounds to uh, 640, and he's continuing to be on the rise. He's still interested in hay. He wants to get me to that stack of hay in the back, so I'm pretty happy with him. the old man here. And anyway, 
We just gotta keep seeing how he does. Hopefully he'll shed off and look really good for the summer. I think he'd be a pretty good gentle horse for somebody. So with all the rain and stuff that we've been having, I've been seeing more wildlife. Um, in here I've seen a little um, snapping turtle about yay big, along with a uh, box turtle that's about the same size, um, which is kind of cool to see that this early in the spring. Um, down over the road there, we've got a little nest of tadpoles too. They're about yay big now which is really cool too. Newborn day in that still warm glow Life's seen long lost times ago Close my eyes so I can see the light Time stands still while the sun goes round Distant winds making sighs monsters we've been grooming and grooming them and just piles and piles of hair come off so we decided we're gonna body clip them because it's getting so hot and we know they'll feel a lot better Lot of fur that's coming off, so we figured we would make her another little friend. <laughs> well, she's all done, she's had her spring makeover, and she looks so much better. Twilight reaching like angels through the sky. a baby horse born we always want to have the vet come out and check it and make sure it's okay like you can she listen to him you want to grab one you can listen to your baby the little guy's had his first vet check and he's healthy and we're so happy about that and the vet's very pleased with him Here's the Facebook post. We're gonna be asking for names. I wonder what he's gonna be named. I don't know, but it's, I mean, he's so adorable. All right, so I'm going to, it's a boy, name needed. Post it on Facebook and start getting name suggestions. Been up for three minutes and we have six comments. See what they are. Name suggestions, all right. So we have Fun Dance, Austin, Sugar King, and Star. Austin's so cute. Austin will be cute. Oh, it don't feel good. Oh, that needs to be itched. Oh, it does? Okay. All right, it's your belly for you. She really likes her belly itched. Oh. We're getting a lot of questions about the coronavirus and how it's affecting the slaughter pipeline. And what we're seeing is there are a lot of auctions that are temporarily closing down. Um, some of them are giving just numbers of kill buyers out if somebody calls and wants to sell horses. So we are seeing that. Um, we are watching the USDA slaughter statistics exports closely. And um, so we're looking at this time last year there was 1,124 horses shipped to slaughter. And then this time, 
This year we are at 353 horses. So there is a significant drop compared to last year. And now with the closure, temporary closure of many auctions, uh, I think we're gonna see that number drop again with the next USDA report. So we are watching it. Um, when the coronavirus is over, auctions are gonna be picking back up. A lot of people will be taking horses to auctions and fueling the slaughter pipeline again. So when this is over, we wanna get very active uh, with rescuing horses out of the slaughter pipeline again, and we can do that with your support. So what I'm working on is we had the little baby born yesterday. We put up on Facebook asking for name suggestions for him. So far we have 245 um, name suggestions. I'm just going to go through and figure out what his name's going to be. I am just calculating up um, the names like Cookie, Somebody, um, it was, has six likes. So whichever name has the most likes um, is typically what their name is going to be if it fits them. So I'm just going through and calculating that up. And I've got that done, so I'm just gonna go through it and add up and figure out what his name's gonna be. Well, that was close. Um, Indy got 16 likes and Kane got 17, so his name is gonna be Kane. Hi, pet. You got your name today. Your name is now Kane. What do you think? Huh? What do you think, Mama? Little Kane, he's so cute. and try to catch him and take him back to our shelter and figure out who owns him. So he's a stallion. <laughs> Doesn't leave real well. So we uh, Googled how far we are from the shelter. We're one and a half miles. So hopefully by the time we get back, this little guy will have a little bit more manners. Here's the shelter. We've got to find out who you are. We know you're lost. I'm just going to scan him just to see if he has a microchip for some reason. No microchip. If he had a microchip, we'd be able to call the uh, microchip company and find out who the microchip was registered to and then know who his owners are. So we had a trainer opening and this is? Jesse. Jesse, so Jesse has come down to um, work here at their shelter this week and work on uh, training some of the horses. Even having the coronavirus going on, we still need to work with the horses and get them ready for adoption. So um, it's kind of a job trial period. So we're happy that you're here and we'll see how it goes. Bye. So we're working with Aphrodite right now and she's, she's pretty skittish and she's nervous, but she has a lot of potential. We're evaluating the minis and we have three of them to do. We have two mini mules and one pony. This is Adora, she's a mini mule. She came in from the last auction. We do the warmer thing, apparently. 
So we're taking the mamas and the babies over to another pasture that we have. It a, has a lot of green grass um, that needs to be eaten. We know that they will do very well over there. We're sad to see them go. We will be checking on them every day, um, but they won't be just outside the window anymore. So last week we talked about slaughter numbers and I know there's still a lot of questions out there about that and we're watching that with the USDA export reports into Mexico. And so last week, uh, 353 horses were exported out of the United States for slaughter. And then um, the report for this week, we saw another drop to 231 horses. So with the coronavirus, the export of horses out of the United States is dropping. Um, so 231 horses for last week being shipped to slaughter. Um, previous week 353. If we look at last year's numbers, um, 834 last year to this year being 231, that, that is a significant drop. Now this is a temporary thing. We know that when this pandemic is over, horses will be going back to auctions and these slaughter numbers will increase. Um, so last year, this, this pandemic time, if we go from March till now uh, since the coronavirus has happened to give you kind of a rough idea of the drop that we're seeing in horses being shipped to slaughter. Um, so last year from March till now, there was 6,548 horses sent to slaughter. And then this year from March till now, we've had 3,556 horses shipped to slaughter. So we're seeing about a 3,000 horse drop um, because of this pandemic. He's just weak back there. We were able to find his owner and um, talking to his owner, he wanted to get him gelded. And so we'd be Happy to do that for him. So our vet visit went really well today and the vet got to look at lots of horses here at our shelter and we did x-rays. And uh, this girl behind me here, uh, she's got some weakness in her hind end. So the vet just wants to give her um, maybe some, some a little bit of time and muscle building exercise and see if, uh, if it gets better. The governor has um, talked about reopening the state of Tennessee and we are excited about that. We hope that we can adjust to the new normal and what that looks like. And so we're having staff meetings and internally talking about what's that going to look like for our organization when we reopen up our adoption program and some of our other public programs because for a while it's, it's not going to be the same as what it was before. Um, the coronavirus has taken our our country and shaken it, and it's going to take a while for uh, normalcy to come back. And for a while, there's just there'll be a new normal. So we're looking at, you know, what is that new normal going to look like for Horse Plus? Well, Jesse, this has been an awesome trial time, and um, as you know, we're very excited to have you come to our shelter and be our head trainer and start working with all the horses permanently. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so you'll definitely see her in a lot more videos. So this little guy had a fun little adventure for us since we had to go out and catch him so he didn't get hit on the road or anything. He's been gelded now and he's going to be going back home and we're super excited for him because that's what it's all about is, you know, keeping horses in their homes where they can be happy. <laughs> So 
So we have the farrier coming out today. We have 15 horses on the list that need to get their feet done. It's gonna cost over $500 um, for that to happen. You belong here. You belong with me. Everything's clear. If you choose to see, just a matter. This is Arrow. This is Venus. So this is Angel. We have actually had Angel since she was just a little tiny baby. She was dumped in an auction because she's blind. And um, she's not adoptable due to her blindness. Uh, she has cataracts in both of her eyes. Um, so she is one of our residents here at our shelter. And this is Arrow. This is Mel. This is Bo. This is me. This is Olga. This is Hershey. This is Stormy. This is Hearts on Fire. This is Venus. This is Mina. And this is Amor. This is Chile. This is Greg. This is Aphrodite. This is Angel, and this is the 15th trim we've done today. Each week we've been looking at the USDA export reports um, on how many horses are being shipped to slaughter. This last USDA report did show an increase in horses uh, shipped to slaughter from the previous one. So the previous one was 231 and then this last USDA report it was 390 horses were shipped to slaughter into Mexico. It is a drop from the previous year but Still, it's very sad. We're doing maintenance at the uh, shelter today on the equipment, uh, oil changes, and making sure everything is running right as it should be. About once or twice a year, we only got to change the oil to make sure we keep up the performance of the uh, equipment around here. That one stays there. That one actually goes with this over here. So we're doing an oil change on the tractor now. We've been watching the statements being put off in orders by a uh, governor here in Tennessee and we were thinking okay, the governor's saying everything's going to be opened up by May 1st. So we were making plans of, uh, you know, reopening plans of what that's going to look like. Uh, we know that the coronavirus is still a threat and there has to be protective measures put in place. Um, and so we're, we're looking into all that. And then uh, yesterday the governor put out a thing that um, his order was extended until the 29th of May. So now we're looking at almost into June. Um, we are hopeful that if we are following these measures um, with the Tennessee Pledge, that hopefully middle of May, we can open up and start doing horse adoptions, but we're gonna to have to take safety precautions like limiting the amount of people that can come to our shelter. Uh, we're gonna be doing a health screen just to make sure they haven't come in contact with anyone with coronavirus. And um, we'll just kind of see how it goes, but we would have never imagined that the coronavirus would have taken our country and the world and just shaking it as it has. But we're thankful that we're able to be here and taking care of the horses that we do have. And also, you know, we're not doing adoptions and we're not open to the public that way, but we are taking owner surrenders. We have some donkeys being surrendered today. So uh, we got our, our mask on, protection gear, and we're just gonna be putting them into the barn. And um, we're happy that we're here to help, but we still have to take preventative measures because the coronavirus is a real threat. So we're just getting all the paperwork done, um, a health screen to make sure they haven't come in contact with anyone with coronavirus. This is, this is Tennessee weather. It can be pouring rain one moment and then the sun shining the next. Uh, I always like to say Tennessee has the most bipolar weather I've ever experienced.
The owner of these donkeys really loved loved them a lot, but sadly they she wasn't able to keep them because the donkeys were killing her baby goats. Um, when she got the donkeys, she had them in with her big goats and they were fine. And when the goats started having babies, uh, the donkeys were killing the, the goats, the baby goats. Um, so she was no longer able to keep them. So we just need to make sure we find them a home where there's no goats or baby goats. So we're hopeful that we can make that happen for them. So our mask here that we you saw us wearing in the film, we've actually been reusing them um, we had a small number of them uh, from the beginning of this pandemic it started and so we've just been reusing them. Mine is actually from the photo shoot with Velma. Those are little Velma's spit I guess on there. Um, but we've been saving them and we're reusing them and um, we definitely know that they're, they're something that is rare these days so we're keeping them safe and reusing. I've been designing a t-shirt um, to help raise funds for our shelter during this pandemic and corona. And um, so the shirt says, I helped feed an equine during COVID-19. So the proceeds from this t-shirt will go to help purchase bags of grain and feed for the horses at our shelter. So I'm just getting ready to launch this. So we have men's and women's shirts. And then you flip it around, it says kicking COVID-19. And the little donkey is kicking the virus away. So that's pretty cool. I hope everybody wants one because it would definitely help out our feed bill. The fundraiser for kicking COVID-19 is going well. Um, these are shirts that um, I designed. If anyone wants a designed shirt by Tony Preisner, get this one. This fundraiser will be going through till May 13th, 2020. So definitely log on to our Facebook page, buy one of your shirts. Um, our goal is to sell a hundred of them. And so far, let's see if we refresh it. We're at 15 shirts. We had an order come in for our store this morning. Some of you may not even know that we have a store. And we have t-shirts for sale. We have hats like the ones that I have on. We have many others. This um, individual ordered a shirt and we're gonna package it up and send it on its way. Um, and we're gonna show you just a few things that are in our store. To make a purchase, you can go onto our website at horseplushumanesociety.org. It will be on our homepage and you can also go to our Facebook page and click on shop. And you can click on catalog and you can go through and it will have everything that we have for sale in our store. So we're getting ready to hit the road, but um, we're talking about a lot of animals, emergency situation. Sheriff just got the warrant and they need our help, so we're on our way. It take about an hour and a half to get there. There's a lot of animals in really critical condition. We are headed to go assist law enforcement with the seizure of dozens of animals. Um, we're only handling the livestock part of it, but it sounds like there's a whole lot of dogs and just a really horrible case. We don't know what we're going to uh, encounter when we're there, but we always know that these law enforcement abuse seizure cases are, are rough, both emotionally and physically. So just trying to prepare myself mentally, you know, for what we're gonna see when we're there, because uh, we just never know. No water in pen, dead horse in pen from 1219. When there's dead carcasses of animals that died due to pure neglect, it's it makes it so much harder. There are the eight geese, no water in pen, dead carcass in the pen. I'll get wherever y'all start loading. That way I have a picture of each animal. Yes. And Sarah with the black hat, she will document each and every animal. As loading the pictures with their number, and you'll be able to identify who they are. I appreciate y'all coming down very much. What numbers are we starting at? 83. I swear. 
anywhere where the man is out for me. I've been locked inside, thinking about sunlight. Woke up with the thought, maybe it's all for now. Maybe it's all for now. behind us. I'm going to go in and check and see if there's anything in there. We have heard that there's possibly some dead animals in there and the closer you get the worse it smells. So let's go see what we can find. So I'm going to cover my nose as we go in here. Oh my goodness. Wow. There are definitely some dead animals that were just thrown in here. There's still some horse hair. There's some stuff under there. There's some bones everywhere. Oh, and they still smell. Oh, this is gross. She's very, very skinny. Yes, you are. You're so hungry. Yes. So why don't I just back the trailer up there? We put them straight in the trailer. And then we All right. There's a horse that died here. There's a tarp and bones protruding. We tried to cover it up with twine and manure, but there's bones just strewn around everywhere. We are removing dozens of animals from this property today. We're gonna to be loading up these uh, sheep and goats. 
um, a very emaciated pig, and lots of miniature horses and miniature donkeys. So we just got confirmed um, from the sheriff department that there is a dead horse under that hay right there. We also have found a dead horse under this pile of dirt right here. You can see the bones that are here. So there's a goose that died and was just dropped off the uh, side of the little cliff where the house is. A couple dead sheep just dumped out behind the house on tarps. Good-looking bird right there. Yeah, I think it's you. All of them. It's been a long, busy afternoon. Uh, the vet called us this afternoon and was like, "Hey, we need your help." We jumped in the trucks, got the trailer hooked up, drove down here, spent hours loading up dozens and dozens of animals. I wasn't sure how many animals we actually loaded up until we got to the end. So many people always wonder what happens to the owners of these animals. In the police car behind me, she was arrested and she's going to jail tonight. And that's, that's amazing. Um, there's a lot of cases we don't see that happen, but tonight an arrest was made and these animals are on their way to safety. And that couldn't end better. Animals. 
animals and uh, she was planning on taking to an exotic animal auction and now we just got to get him back to our shelter. It's going to be a long night, I have a feeling. We're back at the shelter now and we're getting ready to unload the animals. Uh, the cows are going to be the first ones coming on. The only lights, unfortunately, that we have in the barn are the uh, side by side. So. With get... your support, we'll be able to get power in this barn, so please donate. So we're putting hay in the different stalls so that the animals all have food and we're going to all have food and water tonight and be happy for the rest of the evening. Just wait. Just hold on. sheep and goats and the hairy pig and then we've got stall after stall after stall of miniature horses and miniature donkeys. We have geese and the chickens are all in a stall safe for the night. We have the cattle. Um, they're just hanging out. Horses and donkeys. Now we're gonna be moving the parrots and the lizards and turtles into the office and get them settled for the night. We're gonna take care of you. Just talking up a storm. Oh, look at them. They're like, can you let us out? Oh, look at them, poor guys. I've got turtles. So these are the lizards coming in. I think this is the first time we've ever rescued lizards, but they need help. These are actually our cat kennels. Um, what they're gonna have to do is parrot cages. We had people complain that they were in cat and dog kennels. And this is why we have kennels for different sized animals. We just never know when we're going to be called to rescue all creatures, great and small. There you go. Come on, baby. All right, there you go. You're very beautiful. His foot is gone. Yeah. Putting the tortoises in uh, our dog runs. Hi, buddy! Uh, so I know they'll be safe in there. Oh, that's scary. 
That was scary. We're gonna get you a blanket, okay? He's coming out. Oh, see here, see here, gotta get a picture. You're gonna see what, what is this place? You're a very smart bird, but I have to, I have to shut this up. This is what we're doing, okay? You are so beautiful. Look at you. So pretty. Yeah. Okay, we're going in here. There you go. It's really late. I don't even know what time it is right now, but all the animals are settled and safe for the night, and we'll be down here bright and early in the morning checking them out and seeing what they need. We're just Thankful that they're safe. We got a few hours of sleep last night and I'm um, gonna head in and see the babies, see what they are this morning. Hi. Yeah. You're being a troublemaker. Your shadows fall behind. You like all that excitement. When all the work you can is weighing on your mind. To show you all the things you're missing and everything we go through. I'll be by your side, so let's run away to far away places, escape from this life we have known. Your eyes are new. Your heart is the place I call home Whoa. Hi! Everyone this morning is doing good. They're eating, they're drinking. Uh, our barn is full and we're so thankful we have this barn because we can do these large animal rescues the right way. And we have a rescue coming to help take some of them um, along with an individual that's really into parrots. So we know that uh, all these animals are going to get the help they need. The veterinarian is coming and um, the big job for us today is we have to catalog all these animals individually and make reports for the sheriff's department to help their case. The veterinarian's just pulling in. We're going to do uh, just an initial exam on all these animals to make sure they're okay. Sheriff said that the judge signed the tissue prior violations that they took all the parents So the sheriff signed them over to us. Is this all the cows? This is all the cows. So it's I brought Dexter warmer for them. We could throw warmer. Good. Dexter Bull and then a Galloway and a Jersey Crop. The two heifers are gonna go up to Christian Farm Rescue. Oh, there's the pig. Oh my gosh, she does look like a sheep. Fancy name. Does that mean you're feeding you? I have no idea. The first shorts. ever lizards we've ever had in our organization. Well, is that some kind of special turtle or just that? From Russia. Russia? It's a Russian tortoise. Tortoise thing? Okay. Um. What, can you pull up on your phone what this mm -hmm. is supposed to look like? So we have Prairie County Humane Society here. They're going to be taking two of the heifers and the hairy pig to Christian Farms Rescue and um, transporting them for us. And they're also taking the geckos and the turtles, which I'm thrilled about because I'm not really a reptile person. Got to separate the bull from two heifers. So this is going to be fun. Oh, well, that was so easy. Turtles are on the right. Oh, oh, hold on, Shelby. <laughs> I'm 
run a waterfall rescue. Um, we rescue all birds, domestic and wild. Um, we began our focus on waterfowl, but um, it has since morphed into um, songbirds as well. So, and we do help um, domestic pet birds as well too. So um, parrots and parakeets and. <laughs> help all birds and we don't like to turn them away so um, we're so thankful to be able to help these guys. I think I can probably take 10 okay. depending on how many of the many uh, We're Redemption Road Rescue. Um, I've been doing this really I've been doing it all my life but uh, our organization has been in existence since for 11 years. We're thrilled that Redemption Road is here and can help us take uh, some of these, these precious babies. <laughs> Our, our mission is to save the ones that we can and move forward and work with other organizations, you know, and, and let's do this as a team. that was signed over from the sheriff to us. Okay. And relinquishing ownership to us, so if there wasn't any confusion on that. Okay, and I'd like to give you a thousand dollar donation. So thank you. Take you care. know you didn't have to do this. I know. Okay. I well, know, but, but I'm gonna take it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally gonna take it, but yeah, I, I was yeah. gonna help anyway. Wow. So just happy thank you. You're so happy. happy. I would totally yeah. hug you too, but Corona. Oh. COVID, 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 and we also rescued over 70 animals with the sheriff department. The last video that you've seen, we were rescuing all those animals, but now you get to see what we were doing during that same time here at our shelter. So last night we had some pretty bad storms with uh, straight line winds and stuff. And it blew open our barn here and uh, knocked over our panels. The wind has blown one shelter over so far. Don't know how many more are gonna go. So today I get to go around and fix everything. So we got the mill panel down and got it everything apart. Now we're putting the boards back up and get ready to put the metal back on. So we're trying to get this barn back together again because 
in a little bit, there's another storm that's supposed to come through and it's supposed to be very similar to the storm we had yesterday with winds up to 75 miles an hour. So if we don't get our barn back together, it could be blown apart again. So hopefully we can get it built stronger and it will hold together. When the USDA report came out this week, um, I looked at it and my heart kind of sunk a little bit because there was a significant jump from the trend we'd seen going on with the coronavirus. Um, the previous report was 390 horses and then the, the latest report was 811 horses. And that's horses shipped out each week. The vet's coming out today and Bruno, the bull we rescued in the last hoarding case, um, he's gonna get seen by the vet again and um, he's gonna be turned into an ox today so the He's basically going to go through a castration and then the veterinarian's also going to take a look at his horns because he has tried to use his horns here and we don't want anyone to get hurt. Um, and we need to get him safe and happy and healthy so we can find him a home. Or maybe he'll be a resident here with our resident steer, Parsi, because we know he would like a friend. So we'll see. Trying to take a little look at Rosalind here today. She's had swellings come up everywhere. She had one in her throat latch the other day, one under her jaw. Didn't think it was strangles. And uh, heard some fluid in her heart last time I checked her. All of that seems to be gone, but now she has some in her back leg. She's showing improvement so much in so many different places. We're gonna try to keep going with her. So we're having Snowy here looked at by the vet. She's been having something wrong with her uh, foot, so we just want to get her better. We're all done. It's tiny in there. It's because he's miniature. I think you need to stay. Marky. So I'm getting ready to take some grain over to the mommies and the babies that we have on our other pasture. Look at you. Hi. Yeah. How are you? You're so cute. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Hi, baby. Oh, she feel good. Oh, she feel good. Oh, oh, it feels so good. Oh, doesn't it? So, what is this? Set up. This is a cough guard, part of the Tennessee Pledge. Okay. Is uh, being safe with the coronavirus and throwing the uh, cough guard. Okay. Uh, that just rescued a bunch of horses, miniature horses and donkeys from an auction. And this organization is from Oregon. So we're going to use our facility as a layover facility for them so they can get their health certificates and um, just have a nice safe place to be for a few days, so. We belong here. We belong together. Here's my heart. So cute, Jim. <laughs> If you 
auctions and pick up minis so they're they don't end up in bad places we rescue them and we rehab them into companion and therapy horses and we train them and then we rehome them you excited you get to go to Oregon Velma I use horse plus the horse plus facility as a layover for vetting and and health checks and make sure everybody's healthy before we go all the way across the country Jim's headed off to Oregon. Jim has been one of our way back volunteers. Uh, he was the guy I could call up and be like, hey, there's these horses over in Nevada that need a ride. They're at the auction. And he'd jump up and go. And uh, now we're all the way in Tennessee. He's in Oregon, but we still get to work together, and that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> so we'll miss you until I'll we see you again. I'll miss you, too. So Six months. Corona hugs. <laughs> Corona hugs. <laughs> I will. Thanks, you guys. All right, see ya. Thank you for everything. Yes, yeah, no, sure. Okay, I'll see you soon. All right, take care. Bye. We have the farrier coming to trim the donkeys today, so we're getting them ready and we're putting them in the barn. We just put the donkeys back in their pen, and their feet are all good. Hey Sarah, what you doing? Oh, so we had some people order some stuff from our store. We got a hat and a sign and some other things. We, uh, since we put the thing out saying that we had a store, uh, there's been lots and lots of orders. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm so glad. This is Ember. Today we're working on desensitizing and getting him more comfortable with people. And a few months ago he was pretty skinny and looked pretty rough, but now he's fattened up nicely and he looks great. And He's very smart and willing to learn, and I'm really happy with the progress that he's made so far. So I'm all done working with Ember now, and he's done really good today. I'm really happy with him, and he's learned a lot. So it's Miss Tawny's birthday on Sunday, so we wanted to surprise her. So yesterday I, um, I got a bunch of balloons and I've flown them up and they're just in bags here. And that's not even half of them. There's probably, there's supposed to be like 375 balloons. So I'm gonna have to blow up a few extra, but they are here. So let's set this thing up and surprise her open up all these garbage bags. Don't worry guys, I'm not wasting these garbage bags. I'm reusing them. Good old Costco garbage bags. These are my favorite. They got confetti in them. It's the simple joys in life, y'all. This is what it looks like so far. So let's keep working. Okay. I'm gonna take a quick break because I'm gonna put out the happy birthday banner, so. bought sticky notes and we're gonna try to cover most of her desk in sticky notes. That's where Sarah comes in. She's she's gonna have to help me on that one. Here the rest of the crew has arrived. Hi. <laughs> you know that this is a wine bottle. Yes. 
<laughs> for all you people out there that are gonna believe this is wine and is not and it's chocolate. <laughs> I will prove it. That's some chocolate. Can't really see it, can you? Anyways, it's dark orange almond. It's amazing. So it's not wine, it's chocolate. <laughs> So we are going to cover her whole desk in sticky notes. What's she doing, Shelby? Writing happy birthday on each sticky note. It's writing it on every single one. The girls are blowing up the last of the balloons. We got sticky notes all up there. All these sticky notes say happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, Tony. We have a birthday banner. We have a birthday banner. Covered all that stuff with sticky notes. And the floor is covered in balloons. And yes, we do have confetti ones as well. We're just waiting to get the text that she's on her way and we can surprise her. We're all excited. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> she has to pop the balloons to find her surprise. <laughs> we did over 300 balloons. <laughs> Who is this from? All the presents are from everybody. So I got a birthday present in the mail from one of our followers and supporters. Every birthday she sends me little goodies. So let's see what we have. That's going to look great. See, I got a card. Oh, wow. She sent a $1,000 donation for Horse Plus. Isn't that cute? Some, some goodies from my office and then a thousand dollar donation to help horse plus so it's so exciting so in the staff meeting I just wanted to go over um, a few things since we are gonna be open to the public again by appointment when we have visitors come I need to try to keep the six foot distancing at the end of every appointment of adoption appointment we're gonna disinfect the tack it's my birthday and our staff here did, did a makeover in my office and it looks great. But um, my birthday wish is that every person that sees this video will donate one panel to help improve our facility for our horses. A lot of our fencing needs uh, an upgrade. And if you could donate $75, it will purchase a panel and uh, the panel will be 12 feet long and we can panel a section of the fencing, improving the fencing and making it better for the horses that live here at our shelter. So Jesse and I went on a trail ride together and we rode Rosalind and Hearts on Fire and I rode Hearts on Fire. He's a really go-getter. He loves to go and run and he did really well. After the trail ride, we unpacked them and now we're putting Hearts on Fire and Rosalind back in their pens. We had a little girl donate her birthday money, so we had everybody sign a postcard for her. We've got everybody's names at the bottom, so we're going to go send her a happy birthday card. Thinking about starting to lunch her every day for a little bit. Uh, we get to run some blood tests and we get to look at the dopamine levels in the blood. Um, it's just a test for PPID, which is far pituitary intermediate dysfunction. Um, it just, we see it clinically with this horse that has a little bit longer hair in the summer than we would expect and then losing weight. 
are two of the really big things we're seeing with this horse. I want to thank everyone for making donations for the birthday fundraiser. Um, it looks like we've raised enough money to get 50 panels, so that's going to be a huge help. I'm just going to call the guy and put the order in for the panels, so super excited! Yay! This is Rosalind. Yesterday when we were riding, she was tender, so we're going to shoot her today. We just had two owner surrenders come in. We are so excited to have them here. Now that we are um, officially opened up to the public, we have been taking owner surrenders through all of this COVID-19 pandemic. But um, now that we are officially open, we will probably see more owner surrenders coming in. This is Zakaro. He's a Lusitano, and we got him in as a surrender today. So our shelter's finally reopened for visitors by appointment, which we're super excited about. And one thing that we get to do now is we get to do auction rescues again. So I've started fundraising. This time I'm putting the USDA export uh, report on the bottom of the picture that I'm posting up on Facebook to fundraise. So people can see the, the USDA report and that these horses are being shipped to slaughter. I just want to thank everybody for their orders. Um, from our store, we've been having a lot come in. We've been sending quite a few out. When you order from our store, you're helping to support the horses here at our rescue. We are opening to the public and we are super excited about that. So horses are able to um, be able to go to their forever homes. And so we're just gonna put some more packages in the mail. So if you ordered something from us, just be expecting that soon. is going to his new home today. We're extremely excited for him. He's been going through a lot of rehab here at our facility. He was really sick at one point in time, but he has gotten better since then and the vet is really excited with all of his progress. He's going home to be a five-year-old's little pony, so we can't wait to see um, his transformation with them. You ready to go home? Meet your new little boy? Daddy, love you. Have fun. We're gonna miss him, but he's gonna have an amazing home. Callie's on the porch staying dry from all the rain. So we just had a load of feed come in from the co-op and we're gonna unload it. We haven't done an auction rescue since COVID-19, so our quarantine facility is a little overgrown, uh, but I just wanted to give you a tour so you can see where these horses are gonna be coming once they're rescued. This is one of the barns we have in quarantine, and this is where horses can come in, a large number of horses if it's raining. It's connected to pens out here. Um, so if it's raining, they can come in here. We keep the hay in here, so they're out of the sun. So this is another one of our barns up here in our quarantine facility. Um, in this barn, we have two quarantine stalls. Um, and a lot of times when we do auction rescues, we'll put all the little, little critters in one stall and then like a critical horse in another one. Um, the veterinarian's always here on site when the horses arrive. This beautiful 10 acre pasture is one of my favorite places in our quarantine facility. The horses absolutely love this pasture, and so when they are cleared by the vet, they can come out here and just enjoy being a horse. A lot of these horses we rescue have been pushed through auctions so much, they don't, they just need a vacation. So this is like the quarantine vacation filled, and they can just relax and be happy. There's a pond out here they can wade in and splash in, and so this is ultimately where we like to get these horses when they're in quarantine is, out in the pasture where they can graze and stand in the shade in the trees and enjoy the pond. So hopefully um, we'll have horses in this pasture soon enjoying a vacation after their big ordeal of being rescued out of the slaughter pipeline. It's gonna be a long night. Um, our rescue team is currently at the auction. Um, they're there rescuing horses that need our help tonight. I'm back here at the office just answering as many 
questions on Facebook, people's phone calls, emails, any questions that you guys may have. Donations are greatly appreciated to help the horses and now and the horses um, after they get here and in the future. Hey everyone, it's Tawny. We're at the auction. I just stepped out. We've rescued a few horses already and we're gonna be rescuing more horses uh, through the night. So keep those donations coming. They're helping horses not only tonight, but other horses that we'll be able to rescue in the future. Um, just keep us in your thoughts and prayers and we hope to rescue a lot more horses this evening. So keep an eye on our Facebook page. We'll keep you up to date as much as we possibly can, but it's gonna be a long night. The auction is finally over. Our rescue team has rescued many horses tonight. Keep an eye on our Facebook page. We will be posting updates tomorrow. We have the vet already lined up and the farrier already ready to be here as soon as the horses get here. We can't thank you guys enough and we are so grateful for each and every one of you. Hey everyone, we are at the auction getting these guys ready to go back to the shelter and they're love and love. This little guy is so sweet. Mm. Hey baby, we're gonna get your feet done, okay? Evening giving grace to summer fields and they So this horse we rescued last night, she is so ready to have her baby. We didn't know if she would uh, have it through the night. Um, we have a special trailer coming where she'll be able to ride all by herself and get her back to our shelter and get her checked out by the vet and make sure everything's gonna be okay. Poor girl, she doesn't even really wanna move. Come on, baby, you can do it, we can get you safe. putting hay down the trailer and she'll be riding all by herself because she's very, very pregnant. Look at your back, huh? And here are seven reasons I'm always laughing. Somehow it's the simple things from all backwards. You give me grace and everything, so much wonder. Something to believe in, I need you This poor guy is super skinny, coughing, has a bit of a snotty nose. And... Come on, baby, let's get you out of here. So this horse um, has a lot of issues. We've got a huge crust, just something nasty going on there. Um, we have lumps through the horse's body. Um, so, hopefully it's not cancer. There's some lumps in here. We have seen this type of thing with horses that have cancer and then people dump them at auction because they don't want to, they don't want to put any more money into them. So, we'll see what our veterinarian says. He's pretty stiff in his back end, could have some lameness. His feet are pretty long. Um, so, we're going to get him back and get him all the help he needs. This horse has an injury that makes me a little concerned because it appears that there could be a hole in the horse's head right here. And a lot of people that want to try to shoot their own horse or something, they don't realize that the brain is up here and they shoot the horse between the eyes and that's sinus cavity. So hopefully that horse has not, not had that happen. We won't know for sure until the veterinarian looks at it. But very sweet horse and happy we were able to save him. Runny nose, um, heard a cough a few times. It's breathing heavy. Um, she also looks like she might be pregnant. Never. We're starting to make friends with her so she's calming down. <clears throat> it's just sad, a lot of these horses are super scared. They just, they don't know what's happened. And they go from living one life they know to kind of just getting shoved around. and. It's a sweet little guy. He's young. He was ridden through the auction. Um, very sweet. I'm not seeing anything in particular with him. Um, other than he's just a young, sweet little appy. 
this horse is pretty nervous. Um, its back leg has a lot of issues. The good news is the vet will be there when the horses arrive at our shelter. So this horse is one, another one we got from the auction. She's super nervous. Um, she, about the only thing she really feels safe with is her friend. So we're gonna try to give her all the help she needs. She's not very happy. Well, that's it. We got all the horses intaked here at the auction done. We got their photos and now they're going to be transported back to our shelter. And then once they arrive at our shelter, they're going to be vaccinated, microchipped. They're each going to receive a veterinarian and farrier exam. And then they'll have 30 days of quarantine at our facility. We uh, place horses with adoption partners and also do adoption. We just got confirmation from our rescue team that they are on their way back here to the shelter. They do have a pregnant mare that they were able to rescue last night and she could have a baby at any moment. So what we're doing is we're just getting a stall ready with extra shavings for her so that she's very comfortable when she arrives. We're also filling up a nice clean water trough for her. What we are working on right now as our rescue team is on their way back from the auction is we're getting everything set up here. So we're making sure we have enough microchips and warmers and uh, vaccines and anything else that we could possibly need um, set up here on our table. So as soon as the horses arrive, we can unload them and get started right away. Thank you so much for transporting me. Right. I really appreciate well it. Work. Well, we got her here safely back at our shelter and so happy. So, once he's on there, come over here and film his weight. So, we're putting his ID tag on. Yeah, that's what my mom always does. Are we x raying this one or what are we doing? Yes. We're just taking x rays of this donkey. It uh, has pretty rough feet, and uh, the farrier is here to uh, trim them, but we want to make sure we know what we're trimming. So I'll get the x rays done and see what the plan is from there. So we did some x-rays on this donkey's feet. Luckily we found on the radiographs that we just have um, good looking toes, no rotation or sinking in the P3 or that can bone. Uh, we're gonna put them out um, under anesthesia and then we're gonna have our farrier um, just take off some of the overlong toes and make sure he can walk better. The flies have been eating her legs really bad and they're really raw, so I'm just putting fly spray on them to help stay, keep them away. <laughs> So in the right foot, um, right front foot and right back foot, we took radiographs again or x-rays again just to look at what they were doing inside the hoof. Um, and so we saw a lot of bony, or a lot of uh, overgrowth of the hoof wall, um, which the farrier fixed with our horse was down, with our donkey down. Um, but we saw some moth eaten and permeative lysis, which just means the bone is getting eaten away. Um, and some chips out of that P3 or that coffin bone at the bottom. Um, so we're gonna watch him carefully, but he seems to be walking around fine and he'll probably be much better with his hoof strands. What? 840. I think it's just a scratch on her head. It, it just goes down to the first layer of bone. Yeah. Yes. Well, there's two or three things you think about. It could be you, you see a hold here. Okay. See this lesion on the horse, and you get a little bit worried. Well, is that old scar okay. tissue? See this right? If you see it from a distance, you go, "Is that a proud flesh, or is that sarcoid, uh, or warts?" Usually, you just see warts on young animals, unless she's got some kind of immune system. And then, if you feel back, this back here feels lumpy and bumpy. You don't usually get that with a fungus. Uh, we've gotten some tissue samples to send, send to the state lab and see what it is. But we got a real bad feeling that it's probably cancer, especially since we have some other places up here around the neck. 
they're a little bit funny and on the other side, but uh, we're going to try to give her a chance and see if we can diagnose it. Wakey, wakey. Come on. What's everyone? It's the one we're x-raying. Okay. We're trying to determine if her feet are repairable, and she's got a little bit, she's club-footed, but we're, she's got some rotation too, like she's been foundered. So we're trying to figure out, we're gonna trim the feet and take another x-ray and see if we, see if there's a chance we could take care of it with some corrective shoes. Um, the star of this show is our farrier, Quint, but, so we're gonna see if he can do something for her, so. So we've done extensive x-rays and examinations and sadly this horse has a chronic lameness problem and so euthanasia is the kindest option that we're going to have to do but you know out of the 12 horses that we rescued three need humane euthanasia due to medical problems and when horses come here to our organization that's why we have a veterinarian team we're doing x-rays we have a farrier to determine what's the best option for each and every horse from a medical standpoint. Um, and that's what our intake process is about. And euthanasia is a hard thing to think about, but when we're doing large animal rescue in a large scale, it's something we have to, because if we don't rescue these horses, they will go on to slaughter. And that's a horrific ending for them. And we can give them a peaceful and kind, dignified ending here at our shelter with people around them that they know care about them. So it's a hard part of rescue, but it's the reality of rescue. Right, so the vet's gonna give her a full examination. Um, she has a cute little heart here on her side. And down here, her baby is gonna have um, options. There's chocolate and vanilla. <laughs> Not really, but they're, they're two different colors. She is not pregnant. Not, not. We just did the old fashioned rectal palpation to that much. Uh, arms not as long as he used to be, but I did not feel a hole. Went all the way down, swept as far as I could, even found the uterus up on the brim. So I did not feel a hole. She's got one in there. She is hiding it well. And I do not think it's tight. So no baby. No baby. I'm sorry. Wow. Well, no, it's not your fault. Um, I just would have thought for sure she was very pregnant. She can't go off of hmm, butters say? or bellies, I guess. No. <laughs> She's got milk if anybody needs any marriage. Do so you think she lost her baby? I don't know whether she lost her. She looks pretty healthy there. I didn't see any evidence of that from any discharge. Hmm. She may have had it weaned it early. Strange. Strange. Hmm. Well, I guess she will get everything like Normal. Normal. Okay. Well, no baby, everyone. Sometimes things just aren't the way they seem. We're all in shock that she's not pregnant. So so things, uh, things are the way they are, and <laughs> can't change it. So now we are delicing the horses. Um, most of the horses we get at auction have a lice problem. Um, so we just want to get them started off. We didn't lice them during the intake process because everyone was loving on them. Now they're going to get to be able to tr be churned out and we can um, we can give them their lice powder and turn them out in the pasture. Makes them look a little funny for their videos, but Sometimes you gotta do stuff that doesn't make you look the best. So we're about ready to release them out into the pasture and um, they, they're they gonna be fine out there. Every uh, auction when we, in the summertime, we release them into the pasture, we've never had a problem and they thoroughly enjoy it and love it. So it's kind of always a treat at the end of a big auction rescue to watch them go out and just be horses and enjoy themselves.
Today, I realized that our forms from our website were not going through to the email. So anytime somebody was sending us a web contact, it was going to a cloud somewhere and not to our email system so we could reply. So if you didn't get a response from us, I do apologize. Um, we're working on getting all those emails downloaded, those web contacts, and um, hopefully we'll get back to you. And again, I apologize. I just sometimes things happen on the internet world. So if you didn't hear from us, it wasn't that we were trying to ignore you. It just didn't come to us. So sorry. It's hay day here and we have our hay guy here unloading the hay. We get um, about 14 brown bales of hay every week. So the horses do eat it very quickly, but we're very thankful that our hay guy supplies us with as much hay that, as we need. She got banged up, uh, caught in something and made an abscess in her shoulder and her flank. So the vet's gonna take a look at it. The vet's just treating her. She's she's got an abscess puncture wound that got infected. So she's getting all the help she needs. Apollo here seems to be a nice horse. He seems to be moving pretty good, but we think he's got a little hitch here in his left shoulder. These are the horses from the last auction rescue that we did and they are out here in this pasture just enjoying themselves. They seem to be very happy and right now they're just eating their breakfast this morning and relaxing. So we're just so glad that they're doing well and they're enjoying themselves. I got a letter all the way from Australia. Um, my sister Tawny Fries, and her horse bless me to say, so I'm gonna open it and uh, see what was sent all the way from Australia to, to the United States and into Tennessee. Let's see, we got a cool card with zebras. Wow. As to everyone at Horse Blessing Man Society. Hope you are all coping with this pan panic and pandemic. This card might not even reach you until it is all over since I am sending it from Australia. I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of every equine you rescue and thanks for the YouTube videos that brighten my day. I now live in a small apartment so I live rigorously through your videos. Oh, that's, oh, so that's so sweet. sweet. I'm so happy she... I'll send her a little something back, a uh, postcard or something. Yeah, especially saying it got to us. Yeah, it got to us. It made watch. it. If you're watching the YouTube video and this is in here, it made it. So thank you so much. It really brightens our day. And um, I'm glad that our videos are brightening your day all the way in Australia. The horses are okay with water. So far, they all passed their test. We go down to the river where the Saint We to the river. We all go down to the river. So the UPS man just dropped off these packages. And these packages are full of donated items. We got some donations in the mail from Curious and we're super excited to open them up and see what they are. We're always excited when people send us donations to help the horses. So. And we got all kinds of stuff. They've got fly repellent and insect flea tick repellent, which in Tennessee, we get a lot of ticks on the horses we rescue from auctions and stuff, just because there's so many ticks in Tennessee. We get them on ourselves too, but <laughs> we won't go there. Um, yeah, so we're gonna just open them up. There's hook hair, we're just gonna Start seeing what we got. Check that out, fly spray. And check this out, this is the equine triage kit. We'll definitely use those. We'll put one in our auction rescue box. Oh, it's the ticket insect yes. repellent. 
That's that's gonna be very useful. Skin care and wash. That's what this is. It helps with uh, wounds and stuff. So we got ten bottles of that. Grab that side. Oh, we got it upside down. Whoops, upside down. Sorry. <laughs> So we are so excited. We've been waiting for this day for the last three years. We are finally getting our septic in for the bathroom um, for the office. So we won't have to use a porta potty anymore. We are so excited. But yeah, she's really calm. So what do you think? I think I'm gonna take her home. Well, I'm excited she'll have a good home. <laughs> So in this folder, we have her microchip information. So back here you have a thing of telling you why we microchip them and what you need to do with the microchip. Information about us. These are her current Coggins. the United States we're seeing a raise in, in violence and um, at our shelter we have seen an increase in threats against our our workers and um, our mission and one of the um, it's kind of hard to, because we're trying to rescue these horses we're trying to help them we're trying to keep them from going to slaughter and there are people out there on Facebook, we're seeing messages that um, we're horrible people, we should be slaughtered. Um, uh, another comment was, if I see him at auction, I don't mind wearing a, a striped suit, basically. So the last auction rescue we did, we did do it a little bit differently. We had multiple people at the auction to bid for us. Uh, Jason and I were at the auction. Um, a lot off and on, um, but we weren't the ones doing the bidding. We had a whole new bidding card, uh, just because we're trying to protect our staff and rescue these horses. Um, there is a, a group of people out there that are anti-euthanasia, and I would love it if horses never had to be euthanized, but every single week, hundreds of horses are being exported into Mexico for slaughter, and our mission is to rescue those horses and even if that is rescuing a horse that's in really bad condition and the kindest thing is to euthanize it, we will do that. Um, while we were at the last auction, we received a uh, phone messages, two phone messages, and I'm just going to play them um, because we're just going to start rescuing a little bit differently. We're going to be fundraising through the entire month and we're not going to be releasing the exact time we're going to auctions or what auctions we're going to because we've had people going and just bidding up against us trying to waste donation funds. I've seen posts that they're at auction right now using donated money. We're raising money to rescue these animals through donations. Yes, we're using donated money to rescue horses from auction. Um, and so we're going to be doing rescuing a little bit differently. I just ask that you please support our rescue fund um, because your support is going to help rescue animals and care for them and it's 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 so important so this is a message I'm gonna play it happened the, the last auction we were at and we had all these people like posting on our Facebook page where is the auction we want to know where it's at and we do I mean, we have no problem saying where they're at. We're not trying to hide, but we do have to protect our staff from people like this. This is the first message. This person left two messages here. So we're going to start with the first one. You people have got to realize that you're all over Facebook, that you are scamming, defrauding 
It's disgusting. You are vile, evil, rotten people. Do you know that people are working cases up against you? They're finding out about you. They're going to expose you. You are nothing but evil scum of the earth. You are horse murderers. You are horse flippers. You kill animals. You reach out to the public and you take their money and say you're saving animals. It's going to come down. It's going to come down on you because people are trying. People are doing it. Anderson Cooper, 60 Minutes, you're going to be exposed. You're going to be exposed. You're going to be another one of those people. Like, you know, you're disgusting, evil scums of the earth. Stop what you are doing, Tony and Jason. You know what? I hope to God that you realize God is watching you. That shit is coming your way, you pieces of shit. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. All this, COVID, all this, it's coming. You rotten people. You sow what you reap. You reap what you sow. Karma's a who comes around. Okay. And that wasn't enough for her, so... Uh, she left another message. Jason and Tony, you're evil scum. You're evil scum. How do you wake up every morning and look in the mirror? You're disgusting people at the expense of suffering animals, horses, cats, dogs. You don't care. Chickens, goats, whatever you can do. It's coming down. It's coming down. Your day is a coming. A day of reckoning is coming your way. I pray. I pray to the good Lord that you get what you deserve. Shut down. Shut down. You're rotten, evil scammers. Scammers, you belong in jail for the rest of your lives. You are nothing but low-life scum. <laughs> Horsemanship, love of animals, you have none of that. Your hearts are black, disgusting. I hope you rot in hell. I pray every day that your lives turn to sh. You wait. It's coming your way. God is watching you. You. Are evil, rotten scums of the earth. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. I hope you suffer. I hope you suffer immeasurably. I hope you suffer long and hard. I pray. Tawny and Jason... You wait. Your day is coming. Your day is coming. Hey, so that's a lot of hate uh, in those messages. But, you know, through the course of the years, we have been bashed. You know, fake newspaper articles made up about us. And at first, it really did affect me. Uh, now I've learned to separate it. And I, I do feel sorry for people that, you know, don't have something else to do in their lives. Um, but going forward, we're going to just continue fundraising through the month. And when we are at auctions, we'll try to put out a blast when we're at the auction. But I just ask that you please continue to support our rescue mission. You're not going to see the same type of, okay, it's a week before the auction, we're fundraising. At some point this month, we're going to be going to an auction and we need your support. And I just ask that you please donate to those fundraisers. And if you're contacted by somebody that, um, they may look fine on Facebook, but they're sending us messages like this. Uh, please send us, um, you know, print screenshots or anything like that. Uh, it'll help build a legal case against them because ultimately they are hurting horses and allowing more horses to be brutally killed in a slaughterhouse in Mexico.
We're protesting out here in Columbia, Tennessee, uh, the Big Lick, Tennessee Walking Horse, the show. It's um, where horses are really just tortured to get an artificial look where they are, they put chemicals on their pasterns and then a chain and when the horses are moving, they flinch when that chain hits them. It's a pain response reaction. Law enforcement has been circling. We're just trying to have a peaceful protest and be the voice for these horses that have none. We are working on adoption applications today. Since we were closed for the COVID-19 pandemic, we are now open by appointment only um, for adoptions. We have a lot of adoption applications here, as you can tell. Um, we're working on them as quickly as we can. What we find is that animal abuse and criminal activity go hand in hand. So we run a criminal background check to make sure that there's no criminal activity. So we do, um, photos of where the horse is going to be living and then we verify it with Google um, just to make sure everything looks looks good and adds up. Um, when we're doing these these adoption applications we're um, you know checking for photo verification and sometimes they've been you know purchased on the internet within the last five years and then we get to go and see the realtor pictures and make sure the realtor pictures match up with the pictures that we're seeing. Uh, that they're sending us and um, their barns and, and stuff. So it's kind of cool uh, photo verification of applications. That all matches up. That looks like a great they have place. A cute little place. They need some horses. Let's get them, get them approved and get them some horses. It's my most favorite thing to put on here is approved. And then call them up and get them an appointment. Another one approved. Yay! We're gonna have a lot of adoptions coming up here soon. So excited. Well, I'm going to call um, this lady. She was approved um, to adopt. We've been talking back and forth for a couple weeks now, so I'm super excited to let her know. So we're going to give her a call. Please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, this is Sarah with Horse Plus Human Society. If you could just give me a call back, I would greatly appreciate it. And you didn't tell her she's approved. I wanted to tell, I wanted to tell her and I want to hear her excitement. Okay. <laughs> so I'll tell her when she calls back. There you go. Sarah's Horse Plus Humane Society, can I help you? Hey, this is Kelsey. Hey. I'm Mr. Cole. So I have some exciting news. Um, All right. You have been approved to, to adopt. So we would like to set up. Oh <laughs> I know, it's so exciting. <laughs> So I want to set up an appointment for you to come out and meet Mika, so um, I don't know if you I would love to. So the farrier's out to do some trimming and chewing today on some of the horses. I noticed when out on the show rides, they were kind of tender-footed, and so hopefully by chewing them and trimming them, they'll be more comfortable. Gets to say it's too soon to be falling for you. Cause I've heard of things like this before, but didn't know the dream still came true. Who gets to say we're not right? That it won't work you and I. Cause as long as it's worth fighting for in our eyes, we should be fine. We just called the vet and asked him to come out. Arrow's got something going on with his eye. Usually he doesn't come out to the middle of the week, but um, we called him and he's on his way. Um, so we just want to make sure there's nothing serious going on with his eye. And we've got a couple other horses we're going to look at as well. Yeah, that's right. Just tell me. This morning, so that's why I told you guys. We are staining the eye looking for abrasions. 
to see if we scratched her eyelid. We scratched it some, but we want to see if there's an ulcer in it. Looks like he sort of mm -hmm. shaved off part of his eyelid. Yep. So he cut, he cut right on the, maybe just a little bit, but it's not deep. Hi guys, I'm Shelby and this is Ember. He's had a saddle on him a few times, but today will be the first time he'll be ridden. <laughs> He's very smart and wants to learn, but so we'll see how he responds. To be working on his first ride. walking some circles with someone on the ground so he has a little bit of security. Oh, I can't do handstands, it's too hard. <laughs> Overall, he was very calm and he was really good. I'm really happy with how relaxed he was and we have a lot to work on, but he's gonna be very good. This is Copper. We're just working on a refresher course, see how he's doing under saddle. A little bit of lunging, then I'll ride him a little bit. So I rode Copper for my first time, and he's doing really good. I would love to see him find a good home. He could work on leg cues and a little more fine tuning, but he has a very nice stop and is very responsive. What's happening here is we've taken old grain bags and we're making legs and a body of some sort to simulate somebody sitting in the saddle. This is Hobbs. Today we're just gonna do some extra desensitizing with our sand leg mannequin. Hobbs is a four-year-old saddle horse. And he'll be looking for his home soon. This is Godiva. She's three years old. She's a Tennessee walker, and today we're working on the saddle and desensitizing. This is Sadie. Today we're going to be working on desensitization, so right now we're just giving her a good brush down. We currently have a lot of horses here at our shelter on grain every day, so we ask that you please make a donation towards our grain fund. We have the grain here that we're currently unloading, all hands on deck as we have a lot of it to unload, but we are excited to keep being able to help these horses in need. This is Copper, he's a six-year-old gilding and we're doing his evaluation ride today.
how he did with the trailer. He even backed out. So these horses have been in the pasture for three weeks and right now we're just taking pictures of them and then we're gonna worm them and get their weight. Yummy, yummy. You know, it actually looks like it's getting better because it's growing hair through here. This was all wrong. We can go with no. This is Sunflower behind me, and she has gained 89 pounds in the last three weeks. So now that they've all been weighed, we know uh, how much weight they've all gained collectively. So. When they came in, their combined weight was 6,697 pounds, and now we're at 7,074 pounds. So they're gaining weight. Um, some of them nearly gained 100 pounds in like three weeks. So we're super excited about their progress. And the next step for them will just be to finish out their quarantine and then be placed in our adoption program and evaluated and find their new homes. So they're doing great. I'm gonna go and check and see how much water is in here. They're filling it up so that it doesn't, um, so it doesn't uh, float again because it's about to rain. So it's almost there. This is where it's filling up at. So. <laughs> Jesse, what are you doing? It's so golden, Nina. You better get out of there. in the sewer tank. I had to go swimming. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you drag me straight out? You're like, I can try. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Did you uh, enjoy your swim? Yeah, it's epic. Everyone should try a swim in the cemetery. <laughs> this is Venus. She's 23 years old. Um, today we're doing the evaluation on her. Jesse did the first part of the evaluation on um, the groundwork and stuff, and I'm going to be doing the writing part. So she is gated, she needs some work on stopping, but she really likes to go and she's really fun to ride. We're going today to go film an adoption update video and uh, it's really cool. This horse has just had such an amazing transformation and we're going to go film that and uh, you all will be able to see that later. Be what you want to be. Do what you wanna do And if it sets you free Believe in only you All right, so we did the filming uh, with Cooper. He's an amazing horse. It was, it was just so awesome to see him and know where he came from and just, he's amazing. And you're gonna love watching that episode. Uh, now we're just um, over by the auction and we're waiting for it to start, uh, so we'll rescue some horses. So hopefully we're very successful tonight and we just um, we just never know how an auction rescue is going to go, so hopefully it goes well. Alright, we're pulling into the auction. We're going to stay out here in the truck and fundraise and Jason's going to go check out the horses. Looks like a busy one. Yeah, it does look busy. A $100 bill, one to quarter, one to quarter, high, one to high, 75, two, 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 quarter, 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 89, five, half, two, two, 75, nine, eight, two, four. We were able to get seven horses tonight and I'm so excited. Thank you all so much for your support that made this possible and I'm just gonna go check on them all and make sure they're gonna be okay. We're trying to get these horses home, back to the shelter tonight. 
and we're having trouble because the trailer trailer light issues. Of course. Trailer light issues. You're gonna be all right, all right. We're gonna get you back. You don't have to be scared. Come on, babies. Come on out. Come on. I oh, know you're scared. It's okay. You're all right. exactly sure even what time it is but um they're back safe and sound at our shelter typically we spend the night over there and then we bring them back but um tonight we we just brought them back to the shelter and i'm happy they're here and they're safe and um it's just a long day but i'm i'm just so thankful for everyone's support that made this rescue possible and tomorrow we'll have our intake team and the veterinarian here to Give them everything they need. So I was just looking here, and this horse, um, they said he was a gelding, but he is not, and he wasn't acting like a stallion at all, so, um. So this guy we got from the auction last night, he, we didn't know it at the time, but he's a stallion. He's young, um, but just an awesome horse. He did great for his microchipping and his vaccines and worming. Um, we're super, super proud of this boy. He's gonna make somebody an awesome horse. So this horse is 770 pounds. We take their weight on intake and then we weigh them again uh, two weeks so we can monitor how they're doing and they're gaining weight or um, maybe they're, they need their teeth bloated or something, so. Wow, this horse is microchipped. It's through Avid, which is a microchip company that does a lot of microchipping on horses. So. It's possible we might be able to reunite this horse with her owner if she was stolen or something. We rarely find horses from auctions with microchips, and um, we'll have to see who she is. How tall is she? 14-1. I'm just checking her Coggins. A lot of times we get horses from auctions and their Coggins do not match them. This Coggins was from back in March, and the markings do not match her, so she needs Coggins. Good girl. We also give them some electrolyte gel just because they've been through so much. Coggins. Just because it has microchip. 16.5. This is a standard bread. So this is a, a, a buggy horse uh, standard bread. Um, a lot of times these buggy horses are just used until they're completely worn down. Um, we were able to look up his, his uh, brand here and he was originally born in Pennsylvania and there's uh, lots of Pennsylvania Amish horses um, that they use them really hard and then they'll, you know, some people say that they've seen them take them to the auction when they're used up, buy another one, hook them up and, and drive them home. Um, so if we look back here at his back pasture and it's completely shot, um, it's extremely swollen and lumpy. Um, he's experiencing a lot of pain from that. And then also his entire front leg up here is, is extremely swollen and, and stiff, especially in the joint. Um, when we rescued him at the auction, we, we didn't know, we knew he needed help and you know, we'll see what our vet says, but um, I'm just thankful he's here and not on his way to Mexico. A lot of horses we get from auction are extremely dehydrated and how we can tell is we just pull up the skin like this and then when it just kind of sits there, they're dehydrated. This horse um, has an injury above its eye and that's quite common when um, we get horses from auctions that they're, they're just dinged up, they've been in different areas they don't know and banged around, so 
It's good when they get to be here and just calm down and be a, a horse for a while. It's good with shot. Okay, just spit out most of its warmer, so it's good enough. Okay, 880 pounds. Needs his feet done. Yep, Hoggins match. Just Another one. Yep. Another one. Uh -huh. Two horses in this auction recipe so far that have had microchips. And they're from Avid, so we'll have to figure out who they're registered to. We don't have to microchip our fishies. Do you have a dewormer? No. This is the stallion. He's going to be gilded today. a lot of rain rot and if I kind of just move my hand back and forth the hair is just falling out so we're putting ointment on that to help with that it could be um that this horse's top line could almost be bald by the end of this before the hair can start growing back in because it's just falling out all over the place did y'all give any antibiotics yes Sounds good. She is microchipped. She is microchipped. She's microchipped. Yeah, we have two horses that were microchipped with Abbott. So we're just putting lice powder on them? Yeah, that's what I thought. It was 17, 18. Oh, yeah. Sarah's trying to fix me. She's a little messed up today. He's got lots of. So unfortunately, there's nothing we're gonna be able to do with for him other than the last act of kindness. He's his legs are just shot, and so the kindest thing we can do is is put him to sleep. So he's enjoying his last bucket of grain. So we're super excited because the panels came in this morning. These panels we use to replace our old fencing. Our fencing has been up for years, and. We desperately needed this for my birthday back in May. We did a fundraiser and the panels were in back order and they finally arrived today. And it's Sarah's birthday. So it's very appropriate. From birthday to birthday, we get our panels. So we're super excited. going to get busy and start putting them up. Um, our fencing is really old. It desperately needed replaced and today's the day we can start. So we're super excited. We should roll that one down from the top. Gotta get the donkeys out first. If the donkeys will come out, come on. Come on. I'm not a million more Come on, Jack. Come here, buddy. Come on, buddy. Whoa. Alright, here. Here you go. You want the rest of it? Come on, Jack. Yeah, okay. 
Well, we can definitely get that done. This is Aphrodite. She's 12 years old and she's learning to be okay with human interaction. She's got a story in her life we all would like to know, but we're working past all the fear. This is Rosebud. She's about two years old and this is um, one of her first rides, but not quite. Um, but she's doing really well. She's really calm and she has a lot to learn, but she has a lot of potential. We just got a special delivery of 56 square bales. I Keep watching you when you leave. Something Keep hoping you feel this too. Hold on and on and on and on. Hoping I can get to know you better. Living in sweet suburbia. Some fun is all we want. Mm. Two kids come alive in a night run. I'll be the girl next door. You be my summer crush. We're heading out to go pick up some horses and a little donkey from a lady who has come on hard times and she would like them to be well taken care of before she gets to the point where she knows she can't take care of them anymore. Okay, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Thank you. Well, they're all loaded up and we're going to be taking them back to the shelter. It's about an hour and a half drive, so we'll get there soon. We are back at the shelter and just getting them unloaded. Right now what I'm doing is I'm pulling up vaccines. We're giving them all of their vaccines, their warmers, their tags, and everything that they need um, before we turn them out. stallion and we're putting them in the stalls so the vet can gel them easier. COVID-19 continues to make its way into our lives. We've been trying to be very careful at our shelter uh, by limiting visitors. All adoption appointments have to be approved and then limiting the amount of people coming into our facility. All in, you know, just a preventative measure of keeping COVID-19 out of our facility. And this week we found out that somebody that's very closely connected to our veterinarian office has been tested positive for COVID-19. So right now we're not doing vet visits, our weekly vet rounds or vet calls because unless an emergency pops up, um, the last thing that we need to have happen here is one of our staff to, to get it. Um, so we're just going to continue to be very careful and our thoughts and prayers are with the person uh, that's connected to our vet office and um, hopefully soon they will recover and nobody else will get it. So just keep our fingers crossed at this point and see what happens. We're here at Lowe's and we're gonna be shopping for toilet stuff for in the office and get the water running in the office. We're so excited. Good to cancel the porta potty and uh, yeah, be functional in our bathroom. So it's very good. So we gotta get doors for the bathrooms. That's kind of important. Well, we're getting one door at a discount because it's a little damaged, but we can fix it. So save money when we can. Now we're looking at plumbing. Okay, there's a lot of plumbing parts, so I'm gonna go see what toilets we can find and try to find the cheapest ones that work functionally. Lots of choices. All right, getting the bathroom toilets on there. It's got the sink. 
so many fun boxes. All right, we got enough stuff and we are headed out to check out. All right, we made our purchases. Now we've got to load the door that we got discounted because it's damaged, it's a little damaged, but that's okay. Uh, it'll be a little bit harder to load, I think. Jason is so strong. That's one that made me think. Oh. Alright, it's all loaded up, strapped down, and ready to go. No. Oh, what are you doing? Were we not doing that interview? Step down. Just step. There you go, you got it. Oh, no. Happy birthday. You can't take no, it don't, off. Don't take it off. <laughs> Sarah's birthday today, and Sarah works super, super hard in the office, and it's not always a stress-free job, so it's her birthday today, and we are taking her away to go have some fun, so adios. What you got there, Sarah? I've got the toilet box. And what does that mean? Toilet. What does that mean, Sarah? Where'd you go? What does that mean? <laughs> that means we finally have a working toilet. Yay! <laughs> so today we're working with Cowper just a little bit. <laughs> He's being really silly behind you. <laughs> he really is being silly. I won't leave your side for anything. What would be the point? I'm with you through and through. What I was looking for was everything. And everything I found. Honey, I found it on you. You're the song I want to sing. You're the story I want to tell. You're the reason I believe that honey love is a ringing bell. Thunder and Dakota have an adoption appointment today. They're amazing horses, but if they get adopted, we're really going to miss them. They've been together for a really long time, so we hope they can get adopted at the same home. So, but they have, they have an amazing home, so they'll be sure it's a This one is Thunder, so this is okay. just all of the information about us that's here. And then they, he is microchip, they're both microchips. Okay. 
Um, there's information back here that tells you why we microchip them and what you need to do with the microchip. Okay. You need to put the microchip in your name. Yep. Because if they get lost or stolen, they can come back. They can they come back. Fine. And then Dakota has the same. Okay. Yeah, Dakota. Um, microchip, Hoggins, his was done the same day. Okay. And then what we need to do now is get adopting, adoption pictures. Okay. Okay. Dakota. We're super excited. Thunder and Dakota have gotten adopted together and they'll be leaving on Monday. Y'all, if this rain don't stop, we're gonna have to start building the barns on stilts. Like there's so much rain out there. We are evaluating Luna right now, so we're just filling out her evaluation form. So Luna is green under saddle, but she's doing really good for her evaluation. She stops, she backs up, and she turns really well. I'm really happy with her. The horses that came in from the previous auction that we went to in June, the farrier wasn't able to be here that day to get their feet done, so they're getting their feet done, and we know that it will make them feel so much better. And Parsi is also getting his feet done as well. well I have one the Oh, there you go. So Parsi's been part of our organization for almost a decade, or a decade. Um, he's a great guy. I was at an auction, he was just a day old, and he went down to five dollars, and I was like, oh, so. <clears throat> put my hand up and here he is, like a decade later. He's done a lot of great things with our organization, fundraising, um, expos, shows. Um, Parsi's just an extraordinary guy. this guy in a hoarding case and he was just so cute we're like this would be the perfect friend for Parsi because we don't necessarily want another huge ginormous <clears throat> big guy here huh but this little guy was just perfect and so this is the announcement that he is going to stay and be a resident here at Horse Plus he likes personal space I'm surprised he's let me touch him um anyways so Parsi and Bruno, now best friends, together forever. Um, I think he's gonna make a great little addition resident to our, our facility, and he makes everyone smile when they see him. So we need lots of smiles here. And so Parsi and Bruno, it's no longer Parsi, it's Parsi and Bruno. So you'll see them throughout the years to come. Get used to civilized life. I know that feels good. I know it feels good for parts. It feels good for you. See? <laughs> See? Here you go, Bruno. If Parsi can handle it, you can handle it. One reason we like to have Parsi and also now Bruno around is because when we put them in different pastures, they eat different stuff the horses don't eat, they help with parasites. Um, so it's great to have a, a variety of animals um, in the pastures because it's the way it's supposed to be. The 
horses aren't very keen about the uh, cows, but it does help them get desensitized to them. So that's good. Come on, guys, we're gonna take you to the pond. Come on. Come on, you're so lazy. Come on. Percy's never been in a pond. I think he's been in a pond, but it's been a while, so I try to encourage him. Come on. Oh, today. feel really good for him, but he has other ideas and I want to keep on my toes. All right, you go hang out with Bruno. Oh, <clears throat> Percy and Bruno left me here. I'm, I was trying to put my foot in the water to clean off the mud. I don't really like mud too much. And I was standing on one foot and I lost my balance. And now my sock's muddy. I still have one ugh, clean sock. I'm gonna try to see if I can salvage myself a little bit. Okay, wash foot. Whoa, lots of happy little fish here. Oh, I might be very muddy by the time this is over. Ugh. All I wanted was Parsi to enjoy the water. Okay, clean foot, clean sock. When we moved from California to Tennessee, one of the reasons we moved to Tennessee is there's not a lot of animal services. Um, but in some ways, Tennessee is so far beyond what other states are when it comes to animal abuse and conviction. Um, one of the things, amazing things that Tennessee has is an actual database where convicted animal abusers are on the database and the public can access that. We access it when we're doing our adoption applications just to make sure that nobody is wanting to adopt a horse that's on this database. And then Tennessee just passed that if somebody's been convicted of animal abuse, they can't own pets again in the future. So it makes it so easy for us as animal rescuers and adoption agencies. If somebody's wanting to adopt, we're able to access this database say, oh, this person's already convicted for animal abuse, they can't adopt, and there's laws here in Tennessee to back that up. So it's it's great um, that, you know, this database is out there and we use it definitely. Chip was surrendered today. He is a 17-year-old Tennessee walking horse. He has COPD, so we're going to see what the vet has to say. So today we have an adoption appointment for Cookie and Rain, so we're gonna catch them and give them baths and get them ready. Take a look at where you've been and how you've come so far. No matter where you find yourself, you're always where you are. Go anywhere you go, do anything you do, I'll be with you. This is Rain, and we're gonna go on a quick ride, and then she has an adoption appointment. Take an hour, take another year. 
Start again, I'll keep going, I'll always be right here. Feel anything you feel, hear anything you hear, you'll never disappear. We just got back from our trail ride with Cookie and Rain, and they both did really well. They went everywhere we asked them to, and we had fun exploring. Oh man, Cookie and Rain's adoption appointment is going to have to be rescheduled. I have to let Shelby and Jesse know. We're happy that um, they're wanting to reschedule their appointment because we believe that this is going to be an amazing home for them. So we can't wait until they are able to come out and meet them. We're taking Bailey and Amora over to our rehab pasture. They're a little on the skinnier side and we think that it will be really good for them. So this horse came to us um, as an owner surrender. They found her in a field and uh, were able to track down the owner and um, saw that she was skinny and brought her to us for help. Our vets looked at her and she just needs to eat. So she's coming out here to the pasture and she can just Enjoy eating 24 seven and, and being a horse. This beautiful girl is more. Um, she's looking so much better than when she first came. She was super skinny. So the vet says that she really just needs muscle buildup and um, we're hoping she can just be out here running around with the other horses and build up that muscle tone and she's still underweight. So gaining that extra weight and muscle tone and we're just super happy she can be out here. Gray came to us uh, from a hoarding well, animal cruelty case. And um, this was almost a long, long time ago. <laughs> we were still in California then, and um, he's, he was adopted out. He doesn't want to hang out with me. He was adopted out, and then after he was adopted, I found out that he had a problem with his hip. And so he was returned, and he's a resident. And then Angel, she was just a few months old dumped in an auction, completely blind. Just this adorable little baby horse that was just thrown away like trash. And so we rescued her and she's been a resident ever since. And um, Gray and Angel are, are great together. Um, Gray's adopter still sponsors him. So they get to live in this beautiful pasture. Um, Angel doesn't do real well with a lot of action going on because she's blind. Hi Angel, hello Angel. Hi, Angel. Like a good girl. But um, here in this pasture, it's quiet. We'll bring other horses over to this pasture and graze her seeing eye companion and they do really well together. Today, I'm in our garage, maintenance garage, and our horse trailers are getting some TLC. They're used a lot for moving hundreds and hundreds of horses. Uh, their 24 foot trailer has moved thousands of horses. And today they're getting a little welding done. Uh, they're aluminum, so we had to have this special aluminum welder come in and just get them in tip-top shape so they can continue doing what we we need them to do. So it's uh, it's a process, lots of welding, um, and uh, making sure all the hinges and doors and everything is working the way it should. All right, so what I just did here is I took and I put some weld on the top and the bottom and the back side of these hinges to keep them from, from moving and pivoting where this one bolt just holds it in the center. This trailer's got so much use on it that it has done flex these plates out and it just kind of pivots on this mounting bolt that it originally came with. So I just put a little secure here on the top, the bottom, and the back side there to keep that from, from moving. So I'm super excited because this door actually closes before I take two people and we hoist it up and lift it and now it works. So yay for the welder for fixing this. What we're doing is we're putting a brace on the trailer because um, we walk on there. Part of it got wrapped around a tree when we were in a really tight spot. But um, now we're getting a brace under there so we can still walk on it and it'll be safe. Hold a horse now. <laughs> so a lot of people wonder what type of fly control we use here and we have tried so many different uh, things through the years 
But um, we started using fly predators when we were at our shelter in California and it worked really well. And so we have continued that back here. Um, and a lot of people don't know what fly predators are. Um, so I thought I would open up the shipment. So we get a subscription through the summer and um, we'll talk all about them. But um, this is what they are. These little bugs go around and they eat the fly larva. And so we sprinkle them out through the pastures, manure piles. Um, and they help tremendously. If you go out around our round pens, you're not just bombarded with flies. Um, we're thoroughly impressed with these guys. We still fly spray our horses and stuff when we're working with them. And there's flies here and there in the barn, but it's nothing, um, nothing compared to what it would be without these little guys. So, um, we definitely recommend them. It's folding fly predators and um, look them up if you're wanting a, a solution to your fly problem, because um, they do work. A lot of times you see stuff online and you're like, yeah, I don't know if they work. Um, and they're not paying us <laughs> or sponsoring us to put this in our video. It's just, we are so impressed with their fry. I mean, we'd love for them to sponsor us. So don't, don't take me wrong here, but um, we're just putting this in this episode because they do work and um, if they can make your horse's lives a little bit better, you might want to check them out because nobody likes flies buzzing around their face. I have the list of horses that need to be seen by the vet, so I just mark them off as we catch them and put them in the barn. There's a tendon that goes from the prepubic bone that goes all the way up. Um, and sometimes your brood mares and stuff, they, the baby's too big or this and that. And while they go in, uh, in labor, they can rupture that tendon. Okay. And everything drops down. And if she is rebred, the baby can never get up to birthing position. But it is kind of painful. You know, bathe him once, see if you see any spread. I mean, take pictures of him. Okay. And then like in a week, you know, take another picture of them, compare them and see if you got any spread. If it hasn't spread, then bathe them again. Mm -hmm. We know that we're maybe at least be treating it at that point. Okay. If it continues to get bigger, let me know and we'll probably, I guess we can do a skin scrape or something at that yeah. point. Okay. What's that, Murphy? 191. So we're pretty sure he has COPD, so we're just having him checked by the vet. We're not sure if there's anything that we can do for him, but we're going to see. So Chip's been evaluated by the vet and he is suffering. I mean, if we just lead him a little bit, you can hear him struggling to breathe. It would be as if an asthma patient didn't have an inhaler and was struggling. And, um, so the kindest thing to do just to relieve his suffering is humane euthanasia. It's a hard part of what our organization does, but it's an important part because it gives animals like him a safe place and they can be evaluated by a veterinarian and determine the best decision. But I'm sorry. This is Hendrix and I just caught him and we're going to do his Coggins and gilding. He's 17 months old. So the vet was out today and we've done several Coggins and a few health checks and everyone's doing well. Hey, Tawny. Mm-hmm. You got packages now. Oh, fine. You want me to open it for you? Sure. Chico, California. Ah, that's my old stomping grounds. I live up in the mountains above Chico. Cool. And I knew um, I got some masks here. Wow. Let's see what this is. That. Check this 
out. Somebody made some crinkle mask. That's a chicken mask. How cute. Handmade, handsome mask. Wow. How nice. Masks that are very cute, handmade masks. Okay, what's the letter say? She said, Thank you for all of your hard work you're doing to rescue horses from slaughter and other bad situations. I am sending you five homemade face masks to help you stay safe when you are rescuing horses from Isaiah. She is an 11 year old that is in sixth grade and she made these herself. It's pretty cool. Wow. Well, Zaya, thank you so much. I, I think this chicken one's my favorite. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I grew up right around Chico. I remember Chico before there was a Walmart there. So definitely know Chico. And um, thank you so much for, for making these. These are awesome and we'll definitely use them. So thank you so much. Yep, Parsi and Bruno hanging out together. Laying in the mud, just just having a foot bath. Bruno's chewing his cud. I think Bruno has taught Parsi a lot of cow stuff. Like before, Parsi wouldn't go hang out in water like this. Stretch your legs in. No, 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 not out, out, in. I've seen him paw in the dirt and stuff. Since Parsi grew up around humans and horses, he uh. He didn't really have a cow educator to teach him how to be a, a proper bovine citizen. So now he's got Bruno and he's learning learning to do some cow stuff. So it's kind of cool to watch. So we are Falcon. Um, we have some older horses on the. Uh property that uh, it's better to soak it so they can eat it a little easier. Now I'm getting ready to mix the uh, grain in with the uh, soaked alfalfa. That way it kind of, um, they don't just eat the grain and then leave the alfalfa. This is Dahlia. She came um, through the May auction she gets um, some grain every morning. She still needs a little bit more weight, um, but she's doing really well. So. We're just out um, feeding this morning. We have several of the horses on grain. We just want to make sure that their weight stays up the way that it needs to be. Travis is feeding Molasses and Kane and Addie right now. Um, molasses is Kane's mommy. Um, we like to keep them on grain whenever they're nursing. Um, it helps keep their weight up. So this is Maisie. She came to us in November. I don't know, some of you guys may remember when we got the um, load of horses in on the semi truck. Um, this is one of them, um, Maisie, and she's done really, really well. We have a few others here as well, and they're all doing well. She's finally able to eat grain out of a bucket while you're holding it, so that is a big improvement. So we are very happy with her and her progress. These are the horses from the June auction that we had a few weeks ago. We like to just come out and just hang out with them. They get used to us um, and we can just watch them and see what their personalities are. So before they come out of quarantine that they're already used to us. Adopting horses out here at our facility is something that we do a lot of every single year. Hundreds of adoptions. This year due to COVID-19 though, it's changed how we handle adoptions and letting the public into our facility. So for months now, we've been trying to figure out how to do one of our big adoption events and we're getting it ironed out. And I think we're gonna see a lot of adoptions from it. It's just, we wanna make sure it's done right. And we wanna make sure that it's safe uh, because COVID-19 is a true threat. Every couple of weeks, we get a, pal a couple pallets of grain in uh, for the horses. We just got done um, loading this, these two pallets. We rescued Sancho last November 
Uh, he was one of the horses that was on the slaughter truck. We rescued an entire slaughter truck load of horses and he was one of those horses off that truck. Uh, he came to us as a mature stallion. Um, we were able to have him gelded and uh, get him rehabbed and then uh, his training started. I'm super happy to be a part of Sancho's journey. He's come a long ways from being unhandled to his first ride out on the trails today. He did super good. We walked and trotted. He never spooked. And you can't be a part of the whole journey all the time, but I'm happy he's got a good foundation to go to a new home. Take me back to another sunrise Back when all I ever needed was by my side You're a star brighter than Venus, I'm your satellite Whenever I'm with you Cause we go back in time to thrills I'm missing All the things I wish we did All I know is that I need somebody like you Cause I can't waste another night sitting here Sancho has been adopted. We're pretty excited for him. He's on his way to his new home. They will be starting with a trainer soon. When we got Apollo, because he's a Lusitano, we wanted to make sure that we got him the right home that could understand his training and everything about him and his breed. Uh, so we worked really hard going through different um, adoption applications and we finally found the right home for him and they have an adoption appointment. They'll be coming out to look at him. We have some people here to look at Apollo and Sadie. Fine if he was just a pasture pet. He, like, he loves him. if you go out there and give him attention and really? brush him and oh. he'll just sit there and his eyes will go sleep. Oh, that's what I love this <laughs> And I guess he was trained that, like, means treats. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Are you the boss? No, she's not. Awesome. Here's your butt on it. Here's your butt. After going through all of the adoption applications that came through for Apollo and Sadie, we have um, found an amazing home for them. So we are super excited for them and their new family, and we can't wait to watch their progress. <laughs> So we're having to fill out her adoption form. Okay. So let's see. You want to just put your information, and then when you get to the horse's information, I'll put that in. Back. Have a good ride to your home, and they can take a nap there. Oh, she worked up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Information about us. This is all information about her. So this is her microchip. Um, she is microchip. So back here has a paper that explains okay. why we microchip them and what you need to do with it. So you need to put her in your name. Mm -hmm. If she gets lost or stolen or something, 
and they, the, somebody actually takes you to that and scans her, then they can get a hold of you. If okay. not, they'll get a hold of us. Okay. We're really excited and happy for the home Dahlia found, and they're gonna make a great team. So we got, um, last November, we got a load of uh, 40, over 40 um, horses off of a semi-truck, and slaughter truck, and um, she was one of them. Um, we got Arabian crosses, we got Rocky Mountain crosses. They were just, we think a back bar, backyard breeder, we're really so not think sure. So you Rocky and Arabian mix? Um, she, there's very, very well that she could be. We um, love Arabian. Yeah, there's her favorite. So, we love, and when we love Rocky Arabian mix, like that. Yeah, so we had a lot of, a lot of Rocky Mountains, a lot of Arabians. More Arabians than Rocky Mountains, but. So we've had her since November. She was wild when we got her. All of 40 something of them were wild when we got them. So she has been halter trained since then, that's it. Cause she's only a year. Right, yeah. Our adopters wanted to see some other horses. So this is Rosebud and this is Rosalind. They're very sensitive and to their uh, person. Yeah. They've done a lot of like groundwork oh, obstacles right, and right, stuff with right, her. Right. So we're super excited that our adopters have chosen to adopt Luna and Chesney and Rosebud. This is the first right of refusal acknowledgement. So, well, you're gonna sign one for each of them, but right. first right of refusal. So if you're not able to keep either of them, we ask that you please bring them back. You do understand we do encourage you to quarantine for at least 30 days. So I've been working on getting the information down for the adoption event. Um, so I have that we're waiving all adoption fees uh, July 26th through the 30th. All the horses will be microchip vaccinated, have current negative coggins. We're gonna take the first 50 adoption applications that are approved. So it'll be Sunday through Thursday, we'll be taking these appointments. So if they get their complete adoption application in, and everything's good, then they would be first in line. If you don't get here at your time, then you would say roll mm -hmm. over. Yeah, because we can't make sure it's the right match if they show up half an hour into their appointment. Okay. Um, so that's when we're emailing them and talking to them, and even like a phone call, hey, this is your appointment time, be 15 minutes early. That way we can get the COVID-19 health screen done. We can get the liability signed and filming release because they're going to be in this this TV show, so um, they're going to need to get all that done. We can do 10 adoption appointments a day. Okay. And they can take up to two horses. I mean, they're, they're coming in, they're approved. So technically we could we can have like 20 horses leaving Sunday. So I'll be making the event page for this. And then we want to get all the horses up there as much as we can with the descriptions about them. Okay. Wow. We have a lot of adoption application requests coming in. We are super excited about this event. So this morning we had a crazy storm come through and it flooded our attack room and our fields were basically almost like lakes and our driveway uh, trying to cross it. Uh, the water was up to my ankles. It was a crazy storm with a lot of rain. That's a good way to do it. I figure, you know, I've got enough minis. <laughs> yeah. We just got indoor plumbing the bowel two weeks ago. Oh, we're girl. very happy. <laughs> so this is all for you. Iris was just adopted. We are so excited for her and her new family. The lady has been following her since the night that she was at the auction. And we've been talking back and forth all throughout her quarantine. 
and she contacted me as soon as she got out and we set up an appointment and we were so happy that they're a wonderful fit. Iris still needs to finish out her rehab. She's still a little bit more on the skinnier side, but the lady is so thrilled to be able to do that with her. Well, she don't weigh a lot. Now you can open them. Your girlfriend got kicked, stepped on by a horse after she fell off. Ow. Doesn't look too good. Ouch. So that one's lost her heart. And this is the hoof print where the horse stepped on her. Mm -hmm. We had to clean her up before we told you about it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need something. Because they're going to really not be nice to you as nice as I'm being. Here. Your girlfriend got kicked, stepped on by a horse after she fell off. Ow. So as you all saw in the last video, I fell off the horse, I had my helmet on, um, I got stepped on, it looks a lot better now. Um, still nice bruise on this side, still a little scraped, and this kind of peeled up a little bit, but it's looking better, it's just still a little sore. Sometimes hard to move things. This is the helmet I was wearing when I fell off. Um, the horse place may say we are required to wear helmets whenever we get on a horse. Um, so it looks like it's cracked in a few places. You can kind of see in there. Um, it's bashed up. And on the back, there's kind of dents in it and places where the rocks would have really hurt me more than it did. And so definitely this helmet cannot be used again, but it was a lifesaver for me. The June auction horses are ready to come out of quarantine and part of coming out of quarantine is getting them dewormed again and seeing if they've gained any weight. So we're going to put them on the scale. This. You wanna write it down? 826. 826. Okay, so we're gonna put it on the scale. Such a champ. Such a champ. Oh, good job. We're just evaluating the auction horses today from June. This is May. She's pretty much unhandled. And Jessie is just working with her right now. When we rescued the century, we thought she was really pregnant and it come to find out she wasn't. And she kind of surprised all of us, but she still looks very pregnant. Uh, she still is bagged up, so we don't know what's going on with her. We had her checked um, at the last vet visit, and we're gonna have her checked again because we just we don't know what's going on with her, and we want to make sure she's okay. How long y'all had? She came in by May, and she looked just like this. Like she looked. I mean, she's gained weight, but. Yeah. Got I mean, even if she had weaned a baby, she should be over that now, but it looks, feels like she may have an infection or something in years and as she's gotten bred since then, but it does not feel like a pregnancy. So if you look at this horse, it looks like her belly's really hanging down, and it looks like she may still have some milk, like she could be expecting a baby, but she does not have one in there. It's a popping shoulder. That's all I have. So this is Sunny here and when I did her evaluation her shoulder was sore so we're going to put her on Butte for a week. Kane was born here and it's his big day. He's going to be gilded. Sorry baby. So Kane's just had all of his sleepy juice and he is going to be uh, laying down here shortly and get his gelding operation. How did you guys find out about Horse Plus? I did a search for horse rescues in Middle Tennessee, and I also looked on Pet Finder. And um, I looked at several different rescues, and I liked the fact that Horse Plus was centrally located and also had a grading criteria to 
um, give an idea of where the horses were in their temperament and training. And I just felt really secure from reading about them that coming here, I could trust what uh, the trainers would tell me. We came to look at Rosalind, a standard bred, and Copper, who is um, an unknown gated horse. They were all beautiful and um, we were drawn to them with their pictures on the website. But then we met Hobbs, I think it was, who isn't the most uh, glamorous uh, picture horse, but he seems to have an excellent personality and we were really interested in him also. And how has your experience been so far? Really good. I've been very pleased. I feel, I feel like whether we find a horse here or not, it will be a team effort and that everybody will work together to help us uh, figure out if it's going to be a good match or not. And you guys are going to think about it? We are because you don't make such an important decision on impulse. So we'll think about it, but I, I don't think we'll think too long before we figure out if we can add one of these guys to our family. So far, I have sent out 80 adoption application requests. Um, we've gotten quite a few back in. We've got some that have been approved, some that we're still working on, and a lot more coming in. So I'm just working on it. I'm working on writing stories about each horse and descriptions and their training. Well, today we are adding another employee to our team. Uh, this is Angela. And Angela is going to be helping us with the adoption applications and probably adoption follow-ups and all that good stuff because uh, we just have so many here on our plate, we can't do it all ourselves. So um, Angela has been helping at our organization for quite a while and volunteering and um, we think she's gonna be great at this position. So we have somebody else to help get these applications done faster, which is a good thing. We're working on applications. Angela's working on okay, them there. Okay, 10.30 to 11.30. Okay, I will put you down. We and got our first appointment. Yay! We had to leave the office because today is also an auction rescue day. Yes, we've been fundraising and... Oh, train tracks. Oops. <laughs> okay. Um, we've been fundraising and... Uh, we have enough money to go and hopefully raise more funds once we're at the auction to rescue. Our goal is 10 horses, so we'll see what happens. I am out here fundraising the truck and also working on adoption applications at the same time. Jason's in um, the auction looking at all the horses and I've got to fundraise so we can rescue them. So anyways, uh, that's what I'm doing right now and we'll see what happens tonight. Jason is in the auction ring. He says the horses are starting to sell and I'm still out here fundraising. I know he'll do a great job. I just want to be in there seeing the horses and hopefully we can get a bunch tonight, but I got to get this fundraiser out. We are at the auction right now. There are so many horses here. Approximately 80 precious horses that are in jeopardy. <laughs> Well, everyone, the auction is over and we rescued 14, I think. Oh, there's one. All right, we were able to get one horse off that big trailer. That's kind of a miracle when it happens. But put him in here with the rest of ours. Come on, babies. Just for the night. So it's 1 a.m. and we're uh, gonna be at the hotel for a few hours, get some sleep. But before I can sleep, I need to let everyone know that donated and followed us that we were able to rescue 15 precious lives tonight, this morning. And um, so when I get that sent out, then I will be getting some sleep because I need it. It's gonna be a busy day tomorrow. Well, after about five hours of sleep, I feel much more refreshed. And now Jason and I are going to go over and get ready to get these babies back to the shelters. We're just getting into our auction box. I want to give the horses that are crippled um, some management. Morning, hello. How y'all doing? So this is the one that we bought last night um, 
it's really crippled. Its back legs are very painful. Um, that's why she's standing the way she is. I'm gonna give her some some pain management to help her on the way back because she's not comfortable. Hey you, it's okay. Come here. Baby. Yeah, it's gonna be all better now. Come on. And this is our pen with the little ones. Look at you. You're so cute. Let's go. Good baby. Good baby. Easy. Easy, you're all right. You're all right, good baby. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. Don't bite me. Easy, you're so scared. Don't try to bite me. I'm not gonna hurt you. Easy. It'd be safer to go for the halter. Huh? It'd be safer to go for the halter. guys we're just gonna move them into another pen come on come on sweet baby come on. your friends are leaving you I'm really concerned about the bump on his side I don't know what that is our vet will check it out come on. catch up with your friends all the ponies together come on come on little little there you go so this is a little crippled Mini. Hey, baby. Your little legs hurt you so bad. I know. this little guy in our post last night um, his little legs are so messed up been to you all right let's see if we can get you to walk poor baby is so hungry it thinks that this little stallion has milk hi guys so this is an old thoroughbred we got. And this horse has the most beautiful eyes. So this is a thoroughbred. Um, thoroughbreds that have been raced on the track have a tattoo in their lip. So I'm just gonna see who looks really old from his teeth. We might be able to find out his identity. He cooperates with this. Okay, so the letters are three G. So it's a pretty good tattoo. We should be able to find out who he is. Very nice horse. His back legs are a little stocked up, so a little worried about that, but looks like there is an injury there, so hopefully that's all it is. Can I touch you? Your poor face is so beat up. This horse has huge swelling on the side of its face. Uh, won't let us touch it. It could be cancerous, we don't know is that our vets are gonna make the best decision for it and we're gonna get it help. Its whole neck area is extremely swollen, um, extremely uncomfortable, I would imagine. All right, so they're all behaving quite well together. They should travel fine. They're ready to load up. Hi, beautiful. Your eyes are gorgeous. 
backing the trailer up. Oh, those poor legs. Look so painful. Mmm. Ouch. Poor horse. Come on. Come on. Up. Up. Trailer. Ready to head back. Everyone's really comfortable. Nobody's disagreeing. They're together. Nobody's fighting. And then in the back of the trailer, we have all our little ones. Hi, babies. Hi. Plenty of room for them. Yeah, hi. You want some loves? You want some loves? He's just so sweet. Look how cute that little one is. All right, we are loaded up and ready to hit the road. Can't tell it, but it's very hot and humid out here. Like my back is just sweating. Uh, Tennessee in the summer is nothing but hot and humidity, but these horses are gonna be safe. They're gonna enjoy the cool drive back to the shelter because there'll be wind blowing around the trailer. And then our intake team will be ready to help them get them everything they need. Did they have many horses last night? About 80. We're gonna x-ray this little guy's legs. When he's standing, he, you can see his little legs just shaking because he's, it's hard walking like this. See that whole bone right there? Yeah. That's not supposed to be there. Mainly we've got angular limb deformities on both front legs. We've got a lot of arthritis forming from the bones and the tendons pulling the wrong way. It's just a, just a big mess. I'm just writing down the notes uh, for the little guy that we just x-rayed. Poor little guy, his leg is all messed up. We were hoping that there was something that could possibly be done. There's always, you want to hope for things, but sometimes the reality of it is there's just nothing that can be done. His x-rays are looking really, really rough. We're doing another x-ray now. Uh, it's processing, but it's not looking good. But we're just thankful that we were at the auction where we could, we could get this guy the help that he needs, even if that is saying goodbye, which is heartbreaking. This boy, he came to a super, super skinny, full of rain rot, and we thought he was a gelding. But after he's gained some weight, it became evident that um, there was more between his legs than we thought. So um, he is going to get gelded hopefully today. No, I'm really bad at catching stuff. That's a miracle that I just got that. And a lot of people don't know that Jason is a certified farrier. He trimmed all our horses for a very long time. So they're checking the x-ray of this horse's pastern. It's really messed up. Supposedly it was an old Amish buggy horse. So the x-rays are being processed right now. Um, Doc says it's probably gonna look like a horror film in there. It's, it's pretty horrific. What is that? And, and this? That could be the end of the um, splint well, bone. Yeah. It's just dissolved. It's, it's, it's probably dissolving. You usually get bony formation from where you've had a torn tendon. Mm -hmm. I'd say with this horse, probably the torn tendon or the abused tendon came from being a buggy horse yeah. and started knuckling down like that. This x-ray shows quite a bit of just damage to this horse. Um, this horse was, from everything we were told and can gather, a Amish buggy horse. And we see routinely that they're just worked literally till they fall apart. And that's what we're seeing in this horse's case. Part three. I don't hear any air moving. No air moving? This is not good. Hmm. She almost says she says that she's not coughing. Like she has no air moving in her lungs. When you hear air moving, even if it's a heat line, it'd be mm -hmm. rough and stuff. But. There's a reason a lot of horses are dumped at auction. When we rescue them, Sometimes we don't know, and we used to go to auctions and rescue and be like, okay, we will get this horse and this horse. And we found out over the years that these horses, a lot of times they're drugged, there's underlying health problems, and that's why they're there. Their owners should have had them humanely euthanized, 
but instead they decided to make some money off of them in the end. And unfortunately, this horse has a, a heart problems and lung problems. It's struggling to breathe, and the kindest thing we can do is the last act of kindness, but that's part of our mission is rescuing horses even if they're unadoptable. A little mini or more, they would be so cute. Or 85. So Jason's getting the height and um, just the, all the process we're doing. Um, the people that brought the horse to the auction tried to make it seem that they got the horse from somebody. And um, if we look at its tail, you can see where another auction tag was. So this, this horse has been through multiple auctions. I want to say like 15. Yeah. It was 15 to 18 of my Yeah. So his coggins are good. Um, that's that. Sometimes they don't always match. So this is nice to see one that does. Two hundred and nineteen pounds, exactly. Thirty-seven. This one's supposed to have a blaze, according to its coggins. It does not. These were pulled in March, February. So this is a bad coggins. Does not match. And. This one does it. I mean, the likelihoods of this being the same pony aren't. I think we should get new Coggins. So this little guy is getting his teeth checked. Um, and um, it's a little skinny, so hopefully with a good dental, it will be able to gain weight better. Sweet little pony. So this horse in the auction, when she came in last night, she was just exhausted. She could barely walk around. And um, I said that basically from what the story was, is they had worked her so hard, she was just literally exhausted. 16? Oh, my bad, eh? 16-1. 16-1. So this big beautiful thoroughbred behind me is one that we rescued from the auction and it's getting its teeth floated. Um, he does weigh like a thousand pounds, but he's a really big horse. Fifteen hands. So this horse is also getting its teeth floated. Um, most horses that end up in auctions haven't had maintenance in a while, maintenance work, so getting it done now. It's real uh Walking it's soft. Not flashy. On that side. She cut her face and she has old stitches here um, that were never removed. She's beat up. Somebody left a halter on. It was quite the process. Um, we've never quite seen air just coming out of a horse's neck like that before. Uh, there was a little bit of pus, um, but this horse clearly has a lot of issues going on. So hopefully we can get to the bottom of it. She's just three years old and already going through a lot. So um, hopefully we can fix her, but only time will tell at this point. There's a lot of damage there. Move the table. Oh, she saw that. Yeah, she's awake now. All right, so when the vet was putting the vet wrap around her, she didn't like that, so she jumped. Thankfully, everything's okay. You just never know what's gonna happen. Um, but she's okay now, and we'll put her under treatment, and hopefully we can fix her. So they're just hanging out here while their friends are getting their stuff done, eating grass, then they'll be turned out in the pasture. So now we're moving the miniature horses. They're going into a separate pen and they're just going to be kind of all... We just, we're just let them out where they can get together in this, this area, this area. So we're just gonna let them all out together so they can bond a little bit and then we'll herd them down to uh, the barn quarantine area so they can just be horses together and in a safe environment. And yes, it's extremely hot and humid here in Tennessee.
need, need more than one chair because everybody's pretty tired after these yeah, days. Oh. Yeah, intake days are sort of a big event here. And uh, they're sort of thrilling and sort of sad too, but uh, it's something we need to do, whether to keep the horses what, what individual so we can get up individual care plans for the horses and get them uh, get them situated and healthy enough to go in with the main herd until we can find them a home. I am a little exhausted after that auction rescue, but the horses are happy and healthy. And we did we did lose some, but at least they came here and they were seen by the vet and got their X-rays, and we know it was the best thing for them. But auction rescues are exhausting, both emotionally and physically, just totally draining and happy for the ones we, we did save and thankful for the ones that we were able to be there for them in the end. And now I need some rest. We just sent out the 100th adoption application request. Oh wow, that's exciting. Yeah, so we only have uh, spots for 50 of the first approved adoption applications, but after that, then we can set up people appointments after the event if they still want to yeah. adopt. That makes sense. Okay, we just got an application from somebody who's adopted from us before. Really? Who uh, they adopt? Um, there are two horses in California, 23 horses that were orphaned. Oh, wow. So that was, we rescued, I think it was 24 baby horses that were, they came yeah. down from Oregon and they were gonna get shipped to Mexico for slaughter. Wow. And we rescued them. Wow, that's so neat. I can't wait to see updates. So they're moving to Tennessee. Yes. And they want to adopt from us again. Yes. How awesome is that? You're welcome. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. These are the two horses that she adopted from us. We intercepted them from being shipped to Mexico for slaughter and uh, it's so great to see an update and that they want to adopt all these years later it's about eight years uh, ago they adopted, so it'd be great to adopt to them again. All right, so I just have some applications that just need help and approval. All right. With. So this lady, you can't find her on Facebook. She may just not have one, mm -hmm. um, which is the same with this lady as well. Okay. Um, that one needs that. Okay. And I don't think this one, I don't think this one uh, sent in anything. Okay. Uh, so we have piles and piles of applications we're going through to make sure all these horses at our shelter get the best home possible. Going through all these applications, we've found some kind of colorful characters, we might say. I'm just searching this person and um, looks a little, I have to verify that it's the same person because um, the person going by this name is a horse thief. Uh, there's articles about him stealing a horse worth $10,000 and the horse was returned with minor injuries. Um, so I need to make sure that this character is not the same person that's wanting to adopt from us. If it is the same person, we're definitely not adopting to that person because it's a, a horse thief. If you could check the criminal background check on this mm -hmm. one. Um, if you look her up on here, then she it talks about Tennessee walking horses since she was suspended by the USDA. So if she was suspended by the USDA, that means she was involved directly with soaring horses oh. because the USDA is um, following, you know, if somebody has been soaring horses or they suspect it, they'll suspend them from showing. Oh. So she would have, been showing a horse that was sore and it was confirmed by the USDA. I'll look it up though, but that's definitely a red flag. So working on this application, um, there is a violation with the USDA. Um, the lady and her husband were suspended from uh, being involved with any shows or events. Um, and this was the USDA putting the suspension on them, that they found that there was evidence of soaring on a horse um, in a show. Come to find out it wasn't the first time they'd had a violation with the USDA for, um, you know, with Tennessee walking horses. Yeah, that's not good. Um, definitely can't, can't have that, so. 
And actually, I'm going to call this lady. So, we went from two appointments to seven appointments in a matter of like two hours. That's awesome. You're awesome. Yay! We still have what? One, two, three, four, one, five, two, six, seven, eight. eight more to call. So, Yay. we should be able to fill up Sunday without a problem. I was just doing one application, and as I was doing it, I was like, Wait a minute, when I was doing the photo verification, I'm like, I recognize these people. And they came to our adoption event um, when we were doing Homes for the Holiday. And that's actually, their profile picture is actually standing at our gate uh, waiting to adopt horses. So that's awesome. We'll have to get an update on the horses they adopted. Everyone's been working really, really hard on applications and we had so many applications that were almost complete, I had to tell the girls, hey, we've got to just put our weight in the harness and get it done. And now Sunday we have nine appointments. We're going to have one room for one more on Sunday, but Sarah's on the phone, going to get that appointment filled. And then we're lining up the rest of the week too. So Sunday's going to be very busy. We potentially could have 20 horses adopted in that one day. So uh, we'll see what happens. We're super excited today because it's our big adoption event. We have been trying so hard to figure out how to make this event happen with COVID-19. And we've been taking applications and making appointments. And today's the day. We have 10 adoption appointments today and we have adoption appointments lined up the next day and the next. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna get all the horses adopted from our facility, we can hope. Um, have our great team here to help make this event go amazing and smooth and just follow us through this journey and see how many horses find homes. Jesse and Alyssa are over here, so we're gonna go ahead and get started over here. Who are you guys here to see today? Uh, we're here to see Rain and Cookie. So how did you guys find out about Horse Plus? Was it on Facebook, the website, or somebody to tell you? Um, I think it was Facebook. Uh, we found out last time you had the adoption event last August. Okay. Um, did you guys come out to that one? Mm -hmm. We adopted two that day. Okay. Who did you adopt that day? Um, Autumn and um, Roman. So what are you looking for um, in a, your next horse? Um, something a little more beginner broke. Uh, both of ours are pretty intermediate. Um, so something we can just get on and go whenever. And you know, if we have a family member, we can just hop out on our third. And somebody came work on getting her ears up and they're looking this way. I got it. How has your guys' experience been today? Uh, it's been awesome. Really uh, like the one-on-one -on -one time versus the group event. Okay. What stood out about Rain um, that you really liked? Um, she was really responsive and you just see her being a good fit for us. Here is the adoption form for Rain. So if you just want to fill out everything that is in yellow, and then we'll do this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you guys yeah, so much. Thank you so much. Send us updates. We will. Updates. Thank you. Awesome. Drive safely. We will. Thank you. Bye, Rain. You're such a good girl. So what you can do is you both have to fill out one and then pick which kids you're going to put on, like, two on each one. Okay. This is Charlie's. From what I understand, she was the best pick I could find for you guys. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about her. She came from the June auction, didn't she? Mm -hmm. And she's really laid back, easy to ride. Her training evaluation, there really wasn't anything I could pick on. Okay, so she, she was pretty. I guess if you can work on something, you'd be catching. Like comes to grain or whatever. Okay, so we had adopted a donk, a little donkey. Uh, was how long it's been? Two years. Okay, Two so years. you guys have been out here before then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So. This time you're looking for a horse. Yes. Our our 12 year old girl Madeline is taking horse riding lessons. So about that time. Yeah. So <laughs> That's exciting. Looking. Somebody did train her though. When we were younger, we were sons and daughters coming out of 
the water holding everything now we're older making sense of the moment standing out in the open to find the light again the question is do you like donkeys we're putting a donkey in there to see if she likes donkeys as this family already has a donkey at their house. So we're going to see what she does. Hopefully they like each other. She's like, um, guys, what's that? Yeah. Look at me. One, two, three. So how was your guys' experience today? Oh, it was great. We found a perfect course for our family. What stood out to you about uh, Charlie's? Well, she's just so sweet and, and gentle and um, calm. And that's what we need because we've got some beginning horse riders here, so. If you'll fill out the adoption form, just fill out everything in yellow. It's fine, I think. Because okay. we're just going back and forth. What are donations? Yes, sir, they are. Donations away. Anybody you like. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. We greatly appreciate it. We've had a cancellation, so I recommend that all of us staff uh, eat while we can. This will be a good break. And our next appointment will be 11.45. I just left work, I was headed out and uh, got down to the T at the end of the road and found this dog abandoned on the side of the road. So I decided to bring him back here and we're gonna see whether we can find his owner or find a new owner for him. Oh, boxes open. Oh, this is the dog that was in the middle of the road. That's the dog I almost right. saw. How dog is that? I've seen that dog before. Yeah, I've right. seen that dog before. So this poor dog was, from everything we can gather, dumped on the side of the road. Um, we were able to rescue and bring him back to our shelter. So while we've been doing all the adoptions and everything inside, we've been networking the dog that got found and the Humane Society, High Forest Humane Society is here and they're going to take the dog and put it in their program because they specialize in dogs, we specialize in horses, but networking is what it's all about when it comes to helping animals and getting them to the right places they need to go. This is Lynette and she's here with High Forest Humane Society. Lynette's going to help us out with the dog that was found on the road. And High Forest Humane Society is a great organization. They've helped us out on horse rescues. And um, we're very thankful to work with them as an adoption partner. Uh, anything you'd like to say about your organization? Uh, yeah, we've been uh, in existence since 2004 and we've uh, rehomed approximately 45,000 dogs and puppies. We um, are very thankful that the uh, High Horse Plus Humane Society has been working with us over the years. All right, we have a donation here to help with little dog. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, so take him and hopefully he, he finds a home. He's a sweet dog. He'll find a home. He's adorable. Yes. He's a very sweet boy. Oh, he's a good boy. Yeah, they said he just crawled right into the vehicle when they went down there. They opened the door and no, he's not. But hopefully that donation can help with that. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, um, for sure. So this is Jessie, you'll be working with her today. Okay, so hi Jessie. If you have, you can just ask her. Okay. okay. So this is Dutch. So what do you think of her? Um, I like her. So you think she'd teach you a lot? Yeah. You got cookie out of your mind? Mm-hmm. Teach you to do you have, use your legs and hands. Do you have cookie out of your mind because you just really want to go home with a horse? Or? <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. I want to know that you're not here to just make her work, but you're going to love her too. I was just about to say that. On Donner, what's your thought? You like him? Yeah. Even though that's not what you expected to like or yeah, want? I love him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did amazing. <laughs> Cool. 
back, pull back, change direction. Putting forward to the end. Over, ready to dive. Keep it going. Don't let me stop. Nice. Good, Scarlett. I like, what do you like? I like that he is, that I can really control him and that he's really calm and, and that he can listen to me well and I can control him. Yeah. Don't let him So how was your guys' experience today? Great. It was really good. It was wonderful. We microchipped Donner, so he has our, our microchip. Okay. But Dutch came from the auction with a microchip. Okay. We tried to trace it back to who had her before and we couldn't. Because okay. they didn't put her in their name. But you should be able to call Abbott and find that. Okay, and um, get her transferred to us. Yes. Okay. If you have any questions or anything, she's person that asks. Like, exactly. if you start running her and don't stop her within short distance, she just gets where she wants to keep going. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, my assistant was riding her bareback and we're going to the river and she started cantering and she just let her go for a while and then she wanted to stop and she ended up falling off. Your girlfriend got kicked, stepped on by a horse after she fell off. Ow. What do you think? I'm done. This is you it. You taking her home? Yes. Okay. Two or three other horses if he does it. He, he, he wasn't he was dying before? Yeah, he was. So they both super duper pretty. But it's a, it's just a hard one. So whenever I was younger, I was obsessed with this pet finder website. So I, whenever we decided that we were going to get horses, we kind of decided to try looking there and just see if we found anything that really popped out. And I actually saw her picture. Okay. And so she's kind of the reason that I kind of got in contact with you guys. It's really great. I had so many questions because we were coming from so far away and I wanted to make sure everything happened right. So I called probably way too much, <laughs> but all my questions got answered. Everything was perfect. It was great. Oh, good. So how, where'd you come from? Louisiana. Um, we left our house at two o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh my goodness. And it's 147 our time. So that, yeah. that is a long way. So Charlie's is heading home. They were able to go back and pick up their trailer, so we're super excited for them. Thank you. Oh, wow. Without a problem. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we're excited for you guys. So Hobbs Adopters came out this last week and to look at him and they decided they wanted to sleep on it. So they went home and uh, we got the word that they did want to adopt him. So they were able to come out right after church and sign the paperwork and get the pictures for him. And he will be um, transported to his new home soon. We're wondering if you say no, if we're totally okay with it. Or we're wondering if we can mic her up and she can talk. Oh my gosh, she would love that. Okay. She's green in it we too. Can, and then you can tell us what you think about the horse, okay? Yeah, like you were in the car. I tell you in the car about acting silly. That's all we're gonna do. Come here. Come on. I'm just gonna clip it right here. Just right on your shirt like that, and I'm gonna put it behind you, okay? So I can hook it up your, in your pocket. Okay, okay. I'm gonna put it in your shirt right down here. I'm gonna hook it up to your pocket. Okay. okay? So this is Jessie. This is who you'll be working with today. So you can ask her any questions that you have. Oops, 
see it's pretty beautiful. Yeah. So I'm gonna ride her around a little bit, and then if you think you can ride her, we'll get you up on her. Okay. Sound like a deal? What do you think about her? She's bigger than your mini. Yeah. It's about this big. Yeah. <laughs> That's way bigger. Yeah, hang on with your knees. How you feel? You got the range? So you do do you ride much just by yourself or do you do on the lead line? As a do on the lead line. Yeah. Okay, so you ask her to move. Can you ask her? And then can you use your reins to pull different directions? Yeah. Where do you want to go? Can you go that way? There you go. Like, do not turn <laughs> that way. Here, pull her to the right and see if we can go back to your mom. How do you feel up there? Good. Is she too big for you? Or just right? I feel like just right, and I'm glad I got a, a large halter. Wait, how do you make her? I don't know how to back up before yet. Well, that ain't stuck. That'll catch her. Back, back, back. Yeah? Cool. Get your own saddle on there. That's gonna be, she's gonna be yeah. looking good. It's a perfect size already. I never had a big horse like this. Yeah. Look at size too. Yeah, you can look around. That's our store. Especially if you buy something. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna pick up. You need to go get my purse. Well, thanks for getting stuck in the store. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you so much and. We love getting updates, so send us updates if you can. Thank you so much. All right, thank, thank you. you. Drive safely. Thanks. So after they um, adopted Rosalind, um, they load her up in the trailer and we're getting ready to take her home and we're on the way home and they got to talking and decided that Rosalind was too tall for little Sophie. She was kind of a small girl, so it's understandable. Um, so they came back and they ended up adopting Kinsley instead. Grab the cell. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, we're gonna, we'll take her. We can adopt Kinsley. Oh, look how pretty that is on her. That's better. It's been quite busy here in the office. Um, I've been uploading pictures so people know who's been adopted and who hasn't. And then uh, Sarah's, or Angela's been getting applications ready and we've been in here and open customers. Yeah. Would you like to ride it? Sure. Notice, does like, are you back up? I like him. I think, I think he's a good fit. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> we do encourage you to quarantine for 30 days after getting home from your other horses, only because the traveling, the stress, and everything, they can give sign those and stuff. So here's the paperwork. We do encourage you to make a donation if you would like, and then that is hearts on fire, and then she lays it on the Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, just horseplus.org and go under donate. Or I can do it here on my computer either way. Okay. Yeah. Any questions that you have or anything, feel free to ask her. Okay. I think this is our best fit for, from what I understand so far. This is Rosalind. That's what I was thinking it was. Yeah. Oh. 
how did you hear about Horse Plus? Um, we found you guys on Facebook. Okay. All right. What is your most favorite thing you um, like about Roslyn? Her demeanor. She's really friendly, and I think she's a lot of what we were looking for. She, we could just hang out if we wanted to, or um, I think she'll be great for the trail rides. spoiling Roslyn one last time because I'm going to miss Ragnar. Okay. You don't stop. Uh, so we have one more adoption appointment and the other adoption appointment got done early so we have a little bit of a break. Um, this next appointment will end at 8.15 so we're just a little exhausted. Everyone's kind of just chilling in the office right now trying to get some energy for this next appointment. Last one. Oh my goodness. What are you doing down there? Cuddling with the wall. What else do you do? <laughs> and the floor. We're all a little tired and I don't know what, but 11 horses have been adopted so far and we have one more appointment. We're just kind of exhausted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is for or Ozzy. Yeah, yeah. I love Molly. <laughs> you're a good girl. Say, look, I lowered my head and everything. Yes. I say yes to Molly. There we go. Shake a green bucket. Shake a green bucket. How did you hear about us? Well, actually, a good friend of mine had adopted a couple of horses from you, and they are super sweet. Plus, um, I ran across you on a Facebook page. Okay. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Well, what is one thing that um, really stood out to you about Molly? Well, I, I like Molly's kind eye. I like her low head when we're walking. And she's got just a real nice average build, which is suitable for what I do. So that's some of the things I really liked about her. Awesome. Well, how has your experience been today? It's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. Um, Y'all here, the team, very kind, very nice, very knowledgeable. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a good atmosphere. I felt relaxed and, and had a good time. My sign and my year. 12 adoptions today. 12 adoptions today. That is awesome. That is so exciting. It's been a long day, but we've got 12 adoptions done today, and tomorrow our schedule is completely full as well, so it's going to be a busy day tomorrow too. We're going to be so exhausted by the end of this week. All right, so it's after 9 o'clock at night. We got done with the adoption appointments, and we just got word that Sarah's house is flooded, and uh, Washing machine, hose washing machine hose broke and we are exhausted but we're gonna go help with that because we know she's just as, as exhausted as we are and uh, life has to go on so we probably will be a little bit tired than we would be uh, we're just getting some vans and stuff uh, trying to help her house so she was planning on spending the night at the shelter so she could wake up early and get everything done for the event, but now we're all headed to her house to try to try to clean up water damage. So much fun. Where's our other mom? Okay. Ooh, well now it is very late at night. The water is off of Sarah's floor, so we can catch a few hours of sleep and do our adoption event tomorrow. So hopefully we've got it together and we can be a little more refreshed. Well, girls, you ready to do it again all over again today? Let's get it done. That we, <laughs> we already have somebody waiting at the gate. This is Jessie. You'll be working with her today, so you can ask her any questions you have. We have about an hour appointment. They'll let us know in the office when we have 30 minutes left. Okay. So. I just evaluated him last week. I think I can train you. You're a good guy. I think I'll train you. You'll be good to a horse. Yeah. yeah you'll be good to a boy. Yeah. So what do you think about him? 
I love him. He is precious. So are you saying yes to Rhett? Yes, I am. <laughs> How did you hear about Horse Plus? Um, I actually found you on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, that's a good place to find us. What has your been your experience so far? Oh, it has been wonderful. I've actually adopted from you before. This will be the third adoption event that I've come to. The first time we got here, it was, we didn't get to her till midnight, the very first time, because we didn't realize how quick the event filled up. The very second, the second time we came, we actually got here uh, four o'clock or something the day before and stayed all night. So oh my goodness. that was the one we actually got to adopt a horse on that event because we got here early. Well, what stood out to you about Rhett? What do you like most about him? Uh, I like he's kind of calm and I'm just here. I'm just gonna, whatever you go for, I'm here. Okay. And then he is very, 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 very red. Very red. <laughs> <laughs> you're almost so small that you're almost small enough. Oh my gosh. I'm outnumbered. Because Lily told me either a little donkey or a miniature horse. Oh. Well, that I was supposed to bring home one of those two. And Michael's heart's more set on the donkey than a miniature horse. So that way I'd make both of them happy. Yeah, because oh, it's a big yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank y'all so Thank much. You're welcome. Y'all have a wonderful day. You too. Be careful. Will do. Thank you. That was Boy, I'm gonna miss you. Thank you. He fell out. That, that guy. Yeah, he fell out one for each That one. guy, when I was doing the adoption application, it pulled up that he was a horse thief. So I need to make sure that this character is not the same person that's wanting to adopt from us. But it was somebody else with the same name, like they they did not the same people. That so I put in the name and I was like, horse thief. I'm like, great, but no. It's he's a fine person. We did thorough background check. It would be weird to have the same name as a horse exactly thief. the same name as somebody else, especially a horse. <sighs> yeah, so anyways, he checked out fine, but I was a little like, what? Yeah. Oh, good. So this is Jesse. If you have all, all the questions that you have, you can ask Jesse. Okay. You got one question? Uh, does he crib or anything? Is he broke, green broke, or like? I call him green broke. He's just a little bit mm -hmm. more on the sensitive side, so we've been taking that really slow. That that horse is good, and that one I think would be a good fit for him. What do you like most about Proper? He's calm. He's calm. He likes how calm he is. Awesome. Did you have a good experience here today? <laughs> awesome. Where'd you hear about us from? Facebook. Facebook. Okay. In addition to adopting Copper, the family also decided to adopt Amor because they just fell in love with her color and with her personality and they're going to finish out her rehab. What's something that stood out most about Amor that you like? Uh, the colors. Her colors are absolutely fun. She's very pretty. Well, we're very happy for her and Copper's going to their new home with you guys and we can't wait to watch them grow with you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. It's going to be low. So, so far today we've had um, one person had to reschedule for tomorrow and then the person that's supposed to be here right now is not coming and then the afternoon still looks pretty busy but as horses get adopted through this event, people are like, oh, that horse that I wanted is gone, so they, they don't show up. It'd be nice if they let us know. Um, 
but we're excited because there's still lots more potential adopters that are excited to come out and see the horses we have. So should keep us busy. How old is this one, four? Yeah, I think she's four. And how much, how much work has she had? She, she's had a saddle a couple times, I think, and possibly a rider. Okay. But since she's had the baby, she's just been... No man's been gilded? He's a gilded. Okay. Yep. Yeah, he was just gilded last week. We've had a halter on him a couple times. Anybody's been on him. I've been on him. Come up to you in the pasture. So, what are you thinking? I'm so. Yeah, didn't take all three of them? Yes, ma'am. Oh. How did you hear about us? Um. My wife found you on the internet. Okay, okay. How was your experience here today? It was awesome. I, I really like this place. It's nice. Awesome. Okay. What is your favorite thing about Soldier? <laughs> uh, it's kind of in your pocket. I like that. Yeah. I like that he's, he's right up under you. Probably won't like that after a week or two, but I like it right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What about cane and molasses? What do you, what's your favorite thing about them? Um, favorite about the little fold, the little colt is I have a six-year-old and he doesn't know anything about horses, so he'll get to grow up with one and learn how to work him right. Oh, that will, that will be wonderful. She's still here after the new event. I'll be working on it. Right? Yes. Yes, to go That way. I literally had the conversation in my mind. Well, you know. <laughs> so basically, we have a little break between adoptions and they're playing. Uh, not complaining. They're talking about their sore, aching feet and uh, <laughs> being exhausted. And um, but it's well worth it. It is well worth it's it. It's very rewarding. Hello. Yes, this is Tawny. Um, are you checking in for your appointment? Okay. All right. In front of you is a box that has release forms in it. Could you fill those out, and then we'll be out there shortly to pick them up. Okay, thank you. Do you need one for me and my husband, or just, or just fill one out? One for each person. If they're a minor, you can just fill it out on your form. There's a spot for minors, if you have any kids with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I love this thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's she's definitely right around there. How tall will he get? Nope. He's still uphill. And what kind? They say sometimes things gotta break for the sunlight to come in and illuminate all that you got. You. Of a girl you color everything in They say things that go up must come down But you got me over the ground Love taking me higher than I've ever been And when you're talking to me You think you'd be okay? Mm -hmm. For you guys? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, we are. He would be perfect. We're at 22 adoptions. Yay! 21. And 22. 
two. Yay! That's so awesome. That is so awesome. Getting these babies into their homes. Now, but now I have to make this look better because now we've got a gap. Must have it looking perfect. So we are celebrating 22 adoptions tonight. By, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Woo! <laughs> by coming out and eating, everyone's been working so hard and um, we're just gonna have our own little celebration here tonight and celebrate all these horses that found homes. So it is almost 6.30 in the morning and us girls have been staying in the bunkhouse because it's um, easier to wake up earlier in the morning to get the horses ready for the adoption event. So I'm just going to go wake the girls up. Good morning. It's time to wake up. We got to get busy. Good morning. Well, Jesse, you done slept in your hat. Why are you sleeping in a hat? Didn't have time to take it off. Mm. I went to sleep. You that tired? Yeah. Yeah. Lisa, yeah. it's time to get out. We got some more to we got some more appointments. Good morning, good morning. Aren't you ready to work yet? <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, just wanted to go over who we have available today. We have some awesome donkeys that are looking for homes still. So this is Jesse. You'll be working with her today. This is Mr. Leon. How are you? So any questions Glad or anything you. that you have, just feel free to ask her. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I told her I've been watching all y'all's videos like a dozen times a piece. You would pass from my niece's identical twin sister. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> now, is this Dolly? Yeah. Okay. She can tell you all about it. She's one of the ones that came off the semi truck. Right. Um, so right. she was wild back in November. Um, she came with all those over 40 horses. She's yeah. been halter trained, Jesse halter trained. out of her pen three times. Yeah. Really? She halter trained her last week. I caught her for the first time without a shoot. Yeah. Uh, yesterday. Really? Yeah. That's good. That's she is beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. How's your experience been today? It's been wonderful. Y'all have been a great help. Oh, good. Uh, what's your favorite thing about Dolly? Just her personality. She's just calm and and you know she's she's not she doesn't know much yet, hadn't been handled much yet, but she's just it's like she takes it all in stride. And well, we're very excited for her and you, and we can't you. wait to watch her grow with you. I we're appreciate that. You I, I thank you. Thank all y'all for all y'all's help. <laughs> So this is Jessie, you're going to be working with her today. So any questions you have, you can ask her. Okay. Oh. Nice to meet you. Okay. She's really sweet. How old is she? She's a little over two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is she? Arabian I, and... Arabian. Oh. But she's super sweet. She, she meets you at the gate and just wants attention. Her, you start a clean slate with. So all yeah. she's ever had is halter training and everything. You start with what, however you start. See, that's what I was looking for. And then I saw him, and I just fell in love with his face. And I was like, I was like, I don't need that. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, she is super sweet. Okay. He's just not halter bro. but he's the third bed. Yeah. So he's gonna. We'll just fit through here. How did you hear about us? I saw it on a Facebook post. It was an ad. Okay. Yeah. So how has your experience been here today? Uh, 10 out of 10. 
<laughs> it's really good. Oh, that's awesome. What is your favorite thing about Fanny that you like? Um, probably her markings and her personality. There, and then that person came up and they ended up here. Now they're gonna go to you. I know, I'm so excited. Thank you. And just let us know the day and the time that she's gonna, well, you said Monday, but the she time. She said Monday. I'll try to get her out here as early as, as I can. Okay. But it's a four hour drive from her house. No, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Like 12 1 is good with us or okay. earlier. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Thank, Thank you. Guys, have a safe trip. The weather here in Tennessee is strange. Uh, as you can see, there's blue sky behind me, but it's pouring rain. And that's something that just happens a lot around here. It's weird weather in Tennessee. Oh, and then don't think that it's gonna cool off and be nice and cool after this rain goes through. It'll be hot and steamy, so it's, it's not gonna cool down today. The rain isn't cold either. Oh man, the 445 canceled. Oh no. Yeah. Well, hopefully the 6 and 715 shall show up. I hope so. Oh no. 6 o'clock canceled too. 6 o'clock canceled too? Yeah, so we just lost the 6 o'clock and the 445. Oh man. Well. Still hanging on. Still got 715. That's supposed to come. So Molly's um, <laughs> adopters that adopted her on Monday came back to pick her up today. So we're gonna load her up, and she's gonna head on out. Bye, Molly. <laughs> Hello, Ian. This is Angela from Horse Plus Humane Society. I was just calling to check to see if you're still coming for your appointment this evening. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're not gonna be able to come today? Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Okay, well, we'll keep you in our pile. Um, we're going to have another event, and I'll give you a call to see if we can get you another appointment for the next event. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. We've had some cancellations today. Um, today is day three, and so we are winding that day down. We have adopted out 25 horses. So far, we still have a couple more days um, left for this event. All of the adoption applications that came in and were completed, most of those people have had their appointments. Some people have sadly had to cancel due to various um, things. And we still have one more adoption appointment tomorrow. So we're hoping that at least one or maybe two more horses will be able to get their amazing homes. If you would like to adopt, please feel free to email us and we can send you adoption applications because we still do adoption appointments on Mondays and Thursdays, even if it's not an event. Well, are you saying yes to Tina? I think so. What do you think? I like her. I like her too. What's your favorite thing about Tina that you like? Oh, that's hard. Huh, Mama? She's sweet. Yeah. You are. You're a sweet girl. Well, yeah, where? Easy to please. Huh? <laughs> 
We're excited for her and her journey with you guys, and we are very happy that you're adopting her. So let's go fill out the paperwork. You're more than welcome to look at stuff in there if you'd like. She wanted to. We'll bring a helper for her too. She loves hoodies. We appreciate it. All right, well, we will see you tomorrow at 11.45. All right. And we'll keep following you guys. All right, thank you. Thanks. Well, our adoption event has come to a close. I must say we're all a little weary here, but it's been a very, very busy week. We only have 18 left at our facility now, and these are horses and donkeys that may need a little extra help, training, and we've had such an overwhelming response while we were doing this adoption event from so many people wanting to adopt that we're gonna give ourselves a one week break and we're going to be doing another mini event for these special horses that didn't find their homes because they need homes. But the really exciting news is if we go over to this wall, these are all of the adoptions that we did just this week alone, 26 adoptions. We couldn't be more excited and we know all of these horses are super excited too. It is just before 8 o'clock in the morning. And we gotta catch Lightfoot and Flicker so they can go home. So we have caught up Flicker and Lightfoot and we're getting them ready to go to their new home. Why don't you down to yourself? <coughs> you getting allergic to working with horses? Yep. No, I'm allergic to the morning. You're so sleepy. I'm so sleepy. Can we take a nap together? So Start so the day again. <laughs> Flicker and Lightfoot are going to their new homes, and we are so excited for them and all the other horses that got amazing homes. ready to load up Hendrix and Fanny and they're going to their new home. They were adopted during our adoption event last week. Good job. All right, they're headed off to their new home. We're so excited. I think that is the last uh, group of horses from our adoption event to get transported to their new home. So I went and checked the mail this morning and we got a package, so I'm curious to see what it is. She makes greeting cards, so she's sending us some um, greeting cards that we can use to send out people for donations. A little horse one. Sarah, what are you working on? Taking photos of Sadie for the website. This is Bailey, we're giving her a bath to cool her down and clean her up a little. She does this funny thing with her lips when you give her a bath, it's cute. The mare we rescued from the auction with the huge swelling on her throat, we're going to try to work on her and try to help her. We don't know what the outcome's gonna be, but we're thankful that she's here and she's gonna get the help that we can give her. Don't touch stuff with the glove. Yeah. 
So the veterinarian has opened up the, the big swelling. It kind of sounded like a balloon when it was deflating. And opened it all up, looked in there, couldn't find anything, any leaks or inner trachea or anything, but when he sewed her back up, it's starting to blow back, back up again like a balloon. And so we're gonna try to keep working on her and see what we can do, uh, try to get a solution to save her because uh, it's not looking good. Sybil had a big swelling in her neck. Uh, there were some blood, big blood vessels real close to it. It was not the jugular because we isolated the jugular and carotid. They were where they were supposed to be. Uh, there, it, it had been an old injury because there's a lot of scar tissue in there and uh, there was a lot of air. I feel like she's got a tear in her trachea somewhere, but we could not find it. So what we tried to do was go in and close the dead space, seal everything up, and then put some vet wrap around it very carefully so we did not obstruct breathing, and maybe we can get things to scar together. So anyway, we hope Miss hope we got the, did the best for Miss Sybil we could do, and we'll check her next week, and we'll be checking her throughout the week and seeing how she's doing. Alyssa is catching Godiva, and Shelby is just finishing tacking up Sunny, and Jesse just caught Venus. We are on a trail ride with Venus, Sunny, and Godiva. This is Godiva's very first trail ride out. She's doing amazing. So this was Godiva's first trail ride and her third ride all together. She did really good, not spooky. She leads, she rides in the middle, in the back. She did really good. We have got to get the water situation underway. Summer's almost over and it'd be really good to have all the automatic waters installed by the time the first freeze hits. I know we've been talking to a plumber and pretty much we need to sit down now and figure out where exactly we're gonna put each water, and then I'm yes. gonna go out and mark it with flagging, and he's gonna come back, measure it out, and give us a quote, and he says it's a one to two week process until I get to work on it. It'll be nice to get it done. Um, so I've got all the Nelson waters okay. here. We just need to figure out where to put them. So if we split them between the pens, uh -huh. so we kind of figure right. out like this pen. So the mark on the ground, you want to indicate where the pipe is going to be running. So I have it coming from the office, going up the alleyway, and I need another one going off there to go over to uh, automatic water. And then I tie a ribbon where he's going to be running the automatic water, and he knows approximately on this side we'll go down about 30 feet, and on the uphill side we're going to go 50 feet and put the waters in. So I'm working on, I have a list here of all the horses here at the shelter, including the quarantine horses. And I'm just dividing them into different sections and their different levels, if they're under two years old or if they're still in quarantine. So that way we have a visual right here on one board where we can just go to it and find what we need quickly, so. A load of alfalfa hay coming in. So we're gonna park it beside our arena this time. So it's out of the way. There it goes. Be nice to have it out of the way this time. Last time it was right in front of our office. And this time we'll just have it parked back here. Now he's looking up to the other trailer, which I'm so glad it's going to be gone. It was right in front of our office. Yay, now we can actually see our bunkhouse. Got lots of nice alfalfa hay. Amen. 
So this alfalfa hay is gonna help so many horses here at our shelter. And the exciting thing is, right before this hay was delivered, we actually got a check for $5,000. And that's what this hay cost. So that check was able to cover this entire semi load of hay. And we only had to pay the transport for it um, because that donation covered it. So, you know, it's just amazing how when there's a need, it's covered. And I just like to thank all of you for, for making that a reality. This hay uh, should last us through the winter because we're going to supplement it with um, other hay. And then other, you know, if the horses are super skinny, this hay will be great for those horses. So um, thank you so much for your support. And to the special person who made that donation, I just can't thank you enough. I'm going to verify it's checked off, but the Google's not done. Okay, so we just need to do a Google search. Yeah. So, um, that. You want? I've been right here. I've been looking for you, Sarah. Hey, I found you her. Here? Yes. I've been looking, Sarah. I'm <laughs> slick. <laughs> Girl, she. she I've been here, been here the whole time. <laughs> she's been back here with me. She slipped in here on us. Okay, when you're hey, I, I need your help. We've all been calling for you, looking for you. Y'all were talking when I went by. I saw you. <laughs> anyway. Sybil is having her second surgery today. The vet did one last week and wasn't able to find anything, and she did swell up again, so we're doing another surgery to hopefully find um, what's going on with her, and we hope that um, it is something that we can fix and we can be able to help her. So her breathing was kind of like, you could tell she had an infection, so I cleaned her nose out and stuff, and then she sounded better. She's collecting a lot of extra air in here between, here's her trachea, and this is, an, you got your jugular and carotid here, and and she's collecting air between there, and we can't, we've gone in twice trying to find the air leak and why she's leaking. We even used a little endoscope trying to see if she had a problem with the soft palate, tried to find holes in her trachea like she'd been injured before, and we haven't found them. Amazingly enough, sometimes you go in there and uh, you get some scar tissue and the, and, and the injury will scar up. We're sort of hoping for that right now and to keep pressure off of it by having a catheter in each side and keeping the air down. Um, we're sort of tr plugging away. There's a couple other things we have we want to try next and we don't want her to suffer a lot, but we don't want to give up on her either. It's hard to tell as far as if she's had a ruptured pubic tendon or not. Um, with her being 12 years old um, and having the, the presentation of like a pot belly and stuff is definitely possible. Um, feeling up underneath on the ventral part, um, she definitely feels like she might have a little bit of scarring and you can see on ultrasound some thinning of the, of the tissue and stuff, um, making it even more possible that she has ruptured it. Um, her uterus is a little bit thickened, um, but it sounds like improved from when Dr. Scott was out here last time, so. What you doing, Travis? Oh, I'm cutting a hole in the wall to put a gate in, um, so that we can, we can access the uh, sidebar a little easier. So, I got all the boards off, and I got the uh, board cut flush with the uh, edge of the um, room here. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to cut across the bottom of this board right here. I've got a little section right here. Unfortunately, I'm having some troubles with some tools uh, overheating and I've got to wait for them to cool down at the moment. 
All right, so I cut out and put a new wall here and put in a gate so it makes it a little easier to access the uh, side barn here. doesn't seem to be afraid of anything so that's a big plus. So what I'm doing is <laughs> I'm not always the best at computers and all this crazy stuff but Facebook has made a supporter program so you can become a monthly supporter on Facebook and you get a little badge that you're a supporter and um, so I'm setting that up right now I have to make a thank you video so I'm trying to work on that and then there's a secret Facebook group that you become a part of that where you see behind the scenes things so I'm trying to get the thank you done I brought a light over here because I think it might work better hey it's Tawny I just wanted to thank you so much for becoming a supporter of our organization with your support we'll be able to transform the lives of hundreds of horses because you became a sponsor, you'll be able to have secret access to our private supporter Facebook page. So head on over there, see what's happening behind the scenes at our organization, and give me your feedback because I wanna know what you wanna hear from us. Thank you again for your support. Turn the lights on. So it's kind of a sad day. We've we've really been trying with Sybil. And you should tell people this when you interview for jobs. I'm gonna be leaving. Come on, come with me. Come on, come with me. Six thousand seven hundred three dollars. About right. Oh no! This is a good one. This is a good one. Oh. Are you guys saying yes to Misty? Yes. Yes. I already said I want both of them, but it's up to you if you want just one. So I wanted to talk to you about the vet bill that we just got in. All right. So that one, that's how much we were charged yesterday. $6,703. That sounds about right yeah. for what so, it is. So it's about, so it was for 50 of the horses. 50 horses. Yeah. And that was the auction and cake. And we got a lot of Coggins on here. Yeah. We did x-rays. x-rays. Yeah. It takes a lot of vet care when you're rescuing this many animals. Glad we have a great vet. <laughs> I am too. We had an exhausting week with the adoption event and 26 horses were adopted. And we kind of have some leftover from that event that need special adopters. Uh, we have pregnant donkey, some older ones, senior ones. And so we've been busy with applications. Uh, we have four adoption appointments uh, so far. And um, these are the applications and um, they look very promising. We're very excited. And we even have some for donkeys. So Yay. that's super exciting. Uh, Angela's going to be working on applications the rest of the day, so hopefully we'll get more appointments and uh, get a lot of these into homes. This person kind of did their application interesting. Hello, this is Angela from Horse Plus Humane Society, and I was just calling to let you know that you have been approved. Yes, I'm so excited for you. I'm back. Yay! Yay. How was vacation? It was awesome. That's I exciting. think I should go try it out. Yeah, I yeah, think I'm going to go, too. You should. I'm super, super excited, excited to go. <laughs> yeah. So you can hold down the fort while we're gone? Yep, I can do that. Awesome. You're so awesome. We're super happy that Shelby was able to go on vacation. And next, Sarah and Jesse will be heading out on vacation. Um, it's We're going to miss them, but we know it's extremely important for animal rescuers to take a vacation. Animal rescue work is some of the hardest work out there emotionally and um, it can be very draining. So it's great that they're gonna be able to take their vacation and come back with their batteries recharged. Look who's getting her first bath today. Godiva is, and I think she's pretty happy right now. Addie just finished her bath and she did really well. You are very, very pretty. 
Fabio was just surrendered to us. We're excited to have him here. Um, his family adopted him from another rescue um, that's um, up north, so it's quite a bit of ways away. Um, he didn't work out for them and their family, so we're hoping to find him another home that works perfect for what he needs. Yes, yeah, so I just couldn't get you out of my mind. And then when I saw him on your back, I was like, oh. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I have a complete soft spot for Abby's. So yeah, I've ridden her twice. I'm going to sleep now. It's not so bad. It's not so bad carrying people around. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm a little too old and confident by herself. She, yeah, she doesn't want to go. Definitely not. Look at that. Oh, yeah. got their nose. This morning we used her in pony one of the ones. So you think well, yeah, you'd love like them. to take her home too? Yeah, I love both of them. Yeah. I do. I do. Yes. You want to come live with me? Hmm. You want to come live with me and probably buy forty dollars worth of cookies a week? <laughs> Sounds like a plan if you want to go upstairs in the office. Yep. <laughs> Can you double check my mom for me? There's all your paperwork. All right. You got all this filled out. Yep. I think Perfect. So. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Anything you. else? Let us know. Got a lot of lessons left to learn, but I'm not even close. But through my inhibition, I've become quite sure that I love you the most. That this could be the easiest thing if I let it. But I'm too afraid of losing it all Cause if I leave everything on the table Then you might break my heart So Sarah, what does the adoption schedule look like today? Um, well, we have five um, adoption appointments scheduled. So we've got two this morning, one in the middle of the day, and then we've got two this evening. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys this morning? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. What breed is she? Well, it's hard to know for sure, but I don't believe she's gated at this point. Okay. Okay. Uh. He doesn't care much for the Arabian. Oh, okay. Are you guys saying yes to Misty? Yes. Yes. Possibly. Thank Possibly. You. She's not gated. She trots really long and smooth. So, but she's built kind of more that way. Yeah. She, she likes to move rather than stand. Yeah. Think you might take her home with you? Yeah. Well, that's awesome. We're excited. Excited they can go together. How did you find out about Horse Plus? Uh, we had some friends that adopted horses down here a couple years ago. All right, and how has your experience been so far? It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a great day. You too. I like doing it just because <laughs> I can take the slow time to work with them yeah. and let them get used to it. Hi, pretty girl. 
pretty she's girl. Just, you can tell she's a little younger, a little more. So she's only about a year and she's 18 months? She's, yeah. So you think you want to take Sadie home? Yes. There we go. All right, we got one. Um, how has your experience been so far? Awesome. And I'm jealous of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> what stood out to you about, about these two? Obviously the Arab mix, because I've got a big soft spot for that. But they just seem sweet. Look at her face. <laughs> <laughs> We also have a Horse Plus Humane Society adopters page, so if you want to get added to that, then you can just um, update us with pictures and stuff or send them with your message or whatever. We'd love to see updates. So. Bye bye. Good girls. So, this is Decentra. We've done a lot of vet checks and ultrasounds, and it seems like she may have a ruptured, partially ruptured pubic tendon. And so we are also checking her and giving her ulcer guard to help her because when I rode her last, she was sensitive in her belly area. So we wanted to just make sure she doesn't have ulcers. So today we're just gonna ride her a little bit and see how she's doing. She did a lot better today and I'm really happy with it. I think she would do great in a home that wants to love on her and maybe do a little bit of walking around under saddle, but nothing major. I put out an Amazon wish list and it's super cool because we can see that there's a bunch of purchases here. And we went to the post office this morning because there were so many packages they couldn't deliver them all out here. And my desk is just full of packages now. I'm gonna get some help because there's a lot of packages. I mean, I can't even see over my desk. Hey girls, I need some help opening all these packages. Where'd you get packages from? Good grief. Our Amazon wish oh list. God. And I need some help opening these. Like, oh. we have a lot of stuff here. That is awesome. Check it out. This stuff is expensive too. Yeah. <laughs> This is so great. This is a very expensive bag. I think this bag was $163, but it really helps our skinny horses. So awesome. Thank you so much for, for getting it for us. We really appreciate it. It says, turn those skinny babies into chunks from Casey Ann. Thank you so Aww, much. Aw, thank you, Casey. Mm, dust, wonder dust. Oh, that's so awesome. Awesome. Oh, haha, I got the best one. Yeah. I got treats. Cookies. Oh, cookies, that's so awesome. We were out of horse cookies and I put up the Amazon wish list and I'm like, let's see, what did I say? Um, oh no, there's complaining going on in our pastures. We're out of cookies and it's gonna cause nightmares. Well, now the nightmares <laughs> can go away. And she's got SWAT, which is awesome because we have a lot of fly problems. Yes. Ryan says, enjoy your gift from Bronwyn. He, Aww. That one gave those. This is from Sue. Hi horses, enjoy your gift, aw. Thanks for all you do from Dawn. More cookies, yay. Our horses are gonna be so happy. The cookies and more of the weight gain stuff. That's awesome. We use more treats. Yay. I wonder if this one's treats. Yay. <laughs> we will have no more horse nightmares going on because they don't have treats. <laughs> Oh no, this is a good one, this is a good one. Oh. Let's see, come on. Nice. We got a horse toy, yay. <laughs> Look what I got you. <laughs> you can play with like it that. when you're finished with your ball, or your bath. I bet he'll love that. You should turn him in one of the pens with it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for sending in so many horse treats. The donkeys love them. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Hi. So this is Belle. I heard is you it? wanted to see her. Wow. She looks she's different in her picture, but it's yeah. probably because her winter coat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
She's and, beautiful. I don't know if Sarah's told you yet. We, we just found out last week she's pregnant. Yeah, I saw I'm on there seven that she months was. Seven pregnant, so. Pretty girl. I haven't loaded her or anything. I'm she did come she... out of a trailer, yeah. though. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. What are you feeding her right now? She's on Marin Pole. See? Okay. Her ears are the biggest ears I've ever seen. I know, they're so cute. I already said I want both of them, but it's up to you if you want just one. How did you guys find out about Horse Plus? Uh, well, actually, he found it on Facebook. I don't know how. It was just one of the events, right? Yeah, there was an event that was coming up, and I was inter interested in it. And I stepped over to Allie, and uh, she looked into it a little more, and was pretty intrigued by it. Yeah, because we had just bought property, and I've always wanted a donkey, and we saw you guys had some on there for this uh, special needs one. So it was, um, we actually saw it right before you had your last event. Um, so I filled out the application, and then when this one came around, it just kind of worked out. And how has your experience been so far today? It's been excellent. It you guys are all great and helpful, and the Answer horses all are. Our questions. Yeah, it's like they're all nice. Let us get involved a lot. Good. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye. You have a wonderful day. Yeah, it's very nice. Welcome to come up. She's a little shyer at the face sometimes, but not too bad. And she is not pregnant. No. She said she wasn't, but nope, we've had you're right, big belly. Yeah. <laughs> How did you find out about Horse Plus? I actually Googled horse or hu horse humane societies and found Horse Plus. And how has your experience been so far today? Great. Super easy. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you love mo most about the Sintra? Her color, her personality. She's just so sweet. Such a sweet horse. Yes, she is. She had us all so convinced she was pregnant. <laughs> she <laughs> at the auction, I'm like, oh, she's gonna have a baby. We like got a special a trailer for her to ride back in and <laughs> had a stall and we're like, any day now, she's gonna have a baby. And the vet's like, no. No. I'm like, what? <laughs> Aww. Well, as soon as I can get the trailer and get down here. So it's been a busy day. First day of our second um, adoption that we extended and it's been an amazing day. We've had seven adoptions, and this girl here was just adopted, and that makes 36 adoptions for our adoption event so far. We have more appointments too, uh, so that will leave a remaining 10 horses needing homes. Um, so hopefully we can get them all adopted. So now I get to move her over here. What do you do to yourself? Nothing. Well, then why are you Something scratching me. so much? Look at them. Good all over. Wait, right. what'd you get into? The shaving. Oh, well maybe. Wait, is there sea ticks in the shaving? I don't see ticks on me. Yeah, but you can't really you see can't sea see ticks. Them. Sea ticks are these magical little invisible creatures. Do they like... make you itch? Oh, yes. They bite ticks they... make you itch? Yeah. Ticks never make me itch. Yeah, no, Tennessee ticks are wicked. <laughs> And they're so little, you can't even like see them when they just come out. And we're in tick season right you now. You should tell people this when you interview for jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to research the state you're moving to. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, that looks miserable though. Get some uh, some stuff on there and, and don't scratch Go it too home much. And get some stuff. We had these really pretty uh, thank you cards from one of our donors. We just want to tell you how much we appreciate them. And I'm going to send one to one of our other donors who sent us a donation. I was hoping the help was fixing to come. Good gracious. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, I'm delivering some uh, persist orchard grass here today. This this orchard grass was developed by the University of Tennessee about 15 years ago. Um, to be the best um, orchard grass for the state of Tennessee, to grow in the state of Tennessee, and I, bar none, I think it is the best. 
What uh, about the round bales? How many round bales? Do oh, round bales, it's uh, uh, 14 bales every two weeks. So. And how much do your round bales weigh? They'll weigh a thousand pounds. Uh, matter of fact, we've got a special barn that we actually put y'all's hay in every year, and it's over 300 bales. <clears throat> and it'll all depend on how many horses you have, you know, and how many really that you order. I got more than just words. I got more than just words. You bring me songs sweet like the birds. So I got more than just words. We are getting a load of sawdust in right now, so he's just backing up. So I'm working on putting bunk beds together. We got two more bunk beds put in here. Uh, so that gives us three bunk beds in total, which is about six beds in all. Um, yeah, it should make it nice for anybody that wants to stay here. Have you shown any like I've issues had when it comes to- on her yeah. and she didn't, she's lazy. And the scar on her leg, it looks bad, but she's moved sound. Yeah. So move her around and she makes best friends with the newest one. I really do like her. I mean, she's, would, I think, with a little bit more time, time getting accustomed to where and she is. Consistency. And, yeah. Yeah. That she'd be able to, to help other kids as well. And if we even branch out to adults at some point, uh -huh. I think she's done not skittish, which is great. Yeah. It's and, important. And just, just calm and yeah, she's got her, her times when she wants to, to push buttons, but I think that would help too. Yeah. Because you're gonna get well, some people. No that, horse is perfect. Exactly. No person's perfect. Yeah. Happened to come across you guys through Facebook and then hey. the Facebook videos because I was looking for a horse and wanted to go through a rescue, not you know, just the breeders. <laughs> because I'm not one of those to focus more on like the lineage. I just want to help another horse. So, and it was, I just started looking through the website, started watching more and more videos and see what you guys did. And it was like, that's it, I'm sold. And how has your experience been today? It's been great. Um, everybody was super helpful when it came to more information and helping me understand the different <laughs> horses available. <laughs> and what do you love most about Sierra? She's got a uh, personality all her own. <laughs> But also, you know, she's she's caring as well. So, and a big, lovable horse, which I am also a tall person. So, <laughs> being that she can look me in the eye, I'm not afraid of that. Just message us when you're able to set up an appointment okay. to pick her up. Perfect. We'll do it. that Sierra and Redford were both adopted today so they're going to make number 37 and 38 so we're super excited so Sierra is number 37 and Redford is number 38 Reckless is being seen by the vet today. When we rescued him from the auction, he had a lump on his side and we didn't want to do the surgery right after we rescued him. So it's been a little bit now. He's gonna get um, an exam and see if we can get it removed. Um, Cause it would definitely, it would be nice to get it gone. It doesn't need to be there. He's like, y'all putting a y'all putting a saddle on? What are you doing? These are so handsome. So he's getting a little bandage on to help with his incision for a little bit. So these horses came in and they're getting their coggins done, their health checks. They're a little on the wild side, so we're using our shoots. So it's kind of a sad day. We've we've really been trying with Sybil, and the more we've we've tried and fought for her, it's just we keep running into dead ends. And um, through today's vet visit, we've we've just determined we can't put her through anymore. We don't know exactly even what has gone on, other than it's something she could have had for a really long time. And um, it's the hard part of rescue is is rescuing them 
to have problems like this. We could have seen her at the auction, been like, oh, we don't know what that is, so we're not going to rescue her. But we did, and we tried, and sadly, we can't do anything. But we're thankful that she didn't end up on the slaughter truck that night and that we, we did everything we could for her. So it's just there's, there's happy days and sad days, and this is going to be a sad day. Turn the lights on. of the road take it back to the shelter we just happened to be driving along and I saw it on the side of the road it's like we have to stop and get this kitten got him out of the bushes it's so cute Aww, it was on the road almost back to the shelter oh, sweet kitty sweet kitty how could somebody dump you on the side of the road we got the little precious cheaty snuggled in for the night. So it's really sad in our county there is no services for dogs and cats. There's no local animal shelter that you can just take them to. So it's quite common that we find animals just dumped on the side of the road like this. And it's really heartbreaking because nobody deserves that. This is while we focus on rescuing horses, uh, we rescue all animals that need help. So. starting to come in so I'm gonna hide little kitty and ask Sarah who's crazy about cats now this is Sarah behind the camera not Sarah that you uh, see and talk to at the front desk all the time and so I'm gonna tell her she needs to come talk to me in my office and she'll be confused Good morning, Sarah. Um, I need to talk to you in my office, so come directly back to my office as soon as you uh, get in through the gate, because I need to talk to you. Well, have a seat. All right. I'm sure you're thoroughly confused, <laughs> a but I bit. have a special job for you today. Okay. Because I know you're going to love it. Okay, so I'm ready. Right up your alley. I think I'm ready. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you find it? I found him on the road last night. Oh my goodness. We were driving along and I'm like, Jason, there's a kitten. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm a sucker for kittens, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's, is it a girl or a boy? And so, um. What are you? I think you're a little oh, girl. Uh -uh. Girl or a boy? I think um, sure. Anyways, we're driving along and oh I saw him there right on the road and I'm like, Jason, we have to go back. And uh, it was in the bushes and it was crying and crying. Oh, bless its heart. And so we need to give it probably a bath because it kind of smells. Yeah. And I thought you were the perfect person for it. So uh, it's kitty spa day. I'm honored to have this privilege of taking care of you today. Yes. Y'all, I just wanted to say, you know, I love filming and everything. I love it so much, but I'm gonna be leaving to go taking a little break from filming for just a little bit because look what we got. <laughs> so filming would be temporary, but we're going to give this little guy a bath. He's kind of dirty, but he was found on the road. Look at him. Aww. Hmm. Say, I don't like baths. Say, we don't like baths. Oh, he's got fleas on him. We'll have to give him a flea treatment. Poor kitty. We'll get you all taken care of. Okay. There you go, kitty. <laughs> Will he just stand oh, there? Happy. 
Oh, poor baby. Swish wash, taking a bath. You have so many fleas crawling on you, baby. We're gonna get you some, some help, okay? Come in. Oh, you're so precious. You're so precious. So this little guy, he's got quite a few uh, fleas on him, so we're just taking some special um, tick and flea uh, shampoo for dogs and cats, and we're just gonna massage him. He's gonna turn into a little alien here for a minute, but this will help get all the fleas off of him. And hey, look at all this dirty water, you guys. That was on him. All right, so now we're just rinsing all the shampoo off of him, and he should be feeling better here shortly. He's probably hating us right now. Yeah, he doesn't like it. But he's and, just and unsure. Got a towel coming for you. Yes, we got a towel coming for you. Oh no. All right, All right. There we go. Oh. You know, they say the cutest thing is a baby just after a bath. I'd say they're right. He looks a little scrawny, but to be honest, <laughs> they were looking a little rough, guys. Oops, there, I got a little bit of a bath, too. Mm -hmm. I'm a very busy person, and I don't like wasting any time. I feel like nothing's getting done. No, you are doing a lot. <laughs> So this morning I walked out my door to feed the cat and I quickly went back inside because... So I'm just loving our Amazon wish list. Um, there was something I found and I was like, oh, that could be so useful. And I put it on the Amazon wish list because it was like, that would be amazing to have here at our shelter. And then I went back and was like, oh, somebody purchased it. So <clears throat> we get to open it up. Make sure, I hope this is what it is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is a little mysterious, but I think, I still think it's what it is. <gasps> Ta-da! Okay, so what this is, is this is a very fancy, fancy faucet sink uh, thing that's gonna go in our vet room, med room. So it has a little sprayer handle so we can like like when we were washing the kitten, like it would have been so nice to have this, but now we have it. And then the sink part, and you turn it on and off. Super, super, super awesome. Uh, yeah, here's the spray nozzle that goes on it. Ha! <laughs> um, so check that out. That's, this is gonna be amazing to have here. It sprays out the bottom, it sprays out the side. Um, so. Super, super excited. And it was um, Kristen, and it says, enjoy your gift. We're definitely gonna enjoy having this. Uh, this will get a great addition to our facility, so thank you. This is Rocky, and today we're just doing his evaluation. He came to us, and we were told that he's not broke, which is seems to be true, but it seems like he knows a little bit about halter etiquette but he's got a sweet eye and I think he will learn quickly, even though he seems to be about 16 years old when the vet checked him. I'm getting ready to replace this one uh, with the new one here in the box. for me please sure what's going on does that look good yeah yeah now you're doing a good job thanks for coming and helping me out I'm sorry I keep bothering you since Sarah mm, yeah Sarah isn't here yeah now Sarah's on vacation and Jesse's on vacation <sighs> <laughs> but no you're doing a great job you're doing a great job um, 
Yeah, and there's a lot to learn. So I doing... feel like nothing's getting done. No, you are doing a lot. Um, but I mean, like Jesse's not here to work horses, but of course we adopted out 38 horses. So um, we still have a handful here, but I'm gonna work on fundraising. There's an auction coming up and um, interrupt me again if you need to, because I'm here for you since nobody else seems to be. So today we are cleaning and conditioning all of our saddles. Sierra is getting transported to her new home today and um, a Grazing Grace is going to be transporting her and we've worked with them as an adoption partner, great organization and they're going to take Reckless because they have an adopter that will give them an awesome home. So we're doing a shelter transfer today. We have some guys coming here to give us a quote on some tractor work. We need some of the shelters cleaned out before winter and just some other work around the shelters. So Jason's going around with them, kind of showing them the projects, um, and we're really hoping we can get concrete under the shelters because in the winter time and the rain and the mud, we really just need a, a nice, clean, non-muddy surface for the horses. So this is kind of the first step in that project is getting it cleaned out down where it needs to be because uh, as the horses eat, there's always hay that they don't want to eat. And so um, it kind of just piles up and we put another hay bale on it. But if we're able to get it cleaned out, concrete down, it'll be much easier to keep it clean. The horses won't be standing in mud in the winter time when they're eating. So this is a, a very high priority project in my mind. So hopefully we can get it done. This is Daisy. We, we started with brushing her out just to get her comfortable with me. And then right now we're just working on her trust and halter training. Oh wow, this is great. Um, Ken at Red Giant. Red Giant is a uh, video editing software company. They make plugins, etc., for uh, Adobe Premiere that we use to make all of the episodes on. But he just sent me an email that says they've uh, discontinued all nonprofit pricing, but if we create an account at Red Giant, they'll provide us a complimentary pluralized license to support our work. Well, thank you so much, Ken at Red Giant. Um, what Pluralize will allow us to do is match up the audio and the video much easier in post-production, meaning when I'm sitting here editing, because I'm a very busy person and I don't like wasting any time. If I can do something faster and more efficiently, I just believe that's the best way to go about it. And this software should make it where we can match up the audio that we record on a separate device to the video, just all seamless and automatically. So thank you so much, Red Giant. We really appreciate your donation. When we rescued Martha from the auction, she was just terrorized. When I went into the, the small pen with her, I, I was trying to reach out to her to let her see that I wasn't going to hurt her. I'm not going to hurt you. Easy, baby. Easy. You don't know what I want, do you? You're so scared. And she just, she was so scared she didn't want anything to do with me. It's a pretty good scrape on her leg. Come on. She's been favoring it. And when we got her to the, you know, back here to the shelter, she was still very, very standoffish. Uh, we really weren't able to touch her much. We had to put her in the chute to, um, you know, just give her her vaccines and worming and antibiotics. And we turned her out in the pasture for the last month. And I've gone out there and she's been very, very standoffish, but and this is the first time she's looking at treats with me. And I think she's gonna take her first treat from me. She took it. Good girl, you got it. You were so scared and now you're you're eating treats out of my hand. She actually came up to me and wanted to interact with me and I was able to feed her a cookie and it was so exciting. So uh, it's nice and sunny out and I started bush hogging and then decided it was time to sharpen up the blades a little bit. I got about half the fields done so far, so it's time to resharpen them. thrilled that 
there's progress being made on the road in front of our shelter. And this guy just sprayed a bunch of tar down. There he goes. So they put all this tar down and then they put um, this really fine gravel and it sinks into the tar and it's basically a, a, like a, a paved road. We have been driving on a dirt road for almost a year now. They came and covered it up with, um, it's called chert. It's kind of like decomposed granite. Um, and I was like, okay, they must be gonna fix the road. And months just kept going by and I'm like, oh, what on earth? We can't live on a, a dirt road back here with all these horse trailers. And so I am so thankful to Lewis County Road Department for fixing our road. <laughs> it's gonna be so much better. And uh, yeah, I'm like, so excited. So this morning I walked out my door to feed the cat and I quickly went back inside because it was cold. So I put on a long sleeve shirt and then I put on my hoodie because I was freezing. It's not September or October yet, so it's not supposed to be cold. So we thought the county was done with the road and then this morning they're out here tarring it again. They're gonna put another layer on it. So we're gonna have such a nice road in front of our shelter now. I just, I couldn't be more excited. Driving on a dirt road for months on in for whatever reason they covered up the last paved road i'm so glad they're fixing it we are getting ready to bring in the horses out of the 10 acre pasture that have been in quarantine uh, we're moving them to a different quarantine more of a soft quarantine for the last few days and the vet's going to see them today and just check them out make sure they're they're doing good um, so far they they look like they're doing good i'm just going to use some of these donated cookies you all got off of our amazon wish list to intrigue them into the barn because we have to weigh them and worm them again so they're out there I've got my bucket come on guys come on check that out Liberty's on her way over come on I got goodies come on come on come get your goodies So this guy we rescued from the auction almost a month ago and he has gained like six pounds. Um, typically we see around 20 to even 100 pounds. Um, so we'll definitely want to get him on a special diet but he has gained some weight during his, his uh, quarantine time. We first worm them with a Quest Wormer when they come in and then we worm them with ivermectin for their second wormers just so we get all the parasites. Um, there's a lot of bot issues here so we give them the Quest which is really good with the bots and then ivermectin will help with all the ticks we have around here. Any lice they may have. Um, we do lice powder them but um, it's just another step. So Quest when they come in, ivermectin when they're coming out of quarantine. So are eight 40. 7 pounds. That is so cool. We're so This is like grain, but in the hand. Oh. In less than 30 days, we just weighed everybody and collectively they've gained about 550 pounds. And we're very happy about that. Nobody's lost any weight, which is the way it should be, that nobody should be losing weight. So we're very happy with their progress. Freedom, which is a little chestnut pony, he came in weighing uh, 
219 and he's 250 now. So you gave him 35 pounds. That's about all he needs to carry. <laughs> These are the horses from the July auction rescue and our vet just cleared them to leave our quarantine facility. So they'll be evaluated for riding and everything and get them available for adoption next week. So the other group of horses are on their way. They just got a late start due to technical truck problems. She may have been pushed in situations she wasn't comfortable with yet. I'm very excited to see they were able to rescue. These are the horses that we just rescued out of the slaughter pipeline. Back to work. It's time to work. Yay. Hey, 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 you're oh, hi. Yeah, <laughs> we need to talk to you. Oh, no. You were gone for like 10 entire mm -hmm. Long day. It was nine. So while you were gone, I'm glad you. I'm glad she looks tired. I am tired, tired and sore, but happy to be back. Okay. So <clears throat> while you're away, the county got finally got back in the saddle or whatever we want to say. <laughs> they fixed our road, which I is really noticed. <laughs> yeah, it looks awesome. <laughs> so happy about that. Um, Reckless went to a Grays and Grace as an adoption partner. They have a home, so he's no longer here. The vet cleared all the auction horses, so they're ready for you to evaluate. Um, but we did something while you all were gone um, that we didn't post publicly. Uh, we actually did an auction rescue. Oh, awesome. I yeah. had a sneaky suspicion. Travis, look who's back. <laughs> They're back from vacation. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I didn't miss you at all. <laughs> so you're going to the auction today. Well, we weren't planning on going this week. We were planning on going next week. That's what I've been fundraising for. But hey, if you can rescue some horses for us, that would be amazing. Yeah, no, I mean, you're such a great, awesome volunteer, but um, yes, if you can, um, you know, just get get horses that need help and um, I'll call in with our credit card and pay for them and uh, we can save some horses tonight and then we'll go to the auction next week. Yeah, no, this will work. Wow, thank you so much. I am so excited. Two auction rescues in one month. Well, we haven't done the one next week yet, but we'll get there. We'll work, concentrate on today and um, just let me know how it goes. When you get to the auction, take pictures, send me pictures, um, and we'll see how it goes from there. All right, I'm excited. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right, bye. So, one of our volunteers is headed to the auction right now, and she called to let me know that she was just gonna go and see what it was like there um, and what type of horses were there this evening. And because of that, uh, she's gonna be able to rescue some horses for us tonight. I am, every opportunity we have to rescue horses out of the slaughter pipeline, we wanna take it. Every day the USDA sends out a report and usually every week there's hundreds and hundreds of horses exported into Mexico for the purpose of slaughter. So we have the opportunity to rescue these horses. Uh, we don't know how many we'll rescue. We, I mean, we're not there ourselves. It's one of our volunteers. So it's going to be exciting for us on this end to see if we're able to, to save some horses. So fingers crossed. Got from the auction. She's super beat up. She's got a nasty wound there. Um, she's got wounds under her throat. She's got wounds on her chest, swelling, and a really nasty one right there. But the vet's here. We're getting her everything she needs. So these are the horses that we just rescued out of the slaughter pipeline. You can tell they're relaxed. They're happy. I'm gonna put some more medicine on her face. 
Hey, baby. You're such a good girl. She is so beat up. Trimmed Revere's feet because we wanted to make sure she was balanced and her feet were really long for her evaluation. But we do have the farrier coming out in a couple days and he'll finish doing all the other horses from the July auction. Oh. Your foot feel better? So today we have some observers watching our um, evaluation process. Uh, we're evaluating the horses from the July auction. And um, so this reporter, she's been to our adoption events. She's seen an auction intake. Now she's seeing the process after the auction and the 30 days of quarantine of how we're evaluating these horses to figure out their adoptability levels and what adopters will be best fit for that horse. So Rivera did really good today. She seems like she may have been pushed in situations she wasn't comfortable with yet, and so she fights a little bit when you're riding her by herself, but she, if you let her think about it, she pushes through and figures it out. She does seem to neck rein pretty well, but also direct reins, and she's done really good. She did so good, she needs a cookie. This is Belle. Right now we're just giving her a good brush down for her official evaluation. The way you're moving It's got me moving my own feet Greatest feeling That I could ever dare to dream This is Belle. She just finished her evaluation. She did really well. Her groundwork is excellent. Um, she's, she's green in the saddle. She doesn't know too much, but with some work, I think she'll be a really great horse. Patriot's still underweight, so we're not going to ride him, but we wanted to just make sure he carries a saddle and wears a bridle and he's doing good. This is Brave, he's six months old. He's a really sweet little mini. Right now we're just giving him a brush down. So this is Brave. He was just evaluated. He did really well. He's he's only six months old, so we've got a lot of learning to do, but he's really sweet. This is Liberty. She's 15 years old. She came in in the July auction, and today we're doing her evaluation to see if she's good um, with the saddle. She may have some trouble with her eyes, eyesight, um, and she needs work with picking up her feet and stuff, but her groundwork is really well, and she's really sweet. The banner's pretty scared right now, so right now we're just gaining his trust and then we'll brush him down. This is Banner, he just finished his evaluation and he did he did pretty good. He's um he's nervous and he's not sure of himself, but I think with some work he'll be a good horse. So this is Martha. She came in in our July auction and she's been doing really good out in quarantine and gained a lot of weight. She doesn't seem like she's halter broke, but we've had a good little session for our evaluation and she's learning to give to the pressure. The auction's tomorrow and we've been fundraising um, all month, but uh, definitely pushing today. Uh, Jason and I will be driving to the auction. Um, I'll be fundraising again tomorrow. It's just a, a hectic thing of fundraising, trying to get enough funds to rescue and care for these horses. 
and then rescue them at the auction and then it gets really chaotic because we have to get them all back to the shelter. We're excited but at the same time I'm like whoo I know it's gonna be rough because auction rescues are very rough emotionally physically and just exhausting. Uh, just putting some sawdust in the trailer. We're going to the auction and the horses will appreciate the sawdust to ride back on. We're on our way to the auction and it looks like it might start raining. We're getting into a rainstorm. It looks like it's gonna be pouring up here in a second. As you can see, there's some blue sky over here and that's kind of how it works in Tennessee. Blue sky, storm. Well, it is raining. It almost always rains either going to or from the auction. That's just the way Tennessee weather is. I'm very excited this evening. We were able to rescue 20 precious lives. These are just some of them. This one right here, this is the uh, halflinger. That is, he's really young, but he's got a sway back. You can see there because we're told that he was ridden too young. And so it broke his back down already. So we're going to have our vet check him out, see what's going on with that. But just thank you guys so much for your support. These are just some of the ones that we saved tonight. We saved 20 in total. And we're just super excited about that. So we're going to get a few hours of sleep and then get up in the morning, get them sorted, take pictures of each one and get them loaded and off to the shelter. Thank you all again so much. Here at the auction. Hi, baby. It's okay. You're gonna be all right. We're gonna get you out of here. Hello, beautiful. You're so skinny. Hi, sweetie. How are you? Oh, precious. You're so goopy-eyed. Get you some medicine, we get you back. Hey everyone, good morning. It's Tawny here at the auction. We're getting ready to sort all the horses and load them up. Uh, they've been through a lot. This girl, her face is really itchy. She's got goobers on her eyes. She keeps wanting me to itch her face. Oh, sweetie, come on. There you go. You say hi? Uh, so we got 20 horses last night and um, we're gonna do their initial intake video or pictures and some video and get them ready to load up. It's gonna take two uh, trucks and trailers to get them all moved back to our shelter today. We have the veterinarian and farrier scheduled to be there when uh, these horses arrive. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Hi, baby. It's gonna be okay. Yeah, it's all right now. All the scaries are over. Oh, we're getting this one haltered. I just looked at its knee here and its legs are in pretty rough shape. The horse. Hey you, you want some attention. You're so pretty, you're so pretty. Yeah, that one's so skinny. But you just, you want attention, don't you? I love all its spotty markings. Now this one came over and was playing at the gate with its lips. And I saw its teeth and it's not that old. It still has baby teeth. So, Here's a beautiful young horse that could have ended up on a slaughter truck just because it was at the wrong place at the wrong time. They don't like me. Hi, baby. You're all right. It has a hot iron brand on this hip. It says 310 on this side. And a freeze brand that says 11 on the other side. It's here on the side of her hip. And she's so hungry. Such a sweet little horse. So we are putting them in this pen after we take their pictures so they can get used to each other before we go on the drive. Good morning, buddy. How are you? Nice. What a good 
good mule. So, uh, we typically don't get mules that are this sweet and affectionate at auctions. <laughs> typically they're really abused and scared to death of people, but you can see in here that this mule has a ton of arthritis. And when it walks, it's, it's limping a lot um, from that arthritis. So, this, this mule was dumped here because it was, it's lame. And I'm thankful we got it. So we got this horse last night. This horse is exactly what kill buyers are looking for. This horse is so fat, it has fat pads. Um, it's just fat just has nowhere else to go. It just builds up in lumps on uh, a horse's body. And uh, thankfully we got her instead of the kill buyers. Hey babies. Hello, you're so pretty. He's a stallion. He is a stallion, so he needs to go with the boys. Hi, babies. Look how precious you are. Oh, you want to come say hi? Hello. Look at you. You are a well-bred Arabian. So refined. Broad forehead. You came from somewhere fancy. Hello. Hello. How are you? You've got a pretty nasty bite mark right there. This poor little mini is so skinny. They don't eat much. There's no reason for them to be skinny. There's no reason for any animal to be skinny, but seeing a skinny beat up mini is just so sad. This one is extremely, extremely sick. I'm so sorry. Can I touch you? Sometimes they have strangles when they sound like that, but I don't see any in there. So this is one trailer load. They're all settled down. They're all doing really good. So they're going to be riding together because they're they're happy and comfortable together. We have three critical ones that will be riding together. Little ones, they'll get to ride all by themselves so they'll be safe. In this group, we've got three little stallions and then two uh, young stallions. Um, so they're all gonna be riding together so they'll be away from the girls. And that's 20 horses ready to go to our shelter. It's going to be about a two and a half hour drive. And while we're driving back to the shelter, I'll be working on getting all the data of what these horses need back to our shelter. So the vet and the farriers and everyone will be ready and know what to expect when we get there. We got the first load of horses back to the shelter now and the vet is not quite here yet but he is going to be on his way. We have our awesome farrier here and we're going to start the intake process and then once the vet's here we'll be able to continue uh, with x-rays and all that good stuff. Yep. Got yum yums? I'm going to say 40. Oh, now you'll be able to see better, baby. You don't have all that hair in your face. 
<laughs> Those are such pretty little bitty teeth. These little baby teeth. I just don't think they're baby teeth. I think they're worn out. Uh, I don't know. I said like 40. I mean, ponies yeah. live forever, and that's the worst set of pony teeth I've seen in a while. I don't remember any of that bad either. Yeah. She's... But... Uh, she may have voted for Reagan. Since Maybe. this is election year, we, we go by that age category. She, she's <laughs> been here a little while. Just off the top of my head, I can already see the bones. Yeah, forming and everything. I bet you it's. I mean, I think there's no angle. It's all straight. It, I bet you he's 20, 25 degrees, 25 degrees or better. What's bothered me more is that uh, bone is re yeah. rebuilding and. Well, it's not really supposed to rebuild like that's kind of weird. It doesn't atrophy because doesn't the coffin bone not have any marrow in it? Yeah, it's just. Is it more it's, it's, it's rebuilding wrong, which is always a bad sign on bone. Okay, we, found, we have a little 12-year-old pony mare here, and she is severely foundered, especially in her right front. Usually there's one that's worse than the other on a front end. And um, we don't have a caliper to actually gauge it, but just from experience looking at the x-rays, we're at least 20 to 25 degrees rotation. And she's to a point now where her bone is atrophied and it's, it's a growing growth in the wrong direction. And um, it's not really salvageable at this point, it's very sad. So sadly with this pony, with the uh, severe founder, there's nothing we can do. We have a lot of people asking us, you know, why don't we give them time where we just leave them here at the shelter and love them? And when a horse is in chronic pain, chronic suffering, we want to eliminate that chronic suffering as soon as possible. There's no reason to allow an animal to continue suffering. So we can bring them here, they know peace, they know safety, they can know a bucket of grain and be surrounded by people that care and that's the best gift we can give them. Um, it's just not, it's not okay to allow them to continue suffering. So the veterinarian's just sedated her and we're gonna let that sedation take effect before he gives her the final injection. 195. Maybe take on the side, maybe five. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So I'm just vaccinating him right now. He is sedated for his gelding operation. And he's got one more shot of that before he's gonna be flat out sleeping. Uh, Quint the farrier is going to trim his feet while he's out too. So he's got a lot going on here. So 200. 45 pounds. 45 pounds. Well, what you usually go on, and it'd always be prettier if it was sewn up. But it's it's not hurting them. It's not if it's not infected. Yeah. It's not a. What they usually do is get a lot of dust and flies around there because of the secretions. It's a bit of a rodeo here. We have uh, two wild miniature stallions. Uh, this one's just waking up. He is halter trained. This one's still sleeping. And the vet just gave the last shot that's gonna make the other one really sleepy. Uh, but they're giving us a run for their, their, their money. They, they are feisty little guys. He's so Flip it around in the other picture, you'll see the side bone. Yeah. When they break a coffin bone, it's pretty much it, right? It doesn't have any marrow. Well, it doesn't have any marrow. It doesn't. 
It's just got to go back. Is she real lame? Yeah. 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 When we rescued the mule, we knew that euthanasia was probably going to be, have to be considered because of the lameness that the the mule was going through. And after doing x-rays, there's nothing we're able to do except the last act of kindness. And um, the kindest thing we can do is not prolong suffering. And that's why when a horse or a donkey or a mule is suffering chronic pain, we want to put them down as soon as possible. Just give them a bucket of grain, love them, and not allow that suffering to continue. So even though sometimes they're here for a very short time, we try to make their last few hours the best we can. So this mare here, she has a lot of arthritis in her knee. We're going to take an x-ray to see. She's about 25 plus. We don't know. I mean, once a horse gets into its 20s, it's hard to tell exactly how old they are. But we know she's she's really old. But we're going to x-ray the knee to see just how bad it is. Yeah, so what do you see in there, Doc? See all these bones right here. You want them to be smooth. And see, there's like a ton of little bones in here. And this one right here sort of looks, almost looks like it's been broken and is healing, scarring up. See how that one's square? But we still have some arthritis on that one. This one right here looks like we have lines everywhere. I mean, there's nothing we could do for her. There's not anything yeah. to rebuild her. It's not. Yeah. So why don't you know, we... And she's already thin. Getting her through the winter would be tough. Well, we've done x-rays with her, and there's nothing we can do um, because of her age and her knee being so arthritic. So she's going to be put to sleep. In these, It's fun and exciting rescuing these horses and bringing them back to the shelter, but as rescuers, you know, having to deal with, you know, bringing an animal here, having hopes for them, and then putting them to sleep is just, it's a hard part of it, but... If we had not rescued them, they would have been just another number on the USDA report. This is one of the horses we rescued last week and she had some issues um, with her hind end. So the vet's gonna recheck her again today, possibly take some x-rays, see if we can get to the bottom of why she might have ended up at the auction. not looking very good um, she's got some green snot coming out uh, she ate some grass so we've got a lot of issues going on up here um, she has foundered she has a really big crust on her neck um, we're gonna take some x-rays and then kind of make a decision from there okay yeah she's off by like I don't know, between five and ten degrees yeah. it's not like a really bad founder I'm more concerned about the, the atrophy on the dorsal Side of the coffin bone and then and what's whatever's that? going and on. Whatever. That yeah. Yeah. So it seems like we're making lots of really hard decisions today, but this horse, uh, after x rays, we found there's a lot of problems going on with her legs and hoof and her breathing. And um, the kindest thing we can do is relieve her suffering. So uh, she's another one that the vet's going to have to put to sleep. And um, I'm just thankful she came here. Um, so we could get her the professional help she needed. So we rescued this guy last week at the auction and um, the farrier is here to do his feet and we decided to put him on the scale just to see if he's gained any weight. He's gained 39 pounds in one week. So we're super excited for him. So the other group of horses are on their way. They just got a late start due to technical truck problems. But they're on their way, but it's still gonna be a bit, so the vet and vet tech are packing up. They're gonna be on call for us. If, if we need them, they'll be right back out here. But um, we saw all the horses at the auction, so we know roughly what's, what's going on with them. We had all the critical horses with us, and that's who the vet has seen. And so the vet will be out here at least next week to give everyone a, a look over if, unless we feel that he needs to come back out.
It's not typically our normal auction thing. Typically, they're all seen by the vet that day. Um, but you can't always control everything. And when trucks have truck problems, what can you do? <laughs> We're waiting for the next trailer. Everyone's kind of tired and exhausted, so it's kind of nice to have a bit of a break. But we really want these horses to get here. Um, <laughs> because the sooner they get here, the sooner we can get them all their vaccines and weigh them. And when we're done, then we're done for the day. And we're looking forward to that because auction rescue intake days are exhausting. Just... We're not actually going to be done for the day. Some of us will be done for the day. Some of us have to start copying the uh, video footage over and start editing the uh, next episode because we have something planned tomorrow and I won't be here all day tomorrow to get the episode edited. So I get to work on that this evening after the intake is done. Oh, yeah, and back to me. Uh, once this is done here, I have to send out a video and a blog and tell everyone what happened and that the horses are back here safe. So yeah, my my... I'm not gonna be done either this evening when we're done in this barn. So what we're doing is we're moving these little guys. They got gelded. And uh, we're hoping that this one will follow this one. So um, that's the goal. It's supposed to be right. That's how wide it is on this foot. It's stretched that much. So we just got this horse in from the auction and we've taken a look at her and she has severe um, founder in, the, in her feet. Um, extremely stretched lamina, which um, for those of you who don't know is a white line. Part of it is where it grows down. It's instead of being roughly an eighth of an inch thick or so, it's actually like an inch and a half thick right now. So it's severely stretched. Um, so, and then it's, a, it's from a metabolic disorder. If you walk back here with me, you can see some of the fat pads back here. This is not normal, it's from a um, metabolic disorder. Vers the, the way I like to liken it is kind of like a diabetic um, with the, uh, the grasses and whatnot. The vet's gonna come back and check. Uh, really concerned about its back. It does seem to have some pain involved with it, so um, not exactly sure what's going on. It could have been born this way. It could be a, just a genetic thing. Um, but we're gonna have our vet check it out and figure out what's best for him. Oh.
long day and this is the last horse we have uh, to do intake on. So we're happy about that because we're all running out of steam. Oh, I'm not gonna try to hurt you. Oh, good girl. These are just different vaccines that we give them. A lot of people wonder why we give vaccines right off the bat. And we've tried multiple different of waiting or doing it sooner or later. And this, um, we do a five way uh, rabies, tetanus, uh, strangles. It seems to work the best for them, gives them the best start. So we do vaccinate on intake because of that. No microchip. She'll have one now though. That's another auction rescue that's done. Uh, we did two this month, which is a big undertaking, and I can't thank everyone enough for your support and the amazing team that we have here at Horse Plus Humane Society to make a big intake like this just work so seamlessly. Uh, just thank you all so much for your support. We couldn't do this without you. Oh man, as well, it'd be extremely painful. And Here at Horse Plus, we are all about safety. They will have an amazing home out there. They're out here in this beautiful pasture and they're just happy and that's the pictures I like to get. So I'm off to go protest uh, the Big Lick Animal Cruelty at Shelbyville where the Celebration Tennessee Walking Horse Show is being held. And uh, typically Jason always goes with me, but today he's editing the horse shelter heroes. And so um, he's not going with me, which I'm really sad about, but I'm thankful that I have the opportunity to go be a voice for the Tennessee walking horses. What they do at these shows is there's this, um, this big lick that they like to do and everyone hoots and hollers when it happens and the horse takes a really big stride and, and like they're just really paddling it out there. And how they get that uh, gate is they take uh, mustard oil or diesel oil, any like chemical that would hurt your skin. They put them on their pasterns, they'll wrap them in plastic, let those chemicals literally burn into their skin. And then they'll put a chain on it and they'll train them with that. And when the chain hits the skin, it causes them to flinch, which helps create that big lick that they're they're wanting that artificial gait. So it's it's really just horrendous that these horses have to go through this. So every opportunity I have to go be a voice for horses that are being abused, I take it. And that's why I'm going protesting today. protesting the Big Lake Animal Cruelty Show. Um, this guy, hold on, he's videoing us, so we'll video him. There he is. Big lie, big lick, big lie, big lick, big lie, big, big lick, big lie. I've, I've rescued the sword horses. I've seen their I've seen their chemical burns. They've been abused. So, that was a prime example of a big lick person. He says we're out here lying, and like I just said, I rescued these horses from auction. Yeah, I have it on video. He said that we're just following a big lie. We just got done protesting here. We are packing up. I'm just thankful that I can be out here and being the voice for these horses. Meow, come on. Meow. Come on. Come on. Okay. You're okay, kitty. Aw, just got it off the side of the road. Everyone's starting to come in, so I'm gonna hide little kitty and ask Sarah, who's crazy about cats. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you find it? I found him on the road last night. Oh my goodness. We were driving along and I'm like, Jason, there's a kitten. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm, I'm a sucker for kittens, <laughs> guys. <I know. laughs> oh my goodness. This will help get all the fleas off of him. You know, they say the cutest thing is a baby just after a bath. I'd say they're right. I have a little proposition for you. So, Last fall, with my little kitten, 
I have still all of his stuff, even litter and stuff. I was wondering if you didn't have anybody to take care of him this weekend that me and my family, I think we could welcome him, welcome him into our home for the weekend if you wanted us to. Sounds good. Just don't forget his flea bass. Yes, we will take good care of him. So I think it was the right call having Sarah give that little kitty a bath because now she wants to take it home. And uh, hmm, if I was to guess, I think the kitty's going to live there for a long time. Hi, Biscuit. Hi, Biscuit. <laughs> hey, y'all. I wanted to hop on here and give you guys a little update on the little kitten, Miles. Y'all named him Miles on Facebook. Um, that was the uh, highest voted name. And so um, we're calling him Biscuit because he's always making biscuits with his little paws. So I guess we can call him Biscuit Miles or something like that. We're so happy that we were able to invite him into our family and that he gets to stay. And I know uh, me and my family, he's gonna be loved for a long time. So just wanted to give you guys a little update. Money was just surrendered. Her family wasn't able to take care of her anymore. She has some medical issues that we're gonna have the vet look at to see if there is anything that we can do for her. But in the meantime, she's just getting her tag put on and some love and we're gonna put her out in the pasture. This is Sarah. This is the Sarah that's behind the camera usually. And we have all these Amazon packages off our Amazon wish list. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get her in front of the camera <laughs> so she can help me. So this is a ginormous horse toy ball. And we put it on the wish list. This thing will blow up huge and the horses can play with it out in the field and kick it around. Here's all these donated amazing items and we just can't thank you enough for going onto our Amazon wish list, seeing what we need currently at our facility and making those purchases. So we just did an Amazon wish list, uh, got all these packages and this is one of those huge horse balls. Those are handy. The great, great big one. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> what we're I'm gonna let you girls take this and fill it up, and um, let a horse <laughs> get. That's gonna be thrilling wow. today. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them, I mean, are they probably gonna be scared of it? But once they learn yeah. what to do, I wonder what Parsi would do with it. <laughs> Anyways, this is so awesome. I can't yeah. wait to see it all blown up. That's really hard. <laughs> you sure? How long do you think it's been? About 20 minutes, 15, 20. So you went from your hands, now you're using your feet. It kind of looks like you're riding a very small horse. <laughs> so y'all finally done? Yep. Yep. This horse uh, came in last week from the auction, but it was on the second trailer, and so wasn't able to be seen by the vet, and the Coggins didn't match, so we're getting a new Coggins um, for him. So there's four horses that need Coggins. So I'm just catching her up. And uh, the vet's gonna get the Coggins done exam. So all of these guys need Coggins. What's that one's number? Uh, 240. Be a good horse. All he took was some blood. The vet's got the Coggins done. He's checked them out. They're all doing fine. So they're gonna be out in the pasture now. We had them in a holding pen until the vet could get them evaluated, but they're good to go. And um, so now they'll have their rest of their 30 days of quarantine and then they'll be available for adoption. We rescued Perseus from the auction last week and it, his trailer that he was on came late. So he wasn't here when the vet 
uh, got here to do uh, the examination of him, so we're doing it now. We're really concerned about his, his hooves. It looks like he's severely foundered. The vet, uh, the farrier looked at the horse, and he was really concerned about him, so we're, we're gonna figure out what's best for him. You know, your standard thing, you want the coffin bone to follow the uh, angle of the hoof wall. And if you can see here, we got an increasing angle when we go down. And this one is so severe that it is even deforming the bottom of the, the sole of the foot. It's because the coffin bone wanted to the, come through. The coffin bone is thinking one more bout of colic, I mean, uh, laminitis, and uh, this coffin bone would through, be through the bottom of that. So and one, what's that diagnosis like? What would that do to the horse? Oh man, as well, it'd be extremely painful and and probably it'd, it'd kill it. It pain more way painful. See all this, all this is overgrown here. Uh, the white lines greatly extended, the foot hoofs grown out. It looks like the bone is just a few centimeters from where my thumb is, fixing to break through the sole of the foot. After doing x-rays, there's nothing we can do for this, this horse. Its coffin bone is literally going to be rupturing through the sole of its foot if we don't, um, you know, step in and prevent that from happening. Uh, this horse is in its 20s and it was one of the horses that um, the kill buyers were really upset that we bought because, you know, it was a bigger horse and I'm just thankful that we brought this horse here and was able to make the right decision with our vet on what's the best for this horse. See, that's the disc space that everybody, you got a disc and that allows your back to go back and forth as it needs to, and it's cushiony. If you look here, they're pretty small disc spaces. Those are way smaller than on a dog and a human. And then if you look at this disc space right here, we're already getting bone to bone. So he's gonna have a lot of back pain. He's got a lot of back pain, yeah. Never can, never will be able to carry her. He can, yeah, see that. See how much thicker that edge, edge of the bone is? That's cause he's already going bone to bone and getting some bony reaction in his spine. Mm. When we rescued Donatee from the auction, we were told that um, somebody had rode him really young and we did x-rays today and there's actually bone to bone contact um, in his back. So he's already experiencing a lot of back pain and it's just gonna get worse, unfortunately. So we are gonna have to say goodbye to him. Uh, we're thankful that he didn't continue down the slaughter pipeline and that we were able to step in. Um, some people are wondering why we rescue horses with problems um, and why not just rescue healthy horses. When you're at auction, just rescuing a healthy horse isn't as easy as it seems. Um, there can be horses that are drugged, that go through auctions, and they're, um, you get them back to the shelter, they're not healthy. Um, or they're, you know, it's just, we just rescue everyone we can in the slaughter price range. So we bid up. If they go above the slaughter price range, then we, we stop bidding. If they're in that slaughter price range, we're trying to save them from being shipped to Mexico. So. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do for this guy other than the last act of kindness, but he's here and he's gotten medical attention and the decision was made what's best for his health and his future. Lots of arthritis in the knee. It's even a little bit up here. You want you want the bone to be smooth like this first part. We got some arthritis there. It looks like we got some coming in there. Bony spicules down here that would be real painful. Probably in the joint too. This looks like it's some extra bone at the back. How long do you think it took to get like that? I probably took months, a couple of years maybe. We got some at the front. Uh, there's no telling how bad it looked like from the, from the back. So she would be in a lot of pain. Yeah, and there's not much, you know, it'd be constant pain, medication, and then you're still gonna hurt. You're still gonna be stiff if you skip any pain medication on her. Well, and then like that mule from last week that was bleeding out of its rectum because it, he thought probably it probably had, had too much pain medicine. 
causes ulcers and bad things, just like in people. Well, okay. I do what we got to do. So sadly, there's nothing we can do for money. Um, the x-ray shows that she has a lot of arthritis in that knee and that's something that's it's not going to get better it's just going to continually get worse she's in pain right now there's nothing that we can do other than relieve that constant suffering that she's going through um, we, you know she's such a beautiful horse we would love to be able to fix that and adopt her out but sadly there's we can't always do that and we get horses that need humane euthanasia and her owner did the right thing by bringing her here we had the vet here to look at her x-rays done um, and she was she's very um, grumpy to everybody and i think a lot of that is because she's in so much chronic pain and suffering so we're going to relieve that suffering and the vet's going to put her to sleep Our troughs get a little dirty, so I gotta go through and clean them out. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have a drain on it, so I gotta scoop it out with a bucket. This is Venus, and she's 23 years old, and she's getting a bath today. I just finished packaging up um, these orders, and we're gonna take them and put them in the mailbox. Brave and Freedom are on their way to a Grazing Grace. They're another rescue that we work closely with um, and they will be transporting them to their new home in California. So we are super excited for them. It's a long journey but we know that they will have an amazing home out there. So right now I'm just doing adoption follow-ups on the horses that have already been adopted and I'm, I'm leaving a lot of messages to the people who aren't answering their phone but I did get one, I did have someone answer the phone and he's doing really good. I'm excited for him. They're He's running up to the fence when they give him grain and stuff, and he's doing really good, so I'm excited for that. So I just talked to the person who adopted Copper, and right now he's doing really good. They've done a lot of rides together, and they're trying to desensitize him right now. Um, he had an abscess on his hoof, and the vet took care of it. They doctored him up, and he's all good now. But they're also really interested in another horse that we have, so they're going to try to get an application and so they can adopt another horse from us. Well, donkeys are pretty awesome as well, so feel free to ask them and they can tell you everything. All right, who do we have? This is Curly and that's Cody. Okay. If you ask my love, I don't need nothing. Yeah, I don't need nothing. If you ask my love, I don't need the sky. I don't need its thunder. I kind of like to take him and try him. It looks like he's really had a rough time. I think he could be a go gorgeous horse. Yeah, I think he'd be gorgeous when he fills out. And then his adoption fee, so typically his adoption fee would be $500. Um, since he is skinnier, um, you can just make a donation, um, whatever you want to get for him. And then whatever you donate them will go towards helping another horse just like him. Okay. So. 
Have a wonderful day and just keep us updated. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'll let y'all know how he does. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. We had a lot of adoptions between our adoption event and last month. Um, There's actually 39 in total, I believe. There were some that didn't get up here. Um, so we're going to take them down because now, you know, September, we want to have all the September adoptions that happen in September. So that's going to be awesome to have. And then we got to update who's available. All right, that's a huge stack of adoption horses and donkeys. We're super excited that our adoption event was so successful and so many people came to our facility to adopt horses. Now we have the new horses that are available. These are owner surrenders and horses from the July auction rescue group. Um, so we're gonna be putting them up on our available wall. All right, so now we're putting up the horses that are um, from the July auction rescue group and um, these are horses that are currently at our facility. Um, and then we're adding the new ones that came out of quarantine or owner surrenders to it. And if you're interested in the horses that we're putting up here, you can go to horseplus.org and click on adoptions and they're all on the website. Yeah, we got her from my daughter. Mm -hmm. That adoption event took place back in the July. So Queen of the Night came back. Uh, she was one of our horses that got adopted during our adoption event. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out with the people that she got adopted to. So she's going to be looking for another home, and hopefully the next people are a better fit. Behind me is what originally was our tack room. Then it turned into our office, and now we have a wonderful new office. So that is now a bunkhouse. So when we're doing events or we have maybe another uh, adoption partner traveling from another state, they can spend the night here. But it's across the road. It's uh, from our office, and we're moving it closer to our office. And that way, when we do have uh, somebody that needs to stay in there, it's just a, a short walk into the office where the bathroom, the shower, the kitchen is. Um, so it's, it's a process moving that thing. When we first built it, it was over there. We moved it over there. Now we're moving it over here. So it's, uh, it's getting moved around. I'm hoping this is the last place we're gonna move it. But when Jason built it, he did build it on skids so we can drag it around. Um, yeah, so yeah, Jason built it by hand. The bunkhouse is where I approve of those poor guys. They moved it around so much. Here at Horse Plus, we are all about safety and mitigating the possibility of problems. And Jesse and Shelby are getting ready to take Revere and Venus on a trail ride. And we don't know exactly how far they're gonna go. They probably don't know either. They're just gonna go for a ride, see how they're doing, give them some exercise and time out on the trail. And part of the problem is they go where there's no cell phone service. And when you have two people riding or even three, it can be very dangerous if something happens. So we've got them radios and Hopefully the radios will reach as far as they're going. We're testing them today to see exactly how far the radios do go. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going through the pasture and taking pictures of all the horses that we rescued from the auction. And then I can put the auction photos side by side and see their progress or how they're doing. Um, it's always nice because at the auction they're just, they're so sad, they're scared and then they're out here in this beautiful pasture and they're just happy and that's the pictures I like to get. As you know, I've been wanting to get this project done for a long time. It's good for four days. Ten seas will, seas will last four days. So I'm just here with Queen of the Night, working on cleaning up her hooves a little bit. This is Edward, I'm giving him a bath and he's loving it. This is Laredo and I'm trying to fix his poor tail.
How's it coming? Slow but steady, but I'm excited because the hardest part is over and it's just coming much better now. Two thirds way done. Super excited today because as you know, I've been wanting to get this project done for a long time. We have a tractor here and a dump truck. They're gonna be cleaning out underneath the shelters and prepping it for being uh, poured down with concrete. So this winter when it's raining and just nasty, the horses have a nice dry place to stand. Um, so they're just unloading now. They're gonna get busy uh, just cleaning out the uh, shelters um, and then putting the material in the back part of our pasture and spreading it out. So. It's gonna be a long, busy project for them, but I'm just ex so excited they're here because uh, it's a lot of material. Uh, just as the horses eat hay under the shelters and it just kind of piles up. So when we put concrete down, it'll be super easy to clean. It won't get mushed down in the mud. And um, it's just gonna improve the quality of the life for the horses while they're here being sheltered to have their hay on a nice clean surface. So this is Jesse and this is Shelby. You'll be working with them today. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask them and I will be in the office. This is Jeanette. <laughs> She'll do good. Yeah, you wanna go home with me? Wait, little baby. <laughs> That's a nice little good style. Do you have a halter for her? Uh, yeah, in the truck. Yeah, we'll switch it and get a picture with her if you don't mind. There you go. We are super excited for her. She is an amazing donkey, so we are we are very happy that you're able to adopt her. Well, I'm glad she's uh, she's sweet, and I can put her with my little baby boy and see maybe he won't be so sad because you know they like to molt when yeah. they're having a partner. Yeah. Hopefully that cheers him up and she's happy and yeah, for sure, happy. for sure. Well, you have a wonderful day yeah, and just keep you. us updated. We love to get updates. Okay, I sure will. I'm gonna take one of these. Okay, perfect. Thank you all. Thank you. Seen that when they had him, but it was winter time. He had a winter. Say hi. Yeah. And then her first initial training assessment. Okay. She wants to show you the pictures of Bull and Tequila in them if you want to see oh, them. Yeah. Hey, hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Fine. They're swayed. He's turned. He's oh, turned. Wow. Because <laughs> he was black in the winter. Uh -huh. Now he looks like that. That's how all the black horses are back here in Tennessee. They turn a real pretty chocolate color. Oh, wow, that's so awesome. And there's... And this is a tequila? Is that right now? No, that's, that's a rumor. rumor. Okay. That's a rumor. That's Slave. Slave. Tyler's got the bowl on hers. <laughs> and that's tequila. Okay. And that's rumor. That's so awesome. I always love seeing updates of them. And they're happy new home, doing good. They're spoiled or often. Aww. So who are you adopting today? Revere. Okay. She's a nice little horse. She is so sweet. Revere was just adopted into an amazing home. They have adopted from us before and they're absolutely amazing adopters. So we can't wait to watch her journey. Thank you.
This horse came to us yesterday. He's very lame. Our vet's going to be examining him, taking some x-rays, trying to get to the bottom of what's going on with him. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always a good thing that we can take horses like this, but you know, at the same time, sometimes it ends really sad and we're not able to do anything. We're not able to save him, but we're thankful this horse is here instead of being at an auction and going to get the help he needs, regardless of what that is. So right now we're setting up the x-ray machine. Hopefully someday Horse Plus will have its own x-ray machine because it's a hassle and a half bringing this machine back and forth from the vet clinic. Did you say it's a hassle? It, well, yeah, you know, used to. It's better than it used to be, but it could be better. Doc, what are you seeing there? Looks, it says more bones back here. Those, those bones are basically where the tendons attach to flex the flexor tendons attach some of them. It looks like they're shorter. They're usually round right here. And it looks like they chipped off. There's some damage to the very end of it. Probably infection. We're starting some arthritis. He's already getting arthritis. Mm -hmm. And right there, we got a little bit starting down there. Probably because of that injury. Uh huh. Yeah. Maybe because of the, it could have gotten hit at the same time the other thing is, it could have been if he was used on Weak, the pavement, a pound of the pavement, we'll get that too. So, can you treat that infection that's right there? Will oh, that be, and that'll be okay? Or? Uh, most of the time, you can. You won't get it before it gets too deep into the bone. Or, you know, if we had taken it and it was into the one of the long bones, we'd be maybe having a different conversation. Uh, we're going to put him on some antibiotics and probably soak the foot. I don't think there's probably soak it in Epsom salts or chlorhexidine for a while. Maybe try to in water therapy, just spraying it with a hose pipe. And then we'll we're going to keep him on antibiotics and we'll recheck him in a week and see what he looks like. So Buddy's been examined by the vet. He's had x-rays done. We're going to do a treatment plan for him this week and see how he's doing next week. Um, he's got a pretty severe injury and uh, so we just don't know how it's going to turn out, but we're going to do the best we can for him. This is uh, an antibiotic called Exceed. The, it's a pretty good antibiotic, really good antibiotic, and the better thing for it, especially for slightly nervous horses, is it's good for four days. 10 C's will, C's will last four days. Liberty is gaining some weight. She still has a long way to go, so we're gonna take her up to the scale and we're gonna weigh her and see how much she's gained. This is Liberty. She came in in the July auction and so far she's gained 50 pounds. It's that time of week again. We get to open our Amazon wish list items. And this week we have a huge pile and they kept coming in and we were like, oh, we want to open them. But we're like, nope, we're going to wait so we can do a live video feed. So if you purchased any items from our Amazon wish list, you get to watch us open them. Um, and if you haven't purchased one yet, click on the link in the description, get something, maybe next week it will be here. So, so I have some gauze, four by four gauze, and we do use that a lot. Okay, this is a fun thing. Okay, this is an awesome thing we can hang in the stall. It helps, uh, we've gotten some um, treat refillers in here, but this is a super cool toy. We'd love to have one of these in each one of our, our stalls. Um, so we've gotten two of the treats that go um, in this little, apple thing so one goes I believe it goes like that and then like that there we go <clears throat> and it has a, a yummy lick and we've gotten two of those so the lick goes in there and then on the bottom of the lick is a fun ball um so if a horse needs to be stalled like the one we have a uh, buddy that was surrendered yesterday with the bad leg this can be in his stall and it can keep him entertained and then there'll be yummy 
molasses, I think are the ones that we have, uh, that he can lick on. So this will be awesome for his, his uh, stall since he's on stall rest. And we're gonna get these, uh, these fun things out to the horses and the other things that need to go in our bedroom stored. And we just thank you so much for your support. So I've got the lick here. Smells like molasses. And this is Buddy, he's on stall rest. The vet saw him and we did x-rays and he's got a pretty messed up leg. Um, but we're following the vet's advice on that. I'm gonna get this together and we'll get it in the stall so he'll have something to do in there. Might not know exactly what this is. Well, he doesn't know what cookies are and he doesn't know what the treat is. No, he'll learn. I think he's just, he's pretty scared. I'm not trying to hurt you. Does that smell good? I see if it smells good. It's not gonna hurt you. Well, over time, we'll learn what this is. And that's one thing I like about having toys and stuff in a stall is it kind of teaches them that, you know, Oh, what's this? It kind of smells good. Keeps their mind engaged. Um, Cause you can tell he's a little curious about it, but we'll get it hung up for him and he can check it out when he wants to. On, on your terms, huh, buddy? It's a little complicated to put together, but not too bad. Checking out the cookies. He said, well, that's pretty good. A lot of times these horses that we get in here they are scared of people um, or they're just so unsure in a new situation. So it's nice to have cookies to put in their bucket and a toy to hang up in the stall. I don't want it up too high. Love was an easy song to write Cause I'd have pages worth of words that were not lies Your name would be the melody that's on my tongue Both love was a simple song There are no words have been written or been sung that my ears have heard or I've cheapened with my tongue. Last week I was out in the pasture taking pictures of uh, the different horses we rescued from the auction and um, right now I'm putting the one together, the little pony uh, that was running across the field got some awesome footage of this pony and it's it's only been like a week since we rescued it but it was so sad at the auction and now she's just she looks amazing in this photo so i can't wait to put it up on facebook so everyone can enjoy it and see the transformation in just a week i mean obviously she hasn't gained a whole lot of weight but her spirits are definitely back and happy all right so little stardust is up on facebook now a little update uh, getting a lot of responses Let's see, people are happy that we rescued her. We have some donations because of that. And then, hmm, this person says there's no way it could be the same horse in that short of a time. And it's the same pony. Like, I was just at the auction. I just rescued this pony. I just took pictures of this pony out in the pasture in our quarantine facility. And now they're accusing me that it's not the same pony. <sighs> like, seriously? It's, it's the same pony. But there's a lot of people telling this person that is saying that the pony is not the same pony. They're, they're really coming to my defense, or our defense is Horse Plus, and telling this person that it is the same pony. You can be a horse rescue hero by combating false information on the internet. When you see it, just let people know, hey, clearly it's the same pony. 
um, or you see something else and it's, I mean, somebody saying slanderous stuff about us, we are the ones with our boots on the ground working with these horses. We don't have time to spend hours and hours on the internet um, trying to straighten everyone out that has a, a word of confusion to say about us or wants to down the work with, that we do. So you're my heroes when you can be, hey, that's not reality. This is, this is actually a pony that they rescued. Um, so. I, I thank you for being a hero out there and making a difference, even if it's just correcting somebody on the internet and saying, nah, look, they're doing good work. We're going to mix up something special for him. Okay. So I'm excited to see that. I would like to introduce Big Red. <laughs> We are so excited we get to add more horses to our adopted and transferred wall. She has a very white nose, so that means her nose is all pink, and so it sunburns really easy. So we put this on to help make it much better and I've done it once already and her nose is much softer and sunburn is healing nicely so that I'm kind of very happy. Liberty's all clean. This is Buddy. Um, the vet came out and did some x-rays on him the other day and we're just trying to do everything we can to get him better. So Shelby is hosing his leg off right now. And right now we're just soaking his leg in some Epsom salt. We got a call this morning about a lady who needed to surrender a donkey. Sadly, her mother had passed away and the family was not able to take care of the donkey anymore. So she called us this morning and asked if we would take it. And we said that we would gladly um, help her out. So we're very happy that this little guy is with us. <laughs> We are going to adopt Sweet Liberty. She is a sweet. We mainly work with horses that are in transition. Um, a lot of our horses that come in are actually from the slaughter pipeline about like Horse Plus Humane Society does. We also have a lot of owner surrender horses that come in. We will take care of them if they need weight. We will rehab their weight and then we rehome them. We also work with a lot of owners up in Kentucky on the racetrack and we will also rehab on the track thoroughbreds or off the track thoroughbreds, I guess is what you would call them. We rehab them out and give them a new career. Christian Farms Rescue and Rehab is able to take horses out of our quarantine facility as it is one of our programs that we do as they are able to quarantine at their facility as well. When we place horses with other organizations, it's able to give our organization um, more room to rescue more horses from the slaughter pipeline. We are so happy for these horses and can't wait to watch their journey. I got more than just words I got more than just words You bring me songs as 
be like the birds So I got more than just words I got peace in my mind I got peace in my mind Knowing that we've got the ties that bind Gives me peace in my mind The lights are so much brighter The colors so much deeper She sounds good. She just sounds good. Air moving everywhere, no bubbles, nothing in there. Guys, he seems to be doing a lot better. He's not as lame on it as he was. What did we put him on last week? Um, SMZs and you. And that was done yesterday. We've been hosing it for 20 minutes twice a day and soaking it in Epsom salt for 10 minutes in the morning. We're gonna mix up something special for him. Okay. Well, we're going to start wrapping his leg with some, um, what do y'all call poultice? This, and uh, we're going to get the hair out of the way so we can get it right on the skin. We are getting very sleepy. Right. <laughs> and about ready to be gilded. Lay down so gently. He's a sweet little thing. Mm -hmm. All right, good morning guys. We are here um, getting ready to open up our Amazon wish list packages. Awesome, we got some more electrolytes. We definitely use those. So we got another big Marina. bucket. It's a treat ball. So we got another one of the Stall snacks. So these are fly repellent face and body wipe. Sin chill. It helps horses relax when they're stressed. That helps a lot um, with horses from the auctions. What else we you got? Some wormer. Get? Fly spray. My favorite kind, Bronco. We got a thing of rock salt for the horses. This is a big uh, grain bin that we can put our grain in uh, so the mice don't get to it. So it keeps it dry. Yeah. We just want to thank you all so much for all of your donations and all of your support. If you would like to um, find our Amazon wish list, you can do that in the description. And then um, donations, if you're not able to uh, find anything on the Amazon wish list that you'd like to donate, you can always donate um, some money to go towards helping the horses. We'll be going to an auction soon. So we um, greatly appreciate all of your support and hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Rocky. He still needs some work on personal space, too. And then 
This is the first right of refusal agreement. So the first one is what we talked about earlier. We do ask if you're not able to keep either one of them that you do bring them back. Okay. It's free of charge. His Coggins do expire the 24th of this month. So we can get with the vet and see if they can come out Monday okay. and um, do his Coggins and we can redo his vaccines and everything so everything's current for him for a okay. year. Awesome. Um, we would just have to mail the Coggins to you if That's that was fine. okay. We can give you the current ones we have now that expire on the 24th, but then we can give you a new set. Okay, I will perfect. mail you the new set. We are so excited we get to add more horses to our adopted and transferred wall. So we get to add, um, let's see, we get to add Laredo. Laredo got adopted. And then Queen of the Night. So excited for them. And we get to add some more. So we get to add Ember. And Rocky. Laredo, who is number 10. Queen of the Night is number 11. Rocky is number 12. And last but not least, Ember is number 13. So, so far this month of September, and it's only the 17th, we have adopted out 13 horses. There are grain bags in those sacks. So Fabio is not just reacting to seeing the pack saddle, but also the weight of the grain bags and the sound, because it makes a different sound than anything he's used to having on his back. So these are the quarantine horses. Um, they're excited every morning whenever I come up here to feed them. Um, they'll be coming out of quarantine here pretty soon. So they're looking a whole lot better than what they were whenever they first came. So I'm excited to see that. Well y'all, we are truck shopping. Uh, Horse Plus really needs a truck and um, it just borrows vehicles at this time. So we're looking at trucks and this one may be one, I don't know. Well, we're gonna look at this truck. Um, it might be the one, we don't know. The thing I like about this truck is those spikes are for putting a hay bale on. So you back up to the hay bale, drive it out and dump it and it's all hydraulic. So that's really cool. They're seeing what the best price they can do for us is so hopefully it's really good because this truck I think could help out our organization but only time will tell. Tawny and Jason are out of town so we decided to make a really funny video while they were gone. Now we did do this after work but it's pretty funny so we hope you enjoy it. Um, um, Jesse? know what's happening in the barn? No. You might want to come look. It looks a little suspicious. Oh no. Who did you put in there? <laughs> so I think when the bosses are away, the horses will play. <laughs> yep, I think I confirmed it. When the bosses are away, the horses will play. <laughs> After searching and searching for a truck for Horse Plus, we have finally found a great one. And so we're filling out paperwork for it right now, and then we've got the long drive back to our shelter. How has your experience been at Horse Plus? Great, absolutely wonderful. 
Ember and Rocky are on their way to their new homes. We are going to miss them a lot, but we know that they will have an amazing home with these ladies, and we can't wait to see updates of them. Ember came to us last September. He was a very scared stallion when he got here. Um, we couldn't approach him. We couldn't um, put, even put him in a catch pen and touch him. He was just that scared. He was always trying to get away from everybody. And we knew that it would just take time for him to adjust. Um, he's a Tennessee walking horse, so we do think that there's possibility that he could have been um, started training for the big lick. We're not quite sure about that or not, but we just know that he was very scared and just needed some time. Thankfully, Jesse and Shelby have given him that time and he has come so far since when he got here in the beginning. Um, now he goes over obstacles, he goes in trailers, um, he follows Shelby around everywhere and he just um, does amazing and we are so excited that he has finally found a new home that will love him as much as we have. He's been here almost a year and it's hard to let him go when they've been here that long but we know that this home is just the right home for him and we are so thankful that even though he came here scared and stallion, he left a gelding and so happy and just doing wonderful. The vet is here just checking out Martha. The other day she was having a little trouble with her breathing and today she seems to be doing well so we're just waiting to see what the vet has to say about that. I haven't heard her talking. I haven't heard her either. So the outcome for Martha is her breathing is doing really, really well. We're going to see how she does off of her medicine and see if she keeps improving. And part of that, all the stuff that you're doing is to help draw out. Yeah. Draw it out, yeah. This is the donkey that got frustrated a couple days ago, and he's doing so much better. We're checking out the quarantine horses to make sure they can leave isolation and join the herd, and so far everybody looks great. So we just make sort of a slow pass through, make sure nobody's limping or trying to make sure they don't have any infectious diseases that are going to be given to the other herd, so other members of the herd. So that's where we are. I would like to introduce Big Red. Big Red is the newest rescue rig at Horse Plus Humane Society. We recently purchased it down in Texas for use at the Humane Society. It drove flawlessly the whole way here. We were down in uh, Texas visiting my mom. She just got home from uh, about with COVID and she was actually in the hospital, uh, ICU, and then in a rehab center for two months. And she almost died, but I was so thankful I was able to go see her. She's back home now. This was just the most amazing truck we could find. It has built-in toolboxes, so we can just keep it permanently stocked with lead ropes and halters and everything we need to rescue horses in a variety of situations. It has a hay spear on the back. We can just back up to a bale of hay and push a lever inside the truck and the hay goes right on up. We'll get to where we need to feed it. Push the lever the other direction, it'll go right down and we drive away. It has an onboard fuel tank so that we can bring diesel to the shelter for the tractor and we don't have to rely on little gas cans. All in all, it's just a great truck. It seats six adults, so our entire rescue team can go out at a moment's notice. We're just very happy to introduce Big Red and we know it will serve us for many years to come. I am in love with Big Red. I mean, our tractor's great for moving hay, but I've always worried like, what if the tractor breaks down? How are we gonna be able to move the hay? And Big Red is able to pick up huge bales of hay, drive them around, put them in pastures. This truck is gonna be such a blessing to our organization, not only for just moving hay when that needs to happen, but all the horses it's going to haul back to our shelter when they've been rescued. So uh, thank you all so much for your support that made this new addition possible, and I just can't thank you enough. For sure they were gonna get hit. There was cars going by and these little things were just darting out. She's about 20 years old and her teeth are really a mess. Hopefully this horse will improve. We just finished warming everybody and weighing them, the horses that we got in the August auction. Together they have gained 652 pounds. We are super proud of them. Sadly, there are three of them that are still not feeling too well, so they're gonna stay in quarantine a little while longer, but the rest are ready to go. Um.
We just got done moving the horses out of quarantine down here to the main um, part of the shelter. So we're just taking them off of the quarantine wall and putting them on the available wall. We're so excited that they are finally out of quarantine and they will be available to the public soon. We'll have them on our website after all of the evaluations and everything. So Fabio and Eclipse were transferred to a different organization, so now we get to move them to the Adopted Transfer Board. It's heyday, guys, so we got a big load here coming in. This is Tribbles, he's five years old and he loves well in the trailer and he's easy to catch. He's just been gelded so he's quite pushy right now though, but we'll work on him. This is Orion, he's an eight year old Tennessee walker and he's gained 85 pounds since he got here. He bridles fine. Like, he's just one of those horses that if he can go relax out on the trail, it'll help him a lot because he's got so much going on in his brain. That's my kind of ride. This is Neptune. He is a two-year-old Arabian gilding. Shelby is giving him a good brush down right now. You can see right here in his mane, we got some little cockerels in there, so we're gonna get them all fixed up. Whoever bought this off of our Amazon wish list, thank you so much. This is a huge help with Shelby getting Neptune's mane all entangled. This is Cosma. She's a five-year-old quarter horse cross mare. This is Cassie, she's about a six-year-old mare, and Jessie is getting more cockabros out of her mane. Picture time for Cassie. This will be the easiest thing if I let it. And I can't be too afraid to fall. So she did a really good job. And I like to reward them, especially the skinnier ones. They can get all the food they want. This is Jupiter. She's a quarter horse cross mare, and she's about 20 years old. Evaluations were a success today and we're super excited. These kittens, we, my husband and I went for a walk and when we came back from our walk, here's this pile of kittens dumped on the side of the road, just right by our driveway. For sure they were gonna get hit. There was cars going by and these little things were just darting out. So I'm like, baby, we gotta do something. I call the next day, already just people are, well, it's, you know, it's really hard. Cats are hard. Yeah. Well, I'm like, but help, I have these five kittens. What am I gonna do? I can't keep, I can't keep them. I live in a tiny house. Like, I have no outdoor facilities where, no, it's too hard. I finally got a hold of one rescue that said that they'd be willing to take them, but when they found out that with black cats, oh, that's a big problem. And then I take them there 
vaccinated them and sent them home. No, you're going to have to keep them. You can't, we can't keep them. So if I switched to trying to work with another rescue. A constant red tape with them as well, but led me on to believe that they would take them. They would take them finally actually committed to, you can come bring the cats by on this specific date, this specific time. That was earlier today. That was today. I took, that was today. <laughs> It was, they, they set the appointment like 10 days ahead of time. So I'm like, okay, in 10 days, we, I take them there. And this has now been like a multi-month process of trying to find these cats at home. I finally, I took them there um, this morning. She, she gave them uh, their second round of vaccinations and she's like, you're gonna have to take them home. I was like, but I, you know, <laughs> we had agreed on the phone. She's like, no, no, I'm sorry. Black cats are too hard. You're just going to have to take them home. I left there so, so discouraged. Why does it have to be so incredibly hard? And then when I was there uber discouraged, my dear mother-in-law is like, well, I'll, I'll see if I can, I'll see if I can figure something out. And then, so she called here and she called me a little while later while I was still crying. <laughs> and said, <laughs> said, she's like, you know, they'll take them. We need to get them there this evening. And I cannot express how grateful I am for these cats to be able to come here and um, have, a, have a happy future. One of these days when I have my little place set up, I have my eyeballs on getting a horse from Oh, the there guys, you go. Jessie can find you the right one. She, that's her job. <laughs> she'll, she'll know, she what, she knows knows what I need in a horse. <laughs> yes. I wanted to call you both in here because you're both gonna be helping with the auction rescue. And you've been to the auction before, and then this is your first time. Just want you to be, you know, prepare yourself. There'll probably be one or two slaughter trucks there. Um, sometimes we, you know, we, we see those horses, we watch them load up on the slaughter trucks. There's really nothing we can do at that time. Um, there occasionally will be approached and be like, hey, would you like this horse that doesn't fit on the truck? After the auction, if there's a horse that you bonded with, yeah, don't go tell that horse goodbye. It's it's hard, you want to, but um, we've had one of our volunteers get in a, a really bad situation. I wasn't there. Uh, she said she got punched. Uh, I know the people were really angry. I don't want any of that to happen to any of you. So what we can do after the auction is go back, make sure our horses are happy and comfortable. If there's horses that are not getting along, we can separate them out into different pens, but um, don't go into any of the pens after the auction with other people's horses. Well, it's pretty late. Um, I'm still down here in the office fundraising. Um, it's the night before the auction, so the auction's tomorrow. We have a lot to do, and um, Everything as far as fundraising falls on my shoulders. I have to get the emails out, the post out, um, you know, all anything involved with the fundraising part of getting that information out there. It's it's uh, it's my job to work on it. And if I don't, we don't raise money to rescue these horses. So um, just doing a whole lot on our Facebook page, our mailing list, just everything, trying to get the word out that we're going and we need help to rescue horses because um, without our supporters, we wouldn't be able to rescue any horses. It's just, uh, auction rescues are a huge push. Um, it just takes a lot to fundraise to do a big auction rescue and then going to the auction and we probably won't get to bed till after midnight. Um, so I need to get this done so I can get my sleep, so I'll be refreshed and ready to rescue horses tomorrow. Hey everyone, it's Tawny here at Horse Plus Main Society and I just wanted to say a huge thank you to each and every person who's donated. So far, we are hooked up and ready to head to the auction. We hope to rescue at least 15 horses, but as you probably know, that probably means about 20. <laughs> we have got the girls in big red on the maiden auction rescue journey. Hooked up to the trailer. What do y'all think? Nothing. We're excited to save horses. All right, let's head out. Hey everyone, we are on our way to the auction and I wanted to tell you all a story because uh, I'm just sitting over here, Jason's driving and um, can't see behind us because we have the trailer back there, but uh, we got another truck and trailer. Big Red is back there pulling our other trailer. So 
Um, the story I'm going to tell you is about a horse that we rescued back in 2008. So Sierra was um, this Mustang that I saw at the auction. She was just skin and bones and her udder was full of milk and I was like, oh man, this, this poor horse, definitely have to try to save it. And after the auction, I was able to rescue her and she was from this guy that kept bringing a lot of Mustangs to the auction. Um, and he would eat mares and foals and just kept bringing them. And um, he, at one of the auctions, after I, I bought Sierra, he's like, you know, why don't you just come to my place? I'll sell you the horses at the same price. Um, and that'll save me hauling him to the auction and you can just buy him. And um, we've been working with Sierra, trying to get her weight up because she was so skinny, but she just didn't want to eat. And she was really just a depressed horse. We're going to be doing some, driving through some road construction. So if it gets bumpy, I'm sorry. And um, so, you know, despite trying to grain her and all this stuff, she wasn't gaining weight. And we, um, we went to this guy's place and we were supposed to buy um, a mare and a gelding and we were at the place when i was looking at the gelding the the guy once i agreed to to buy the gelding he whispered over in my ear he's like well i'm glad you're buying him because he's so crazy i'd butcher him myself and it just ugh, made me so mad but anyways the mare that we were we were there it was a mare and a gelding we were supposed to go there to look at she had a baby and i got to looking at the baby with her and there was another baby and the guy's like oh I got rid of that horse uh, that was the mama to that baby but um, that mare kind of adopted the baby because he separated them when the baby was only three months old and I started laying the baby and it was a buckskin and I'm like Sierra's a buckskin this baby doesn't have a mom I bet that Sierra is the mom of this little baby horse here and so i talked and talked to the guy finally convinced him to sell me the gelding the mare and both the babies and so it was kind of just a magical moment because sierra had been struggling with her health and you know not gaining weight and just really depressed and we were able to take her baby that she'd been separated i think it was about two months um, and get, reunite her with her baby. And I wish we were filming everything back then because it was when that baby came out of the trailer, her, her eyes just lit up and she was so happy to see her baby and the baby was so happy. And after that, she started gaining weight. Um, she wasn't depressed anymore. And so when that guy took her to the auction in, in such a horrible condition, she got extremely depressed. And she stayed depressed even after we rescued her and we're trying to help her. And it wasn't until we were able to reunite her with her baby. Just, you know, it's amazing that we were able to do that because the chances of that happening are, are really slim. But um, they were reunited. They were adopted later together. We're at a gas station filling up gas and they don't know I'm videoing them. It'd be so hilarious if they looked over here and saw that I was videoing. Oh, Shelby did. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> they actually looked. <laughs> now they're like, oh no, she's videoing. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five fifty. Six hundred. Six fifty. Well, we're ready to head out. So we're gonna start driving. Uh, Head to the auction and uh, get all these precious 19 lives we saved. So we get in the auction box. Um, we're gonna take you out of here. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna load you up and you're gonna, not gonna be here anymore, okay? This is one of our pins of horses. Lots of little guys. Cute little mama and her little baby. Right now she's super scared and she's traumatized, so we're gonna get her to the shelter and get her safe. These guys are super skinny and cold and they're shivering and 
We can't wait to get them back to the shelter. So we have a little blue roan mini stud. He's super scared, but he came up to me and wants some attention. Come oh, buddy. How are you? This little guy is gonna make such a great friend for Parsi and Bruno. He's so tiny. He can go eat green grass. So this guy's really skinny and he's cold and he's really scared right now. And his leg down there, you can see it's really swollen and it's, he's in pain. He's so pretty. Good boy. I'm gonna get you back to the shelter. Oh, there you are. Good morning, little guy. Oh, you're so tiny. He's such a sweet little donkey too, huh? Yeah, oh, so sweet. You're so cute. Yes, you are. Oh, so precious. Oh, look at those teethies. Oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. Yes, you are. Oh, he's so adorable. Oh, look at your little nose. Oh, sweet. I hope you're okay. gonna be okay. The scariest thing is for these donkeys, they can easily pick up something here at the auction and um, they get sick and we lose a lot of donkeys we rescue. We give them everything we possibly can. Um, it's just really hard because a lot of the donkeys we get here don't make it. So I hope you do. You're so sweet. So what I'm doing right now is we just take pictures um, of every um, animal we rescue, their auction tag, and then turn them that way. And then uh, we send these pictures <clears throat> back to our shelter so um, we can get them up on our Facebook page and also make kind of a vet assessment of what uh, animals need to be seen first. Hey, buddy, this side looks good, I promise. There you go, you good boy. All right, we're just giving him some de-stress calming gel to help the trip go better. Um, we really appreciate our supporters for uh, purchasing these off our Amazon wish list. It'll just help these little guys. They've been through so much and so much stress. Um, he thinks it tastes funny. He's like, what did she do? Um, it'll just help them relax and not be so scared. And you can say something about please get along with you. Oh, poor little guy. Did they chop all your hair off? How sad. Attitude. Be nice to the baby. This poor little guy isn't exactly halter trained yet, but he's a sweet little baby and it won't take him long to learn. Hmm. Uh, Oh, not necessarily today. Give him his calming medicine. Because he needs to calm down a little bit. Yeah, he's a very stressed baby. <laughs> this little mini is so skinny, or he has a bit of a winter coat, just shakes. Like its spine is protruding. You can feel its ribs, its little hip bones. <laughs> so skinny. Sometimes we get these horses and they're so scared because people have been so mean to them. They're just trying to protect themselves. So now what I've done is I've gotten the rope around both sides. You're all right. See, I'm not hurting you. Good baby. Come on, do you know how to lead? You know how to good baby. See, I'm not hurting you. A lot of times, once you get the the rope on them, they calm down. It's just that trying to get it on, they're just trying to protect themselves. So I can see here that her eye is injured on this side. I think she has some vision, but that could be one of the reasons she's so scared is she doesn't have good vision. You can see where a halter was left on. This is a stout little pony. It's a mare. Yeah. She's probably pregnant. The way her belly looks. Watch the mule, it does kick. Uh, 
and we're gonna start working on the full size horses. This horse is not happy to be here. We're gonna take, we're gonna take you away. And get your mane untangled. So this horse and uh, this one over here were supposed to come in from an animal control seizure. We have a lot of people that are like, oh man, these horses need to be rescued. Why is animal control involved? This is where a lot of animal control horses come. They are rescued by animal control from a bad situation. Animal control doesn't have resources to do stuff with horses, adopt them out. Their staff isn't trained, so they, they oftentimes take horses to auctions after the animal cruelty case is over and the horses are shipped on to slaughter if they're not rescued. Um, it's really sad. We do work with lots of law enforcement and take as many horses as we can. It's like, I don't want nothing nasty in my mouth. It's okay, I'll help you. All right, so they're gonna go to the pen where we're uh, gathering all the large horses we rescued. Oh boy, such so sweet. His face is pretty beat up. We've been um, organizing them and getting them situated so they can travel well. And these are the last two. This is the horse with the really injured leg. It's pretty messed up. It's kind of a maze sometimes going through the auction. There's gates kind of everywhere. We have all the horses uh, sorted and we're gonna be ready to load. There's a couple trailers here in front of us. So as soon as they're gone, we'll be loading these precious horses up and hit the road. So the little uh, bull uh, we got last night, uh, he's, he's really scared. And um, he did try to plow me over a couple times. Um, somebody gave us the stick and the idea is I go in and kind of just hook it onto his halter and then he'll be fine. So we'll see. Hopefully I make it out of here alive. Hi buddy. Hi buddy, you're okay. Oh, see that was so easy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, that wasn't as ooh, scary as I thought. <laughs> nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Okay, so yeah, give me that lead rope. Yeah, you hook him, I'll 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 keep him behaving. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, and then just hold his head up. This guy is gonna need a lot of uh, desensitizing and love, but I think he'll be a good, a good little friend for Parsi and Bruno. For what? Both. Okay, we can do that. If you if you can take a check. Okay. Let's let's find a spot for you. You got you got to learn some manners, buddy. We were able to rescue two more donkeys. Um, they were loading up on a really big truck. I think they're going to go to Mexico, and we were able to get two of them off of there. And we got our little little uh, <clears throat> miniature bull over there. I'm so scared, I'm standing there shaking. Big trailer up here. And we'll be loading all the big horses first, and then all the little ones are going to go in the, the little trailer. All right, we're getting ready to run these horses in. We find it works best because these horses have been usually through multiple auctions that we just let them run into the trailer together and um, ride how they want to ride. So we're going to let the first group out of the pen. That horse is like, oh, another trailer ride. Up, 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 up. Harry, load in. Load up, come on. Come on. 
Hey, mister. I'm gonna put you in the horse trailer. The way it worked out, how we uh, arranged our trailers and how everyone's gonna ride is um, he's gonna have his own little spot. So he won't be able to hurt anyone with his horns. Come on, buddy. Let's see how well you load. Come on. Come on. Oh, what a good boy. He's like an agility cow. I, I will once we, we get him in there. Come on. We got one more load to go. We got all the little girls in the trailer. Now we got to get the rowdy boys. All right, boys, head to the trailer. There you go. These little wild hooligans. So full of themselves. They're doing good in the trailer. Hi, guys. They head back to the shelter. Now they're all settling in. They're doing good. Got a girls over here. Our boys over here. They're being calm and behaving themselves. Okay. He's not sure what to think of all this, but he'll soon learn that we just want to be his friend. And we're ready to hit the road, heading back to the shelter. It's going to be a long drive, but I'm excited to get these little critters back to our shelter so we can get them the help they need. They probably just blew a tire. Oh, not fun, not fun. No, definitely not fun. But it certainly happens. It happens. Let's see what type of damage we got. Yeah, I lost tread. Look at that. We're like, oh yeah, we felt it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's surprising since it's not popped even. Yeah, no, I I thought it popped, but because it smooths back out. I know, so this place is coming back. Well, it's definitely not the first time this has happened to us. We've changed plenty of tires along the road. Jason's really, really good at getting them done, and we'll be back on the road again shortly. So this is certainly not the first lap tire I've ever had to change on a trailer. But no. It takes about five minutes to change a tire on the side of the road. And uh, just tighten enough plug nuts to make sure nothing comes off. Then we're gonna be ready to load up the tire and the ramp and the star wrench and be ready to go. And let's, let's go around this way. So we're all ready to get back on the road now. While we wait for the team to get back from the auction, the vet is on their way to um, check out some horses here at the shelter. And then we'll be going up to quarantine to check on the auction horses as they arrive. They can't flash that. So Sprite keeps right up that stuff. Do you want us to cold hose it at all? This is Buddy and he's all getting all a checkup up by Doc um, to see if his leg is getting better. Keep the meds going. Okay. Same time? Yes. We have all the little stallions that are going to be unloading here. They are um, really cute little guys. Come on! Another another tip for Tawny's hairstyling is uh, water troughs. Beautiful, there we go, look there at there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's tips for everybody there. Just so 
so tiny. He's so cute. He's really cute. The little bull is going to become a miniature ox. Uh, can't have any, any bulls running around here, so the vet's going to be taking care of him. Kind of my thought was with the donkeys, maybe we should wait a week just because sometimes keep they keep the stress off of them. Keep the stress since since we lose so many of them. Maybe if if we waited. Let's wait and see what happens. If we don't lose any, we'll try that. If yeah. we don't lose any this week, or if they're sick, then yeah. you know we hadn't burnt yeah. the money to castrate them. That sounds good. But let's Sarah. yeah, and I hate that, but we you know. Shut up, Sarah. Yeah, I think it's super super sweet. But if he gets sick and dies, there's nothing. We yeah, can do. we'll cut cut out some stress. You know, usually what causes a herpes to break is stress anyway. Yeah. His weight. Says two. Two times. How's his lungs sound? His, his lungs sound good. There's no increased, we bit of increased weight, but he's sort of exciting. He's had a rough night and uh, but those, no loud sounds or anything. Okay. This little guy weighs 225 pounds. This is the longest hair on this donkey. It's actually really long, like for a donkey tail. Um, that would be perfect. So I'm just, it's the only place I can put his tag. The easiest time to trim an animal is when it's sedated for castration. He's one of the donkeys that was loading up um, with a huge pack of other donkeys that was most likely gonna go to Mexico for slaughter. And um, we were able to purchase him and save them, save him from having that happen. Look at those great big ears. Is. And this little guy weighs 93 pounds. Does not like I will. Thank you. Just for you. Thank you, Doc. Ooh. So this little mini behind us is going to get her teeth floated. She's uh, pretty old. She's about 20 years old and her teeth are really a mess. So we're hoping if we can get that taken care of, she'll be more comfortable and she'll be able to gain weight. And this beautiful horse. It's a gilded. Weighs. 815. We're going to take x-rays of this horse. He has a really bad leg and uh, we're kind of hoping for the best, but it's not looking good. If it's just soft tissue, we got a better chance of doing him some good. If he's got a bony involvement, maybe osteomyelitis, an infection of the bone, then we're in bad shape. It's mainly soft tissue swelling here. We do have some bony involvement there. So if we, and we got a little bit down here, we got a little periosteal reaction. So if we can go with some antibiotics, when, when it gets in the bone, deep in the bone, you don't have much chance of saving them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start him on some antibiotics. The x-ray looks like we're going to be able to save this horse. So we're going to work up a treatment plan with our vet and hopefully this horse will improve. This is electrolytes. Sometimes uh, in videos you'll see horses with orange stuff coming out of their mouth. It's just electrolytes that we're giving them. Travis is checking for microchips. 1716. Now we got some electrolytes. Wow. 
Yeah, this horse is uh, up in its 20s somewhere. Um, it's very lame. We're going to take an x-ray and see what's going on in its hoof, but it's not looking good right now. Uh, we got a little bit of rotation, but arthritis seems to be a bigger problem. Oh, with, you have to do, uh, have uh, to do so it. So we're seeing how much rotation he's got if we can do that. We've got arthritis on at least the last two bones in the hoof. So we just got done examining the x-rays and this horse and sadly this horse is suffering and there's nothing we can do other than to relieve that suffering. So we are going to give this horse the last act of kindness. Uh, the veterinarian is going to sedate the horse and then um, give it the euthanasia solution. Um, a lot of people do wonder what happens afterwards. In our facility we are able to cremate horses. We have a uh, equine crematory on site. Um, so. You know, we're able to rescue these horses that their owners should have made the right decision for them, but they did not. And so we rescue them and we make that decision with our vet. I think we're about 20. Supposedly these horses were from uh, Animal Control in Georgia. Uh, this is an antibiotic. So we're gonna take x-rays on this horse. We're not exactly sure what's going on. She's definitely off, um, but her feet are in really rough shape, but we're gonna go ahead and take an x-ray so we know what we're dealing with. So when the farrier's here, he'll know what he needs to do when he trims her. So we're going to try to fix this horse. It's rotated, but overall condition other than weight is pretty good. And um, it seems to be pretty sound on the grass. So we're hopeful that with proper hoof care, she'll come around. You know where I go? I thought I must go lower. That's what I was thinking. 15 minutes. Take him out and try him around for us. 13 3. We're going to do an x ray on his foot. He's pretty club footed, and that will just help us know what type of corrective trimming to do on him. So the vet will figure out what he needs. If you look, we're, you know, we've been taking x-rays of them and saying we got some rotate, have rotation. If you look at this, the coffin bone and the hoof wall, there's almost no rotation here. This, as far as it hoof goes, it's pretty good. Just a touch of arthritis, not much. What we're thinking is maybe we can get a good fairy to come in here and trim this hoof and it'll help most of the problems on this, this one. And get that, this part of the hoof trimmed get it angled more like a horse's foot is supposed to angle, I think that'll help out a whole lot. We messed with her at the auction and she will rear and she'll, um, basically, we're gonna let Jessie work with her once she's out of quarantine. We had to put her in the chute because she's just uh, pretty scared of anything and we have to worm her. Um, she's about 20 years old. So we're putting an orange tag in her just because she does have so many behavioral problems and we're just going to kind of watch her to see how she does. Hopefully she'll calm down and be okay. We finally finished. We intake 21 animals today. Uh, there were two that needed the last act of kindness. Um, it was the kindest thing for them. You know, we, we don't take these things lightly and um, we knew it was the best thing for them. We're thankful that they are not just another number on the USDA export reports. So now we're just packing up, making sure everyone's settled down for the evening and um, the vet's loading up the x-ray machine and then we'll be releasing the horses out into the pasture and that, that's what makes the end of the day just so worth it to see them out there just being happy and, and being horses. Bye dog. Bye. Bye. Thanks Bye, Joey. Have a good one. This little thing. Oh my goodness, so cute.
They'll spend the next 30 days in quarantine and then they'll be available for adoption. So if you're interested in adopting a horse, please contact us, go to our website and let us know. There's lots of horses out there that need homes. Broke your toe and you think you're fine. Ah, I'm fine, I promise. So we just finished giving them baths. what hair products you put in your hair because it looks fantastic all the time. And that's why it looks like she's got some swell in there. She's got a bunch of muscle. We're up in quarantine right now. We're giving everybody some food, getting everybody settled in for the day. And Jesse's trying to get <laughs> Blue Jean to, to cooperate. So Travis is about to feed the quarantine horses up here. What we got there? Uh, bag of feed. But I'd say they're pretty happy. Jesse and Shelby are getting a blanket, an extra bucket of water, and some feed for Braveheart. Shelby has got Braveheart a really thick, warm blanket that should warm him right up. It's like a heater under his blanket, it's so warm. The coats are getting fluffy already. How has your experience been with Horse Plus? I cannot say enough great things about Horse Plus. You guys are, I've been here twice, as you know, I've adopted two horses from you guys, and you guys are always so helpful, and everything that is that I've seen is just amazing what you guys do. I'm super excited we were able to get this barn concreted. I know a lot of people are very concerned when they hear you concreted a horse area. And the fact of the matter is horses are here at our facility for a short time. In quarantine, it's usually 30 days. At our entire facility time, it's usually about 90 days before they find a home. So it's not like these horses are here where they're just standing on concrete the rest of their lives. Uh, we've talked to multiple veterinarians about our sheltering situation, what's the best way to handle the mud and high traffic areas. And here in Tennessee, we get a lot of hoof problems. Uh, horses just because it's so wet and the horse is standing in wet ground or, um, you know, just the mud, it, it hurts their hooves. So this barn will be a nice dry area. They can come in when the weather's nasty. They'll have nice bedding on top of the concrete, so it's not something that they're gonna be just standing on concrete, not having a relief from it, because it's gonna be bedded down. We already have our sawdust pile here. We're just waiting for the concrete to cure a little bit, and then we'll be putting the sawdust in there. Um, it's just a nice bedding, um, nice barrier between the concrete and the horses, and it just gives them a really nice dry place to stand, and then it's easy for us to come in with the tractor, scrape it out, and there's no just mud or urine that's stuck in here we're able to deep clean it especially with horses coming from auction you know they may have come in contact with horses that had strangles or some other contagious disease it's very important that we are able to disinfect and uh, have a nice clean dry surface when we rebed this barn it is now october so we are going to take down the horses that were adopted in september we adopted out 15 horses and we are super excited 
that they are very much enjoying their new home. So we're going to take them down and we're going to start putting up the October horses that get adopted this month. We're excited to say that we've already had one adoption this month. So we get to take Orion down. He's going to be the first horse adopted in October. I'm putting gates on the uh, side barn to make it easier for clean outs and to get horses in and out. We come out here and Belle is just in the round pen, snoozing, chillaxing, just taking it easy. No, oh, 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 maybe she can get up. Nope. Oh, there she goes. And she's up. She is a six-year-old mare. She came in through the July auction. Now Jessie is giving her a good brush down and Shelby is gonna do some stretches with her. Um, she's got a little bit of something going up in her shoulder, so we're going to see what we can what we can do about that. Shelby is stretching Belle's leg out. She said oh there were 13 of them. Goodness, there are tiny. That's what she said, but she only caught five. Well, okay. three of them are very small. One, one of them is totally Why don't you work on the paperwork? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, if you just want to go ahead and put your name and stuff here, basically, you're just the one surrendering them and then their information here, as so much as you know, and then just sign. Yeah, yeah, they're not mine. Okay. You want my name here? Uh, yeah. I'm just saying yeah. you dropped them off with yeah. the sign, yeah. Yeah. Poor little babies. Yeah. There we go. Turn it towards the camera. I'm so fragile because I had to have one. Oh, this I thing. read that. Yeah. So sad. She was, was it? Was it hit or something? I don't know. I don't even want to think about yeah. it. Someone may have run over her. Someone may have thrown her. She was. She was so broken in every way. I was crying at the vet, and I just met her. Uh, I love all critters and when we we relocated from California out here because there's just nothing for animals and yeah. we came to Lewis County because there was no nothing for animals so yeah. we're like okay so we focus except on horses elephants. Okay. except elephants. Mm -hmm. Did the right thing and, and yeah. now that we're here um, if somebody else can pop. These little kittens were just brought to us. Um, somebody found them. Really rough shape. Um, a lady uh, met her at the vet office. One of them had to be euthanized. It was in such horrible condition. She brought the rest of them here and we're going to take care of them and get them the help they need. They're super little. Um, we're just thankful that we're able to take cats when there's nowhere else to go because otherwise I don't know what would have happened to them. These little guys are gonna get a bath. They smell pretty rough. They're so tiny. Be very careful with them because they're very, very small. But Shelby's gonna do a great job. So little Simba went to visit the other cats. They went and got spayed and neutered today, so they're a little sleepy still, but he decided to go and visit them. So we just finished giving them baths and um, we threw the towels in the dryer to get them warm and now we're just drying the keys off. So we're going to start opening this um, stuff up and Sarah's going to read who it's from and Jesse is uh, opening packages because we've got a lot. So we have some awesome SWAT here. So that is from Nancy. She says, enjoy your gift. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, yeah. So. This is awesome. I don't know if you can figure out who's doing any of this. This is on our Amazon wish list. 
We really need 16 of them. Actually, 15 now. We'd love to put one in every single stall we have. We have feeder uh, doors that open. We'd love to have these permanently mounted in the stalls. This is our first one since putting them on the Amazon wish list. So if you're watching and you'd like to get something that would last a long time and be very helpful to us, a corner stall feeder would be excellent. Oh, some collapsible barrels. Oh, have fun. Wow. That is pretty exciting. You can use those for all sorts of things. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Could the say who? I think there might be one. Check these out. If you want to open it up and see what it looks like. This would be great, like especially like the round pin when we're working the horses to be able to just pop up the barrel. Nope. I didn't want to make sure nobody could get into that. Put it in a waterproof bag. Oh, it might explode. <laughs> How does it work? Let's see. Oh, it's zipped. Okay. It's got snaps on it. So, who is this? This is from Kristen. She says, enjoy your gift. I'm not in a place to adopt one of your lovely horses right now, but one day I will. And until then, have fun. Aw, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I know Jesse and Shelby are gonna have fun with these and more desensitizing yeah. and all kinds of good, good stuff. So, uh, I'd just like to thank each and every person that purchased something off of our Amazon wish list. And for those of you that are just joining, if you'd like to go see what's on our Amazon wish list, there's a link in the description of this video. Uh, there's always lots of stuff that uh, we can use. Um, one thing I am going to mention, it's not really for the horses, but I'm going to put it on there, is it's starting to get cold. Now I know you all up north are going to be like, hey, surely it's not cold, but it is getting cold and we would love to have some hand warmers over the winter going to auction rescues and just working outside our poor girly hands get so cold <laughs> so i'm gonna put some hand warmers in there that would be awesome um and just thank you all so much for your support and um we'll get this stuff out to the horses storm is getting her feet done they're in pretty rough shape so we'll have to see what the fairy says about them Rain is getting his feet done. He's a little unsure, so the less people the better, but he's doing a really good job. While Electra is getting her feet done, Jesse is working on getting the knots out of her mane. Hey, did I tell you about the lady that called yesterday? No, what what happened? So there was a lady that called yesterday. If we could That's rescue good. every if we could rescue every horse that that needs help, you can guarantee that we would do it. It was just we have to make sure that we focus on um, what we can and what we know that we can physically do and handle. And like I said, we're more than welcome to take them if somebody could bring them here. It's just we don't have the manpower to always run and, and help every horse in need. That's why we need people out there that can be the bodies and can be the people that can go and rescue them and bring them to us. So that to reference to not, to not be so close-minded to the idea is that perhaps because you're in a horse community that is much closer from what it's sounding like from where I'm coming from, if you're willing to get somebody to buy those horses for you and drop them off at your doorstep, but unless you have somebody who's willing to buy them and drop them off at your doorstep, you're not willing to take an interest to actually save them from water. Let, let me let you talk to my supervisor. Hold on just a second. So it sounds like there's a group of horses. I just wanted to have it. Her name is Sarah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's who I was just thinking yes. to. Yeah, I don't care to speak to you. I, I, I've heard enough already. Okay, well, we're, we're more than happy. I've called five times already. We're more and, than happy. And you never, you, you didn't actually ever return my telephone call. Well, we're talking now, and we're more than happy to help these horses if they can get here. The problem is, every single week here in Tennessee, there's an auction that sells a hundred horses and most of them go to slaughter. We go there as often as we possibly can and rescue, you know, 20 horses I, I, or I, I more. Heard this um, and that's what it sounds like to me, not to be disrespectful at all, 
I just thought you all would might want to know that there's registered horses that are quarter horses yes. that are going to go you know, to slaughter tomorrow. It's really horrible. Yeah. We follow yeah. the, the USDA slaughter reports, and just Friday there was um, 99 horses sent to slaughter every single day. We watch the USDA reports, and I can guarantee that our organization is doing everything we can to rescue as many horses. This is not, a, it's not helping the... Uh, I, it sounds to me like pitch, and I, I hear that I hear that you're doing good work. Uh, I'm not being disrespectful in any way, but I don't want to hear this. Uh, I've already heard that if they are willing to be paid for, dropped off, you'll fly and hold them. I understand that y'all have you, you're not even interested enough to take the site from where they are, where they're going. Well, you you have when you that you have kind of proud, you showed no interest. And, you and have, I have already sponsored a horse here in Alberta. Uh, and that's that's and so that's I, wonderful. I hear what you're saying um, to me, but I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say thank you very kindly, okay. and I'm gonna end. Well, this just moment. just know that we are here if you are ending up where those horses. <laughs> So it's really frustrating, and I know it's really frustrating for everyone out there that sees these horses on these kill pin lots. They're being shipped tomorrow, and we can take, if somebody can rescue those horses and bring them here, we are not going to turn them away. We're an open admission shelter, but the fact is we don't have the manpower. I wish we did, but we don't have the manpower to be jumping into horse, you know, into rescue rigs and driving everywhere across the United States to rescue a small percentage of what those kill buyers are shipping out. I know this lady was really frustrated, but where the frustration comes in is she's frustrated at us. We're, we're trying to help these horses. She needs to be frustrated at the slaughter pipeline system and that these horses are being exported daily into Mexico. They're being exported into Canada and Canada won't even release the records of how many horses are being exported because um, it's just a racket. So. Let's keep our frustration at the real problem. It's the kill buyers purchasing the horses, shipping hundreds of horses across the border, and we need to do everything we can to change the lives for as many horses as we can. And that's what we do here at Horse Plus, and this lady was very frustrated at us because we can't jump in a, a rescue rig and drive to Texas while, you know, a hundred horses are shipped out here in Tennessee. We, we do as much as we can. Um, but something I learned a long time ago in rescue is you can't always save every single horse. And I wish we could, but we do as much as we possibly can. And she said that she had called us about five times. Um, we apologized to her that we hadn't gotten back with her yet. She was upset because we we're not able to just jump in the car and head off to Texas to save the horses from the kill lot down there that she wanted us to save. Um, I did explain to her there are lots of horses here in Tennessee and all over the United States that we would love to save. But we do rescue as many as we possibly can, um, as much as we have the manpower um, and donations here to do that. I looked at the notifications this morning. We had a hundred phone calls yesterday. A hundred. I know people get really, um, upset because they have a hard time getting through to us. So if somebody wants to donate so that we could have somebody that just mans the phones and checks all the emails. Oh, and not to mention all the Facebook comments, um, just keeping up with all the communications. I'm on Facebook, uh, like jail, and I cannot like or love anything that anybody's posting right now. We try and get back to everybody as quickly as we possibly can with all the emails and Facebook comments and everything that comes in. There is quite a bit of it.
and Cosmos are on their way to their new home. We're so excited that they both got to go together and we know that they will do wonderful. Got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to know what hair product you put in your hair because it looks fantastic all the time. Huh, somebody else, okay. I do nothing fancy with my hair, y'all. Um, <laughs> my hair is very naturally curly. Um, a lot of times it's just a water trough. I put my hands in it and just wet them down. And um, I, I guess my biggest trick would be um, wet hair and just take regular conditioner and kind of put it in there. But yeah, I don't know. Tons and tons of people ask me about my hair. I see comments all the time. And I'm glad you all like my hair. Um, as most people that have curly hair know, you hate your curly hair. So I'm glad somebody likes it. <laughs> I like it too, but it does get kind of curly. Uh, anyways, um, I did want to talk to you about uh, the adoption event coming up. Okay. Our annual Fall in Love. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's fall. Um, so I'm working on the website and Facebook page, getting it all up there um, so we can start screening homes. This is not an event for first time horse people. For just, sure. Just because we have a short amount of time. So it needs to be experienced um, people. Um, I know Angela's got a lot of applications already, but we just need to make sure we get that streamlined so everyone gets their appointments. Okay, we'll make sure everybody's up on the website and everything. Yep, okay. so. Um, and uh, any any more photos that we need to take, so uh, have Shelby work on that. Okay, um, and it's still October 18th through the 21st? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds awesome. They did not adopt Tina as they want to go home and think about it. Shelby is giving Stardust some braids, so he looks good for Doc. How old is he? Yeah. He's the, he's the pony that's like super duper old. Wow. Wow. Pretty impressive. What do we have going on with She's this one? She's super kidney toad. She's lame on her front right. That's right nice. Yeah. You know you need sharp your hoof knife when you don't know which side to sharpen. <laughs> it's somewhere between here and here. Yeah, yeah. We so got it narrowed down. No. Maybe if we do have an abscess, it'll develop further. But the radiographs show that the fetal joints collapse arthritis and um, yeah, he had mm -hmm. bony regions on the fetlock as well. She was pretty skinny before. If you tear a tendon or even if you tear a muscle, it'll ricochet up to the upper part and then you'll get some scar tissue forming. And that's why it looks like she's got some swelling there. She's got a bunch of muscle. Got her in August. She, she's been in quarantine because she just got over her snotty nose. We gave, so her last dose of exceed was last Thursday? Hers. I don't think the exercise is going to hurt her. Let's see how she turns. So she, when you're riding her to the right, I believe it is, where this is on the outside, it pops, let, like you can really hear it. Oh, that's cool. And then if you stretch this out, Shelby stretched it a few times and you can hear it pop. So put her down for x-rays next week? Yes. Okay. Oh no, Shelby just got stepped on by a horse. You broke your toe and you think you're fine. Um, I'm fine, I promise. Man. Well, I don't, I don't think broken toes are fine, but... Um, I do. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you were getting a horse ready for the vet and it stepped on your foot and it may have broken the toe. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm okay. She's fine. She's a tough country girl, but... <clears throat> I don't know. I hope it's okay. 
I'll survive. Is, is, that, that, is that, that why you went and sat down at when that works? Yeah. I saw you, I'm like, I hope she's okay. <laughs> she's like, I just a broken toe. Ahem. Yeah, I'm fine. Better be. I'll get up and show you soon. <laughs> Well, he's got a little snot now, so maybe another dose of exceed. How many? Two. He is in the water, the Epsom salts, the SMZs, and the butte, and the wrap. Keep, keep wrapping and keep soaking. Keep wrapping and soaking and start working him some. He's got a little congestion in his left lungs, more so than the right, but the rights are slightly louder and increased density too, it sounds like. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go, there you go. Doc is currently working on Zena's teeth. Her teeth are super, super long. And so he's just trying to grind them down so that way she can eat again and gain her weight back. Um, it's quite a process, but we're hoping that it helps her a lot. You see, it gives me some extra weight. I suggest that you stock up on some Taco Bell mild sauce. He has an abscess, that's why he's laughing. Dude, it's extra mini. Well, I know Jesse and Shelby are gonna have fun with these and more desensitizing yeah. and good all kinds of good, good stuff. Doing some desensitizing right now. And we are learning to jump over the inflatable barrels here. This is Neptune, he's about two years old, and Shelby and Alyssa are giving him a bath, getting him some extra special treatment because he has an adoption appointment today. I'm really excited about that, so we'll see how it goes. This is Buddy, and he's four years old. If you guys recall, in the previous episodes, he was having some trouble with his leg. Well, that is pretty much resolved now, and he's doing a lot better. And he has an adoption appointment today, so I'm really excited about that. And then he was cleared by the vet yesterday just to be on pain meds and light exercise working. just to start working okay. with him okay. without all those soaking and everything because a lot of swelling's gone down. He can run in the pasture now. He has no problem running now okay. and just spending his, spending his life out there. He's a, a horse with a ton of potential because he's young and he's he's an awesome looking young horse. It would be taking him, because you've adopted from us before, we know you're an awesome home. Seeing if he does turn around and if he does awesome, if he doesn't, he, he can always come back here right, right. and you can exchange him for another horse. Sit the while I tell you just how beautiful you look tonight As if you haven't heard me say about a hundred times You shake your head and look away I promise that I've tried my hardest to let go of this But every time I think about a world without you in it My life becomes a darker shade of gray Hey, hey, and all I want to do is let you I love you When darkness still ensues Gonna adopt any horses today? <laughs> we'll take both.
So this is all of Neptune's stuff, which is the same no, as Copper and Amora, who you adopted before. Right. Buddy's is who's different. So this is all of his medical care that he's had in the last three, three and a half weeks here. So literally this is the date that we started. His butte, um, SMZs is an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. um, and then we cold hose him and Epsom salt. So this is what he had for that week. And, we, and he got exceed on that day. Exceed is to help. Um, it's another in infections. Right. And then, so that continued. So you can see exactly what he had. This is for like ulcer. Because he's been on butte and antibiotics, his belly might Right. It's like us if we take pain meds all the time. Mm -hmm. And so this is just like an ulcer guard type thing. Okay. And it has the doses. So it has four doses and one tube. We are so excited that Buddy and um, Neptune have been adopted. These are the people that have adopted from us before. They're an absolutely amazing family. And we are so excited that they're able to finish out Buddy's treatment and Neptune's rehab. And we cannot wait to see their transformation with them. Not only is our break room used for eating lunch. I suggest that you stock up on some Taco Bell mild sauce, but to also feed tiny kittens as well. It's only the eighth of this month and we've already had five adoptions so far. So Tribbles is number two. We're so excited for him. Comet is number three. I'm a taller person for this. Neptune is number four. And last but not least, Buddy is number five. We are so excited that they are now at their new homes and we can't wait to see their transformations with their new family. These are the horses that we still have available for our adoption event that is coming up. Surprise was sadly brought back today. The lady that adopted her was having her trainer train her for her and her trainer ended up getting hurt really bad on another horse so she wasn't able to finish Surprise's training. So she brought her back. I sure wish she would have worked out. We hope to find her a new home that fits exactly what she needs. We're up in quarantine, we're gonna get pictures of all of the auction horses for their update. So we just finished taking pictures of all the horses in quarantine. If you want to see their pictures, go to our Facebook page. We're thrilled to see the progress they've been making and we can't wait to get them out of quarantine to start the, start the evaluations. Oh, we need to go down because the farrier's here. We need to get everybody ready. This is Jupiter. She's getting her feet done today. Her, she's been a little ouchy. The vet has seen her and she's still lame, so we're still trying to figure out the reasoning behind it. I really don't see a thing wrong with her feet. They're good okay. and solid. She's got good hoof walls. So this is Belle. She's gonna get her shoes taken off and the new shoes put on. Okay. This is Toffee. She's a super, super sweet mare. She's gonna get her feet trimmed today. This is Nabbit and he's getting his feet trimmed today. Hey Sarah, Jesse's ready to take the hay with you. Okay, I'll be out in a second. Man, we need automatic gates around here. I'm not sure it would be nice on that. Uh -huh. So, I think you should get the gate this time. I got it last time. Mm, no, I always get the gate. No, you don't. I do. Just get no, out and get the I'm gate. I'm driving. Fine. <sighs> Good grief. Next time you're getting the gate. I'm tired of getting it all the time now. Whatever.
We just got our order in of all of our vaccines and we also have some warmers in here. We order them every single month. There's over $1,500 worth of vaccines and warmers in here. We rarely ever get a horse in that has current vaccines, so we wanna make sure that all of our horses that we adopt out and get in um, get that. And so we're just gonna start unpacking it and get it into the refrigerator. Oh, there's all of our warmers that we ordered. Got quite, quite a few of those Quest ones, our five ways. So we like to give them five way and um, strangles. Those are the two vaccines that we give them. and. West Nile, so we'll put those in the fridge. Put them in there along with the other ones that we already have. This is Toffee and she's 25 years old. Today we're gonna do her evaluation. Somebody made a really bad hair chopping. She did really good. I'm happy with her evaluation. Yeah, you're such a lazy bum. I love you. I'm just working on the USDA's slaughter export reports. They came in and they are so gut-wrenchingly horrible. Um, there's two different reports. Horses were shipped from New Mexico into Mexico and also from Texas into Mexico and in one day, on the 9th of October, 400 horses were exported into Mexico for the purpose of slaughter. And then in New Mexico, 67. This is real, y'all. Like, horses are being exported by the hundreds into Mexico for slaughter. We're saving as many as we can, but we need to share and let the American public know these horses are being exported for slaughter. It helps raise awareness not only that horses are being sent to slaughter, but maybe somebody has a horse and they'll think twice before they give it away on Craigslist or they take it to an auction. Hey Sarah, oh there you are. Hey. We need to get the Amazon packages open. There are so many. Yes. I'm like super excited, but um, yeah. There's, they're gonna take over my office. All right, well, I'll get everybody together and get set up. Awesome. All right. I would just like to thank everyone watching from around the world, joining us here in Holenwall, Tennessee, as we opened all these Amazon packages. And um, check out our Amazon wish list. There's more things we need on there. And uh, just thank you all so much for your support and love and kind words. It means a lot to us here. I'm getting the paperwork ready for the minis that are heading to another organization today. We're so happy that she's able to take them, so we are going to go and get them ready. Look how cute, it's extra mini. <laughs> Well, I sure appreciate you coming and taking uh, some of these little guys we rescued from the auction. So we get to move them. This is our kind of quarantine. It's not out for the public, but uh, we'll just move them over here and put them on the, the wall out there that they had been placed. You're like, more? <laughs> more. <laughs> this little guy is so cute. He's he looks, awesome. He looks like, like he's full of sass. You do. I'll have to write the numbers on here later, but... 
I just love being able to see this visually of where, yeah. we're, where we're at for the month. I like that. That's a nice set. So, nine so far. That's super cool. On the 14th. Yep. We have four of our minis heading over to another organization today. They are ones that we were able to get from the auction a couple weeks ago. They are still in quarantine and this other organization is able to quarantine at their facility and we're just so thankful that they are able to take them and finish their quarantine and the rehab and place them into amazing loving homes and now we're able to go and rescue other horses. Hi Doc. You ready to roll? Yeah. I was born ready. Our weekly vet visit is here and we're getting set up. We're going to be doing x-rays today. We've got a number of x-rays that need to be done and some gelding operations, just a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to be busy while the vet's here. And this is Belle. She's going to get some x-rays done. Uh, hopefully we can figure out what's going on with her. She's a super sweet horse. That's our big suspicion right there. And then you get over here, he goes, eh? mm -hmm. no, we don't know. So should we have a, uh, when she's walking, she seems to be pretty good. I can't tell that she's limping, but the trainer says that when she rides her, there's a popping sound. And she seems to be sore up here. We got the shoulder blades that come down here and they're attached with the muscular sling, but you have the dorsal processes of the vertebrae. That's, what's that's what causes this. She seems to be sore in this region, and when we x-rayed it, looks like we have some defects on the very top of them. There shouldn't be any defects on a seven-year-old horse. All the carpet should have fused by now. So we're gonna say maybe she was injured, hit by something, or flipped over backwards here. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Now it'll be eight. Now 2009, it'll be 11. He has an abscess. That's why he's lumping. Poor Farshi. Mm. On cows, 90% of the hoof problem, 90% of the lameness problems are in the feet. Yeah, it's larger than it was last time, last week. Oh, that's Very odd good. looking. Yeah, that looks a bit rough. Ouch. Okay, it looks like right here we got some bony formation on the outside. That does not bother me as much as this bony formation. It could be on the outside too, but that's a lot of scar tissue remodeling of the bone. It's been injured pretty good. She's getting prey checked right now or just want to make sure she's not pregnant? She is not. Not pregnant, the vet says. Chicken bone. Needs his teeth done. Calling. Cut here, you can almost see the bone. She had another one over here. Oh man, I don't even know where that may be. There's a line there, the scars underneath the hair, but they were it seemed like there was about a half inch, is half inch deep, half inch spread across because it was swollen and uh. First time I'd ever used this stuff, this clay, wound care clay. It was pretty impressive. I'm thinking about getting something and using it more in practice. You really need a sweetheart. So it was better all the way up until today? Yesterday I noticed it was a little swollen. Again. And that's what it is. She's got a little inflammation around on the inside of her eye. We may get, when you get that, let's get them some Neobasimix with steroids. I do not think she's got moon blindness, which the whole cornea gets inflamed. Doc says 
his lungs sound good, so we're just gonna give him some antibiotics to help with his cough, and hopefully that'll help go away. So Doc came out today to check on the horses. Um, we did x-rays and gelding operations. Braveheart is doing much, much better, and Doc did some more wellness checks on others, and everyone is doing great. So it was very good to have Doc out here this week. They're so little and so big. Hey guys, we should get ready for the trail ride. I wish love was an easy song to write. Cause I'd have pages worth of words that were not lies. Your name would be the melody that's on my tongue. Oh, if love was a simple song. There are no words. Have been written or been sung. My ears have heard. The girls are almost back from the ride. We can hear them right now. We can't wait to see how the ride went. How'd your ride go, Shelby? It went really good. How'd your ride go? It went pretty good. There was some learning curves. Shelby is catching horses for the adoption event. So that's what we're doing this morning. Though not pretty or poetic, I hope you know it's true. I'm not perfect in my ways, and I let you down most days. I know it's true, but darling, I love you. Go to your new home today. Good girl. Everyone, it's our annual fall in love adoption event. <laughs> so she's been, I've ridden her, done all the groundwork. She's really good mm -hmm. foundation. We wanted to have her checked by the chiropractor, mm -hmm. but she's mm -hmm. so busy that we are not able to have her seen until November 12th. Oh, love, you are worth a fight Cause my soul's for you Though not pretty or poetic I hope you know it's true I'm not perfect in my ways And I let you down most days But know it's true Look at you. I am like hair envy. Yeah, my soul, it's for you. And all those sometimes it's You just want to figure fill out all four sure. of those forms. Oh, it's true. I'm not perfect in my ways. In a mess most of my We're super excited to be able to move Martha and Stardust over. They got adopted today and I'm really excited with the people that adopted them. Hello, can we help you? I had an appointment at 11.45. Just heading out to get their paperwork and then we're gonna get them checked in. Are you boarding her then? No, uh, she'll actually go on my family farm. Oh, okay. We're so excited that Surprise has been adopted today. This is the third adoption that we have had in our adoption event so far. Um, 
surprise did come back to us previously from another adopter that had adopted her as the trainer was not able to finish her training but we are so excited that these people are willing to finish her training with her and we can't wait to see how far she goes. Inside this barn there's going to be a sawdust pile over there you can just park right there. Okay. So this is Jessie, you'll be working with her and Shelby today. Any questions or anything you have, just uh, talk to Jessie. Hi, Val. Hi. 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 Because of what the vet said with her shoulder, we're not riding her, but we're happy to do groundwork, saddle her up. She's got some of the best ground manners of many horses I've worked with over the years. side for anything what would be the point I'm with you through and through what I was looking for was everything and everything I found well honey I found it on you you're the song I want to sing you're the story I want well, for very part, Belle, the one we took out of the stall because she was really sweet. We got three cats going home today, which is so exciting. that four of the horses, which were Andromeda, Belle, Braveheart, and Kara, were transferred to another adoption partner today. They were able to come to our Fall in Love adoption event, and we are so excited that they not only took those four, but they also took three of our cats. Guys, another adoption appointment's here. Let's get ready. How are you guys today? Good, you got them all filled out? She's more of a follower, a little less confident. Like a candle in the dark. You've been burned too many times. And at the end, of a spark You turn yourself away from the light Don't be afraid my darling The darkest of days are just before the dawn So this is both of their paperwork. Um, this is their, they both have microchips. This is their Coggins. Um, her vaccines were also done on the same day of her Coggins and same as Curly. So that way it makes it super easy. Um, everything's just due the same time. We are so excited that Tina and Curly both got adopted today. That makes the fourth and fifth adoption of today. We are so excited for that. That ends our first day of our free adoption event. And we are so excited that five amazing horses and donkey have found amazing homes. We're so excited that we are able to move some more horses and little cats from our available wall over to our adopted transfer wall. So we have Belle got adopted today. Well, and apparently Toffee wanted to get adopted too, but she is still here with us. And Tina was adopted. 
Curly, one of our donkeys. And surprise. Andromeda got adopted. And then three of our cats, Mischief, Loki, and Gracie. So we are so excited that we get to move them over to our adopted transfer wall. We're also excited to say that we were able to transfer two of our horses off of our quarantine wall as well. So Kara and Braveheart. So we're gonna go add them to our wall. That makes 21 adoptions for just this month of October and it's only the 18th. So we are so excited about that. Stardust and Martha are on their way to their new homes. We are very excited for them. When Stardust came here to us, he was super, super skinny and he was just a really, really sad little mini. But now he has gained so much weight. He's still on the skinnier side. He still needs more weight, but he is so much more happier. And we are so happy that him and Martha have amazing homes. So we got so many packages from our Amazon wish list that um, we're, we're having them brought out here because there's so many the postmaster couldn't bring them out. So just thank you all so much for your support. We're excited to see what they are. So we got uh, 27 packages at the post office over the weekend and we just have to load them up and get them back to the shelter. Doc is here for our weekly vet visit. Thought you were gonna be gone, Sarah. You promised. Our adoption event went great, and we have four horses heading out of state, so Doc is here to give them a health certificate. Was she the one that we were having the popping coming out of? Yeah. I can't fault her that. I do, I do a lot of popping when I want to. Come wow. <laughs> on, where, where did her pain come from? They both look healthy, free from infectious disease and that sort of stuff. Do you have any probiotics to give him continuously? Because mm -hmm. that stuff, we need to do it for about five days. So he seems to be feeling good. He runs around. Um, I walk through his pen every day and he he's, doesn't seem like a sick horse. Just a runny nose. Just a run, yeah, and his temp's good. 99 seven minutes up a little bit and uh, so we're trying another antibiotic and antihistamine. We could get some and put some on his food now. Of course, that'll make him stop eating. Mm -hmm. We'll probably mix it up and shove it down his throat. Yeah. Oh, gave him some trihist. Usually put it on their food. Mixing it with kale syrup is another good thing. They'll take it better then. And uh, we just mix it with water because I don't think we had any KRO syrup. That was what we had today. <laughs> anyway. In quarantine. Doc is doing some health checks up here in quarantine. We're doing health certificates because these horses are going to Kentucky. A health certificate is not a guarantee of confirmation or that your horse is going to live forever. A veterinary health certificate is do they have an infectious disease now? It's to prevent infectious disease from going to state to state. So if Braveheart here had two legs but was otherwise healthy, we could ship him to Kentucky. The little white horse over there has a snotty nose, so we're going, hey, go back to quarantine. We cannot ship this one to Kentucky. Braveheart's temp's good. Although he's got a place on his leg, it's not gonna cause infection, and I think it is getting better, so. Yeah. There we have it. 
Kara did not pass the health certificate, but that's okay because she's still in quarantine. We rescued her from auction not long ago, and she'll just stay here, and then when she's healthy enough, then she'll be able to be transferred to the other rescue. So you've got a whole fan club of people following you now. That's sort of scary. They say on the videos, they're like, we love it when we see Doc on the videos, and um, yeah, you've got a whole fan club online of people that are just thrilled to see you working with the horses. Is it my luxurious hair or what is it? I think it might be your hair. I don't know. <laughs> maybe just you're a good bet. I don't know. I, I still have fun doing it, so maybe that's it. Probably. And we hope we're doing some good. I think we're doing some Last good Last anyway. video in 24 hours had 20,000 views. Well, that's pretty impressive. So you're, you're getting famous, Doc. Uh, we have a transfer fuel pump for uh, the diesel tank back here. Um, it didn't work whenever we first got the truck, so I took a little time today to see whether I could get it working, replace it, and uh, we should have a good transfer pump after it's replaced. Doc cleared blue jeans, so he gets to come down to the main facility and meet Parsi, so super excited about that. Bruno too, uh, but he might not meet Bruno today. We're just gonna kinda see how it goes and uh, we don't want too much at one time with these, these guys because we specialize in horses and there's a few cows here. So it's a bit of a little walk. I'm gonna walk him down. And we're gonna leave this rope on. Uh, it's a very stiff rope, so we shouldn't get caught up in anything, just so we can we can help catch them easier. We don't have to use that stick every time. And it'll be neat to see how well their friendship develops. Parsi, are you laughing at him? So we have received so many Amazon packages, it won't fit in my office. So we've come out here to the porch, it's kind of bright, but there's over 50 packages here. And uh, these are all donated items off of our Amazon wish list. So we got to get busy and get them opened. And I'd just like to thank everyone so much for your support and check out our Amazon wish list. We are putting a um, Curacin health care kit on Storm. She has some issues with her foot and we've been doing this for a couple weeks now and it's really working. So we just want to keep doing it. It helps with hoof regrowth. Yeah, it helps oops, <laughs> with hoof regrowth and um, they're awesome. We want to thank Curacin for sending those to us. We are very much using them and they are working. Yeah. We're gonna put this new boot that somebody just bought off of Amazon on there. Now we're gonna put some of the Kirsten wound uh, treatment stuff on there. This stuff is what's helping the most. So does that go down the plastic tube? Mm -hmm. Yes. You want to put the whole entire thing in there. And what it, it soaks the. It has the pad on the bottom where you put that in and it soaks down into the pad, which keeps it against the hoof, which helps it heal. She's like, you know, they'll take them. We need to get them there this evening. And I cannot express how grateful. I am for these cats to be able to come here and just filling out paperwork for the cats that are getting adopted. Can you tell the difference with the? Are there any more? Only with the. Oh, that's why they have collars on. Oh. Hi. Oh, you're gonna be my little purr. I can already tell that. Yes, you are. So you can't tell them apart except by collar. 
So we'll, uh, I told him I was going to name him Cuff and Link. I think he's gonna be a good riding donkey. You're gonna train him to, right? I was just, just sitting on him. I don't want to. He's a good boy. Mommy. Mama, Dad. You cannot ride him now. All right. Tomorrow, yeah. maybe tomorrow. You look concerned. I guess you'd have to find replacements for them in the time being until they get back. The vet is gonna give her the last act of kindness. We have an appointment today. Two of our horses that we previously adopted at are coming back today. The kids lost interest in the horses and the parents don't just want them sitting around, so they're gonna bring them back and hopefully we can find them new and amazing homes. Fill out as much information. There's one for each of them. It was great when it first started out. We'd never had horses before, so you know we were a total novice in this whole thing. <laughs> it was a good experience. Uh, it was a good experience, and I'm hoping that uh, we got them fat and happy, and the next group will get to enjoy them as much as we did. So we've had this tarp since about January. So it's lasted a couple months, but within the recent storms, it's kind of gotten a little ripped up. And it's definitely time to replace it. Feels like a heavier tarp. I think that's gonna do the trick. This is Braveheart, and he's gained 90 pounds. So Belle, Adromeda, and Braveheart are going to another organization. I'm really happy for them. We have the gutter guys here today, and we're going to be getting some gutters on the office, which is really awesome. So we want to do it along here, and then along here, and then just the same on the other side. And then running down out here. So I got some really rough news last night. Um, as you know, Jesse and Sarah went on a little mini vacation and I let them off early on work and they were supposed to be back last night and they were still states and states and states away. Like they're <laughs> like 20 hours away just about right now. This is auction week and they're not gonna be here for probably, I mean, maybe for intake, but we're looking at doing it without them, which is fine because we are a team. We all know where to pick up the pieces when team members are gone, but we are, going to be short two people for this this auction intake, which really stinks because auction, as you know, is, is really big. And Jesse was going to be driving the second truck. And now we've got we've got a bunch of gaps in our team because um, they they didn't make it back. So hopefully they will. But we have to proceed as if they aren't going to be back for the auction. This is really, really bad for the team because we all rely on each other during auction intakes. And, um, and I wish they were here, but they're not. So we have to really decide what we're gonna, what we're gonna do. 
kind of what your thoughts are of what we should do. I guess you'd have to find replacements for them in the time being until they get back. Someone to do Sarah's job and someone to do Jesse's job. Yeah. So we'll need to get all the vaccines ready, the wormers. Hey, Travis. Hey, how's it going? Good. Um, so. Ish. <laughs> yeah, I got more bad news, unfortunately. Oh, no. Uh, Sarah was supposed to do a order for the co-op today. Uh -huh. um, our plan was to get all the grain out of the barn because we've had some problems with rats, unfortunately. Yeah, rodents. Um, so we ran it. I used pretty much all the grain yesterday. Uh, I do have enough to feed for today. Okay. But I will need to go down to the store and buy more for tomorrow. Okay, so we're completely out of, I mean, we have hay, but we're completely out of grain and feed. We got enough, we got for enough today. for today. And Sarah was going to put the order in today, so she's not here to do that. Yes. This is Banner. He is a 16-year-old pony, and we are working on building his trust and desensitizing. This is Lightning. She just got surrendered, and right now we're just giving her a bath. It's ivermectin time. This is good stuff. It's everyone's favorite. This is Electra and she's gained 55 pounds since she's been in quarantine. This is Rain and he's gained 130 pounds. We're super happy with his progress. This is Marvel and she's gained 24 pounds. This is Mystic, and she's gained 75 pounds total. Hi, hey. baby. Hi. So this is Bucky, and he's gained 20 pounds. This is Rocket, and so far he's gained 19 pounds. So special. So special. But this is Storm. She has gained 87 pounds and is doing a whole lot better, so we are very happy. This is Argo, and so far she's gained 47 pounds. She's looking a lot better. So we just finished weighing and deworming all the horses up here in quarantine. We're super happy with their progress, and they're all looking really good. Well, we're getting ready to head out to go to the auction. Unfortunately, Jesse and Sarah are still stuck in an another state. Uh, they're on their way back, so hopefully they'll be here tomorrow for intake, but they had a horrible time trying to get back to the shelter, but um, if all goes well, they should be back tomorrow when the horses are back from the auction. Travis is just laying down new shavings in our trailer and we will be on the road headed to the auction to rescue as many horses as we can tonight. We don't know exactly how many that will be, but thanks to your support, we know we can rescue a lot of precious horses tonight. At 300, Behind me are 18 of the horses that we rescued, and I'm just so excited that we were able to save eight, not only these 18, but another one that we purchased in the parking lot. He's a Mustang with a previously broken leg just very very sad and the horses are settled in for the night we're gonna get some sleep ourselves be out here early in the morning to do the intake photos initial photos evaluation get them loaded up and transported back to the shelter and I can't thank each and every person who donated enough to make this possible it's almost 10 o'clock and we're finally leaving the auction we still have an hour to two hours worth of work left to do this evening so we rescued a horse that's really critical and I've been talking to our vet um, he's got a plan for the horse. Uh, we're just gonna keep him as comfortable as we can. It's an old injury, so he's been like this for a long time. If this was fresh, like a, a fresh injury, we'd be finding, you know, we'd have to put him down tonight. We couldn't allow him to continue suffering, but it's healed in this position. And so our vet feels the best thing is to just medicate him, help with the pain, and get him back to our shelter where we can take x-rays and then make a decision from there. So this is off of our Amazon wish list. 
it and get it open. So he's gonna get um, stress relief tonight. I'm also going to wrap his leg and hope that gives him some support. And I have to give him some banamine. It's awesome having a great vet on call. So he knows we're going to auctions and he's, he's like, let me know if you need anything, I'll tell you what to do. I'm gonna give him the banamine first and then I'm gonna wrap his leg. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. He's been like this for a really long time. Um, they've probably just been trimming off the end of his hoof, but. So he's got meds on board. I'm just gonna give him the stress relief and he should be pretty comfortable for the night. His legs wrapped, so he has some support. Um, and we'll, he'll be getting more medication. Uh, just as you know, we're following the vet's plan so we can keep him comfortable. So I'm just gonna give him this uh, stress relieving uh, poor guy's been through a lot. Yeah, we'll see what the vet says. Does that taste really weird, huh? You're gonna be okay. Yeah, we love you. Mm. So now I've gotta go up and send out an email and let everyone know how many horses we rescued and just thank everyone so much for their support because if we didn't have heroes out there making donations, we wouldn't be able to do the work we do, so. Um, I feel it's vitally important to let them know, even though I'm tired and exhausted, is letting them know how much I appreciate their support and um, we couldn't do it without them. So I gotta get that email sent out and then I can get some rest for the night. It's just uh, where I write the email I get it sent out, and um, this email uh, Shelby helped me with. I am, um, I, I have a, I got kicked in the head when I was a kid, and it really messed up my reading and writing ability. Uh, so I rely a lot on others to help me with that. So uh, Shelby helped write this up. So it's raining today. It's supposed to be raining all day. That means we have to get the horses loaded and intake in a storm. The nice thing is, if my hair gets wet in the rain, it's fine. That's the only good thing I can think about right now as far as positive that it's raining today. The rain is coming down. We, we have been battling weather all this week. Um, Sarah and Jesse, they headed out for the weekend. They got stuck in a storm. Uh, they wanted to go for traveling and they got stuck up by Colorado. And um, so weather was giving them a horrible time and now, this auction uh, transferred from the auction to our organization and the intake is all gonna be in the rain today and it's not gonna be fun. All right, Jason's got our auction box and we are heading in to find the horses we rescued. It's not fun, it's raining. Hey babies. Precious, it's gonna be okay, my baby. We're gonna get you out of here, okay? We have one other horse over here. Hopefully he's not a stallion. We gotta check and see because he's in the stallion pen. That can make it difficult because we already have one stallion. Hi, buddy. I know. You're worried. There you go. See, it's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Get him out here in the light and we'll see if he's a stud or not. It looks like he's just been gelded. He has a fresh incision down there. So he probably will still be acting stallion-like. Uh, so we'll have to put him in with uh, 
um, possibly, you know, just other geldings. Um, I see how old he looks. If he's young, that would be helpful. He's probably about four or so, so um, makes the intake a little bit more difficult uh, when we have stallions, just because we have two adult full-sized stallions and it, moving them and transporting them, we just have to make sure everybody's safe. Oh man, what happened to his hook? Oh, that doesn't look good. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that goes on our Amazon wish list and purchases the Sin Chill. It really helps the horses at the auction. They've been really stressed. Um, we're able to give them that. By the time they get back to the shelter, the transport isn't so scary for them. And um, it just, it starts out their experience with us being able to be calmer and uh, more relaxed. And that's really important. Uh, stress is very bad for horses. Getting the horses sorted out. I'm catching them. Jason is uh, putting in a different pens. Uh, it's just him and I working here today. Hey, baby. Are you all right, baby? It's okay. Let me get you out of here, okay? Hold on. This will help you, okay? You're all right. I know. You probably think it's warmer, but it's going to help you. And there you go. This horse has something wrong with its mouth. It really stinks. You can tell this horse has uh, chronic diarrhea and also has a swollen pastor in there. And it's really skinny. We have to get you out of here. Come on. All right, we're going to see if uh, this gelding will be okay with the other uh, one we got that's just gelded. It's always a trick trying to get these these boys to work out. So we've got two other. He's being good with that gelding, so hopefully we can get him in here with this gelding and they'll be fine. So far, it looks like we're having success. It looks like everyone's being nice to each other, so that's a good thing. Hi guys, come here. Mud and crusted halters are, they've been left on for a long time, are always so hard to take off. Let's get you out of here. It's okay, we're gonna take you too. Hold on. You're gonna be safe. It's okay. <laughs> Let's get you out of here. Come on. You're so beautiful. Come on, baby. Come on, you're gonna be all right. Come on, you, come on, you're so skinny. I know, come on, we can do this, come on. Come on, baby, come on. Come on. Aw. Let's give you some of this. Help keep you calm. Aw, I can tell from your teeth, you're really old. Here we go. Oh, he's so pretty. You look like Black Beauty, don't you? Yes. All right, come on, baby. Let's go. Come on. Come on. So a lot of you saw this horse when we posted her, and we were really hoping we were able to save her, and we did. So uh, just got to get her intake picture. I gave her her calming medicine, and we'll get her back to the shelter. She's super skinny. I think she'd been in stacks not terribly long ago because they grow the hoof out really long, and you can see how long her hills are and she's actually walking back here. It's, it's, it's swollen and, and puffy because she probably had stacks on for years of, of her life. Um, you can see her back legs. Uh, Pastern's actually almost like touching the ground when she walks and she has a hard time walking straight. It's all just common with 
throwing away big lick horses, they, their bodies just can't handle the amount of stress and strain put on their, their bones and their tendons and their legs. Just have a few more horses to do their intake on. Just noticed uh, that one over there, you can see it had another auction tag in its tail. So it's been through multiple auctions and that's very common on the way to the slaughter pipeline. That one has two. So it looks like it's been through three auctions, an auction tag on its shoulder, its right hip, and then from last night. So these horses really just bounce around the auction slaughter pipelines until they ultimately end up in Mexico. They get too skinny, dump them off, exchange them for fatter horses. Like this one that we rescued instead of the kill buyers getting her. Yeah, he looks like he's starting to relax. I think the their, their eyes are getting calmer. And that's from that uh, and chill, just uh, helping them relax and not be so scared. We have the last horse in here. Yeah, we still got the little minis. It's gonna come down here and hide. You're okay. So I've tried catching this horse. Uh, he's still very scared and he wants to connect with me. So I don't want to push him to the point that he is scared of me. And then uh, when he gets back to their shelter, we have the the proper facility for, you know, catching him without causing stress. So I'm just gonna take his intake pictures of him standing in here, and then we'll run him into the pen with the other horses, then he can be loaded up and head to our shelter. All right, so I'm just gonna run him down. Come on. And we try to cause the least amount of stress possible for these horses once they're in our care, because we know they've been through a lot, and we just wanna Get him back to the shelter and then get him evaluated. There we go. Well, now we got our little mini pen because we've got all the big horses sorted out. So this is the first pen. Um, the first trailer's here to load them up and we'll get them on the road. Such a good boy. He's so stoic. It might be because he's so used to so much pain. A uh, needle doesn't doesn't affect him. There you go, buddy. We gonna make your trip better, okay? Yeah. This leg is just so horrific. It's one of the worst legs I've seen in a very long time in rescuing, where it's just broken and twisted and deformed out so bad and, he's, and it's an old injury. He's having to live like this for probably years. You get the little minis loaded up. Come on. That one is so sad. <sighs> Leg is just terrible. I know, it's super hard. Oh. We got everyone loaded up. The first truck and trailer is on the road. We've got stallion, minis, and more boys back here recently gelded. One and then three, two other geldings. So we're off to the shelter. Love has always been the kind of thing that knocked me off my feet. Until you came and picked me up by never really understood what people meant by wait and see But now I'm seeing all the things that we could be Oh, you and me Tell me why Love can't always be this easy time Seems to stand still when you're standing near me I've spent my whole life second guessing everything
There may be some days where things don't go exactly how we planned, but I'll always be right there to hold you. I promise that I'm gonna love you as long as I can. Oh, with everything I am, just tell me why love can't always be this easy. Time seems to stand still when. As soon as the vet gets here, let's get it x-rayed and, and do what we need to do because he is, this is just not good. So he was born in 96. Hey, at least it's raining. You look concerned. The whole joint is fused. The bad thing is it's fused crooked. If it had been fused straight, maybe we were able to use it. We've got a lot of bony reaction there. There's nothing we can do for him. Um, you know, when we see a horse like this, it's it's really hard to think of the years of agony that he endured. And I'm thankful that he's here and we're gonna be able to do the right thing for him and relieve him of that constant suffering. It's something his owner should have done a long time ago. X-rays of this little mini hips, and it has a severe hip problem going on. Um, it's it's something that can't be fixed, and we're gonna have to do the last act of kindness. I knew when we were bringing these horses here that that was probably gonna happen. It's it's always hard. It's never easy, um, especially because that little mini is only two years old. And you know, to think about the pain and suffering she endured just because her owners didn't do the responsible thing and say, wow, I have a, an animal with a fractured hip, I need to put it down and have a vet come out. Instead, just take it to an auction. And, you know, people do get upset at Horse Plus. They say, oh, Horse Plus kills horses and stuff. We aren't the ones that are out there causing these problems and doing this to these horses. We're the ones not turning a blind eye to them, rescuing them and making the decision with the vet and giving them the last act of kindness because they're suffering. We rescue horses regardless of their condition, even if that means the last act of kindness. And people are welcome to bash us on the internet if they want, but we know it's the right thing to do. Yeah. How old is he, Doc? Yeah, I will. We think two He says two on here, yeah. so we're good. Doc is giving him his vaccinations and his uh, antibiotics, and I'm giving him electrolytes, dewormer, and his microchip. It looks like part of P1 down here is dissolving. Uh, we don't have a lot of the, there's some real cancellous bone down here that usually shows up. It's pretty much gone. This joint, we've got the coffin joint, which is probably pretty good. The next joint up is fused, and I think that's where the problem is because we have some bone lysis right here. So sadly, there's nothing we can do for this horse. She's nearly 30 years old, and the kindest thing we can do is to end that constant painful suffering that she's, she's going through. So the vet is going to give her the last act of kindness. It seems like every horse that comes through just about is needing that, but that's because we're looking at the critical ones first and making those calls. Um, it's just, it's hard, but it's the reality of rescue work. We could have turned a blind eye to all these horses and rescued adoptable horses, but even then we don't know if they're drugged and they're, they've got lameness problems. So we just rescue every one we can in the slaughter price range and figure out what's best once they're here. And, um, you know, just, just looking at the x-ray, anyone could tell that this horse is 
got a lot of problems. Let's do new Coggins because they say it's a quarter horse since 14 years old. And, mm. and it was gated, right? It's gated. Gated. gated, yeah. So we got our barn all set up for these horses coming in. And we have hay and salt and water. And we're going to keep them in from the rain. Let's take an extra and see how yeah. it looks. On this horse over here, we've got a what looks like a coronary band injury. We took an x-ray of his hoof and all the bone structure looks great. Some of the best I've seen. Seen today, for sure. Except for some of the best I've seen today. <laughs> the best we've seen the today. The best. I'm gonna go it's out on there and say the best. So everyone's saying they're hungry. Travis came over and asked about pizza. Um, not sure what to do. Hey, Doc, what are you doing? I'm buying pizza. You're buying pizza for everyone. Okay, so yeah, this is how awesome Doc is. Now, last time I told you about all these amazing fan club you have. What are they going to do when they see you buying pizza for everybody? We'll have a lot more volunteers. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happens. <laughs> Alright, let's this horse's leg. She's only two years old and I'm hoping there's no damage in her bones and her joints. Hopefully it's just swelling from getting kicked or something but we won't know until we take the x-rays so that's what we're gonna do. You want about, that's almost a 45 yeah. degree angle. You want about 30, 25 to 30. Yeah, yeah. I don't think she, man, right. I think she's probably closer to 30. Yeah. We're taking x-rays of her. I'm afraid that she's got some arthritis in her pastern. It seems pretty swollen. We won't know until we get the x-ray and that's why we're taking it. And then we can make an uh, educated decision on what's best for her. If she's in pain and she's suffering, we don't want that to continue. She doesn't have a lot of arthritis, but we're gonna start getting, it looks like it could be bone to bone. There was a group of Tennessee walking horse brood mares that were sold at the auction. We got as many as we could, and we knew when we rescued them that there was probably some major quality of life issues. And um, you know, this mare, she's she's almost 30 years old. When she walks, her her hind end is very very weak, and um, we all believe here that this is from the big lick. What you got there? Got pizza. Hope everybody's ready for pizza. Pizza is so yummy. What, what is that one? Gluten free. That's gluten free. Oh, gluten free. I'll tell you a story about gluten now. <laughs> the horse behind me is number 300 for the year. Uh, this year we've been rescuing just over about a horse a day. And this horse's name is Lily. She's named after somebody very special and um, we're just gonna give her her vaccinations, microchipping, antibiotics, all that good stuff. And um, I hope if Lily out there is watching that she uh, sees this 
horse that is named after her. What? Well, Lily, you're such a pretty girl. Yes, you are. You are a beautiful horse. So regal. We're waiting for the x-ray machine to uh, do all its fancy stuff so we can see the image. Looks like we got a little ring bone starting over. Uh, that may be why she got turned back in by somebody that's trying to train her, but she does not look lame. Oh, is that yucky? Does anybody know where her cottons are? Hold on. One more for you. She did great for her microchip. I got Lily's tag here. Uh, she's number 300 and she's 300 for this year. We've rescued over 300 horses this year. That's about a horse a day. So we stay really busy around here. All right, there's her tag, number 300. This is why I let Doc do it. but we are finally it's been it's been long but it's been fun yeah i mean it's been a good day but we've got all horse all the horses taken care of uh, there's 19 in total and they're safe and they're happy and that's what it's all about so seems like we got a good bunch of horses this time so yep horses that need help are good. And they're safe. everybody seems happy so we're good and doc bought us all pizza and that was just icing on the cake Gotta keep the crew happy. <laughs> well, you do a good job. We just need a good cold rain to... You squeezed it. I didn't squeeze it. Never! So this is Cassie. She's done really good. Forrest was just surrendered to our organization. His family has fell on hard times and they knew that the right thing to do for him was to bring him here to our organization. We're so happy that we were able to have two more horses come into our organization today. We're just thankful that we are an organization that's an open door shelter that we can help anybody that's in need of not being able to care for the horses, um, 2020 has been a crazy year for a lot of people, but we are thankful that we are here for them and we cannot wait to get these guys a new and amazing homes. If you want to give like three quarters of that to the boys' side. Which side? That side. That side. over the weekend. I'm not sure quite what to do about it. We um, we put a little bit here and there that yes, these two really like each other, but we didn't put as much as what we're all seeing in these episodes. And these two are now engaged. Um, we have a lot of romance here at the shelter and now they're, they're gonna be getting married. Uh, we couldn't be happier for them, but um, yeah, I gotta be careful when I hire young men to work here around the shelter with all these girls because um, this is the result. <laughs> so we are putting numbers on the stalls. If you can find our nails. So of course in this stall if that person doesn't know what that animal looks like, so. Really? <laughs> So 
so we finished um, numbering the stalls in the barns and now we are putting numbers on all the pens outside. Hey, one down, no drop. Yes, those two are holding hands. <laughs> so because we have something planned tomorrow and I won't be here all day tomorrow to get the episode edited. I teased her a little bit and she decided to put water bottle I was drinking water and we squeezed it and sprayed it in my face so I dumped the rest on Squeeze it? Look. I went like that with my hand and then you squeezed it. I didn't squeeze it. Whatever, it got a little bit like Hey everyone, it's that time of week again to open our Amazon packages. You know, we just are being showered with Amazon packages. Um, you all go on our Amazon wish list and purchase things that we need and we just can't thank you enough. Thank you all so much for everything, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Can you put more streets in here, like one little stack? Yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. Yeah. Having to use a lot of detangler right now. We got a lot of matted manes. It works wonders. Probably is way better at this than I am. the work cut out for her today. We've got so many cockabras. Oh my goodness. Sarah's been with us for three years. I'm whispering because these walls are like really thin. They're just metal. 
I don't want her to hear me, but I got something for her because she's been with us for three years and she's just such an awesome, awesome part of our team. So I gotta get it all together so I can give it to her. Sarah, can you come here? Yep. Hi. Let's sit, take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> so, there was something we were wanting to do, but it's been chaotic. And uh, you have been such a valuable part of our team. And your three years with us came and went because we were just so busy. Not everyone can do what you do. Three amazing years, but anyone can see that what you do makes a wonderful difference. Thank you. And I think that's true because not everybody can do what we do here. Thank you for all your three long years of dedicated <laughs> service. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. And many, many more to come. Yes. Thank you. The last three years have been a crazy ride. I never imagined that my dream of working at a place that um, helped horses would ever come possible. Leaving a job that I really love to pursue a dream of mine was crazy to me, but I am so happy that I have done it. The last three years um, have been amazing. I started out in just a little tiny um, office that was freezing. Um, you had to wear your hats and your gloves and your blankets and everything in order to stay warm while you were working, but it was worth it because we were helping the horses that really needed a lot of our help. And um, we transferred that from there to another bigger office. Um, that was our tack room, but when we were able to build our barn, we were able to change the office into a tack room. And then now we're in a much bigger office and um, we are able to help so many more horses than we were when I first started here. Rescue work isn't always cut out for everybody. Um, it's very demanding, it's very emotional draining. Sometimes you go home and you're just exhausted, not because you've done anything physical, but because you've done everything mental. You know, going through to seizure cases um, with the sheriff's departments, we've done several since I've been here. You just see how much people don't care anymore in this world, and it's really, really sad. And um, just there's a lot of horses that need help, and I'm thankful that in the last three years I've been able to do a lot of that. And um, going to auctions, I've been to a few of them, but for me it's too emotional to go because I want to save all of them. If only we could do that, that would be amazing. Sarah is such a valuable part of our team and I am so thrilled that she's been with us for three years and I know long term she's planning on being with this organization for a really long time. I can't be running it forever and it's possible that Sarah could be our future president for our organization um, or in leadership of some kind. Uh, rescue work is extremely hard. People get compassion fatigue. I've been doing it for 17 years and I've learned how to process and, and stuff, but I know I can't do this forever, so I am definitely watching our younger uh, staff members seeing who has leadership qualities, and I know Sarah does an excellent job. So this is Cassie. She came in in the August auction, and she's come a long ways. She was really hard to catch when she got here and didn't like her feet being messed with. But she'll come up to you in the pasture now. And we have put her first ride on her. Today will be her second ride. So I like to take my time and let them know the saddle's coming. Do it on both sides. Don't want them to be good on one side and terrible on the other. Yesterday we had her in the side barn and we threw the ball out and she was like, wait, you didn't give it to me. Huh. It's okay to move away from it as long as you stop. We've probably spent 12 sessions with her. This will be her third time wearing a bit and she's learning very quickly. So same with saddling. She, it's okay to move around as long as she stops eventually and then I'll release the pressure. So 
So this is Cassie. She's done really good. She's been here almost three months, I think. And we've gotten her with two rides under saddle and a lot of desensitizing and groundwork. So it's hay day again. Uh, we got a nice load of hay for the horses and they're working on, un on unloading them now. Patterson, the vet's gonna come look at you today. I promise he is. Come here. Oh, you poor wishing you. Hi. I'm holding on to something better than anything I've ever known. We live in seasons like the weather. But one thing's constant all along. The girls are back from their trail ride and our adoption of partner is here to pick up a few horses. Good morning. How are you this morning? Ready for a nap. Oh, <laughs> that was, sounds like a really good idea. How old are they? This is Copper. He came in through the auction last week. A grazing Grace is able to finish out his rehab and rehome him, so we're very excited that they are willing to do that for him. He's got a lot of hair. He's got some down here, too. All right, you want to sign that? And then today's date is the 4th. So we just got 139 panels uh, to finish out some of the fencing uh, that we need to do down here to make it so that the uh, horses are more secure and we don't have to worry about replacing fences as much. This is Ping, he's 15 years old and we're gonna evaluate him right now. I should teach him that you tap right here. And he drops his head. That'd be nice. You pick your head up, you pick me up. Ping's done really good. We finished his evaluation and are very happy with him. That cat, y'all been looking at that cat? Yeah. What's he in? How come? He's having GI problems. Are you using the side by side? We're going up to quarantine to recheck the horses that came in from the auction last month. So this is Apollo. He had a really bad cough and snotty nose this morning. We could give him a big dose of Xeed or we could give him some genocin for a day or two and see how he did. This is Mercy. She's two years old. Nine She's gained 120 pounds in a week. I think so. She looks pretty good. How much do you weigh? A little rough. Boogie. It's exceed. This is very typical what we see when we rescue horses from auction is typically a week afterwards we're seeing some pretty rough illnesses. So you're not playing games on your phone? Nope. Talking to the producer of Horse Rescue Heroes. <laughs> His lungs sound pretty good but he's starting to have a little trouble breathing. So.
We're just gonna get a seat. I'll listen to it. Yeah, we can. Yeah, like So that's it. That's it. It's yep. not dark yet. Well, that's <laughs> all I got for you. <laughs> we had fun today. Anyway. Well, thanks for coming out and listening to everybody's lungs. Thanks. All this, Most of them sounded good. Yeah. All this cold weather isn't going to do anybody any good. No. Yeah, changing. We just need a good cold rain to get rain, it all flared no, up. That, I don't like nothing cold. You like that? That's pretty good. We've been driving since 4 a.m. And there you go, that's a pouring pub. So we're on our way to Wisconsin to visit Ponytails. Sadly, the family that adopted Buddy had to bring him back. So this is Storm, she has very sensitive feet, so we're gonna put in a pouring pad on her and so that um, Jessie can start training her and she can go to a new home soon. I wish we could have put it on a long time ago. Huh? There you go, that's a pouring pad. Would you like to explain to us what you did and why? Sure, so I put what we call in the industry a pour-in pad. It's made by Vettec, it's called Equipac CS. And the unique thing about this is it has copper sulfate in it, so it's an antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal. Um, it's embedded into the pad when you pour it. And it's unique in that it's a pour-in pad, so it can be customized to any size, shape, or foot. And so, um, as we, when we nail the shoe on, afterwards we pour the pad in there. It gives her a custom pad for full support and protection for the bottom of her sole, because her sole was very sensitive. And we wanted to be able to have our trainer work with her and um, allow her to move through the adoption process. The family that adopted Buddy had to bring him back. He wasn't fitting into their herd and they didn't want him to get hurt. So they brought him back here and we were very thankful that they did that. But that is the reason why we have the first ride of refusal so that people feel like if for some reason the horse or the donkey or the pony isn't working out with their family that they can bring them back. We're off on a very early morning adventure but I'm really excited about it. We've been driving since 4 a.m. this morning. We're on our way up to Wisconsin to uh, do the final filming for the uh, EV show, Horse Rescue Heroes. And we're a little tired, but we're gonna hopefully get some sleep on the airplane because it's about a two and a half hour flight up there. And with the corona restrictions and the masks and everything, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to sleep. Usually I can just fall asleep. As we just got to the airport. It's gonna be quite an uh, exciting trip. So Jason's just parking the truck and we're gonna be getting our tickets soon. So we're on our way to Wisconsin to visit Ponytails. Last time we were up there, it was November uh, in 2019. Now it's November 2020 and we're going to do our one year recheck see if they need anything else mentoring wise from us and I'm super excited to see what their facility is like. I hope it's gonna be warm up there because if it's not I'm gonna freeze to death. I froze up I almost froze to death up there last time. It was frigid cold ice everywhere. Well we were walking on frozen lakes. Yeah it and was that was kind of fun but it was kind of chilly cold. too. Cold cold cold
Sorry for Sarah. Her ears always give her a really bad time when she's flying. When you open those overhead bins to avoid injury from items that may have shifted during flight. Well, we have arrived and um, we'll be meeting up with uh, the producer and the guy who did all the filming for the series Horse Rescue Heroes. And then we'll be headed to Ponytails. I hope they're doing as well as uh, they look like they are on Facebook. We are in Minneapolis. We gotta go to uh, luggage claim and get our bags. I've never seen a uh, public piano at an airport before. I've been playing uh, since I was a kid, and I uh, love playing, but lo and behold, Minneapolis Airport, public piano. We're trying to find the car rental station. Uh, somewhere. Yay, there's the car rental sign. We're here getting our car, and I just wanna take a moment to recognize one of our longtime supporters who passed away and left money in her estate to help horses. She wanted us to further our mission. And that's when we opened up the Full Circle of Life grant uh, with that funding because we can only do so much. But with her support leaving us in her will, we were able to do this national program to help horse rescues across the nation. And we really hope that Ponytails has done everything that they possibly can to further their organization. It's been a year since we've seen them, so I really hope that they've taken all the tools that we've given them and Cindy doesn't have compassion fatigue now. She's been able to delegate and we'll just see how, how it goes, but I'm super excited for them. We have our rental car and now we're just waiting for the producer of Horse Rescue Heroes to arrive on a different flight and we'll be headed to Ponytails. Well, we're almost to Ponytails. It's gonna be so exciting to see their progress. Uh, flying up here, I was like, what if they're not doing good? Right over this hill, we're gonna be able to see the barn. Your destination on the left-hand side okay. after 900 feet. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so. Oh, oh wow. wow. Uh, uh, uh. Slow down, slow that down, is slow down. beautiful. And that's where you're not going to be able to see what happens from here on out because that's for the, an episode in Horse Rescue Heroes. So um, you'll have to watch that when it's released. But uh, can't give any hints away. So it is what it is. You'll just have to wait until it's released. So you're going to take Cosmi and Apollo today? Sure. Yeah. We're, we're so excited for them. So a grazing grace already has um, homes, she's pretty sure, lined up for these two. So it's really nice that she's able to come here and um, pick up the horses that she already has um, homes for. this week's Amazon packages. We've got tons of them and we're super excited about it. So uh, Blake is wondering if we adopt horses to the UK. So, All the way over that's a England. great question. We have uh, horses in Hawaii. So yes, we will adopt across the water, uh, but you are responsible for um, getting the horse to you. Um, 
and, and paying whatever costs are involved with that. We will work with veterinarians on proper quarantining and all that so the horse can go um, to wherever in the world we're sending it, I guess. Um, and we have had interns before from around the world and like um, where she was from, a Mustang, an American Mustang would be like the biggest treasure to have. But here, I mean, they're ending up in the slaughter pipeline. And so getting horses different places is an excellent thing. Um, but we just have to make sure it's done properly and it's the right horse for you. Question, uh, when's the next auction rescue? Okay, next auction rescue is next week. Uh, the 17th, we'll be going to auction, rescuing as many horses as we can. So you can click the donation button in this video or any of our other donation buttons and we will be um, saving as many horses as we can and your support will go to you know rescue shelter and protect these horses uh, that desperately need our help so thank you so much so doc is checking out the uh donated salt blocks yeah it's you think they're, they're good for the horses i don't know it looks pretty cute you like that that's pretty good It'll work for the horses then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Himalayan salt. Himalayan salt There's two more blocks out here if y'all want to come. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to wait to send on that yet. <laughs> you do. They have things. This lady was going through some really, really hard times and she's on her own and stuff and she just couldn't take care of them. She had to find homes for all of her animals and stuff. She broke her foot, she nice can't work, one. coronavirus. Yeah. And, uh, she was, it was yeah. like, it was really, really hard for her. She's had them for a very long time. She don't like shoots either. Uh, 98 too, we're good. What we shall do is we're gonna try the uh, probiotics and take them off grain, hay, and bio sponge. Let's try, let's try the diarrhea. So Y'all stay close and let me know what it does. So Marcy has some swelling in her knee and we're just wrapping it and trying to help the swelling go down. So Pippin's not feeling too well. We're gonna give him some of the meds that Doc um, said to give him to see if that helps um, him start feeling better, huh, buddy? You want some of this yummy stuff? And Doc was able to look at Pippin. He's still not feeling too well. He was a little on the sick side last week and gave him some medicine and stuff. And then today he's still not doing well. So we're trying another um, round of medicine to see if that helps and we really hope that um, he starts to feel better and we're very thankful that Doc was able to come out today. Well, it's a frigidly cold morning. It's below 30 degrees. No information found for participating databases. Here's Max. Max is gonna be your friend, so you're not alone, okay? Come on, buddy! Come on, buddy! Yeah. Good boy! Good boy. 
That's such a good boy. So we're catching horses to see the chiropractor today. When I fall apart To a million pieces When I don't know where to start You put me back together Rise and the levee breaks Through your tear-filled eyes And your hands that shake Darling, I'll be steady When you're at the end of your tired road When you're feeling trapped And just need to go Darling, I'll be ready when you fall apart. The chiropractor is finished and we are very thankful that she is able to come out and do that for us. Some of the horses did get adjustments today. She prefers not to be on film, so we didn't film her today, but we're still very thankful that she was able to come out. Put you back. slowly follows him everywhere, like just at a far distance, she just follows him. Oh, whoa. And then yes. this is for Dobie. Yes, and then assign that to adopt Dobie. Okay, sounds good. Did the fairy appointment go well? It went really good. We got four horses done. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> The horses are coming out of quarantine today, so that can only mean one thing. We are going to um, weigh them again, see how much weight they have gained, and deworm them, and then send them off to a new pasture. They're all done, all of the horses have been weighed and they are improving tremendously and they have been dewormed and now they're on the way to a new pasture and a new adventure. So he's a little bit more aware than the other horse she got. The lady that had him said he did dump her, but she was quite a bit older. So I don't know exactly what happened. Leading is probably one of his weaker points. He likes to stop and... Good boy.
Because he's not fair. Yeah, he's not fair. I'm guessing bit-wise, you probably could play with the bits a little bit. I think that's, that's all I need. Okay. Are you really adopting? I think he just adopted me. <laughs> yeah, I think very he last yep. work now. Yep. And this one back here is also everything in yellow. Just telling you that we do encourage you to quarantine him for a couple of weeks after you get him back, just in case he gets a sign, knows from traveling, a little stress or whatever, all your other horses don't get it. But yeah, that's fine. Um, if you And a ramp, yeah. Ping is on his way to his new home. We are so happy for him. He hasn't been here long, and when he came in, we felt like we had the perfect home for him, and we were so excited that that home worked out for him, and we cannot wait to see what his new adventures are going to be. It's the morning of the auction. Everybody's getting ready to do their duties and get ready to go to the auction. One of my duties is just getting all the paperwork together for whenever they um, are able to purchase the horses tonight. They'll send all the information back to me so that I can contact the vet, let them know what horses need what when they arrive so we can have everything in order. The auction just finished and we rescued 21 horses with you guys' support. We want to thank you all so much for your donations. This rescue wasn't possible without you guys. So we can't wait to get them to the shelter and get them the care that they need. Well, it's a frigidly cold morning. It's below 30 degrees. Uh, Tennessee isn't supposed to be this cold. I don't know how I'm going to survive today, but anyways, I guess it is winter time. Um, we rescued 21 horses, so we are on the way to the auction right now and going to get their initial intake done and get them back to the shelter. So it's going to be a long, exciting, cold day. We're pulling in. auction was full last night and it's empty this morning all right coming into the auction got our auction box full of goodies now we just have to find all the horses we rescued they're typically kind of scattered around the auction so we'll look around and see if we can find them Castaway Tennessee Walking Show Horse. We love our horses, we take care of them. They never end up in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. I hear the Big Lick people tell me that all the time. And all the other guys, we're gonna get them out and get them loaded up and back to our shelter. This little baby donkey is so precious. Oh, you want some loves? You want some loveys? Oh, precious baby. You little orphan. I'm gonna give this horse some sin chill to keep calm and relaxed for the trip. There you go. Good baby. Good baby. Pony. A little oh, hackney. Nice girl, hackney pony. Cute little thing. Jason's taking a little pony down to its pen. Shelby's catching the next horse. That one's sure pretty. pretty boy. I'm just gonna get your picture and we'll give you some stuff to help keep you calm. This is a, um, a Tennessee walking show horse and uh, I don't know how many times I've heard we love our Tennessee walking horses. They never end up in a bad situation. Then why am I here at the auction rescuing registered Tennessee walking horses with a show history in really rough condition? Y'all in the big lick Tennessee walking show world need to accept that horses are ending up in the slaughter pipeline in horrendous condition. 
and I'm the one rescuing them. So if I'm out speaking and I say that I see horses in horrible condition that were once show horses, it's because that's what I'm actually seeing. And this horse is proof. It looks like he has a, a cut tail where they cut the tendon in their tail. Um, park out, but you can see when he walks, he's, he's got the great big, uh, you can see his tail right here is kind of cocked off to the side weirdly. Um, they cut the tendon in the tail so they can't really control it very well. So that's why it's like that. Let's get him turned around so we can get the other side of him. I know you're probably even going to watch this video and say this horse was made up, but we have his papers. He was a re he's a registered Tennessee walking show horse. Ended up in the slaughter pipeline. So y'all in the Tennessee walking horse world need to take accountability. Say yes, we have problems. We need to fix them. Not pretend that it's perfect because it's not. I'm squeezing here. This horse has a pretty good gash on the side of its face. So this horse is Louisiana Lime. She is a purebred, tattooed thoroughbred. We've been able to track her down that she was at a pretty well-known um, feedlot. Uh, supposedly somebody paid uh, some of her bail money and she ended up here. Uh, she's got an auction tag there. She has an auction tag here. Um, so this is what happens to off the track thoroughbreds. Um, end up at auctions, end up at feedlots. Feedlot says, oh, we've, we've got some bail on her, waiting for a home, and here she is. So we're thankful we were able to rescue her. Um, it's just sad that horses are the victims of so many horrible, horrible things. So this horse is just shaking, it's so scared. Um, but it was ran through the auction last night, ended up at a feedlot. It's also been through another auction up there. So probably the same, same kind of story as with the thoroughbred. She's gonna get her sin chill. She doesn't want her calming medicine. She's worried. It's gonna help you calm down. You're so scared. You're shaking. You're all right. Baby donkey is so precious. You're just the sweetest thing ever. See, this is the one your mom should like. <laughs> hey, baby. Are you just confused and lonely? Where's your mommy? What happened to your mommy? Come on. Oh, baby. Can you even read? How sweet. Alright, Shelby. Anything? Yeah, I was gonna say, it, it just seems to help them overall. So we could get like quarter dust to hand out of yeah. the county. So cute. Oh, mine's so sad. Poor little baby. He's blind in one eye, but thanks to your generosity and support, we were able to rescue him. We're gonna get him back to the shelter and give him the help he needs. And don't worry about the horses in the pen behind him, they're all coming to our shelter too. In the slaughter pipeline, we often see horses with braids in their manes or tails. We always wonder, did the person know that the horse was gonna end up in the slaughter pipeline? 
or did they just give it away on Craigslist and want it to look nice and it ended up in the auction and thankfully we were able to save this horse but somebody obviously cared at some point. Video. Come on babies! Christian Farms Rescue and Rehab is also here helping us today and they brought their trailer and their rig so they're helping us move horses back to our shelter because we got a lot of horses this time. We just got back from the auction and it's been a bit of a crazy day, but we've got back here earlier than we normally do. And that's awesome with 21 horses saved. Uh, we're just gonna get them unloaded and get them settled. Uh, right now we're going to be unloading the little critters and getting them settled in a stall. And uh, then we're gonna start the intake process. Baby. Aww. So this little pony behind me is getting her shoes pulled. Um, it's kind of rare that we find ponies that come in to the auction with shoes. So she was probably used for riding or maybe pulling a cart, um, something like that. But we're going to get her shoes pulled and um, kind of evaluate her from there. Three of the horses we got from the auction were actually from a very well-known kill pen. At least one of the horses had bale raised on it and um, we're still learning the story of what all was behind with this horse. But the important thing to know is kill buyers go to auctions, they buy horses, they put them out online, they inflate their prices. People see a horse, it's gonna be shipped. Uh, this is the ship date. Uh, for this one particular horse, the ship date was way earlier than they even pulled the Coggins on the horse. And so, Apparently, people that were trying to bail this horse thought the horse went into a home, but it didn't. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of people that operate these kill pens, when they have somebody that's like, I will pay the bail for this horse, and they're like, okay, well, let's see if we can find it a home, and ultimately it just goes to another auction. And I, I really believe this is what happened with these three horses. Um, we're very thankful that we were able to purchase them, One's an off-the-track thoroughbred, one's a pony, and one is a gray gelding. And um, they could have easily just shipped them, but I think if they were confronted and asked, you know, hey, what happened to that horse I helped raise the bale on? 
and they say, oh, well, we didn't send it to slaughter. We've sent it with somebody. They're going to give it a good home rather than, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible situation. These feedlots out there buying horses, preying on people's emotions, and then taking the horses right back into the slaughter pipeline, even after some of the bail has been paid. So the same person is on all three of these coggins, which was the person that took the horse to re that from the kill pen as a home. So she took three horses from that kill pen as being homed and took them to auction after people donated money to save them. One person messaged us and I'm going to call her to find out if I can get any more information on these feedlot horses. Hi, this is Tawny with Horse Plus Humane Society. Hi, Hi. how are you? Good, good. So uh, we have the thoroughbred here. Um, and I was just wondering any information you can tell me that you know about her on your end. Um, and then it was a Melissa that picked her up. Was she supposed to give her a home or what, what was the circumstances okay. around that? Okay, the whole, here's the whole thing. There's, a bastard got a bunch of thoroughbreds in. Uh-huh. And I don't, I haven't worked with them that much, but. We're in there. It might not fall in the water trough if you put it in there. Yeah. It's getting coggins. Was that eight mils in there? I think it's 10. 10? Yeah, we're just now at seven. I've been pushing a while. I think she's pretty young. But seven flashed in my head real close. We have uh, Peyton volunteering here today. We actually, this is the first time since COVID hit that we've had volunteers. We've had a long time volunteer, Dawn. Uh, the only thing we got to do with her during COVID was go to a big lick protest, but she's here volunteering today. And uh, Peyton, who is an actress, you need to look her up and watch her movies. What I'm doing right now is I am putting in little tag. She is the 311th horse we've rescued this year. So, get it through the, the mane here. We like these tags because they are easy to remove. Um, we're just gonna put some glue here. We're able to, um, and we are able to identify the horses here. Now we have the farriers here. He's working on a horse or the vet. We don't have to go back in the office to try to remember the, the horse's ID number. Are you a good girl? So these are bad Coggins. Guess I'll trim that one up. Maybe you are smelling something funny in there. That's why we bring extra stuff. He's not holding. Atrophied frog. What do you say that um, I'm gonna try and clean it up and treat it and see if we can't get it looking better, more comfortable for it. She's also got some white line disease on the sides and in the toe. So we're just gonna clean them up and start treating it. I'm thinking about 18. Why don't you look at this one? This is uh, aging by committee here. <laughs> Oh, you do. I don't know. You got a whole lot more experience than I do, Doc. You've been doing this longer than I've been alive. Yeah, I go 16, 18. I get a patient. Yeah, 15, 16. So 15 or 16 on day. That's perfect. Down here. So this is our intake process going on. We got the vet here. We're scanning for microchips. Checking out injuries. We've got uh, farrier work going on. So these horses go from getting beat around, shoved around, to getting all the care they need. The horse coming out, guys. Doc, did you age that one? Anyways, I just know donkeys don't do well, and he has a little bit of a goopy nose. Alrighty, so I'm worried about him. We'll go ahead and get him some exceed now. Kissa, did you see this little guy over here? 
But sometimes donkeys, well, a lot of times donkeys don't do well. When we rescue them from auction, they, they pick up a disease at the auction that just doesn't, uh, doesn't allow them to do good. Really bad parent. <laughs> Oh he does not like you trying to examine his undercarriage. <laughs> Getting our little baby donkey here, everything he needs. You can't see because he's so fluffy, but the, this is a bone right here. My, my hand can go right up to it. He is literally just an emaciated little donkey under here of just bones. I can feel all his ribs through here, his spine. He's, he's in rough shape. 90 pounds. So Doc has got some words of wisdom for getting married for Travis over here. I'm not sure what's, what he's gonna say. There's no telling. Just stay low, act like a piece of furniture. Maybe they'll just walk around you. <laughs> and don't ever, ever say mama used to oh yeah don't do that <laughs> don't do that <laughs> oh, first over 20 today for sure i think yeah he's sore in his back end real sore give me some tumor of some kind tumor uh, one of the lymph nodes. So Doc just took an x-ray of this horse. Uh, we think there's a lot of arthritis in its knee and the x-ray is going to confirm that or not confirm it. We got some remodeling of the bone. See how this shift comes up like it? You want this to come up. But look at all those bony spicules there. I think with the amount of arthritis he has, he should probably be one. I know, he's sweet. such a sweet horse, but that is. Yeah. He's in pain. And and his back is hurting too. You, you know, usually you think about arthritis is when they're just laying down a lot of extra bone, but he's got some remodeling of bone. Like it looks like it's dissolving and coming back weak, and I don't like that. And he could have it in his back. He probably does degenerative arthritis in his back. The arthritis, there's nothing we're able to do, and the kindest thing is to relieve its suffering. Uh, when it walks, you can tell it's in a lot of pain, and both of its knees are really, uh, has a lot of issues in them, but we x-rayed one and we definitely saw a lot of arthritis in there, so we are going to have them humanely euthanized. You know, people do criticize our organization for making these hard decisions, but if we didn't rescue this old lame horse at the auction, he would have gone on to Mexico. So that's what we're, we're trying to rescue as many horses as we can, evaluate them with our veterinarian and figure out what is best for each one. In this case, the last act of kindness is the kindest thing we can do. Yeah. So it's Avid. Um, we use Home Again. Mm -hmm. So it's very possible that this horse has an owner out there, but then again, if the owner never registered the microchip. In bed. Okay. <laughs> Put the microchip in. And it's the Universal Pet Microchip Lookup. And I probably have to. And it says 
No information found, participating databases. It's not terribly common, but we do get horses through the auction with Avid microchips, but sadly none of them have been registered, so we're not able to reunite the horse with a potential owner that's looking for it. Sometimes people get upset at us for leaving tags on the horses. Um, this tag is glued on really good. If we removed it, it would actually hurt the horse. I've seen comments out there that, oh, they're too lazy to remove the tags. Um, if you watch this video, you can see we're not lazy. Uh, but we're kind of looking out for the horse's welfare here because if we rip that off, um, it wouldn't feel good for the horse. So we're just going to leave it there, let kind of the dirt and everything eventually uh, get it looser, and then we'll be able to cut it off without hurting the horse. So if you see auction tags, don't always just assume that we're too lazy to remove them. There's, sometimes there's a reason. So this is a Tennessee show horse, Tennessee walking show horse. It's had its tail all messed up. It's like really messed up. Uh, like feel it right here. It's, it's. This is still draining right here too. You're seeing the soil. Yeah, that's where they cut the tendons. Yeah. Um, for show, he does have a show record too. So they would hoist his tail up like that. And that's, his tail is really long in places because um, when they were showing him, they wanted his tail to be all fancy and long, but they really messed, messed him up. And like his tail can't even go down. Like it's stuck like that. No, no, it's, it, well, they may have cut too deep and it may have fused some things. We can take an x-ray of that if you want to see we have some That fused, might be really interesting to do. I, I don't see where it's bony, bony fused, but. So it's mainly just tendons that are yeah, healed and so they probably cut them and put them in a harness. Doc listening to the horse, make sure he sounds good. This is a Tennessee walking horse. He has a show record. Um, his tail actually will not go down. Uh, we've x-rayed it. You can be on that side. We've, we've x-rayed it. It's just, it's the way it is because when they're showing these horses, they literally want the tail to be, I mean, just so unnatural. So twisted all the way up like, like that and then they'll make hair extensions and everything. So the tail is, is not supposed to do that. And you can see scars from where they cut his tendons. There's still a scar there, um, which is just really extreme to be able to have a tail that goes all the way like that. And it's all for an artificial look. Tennessee walking horses with the big lick, it's an artificial gait. And they really just torture these horses to get all this artificial look. Um, and they can say, oh, we treat our horses wonderful. They never up, end up in bad situations. Horse Plus is lying. Then why am I rescuing registered Tennessee walking horses that have show records that are so just mutilated? Watch it down up there, shall we? Just waiting for the next horse to be done so we can get him out. Okay. Somebody tried to scalp him. Sadly, this horse has a lot of arthritis and there's nothing we can do uh, to end its chronic suffering. Um, so we are going to do the last act of kindness. The veterinarian is going to sedate the horse and then humanely euthanize the horse by injection. She is in a lot of pain. When she tries to step, sometimes she even tries to do a little rare to not have pressure on that leg that's causing the severe pain. So this poor horse has um, what's commonly referred to as side bone in the industry. It's when the lateral cartilage calcifies into a hard bone instead of being um, more manipulatable like a cartilage. And it causes an extreme amount of pain. It's like severe arthritis on steroids. It's really debilitating. Um, it's not a whole, whole lot we can do for it especially with the fact that the, uh, with the vet's diagnosis of the coffin bone after starting to atrophy. Hi, baby. Okay. And some yum yums? Do you know what yum yums are? Do they smell good? You don't know? Um, I cut 
catch him at the auction. This one's not one of the top. Well, that's a big old look. There's pins in that one. Twitch it It's like our first thousand pounder today. There's an eight left on it. I don't know, it's a ten. And this little fella is six, seven hundred. Seven hundred. So it's been a really long day. Uh, I can't mm -hmm. thank uh, Peyton uh, enough for all her help today. And she's with uh, Christian Farms mm -hmm. Rescue and Rehab. And um, great organization we do have a shelter transfer grant program so she is taking two of the horses rescued today we cleared it with our vet made sure they were safe and healthy enough for travel so they will be heading to her organization they will be going to our rescue and they'll be staying 30 days in our quarantine field that we do have there but until they're ready for adoption so check it out if you want to adopt one of these horses here you can go mm -hmm. to their facebook page and follow their progress and uh, thanks so much for all your help today and helping transport and all that good stuff oh thank you for letting us come out we mm -hmm. really enjoyed getting to hang out with everybody and work with these horses i bet they'll make amazing 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 new additions to the families absolutely Yesterday was Peyton's birthday and she wanted to do something special. So yep. she uh, came out and helped us rescue 21 horses and then- We had an additional one that we rescued. And it was actually my 22nd birthday and so, we rescued 22 horses. So how so cool that is worked that? worked out perfectly. Good to go. Well, it's been a long day, but it's been a really good day. It's been a good day. Uh, Got some nice looking horses and uh, nobody got hurt. That's number one. We still have no all no horses our, got hurt. Yeah, so have all our two. fingers. Everybody's got their um, digits. And we did have to have two horses humanely euthanized today, but the group of horses we got in were overall a very nice group of horses. And sometimes we rescue horses and it's like, they're in horrible condition, but overall this group was a little bit different than we normally see. So this precious little baby donkey is is not feeling the best, and uh, you know he's orphaned, he's scared, he's been through a lot, and we are going to take him down to our special hospital stall. It's in the uh, office building. It's climate controlled, and he'll, he'll be really comfortable in there. He'll be very comfortable. We'll give him a little stuffed animal, and. Um, can have that as a friend. You know, it's just being a little orphan donkey. It'd be very, very confusing for everything he's been through. He only weighs 90 pounds, so he's really just a skeleton under under the fluff. Um, but he really wants attention. And um, so we're gonna take him down there and get him set up for the night, and I hope he does really well. The climate controlled building. You gonna make it, buddy? There you go. Okay, honey. Here you go, baby. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. No. Hold on, I'm gonna get in there and help you. All right, so uh, he's he's settled down in there. I'm gonna hop in there and we're gonna ride down with him and get him settled. All right, baby, just stay there. So sadly, we're gonna have to slide him a little bit, I think. Thank you. 
Come on, baby. Come on. There you go. You got some yum yums. <clears throat> Here's Max. Max is gonna be your friend, so you're not alone, okay? Yeah, here's your friend, little Max. These two fell in love at Horse Plus, so it's only fitting. Some of you might say you work next to donkeys, but... <laughs> I'm Taylin, I'm a new office assistant and I'm going to be helping out with audio. Perfect fit for their family, so we are so excited for him. We have an owner surrender here. We're about an hour and a half early, but... So why is that inconvenient? Um, because we don't have our whole crew here. We are depending on our whole crew to be here at the scheduled time, but we will make it all work. We'll be right back. Okay. Here you go. So we're just gonna unload in this barn right here. So you just wanna pull forward and then we'll just unload right there. We're gonna put her in this, the first stall. Lady was just um, surrendered to our organization. When the owners called, we didn't get much information on her, but we're still more than happy that she was able to come here. And we can't wait to get some weight on her and to see how far she's gonna go. Benjamin is such an awesome little guy, but he's been going around the office just terrorizing all of us or spending wonderful quality time, I think. What you doing, Sarah? I am doing inventory in the vet room here, and I've got the best little helper. Yeah, this <laughs> special little buddy. We've got another friend over here, too, that's getting into everything. This is a rough workplace. you got all kinds of helpers. <laughs> and he, he got wet. Oh. The cat got wet, so he's <laughs> wet on his tummy, but yeah. i got some good helpers. <laughs> He's so gentle, though. I'm gonna go back to see Tori. So this is where it all happens, buddy. Hi, baby. How are you? Can you come hang out in my office? Come on, baby. He's like the sweetest thing ever. See, I talk donkey. There you go. Be my office buddy. I have little Benjamin in my office. Uh, he likes it when I talk donkey to him. <laughs> and uh, we just rescued this little guy out of the slaughter pipeline. And I noticed he liked licking a lot and I think he's deficient in minerals. So I've got one of these uh, salt blocks that we, we get donated off of our um, Amazon list. And I'm going to open this up and see what he thinks. Benjamin! Come on, baby. I'm making my office a mess, but <gasps> Benjamin. Okay, Benjamin, come check this out. Okay, come on, come on, right here. here look, see, this is yum yums. Ooh, is that good? See, Dr. Scott likes the salt blocks. You like that? That's pretty good. Little 
Little baby donkey likes the salt blocks. Is that good? You need those minerals, huh? Yum yums. No, it's up here. It's not on my hands. It's it's the block. Oh, he's so sweet. It's not everybody that gets to work next to a donkey in the workplace, but well, some of you might say you work next to donkeys, but <laughs> this donkey's way better than any of your donkeys you're working next to. <laughs> It's breakfast time for all the critters. Those two, that one, half of that one. On to the next pasture. Good morning. Good morning. While the horses are getting their breakfast, everybody else is in here working. Hey y'all, it's Sarah. I'm usually back behind the camera, but I wanted to come on here and just uh, say how thankful I am for all of you guys watching. And I'm so happy to be a part of Horse Plus and work with these awesome um, teammates. And uh, yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. So we got Sarah and Jesse and Shelby working in the office and stories and emails. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. My name is Sarah and I just wanna thank you all so much for your donations that have helped save hundreds and hundreds of horses. Happy Thanksgiving. This is Jesse with the horses and I'm extremely thankful for all your support and donations to help us find these horses amazing homes. Hi guys, it's Shelby. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for all of you guys' support because without it, we wouldn't be able to rescue these amazing horses. All right. We got editing going on today. Oh, hi, my name's Jason Preisner and I am the head of the media production here at Horse Plus. What I mostly do is the editing for the weekly episodes and also most of the editing for Horse Rescue Heroes. And I am so thankful that I'm able to work with such a great organization that's rescued thousands and thousands and thousands of horses. And I can't wait to see what next year brings. But this year has been good despite COVID and I'm just thankful to be alive and healthy and that none of our staff was infected with COVID and that we've been able to work straight through the pandemic and that we're able to help so many horses. What are y'all doing in here? Hey everyone, I just wanted to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I'm Tawny, the founder of Horse Plus. I am so thankful for each and every person out there who supports our organization. We see so many horses in desperate situations and we couldn't rescue them without your support. And so I am so thankful for each one of you. I hope you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving and um, just uh, thank you again so much for everything. Hey guys, happy Thanksgiving. I'm Taylin, I'm a new office assistant and I'm gonna be helping out with audio as well. And I'm just super thankful for the awesome team of workers that we have around here with Horse Plus that makes this whole operation function. Hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. Well, this is Taitlin's first day and uh, she is helping us with one of our new programs we got for donor management software. And then she's also gonna be um, helping make sure the office is always nice and tidy and audio um so kind of all over the place but that's the way kind of all the jobs are here we got to be fluid in what happens i am working right now with our advertising uh, company um setting up some new things with them so um because if people don't know we're rescuing horses uh we can't rescue as many so we get support uh through making sure that we're utilizing all aspects that we can uh, to spread the word that these horses are out there and they need help. This is Pippin. Hi, baby! Oh my gosh, you are adorable! Oh. Hello! Hi, sweet boy. You are adorable. You are so adorable. Wait, wait, wait! Don't go! Are you trying to run away? 
mini. That, one more mini, okay. One more mini. We don't want any more big ones where we are, but the but two minis would be perfect. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna be so much fun. You are. Pippin, Pippin! <laughs> Pippin is on his way to his new home. We couldn't be more happy for him. I mean, so these people have adopted horses from us before and they're doing absolutely amazing at their home. So we knew when we saw Pippin that he would be the perfect fit for their family. So we are so excited for him. We have a couple horses coming in today. The family's traveling out of town. They're not able to keep their horses anymore. So we're just gonna get everything ready for them to arrive. about 10. Okay. This one's about 25. We're very happy to have JD and Philly here with us. So we're gonna get them out in the pasture and get them some food and see how they do with their new friends. Just got all of her shots and vaccines and everything. Now she's headed to her new pen. We're taking packages into the post office because they won't fit in our mailbox and we've got a lot of them. So not every day for Rescue Life is me sitting at the desk fundraising or actually doing stuff with the horses. Sometimes it's just taking care of the equipment we have and picking up feed and whatnot that needs to be done. because even though it's not raining right now in Tennessee, it could be raining in 10 minutes from now or it's uh... It's wild, it's <laughs> unpredictable. So you just make sure everything's out of the weather every night before you go to bed. Yep, so we'll do that and then we'll call it a day. And they left the gate open for us, how nice. Feed in the feed room. We're back. Got everything done off of our chore list, hey. our shopping list. <laughs> Getting photos of the day done. Uh, emails, apparently. Emails, I'm oh, fun. How many emails do you think you did today? I did not count that. I don't know. 10? Uh, definitely more than 10. <laughs> well, I think it's about time to call it a day. You're working on a a story about baby Benjamin. Awesome. Who's currently talking? Who is currently <laughs> talking, yep. And then Jesse's back there. This is what happens when we, sun goes down early. We all get stuck doing inside office jobs. 
What are you doing, Jason? I'm just wrapping up episode four of Horse Rescue Heroes. Would you like to watch? I would love to watch. Let me get some uh, other people. You gotta explain what happened to your nose. Uh, well, you see, it was the weekend. Yesterday was Sunday, and I took my boys out playing airsoft, and somehow I got the worst end of it. That's not the only the only injury. I also got a couple good welts oh, there man. and a couple good welts over here. And uh, all in all, it was a great time. Would you all like to see uh, Horse Rescue Heroes Episode 4? It's finally done. Yeah, we would love to. Awesome. We need to look for glitches or um, anything that shouldn't be there. Misspellings. <laughs> Um, I'll, oh, oh, here they come. Here's our they're, proofreaders. They're in the wheelchairs. Yeah, wheelchairs at the end of the day. This is their adoption event. Oh, this is the ado big adoption event episode. <laughs> all right, I'm going to turn this off now because you all can't see it until it's released. So uh, we're going to sit back and enjoy. You'll have to wait till January. Sorry. It's all going in there, right? Do we need to be quiet? It's because we're about to film for Horse Rescue Heroes. Oh, I can barely get the truck and trailer. So I had to drive the truck literally up onto the bank, and I hope I make it. This is Banner, he's 15 years old. When he first came to the shelter, he was really unsure of people. He didn't trust anyone at all. And he's come a long ways. We're pretty sure that before he came here, he was really abused. Um, right now, we're just working on building trust. When he first came in, he really wouldn't let us touch him that much. He's, you could tell that someone had really mistreated him. And so right now, being able to touch his head is a really good improvement for him. If you're interested in adopting Banner, then go to our website at horseblesshumanesociety.org and send in your adoption application. We're really looking forward to finding him the right home. All right, Doc is here and we're gonna look at little baby Benjamin. I think he's doing really great, but we'll see what Doc says. What was he doing last week? So he's just, he was 90 pounds. We have not weighed him. Come on, baby. Come on. He got a little kitty friend with him. <laughs> He does look better. Um, he is eating and he likes to get outside. We've taken him on walks. Have you got the monitor handy? I think it's okay. And we, have we dewormed him? Yes, we did everything uh, on intake, but we'll, we'll get a thermometer for you here. Tim's good, 99.1. Yes, he did have a goopy nose. We gave him a seed. I saw that was clear. Um, Other than that, he looks pretty good. There's a little parrot mouth. Temp was 99.1. So, well, good donkey. Benjamin is gonna take a ride in the side-by-side -side up to get weighed. So Shelby's driving. He's laying here. Yeah, good donkey. So Benjamin has gained three pounds so far in the last week and we're super proud of him. He's in the side by side, we're gonna take him back down to the stall. He's such a good boy, he did a good job. I'm so excited Travis and I are going to get our engagement photos today. Kissa has donated her time and energy to do that for us and um, she's the one who does all the auction photos for the horses and they always look amazing so I'm ex super excited to see how all these turn out. These two fell in love at Horse Plus, so it's only fitting that they get their picture in front of the Horse Plus sign.
That's it. Watering also consists of taking the big ice chunks. Come on, buddy. You want to come back here and join us? There we go. That's better. We're off to do our first adoption appointment in the snow, and it's a little early because it's you call still November. That what? That's not that snow. That's like cotton falling from the sky. Whatever. It's still called snow. Let's go. There you go. Sorry about the wait. Oh, cool. On the other side of this barn right here, there's going to be a sawdust pile right there. You can just park right there. All right. Yeah, it just keeps getting more flurries and more flurries. <laughs> Another <laughs> use for hand so warmers. Warm the bit up for the ponies. They tell me they call this snow down here. <laughs> I'm not from, from down here. here. Yeah. I'm from Idaho. That's about like mine. He don't like the bit either. Yeah. Put a little molasses on it. Yeah. It's a good fix. Yeah. I've done that a lot with camp horses and stuff. We gotta settle just like that, huh? Of course, she's a little herd bound, so she sometimes gets a little antsy, but she calmed down pretty quick today when we brought her out. This is what she looked like in September. Oh, so she's, oh, yeah. so you could see her ribs and all of that. So she's gained quite a bit. She's been on the lower, slower side, but she's yeah. she's doing good. You can keep your two-year-old company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is he gilded? Yeah, he's yeah. gilded. That's good. Yeah, I always use like grain and stuff to catch them. We just want a companion for him. That way he's not lonely in the field. Yeah. Every horse deserves yeah. a companion. Would you like to adopt her, you think? We would. Yeah, she'd be a good fit for the kids. Yeah. I, I think Sarah can just get some paperwork and then okay. we'll get a picture with you and right. get the paperwork filled out. We're excited. Today makes day four of snowboard season for those people that are my friends in Idaho. So this is her paperwork. Okay. So this is her microchip information right here. And um, this is the reason why we microchip them when we encourage you to put her in your name so she gets lost or stolen or something, okay. she can come back to you. This is her Coggins that, um, that were done at the auction. This is when she had all of her vaccines and everything were on that date. The last time she was wormed was that date right there. And then, these, this is just a treatment plan that we had for her, for her eyes. Okay. Um, so we like to add that in there as well. She's getting it done. Yeah. And then this was a training evaluation. She had 11 too, and what she did on okay. that day. So, right. so you can have that to go off of. Send us updates. Yes, ma'am, we will. So we finally got Jason out of the office from editing and we got him out here on the tractor in the snow flurries. You know how happy this feed makes me? It has beet pulp in with the senior feed, which makes our feeding people extremely more happy because they don't have to do as much in the morning and it makes me more happy because it's better for the horses. It's a busy morning here at the shelter. It's breakfast time for all the horses, so Keith is just getting everybody fixed up and get their breakfast to them. cold in Tennessee right now. We've got ice and we had snow the other day. 
So, feeding and watering also consists of taking the big ice chunks out of the water trough. So. <laughs> Oh, you're a good boy, Benjamin. Hello. Hi. Good morning to you. There's Blue Jeans and Parsi. You two are so stinking cute. Look at you guys. We're all done with doing all the hay this morning. Uh, give some some grain and now I'm gonna do the rest of the graining uh, and that'll be most of my morning. Thank you. All right, Alyssa has joined us and now they're gonna go feed. Travis isn't feeling too well. We definitely know it's not COVID, thankfully. Very happy about that. But um, I'm filling in for him, just watering and helping feed and stuff. So while well, he's in bed trying to get better. These two horses right here, this is Lady and Lightning, and they're getting their breakfast this morning. Back at it, we're getting the ice chips out of the water drops. Mercies, and then this one's forests and reds. We're up in quarantine now, about to feed all the quarantine horses, and so all the buckets are getting filled. All right, we're all done feeding today. Now it's time for garbage pickup. Hey everyone, it's Tawny here at Horse Plus. I'm just gonna clean my screen a little bit while we're... We're here to talk about Giving Tuesday, and it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow, starts at 8 a.m. Eastern time, so seven o'clock our time. Facebook will be matching dollar for dollar every dollar donated to charities tomorrow. Up to seven million dollars. Up to seven million dollars. And usually it's gone within about the first five or ten minutes. <laughs> it goes very quickly. So we just did a live video feed and um, we're really hoping that tomorrow, you know, Giving Tuesday, we'll be able to raise a whole bunch of funds mm -hmm. to rescue horses um, and help with these new programs that we'll be releasing. So we just like to uh, thank everyone who donates. So Luna came to us a few weeks ago as an owner surrender. She is a little Arabian mare. Luna is 10 years old and about 14 two hands tall. When she came to us, her owners just couldn't take her, keep her anymore because of an injury and she needs more time with training under saddle. She has been ridden once or twice, maybe, but she's never had a bit in her mouth. She's super sensitive to any body language. And so when they dropped Luna off, she had been sitting for about three years and they just d decided it was best for her to go find a better home. So since Luna's been here, we've just been working on groundwork and getting her used to the saddle again since she had several years off since she had consistent training. We've done obstacles and lunging and just walking around the place getting used to stuff because she's so sensitive. Warrior type of personality. But once she realizes you're not gonna hurt her, she settles down. She's really not that scared of it. Some horses freak out and run clear across the pen. This is the second time she's been saddled here at Horse Plus, and she's done really good. You can tell she's worn a saddle before. Their bellies are sensitive areas, so I try to tighten it over three different periods and let her walk around and get used to it. Now we'll go over to the arena and play over there and see the flag. Arabs are known to be a especially soft and sensitive because their skin's very sensitive and their mouths are sensitive. And 
I've been playing with her a little bit, just with barely pushing her and making her move over both her hind end and her fore end. And you can tell someone's definitely spent time with her, but she gets a little bit worked up being away from her buddies and all. Luna's done really good for the amount of times we've handled her, and I think it would be great if she could find someone that understands how sensitive horses can be, and especially Arabs, and wants to spend the time to get her started under saddle and be a trail companion. You might have noticed that I didn't bridle her, and that's because her owner said they've never had a bridle, and she is super sensitive to halter pressure on her nose, and probably could do well in a hackamore. Jesse just finished working Luna, and Sarah is in the office working on some emails and getting those answered. Just trying to get some horses some homes. All right, so if I'm not filming, you can usually find me packaging orders, and that's what I'm doing right now. So we don't have too many today, but still gotta get them out. So I'm gonna write a little note on here. I'm working on packaging these orders because somebody ordered some stuff from our shop, so we're gonna get these sent out. I suggest that all of y'all go over to check out our shop. We've got some new items that we just got in stock. Really cute, by the way. And we also have, oh shoot. We also have t-shirts too, and lots of different kinds. So go ahead and go over and check out our shop. All the proceeds go to help the horses here at the shelter, whether that's with feeding, um, vet work, whatever they need. So yeah, go check us out. Alrighty, all the packages are all ready to go and we're gonna go put them in the mailbox so we can send them out. All right, let's go. <laughs> Even though it's cold, I'm still happy that it's sunny. The packages are in the mailbox and they should be heading out shortly. She does not look lame whatsoever. We let her out in the pasture and she was running before she almost took out the fence. She was running so hard it almost didn't stop. She doesn't seem to be lame whatsoever. What we're wondering is since she's not lame or anything, is it just going to be a confirmation thing or is there we need to do something more with it? I think if she's not lame, let's not do anything more with it. Okay. Here, fill this right here. Mercy is going back to her pen. Doc is out today. Little Cole is getting gelded. He, um, we just found out today he's four years old, so he's not one like we thought he was, but that's okay. And then he's going to check on some other horses. Luna isn't feeling too well today, so she's on the vet list and just a few others. Jesse just caught <laughs> Luna. Oh, 10 cc syringes in my basket next to the uh, 60 cc ones. Giving 10 cc to Baytrol IV, it's really a cattle antibody, but it will knock some stuff out of horses if given them for five days that nothing else will touch. Olaf is getting gelded today. All right, so Olaf is gonna go to Sleepy Town just for a little while. It is a very frosty morning here in Tennessee. 17 degrees this morning means that I'm freezing and I don't like cold weather at all. Yesterday was Giving Tuesday and I got to work in the office a lot, fundraising. Um, and we, I sat with baby Benjamin for like half an hour doing a live video feed and it raised over $1,300. Getting the packages ready to open. And we're gonna start start going. Alright. Hi from Australia. Oh hello, we have so many Australia fans. That is so awesome. He'll Help probably us. join in the gift shop. He's probably gonna go visit, yes. Oh okay. him back with us. Come on. Yeah. Come on, buddy. You wanna come back here and join us? There we go. That's better. Hi. 
this. We can always unpackage it and hand it back. Thank you all so much for watching, and I uh, hope you have a wonderful evening. And we got to get these babies to bed because it's their bedtime. So thanks for watching. Come on, baby. Come on, look what you did. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. It's time for bedtime. Come on. Come on, Benjamin. Come on. Come on. Got it heated in here. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Let's see if he puts himself away. He was outside, we left the door open, and he was able to go out, and then he came in and put himself to bed the other day. There you go, time for bed. You sleep good. Go eat your breakfast, or your supper. Oh, check it out, he peed once he got in there. How cool is that? Good boy, Benjamin, that's what you call potty training. He sounds good. Right now, I'm writing the guide on how to spot a fake horse rescue. I love you. Okay. So we're winding down today, but Jason is still working because how close are we to getting the episode released uh, this evening? Well, a lot depends on our internet. Right now, I'm about 56 seconds from being done rendering, and that's where after I edit it, it goes to and makes the final good copy. And then I'll just scan through that, make sure there weren't any glitches I didn't catch before, and then I'll start the upload process. And our internet is so spotty, usually to upload one of these is about half an hour to an hour. And uh, Shelby and Caitlin already wrote the description and got all the animal names. And I don't know if anybody's uh, following, but in the bottom of our YouTube description, there's animals seen in this episode. You can see all the names of the animals that are in that episode. So that's kind of a cool little tidbit that you might want to check out. But I'm getting closer. It's uh, it's done, so you just have to get it up on YouTube now. Is there hope for our internet? Yes. Um, the local power company is running fiber, and they say that about April we should have high-speed internet. What do you think about what's going on outside, Angela? It's so exciting. The concrete's being poured for the horse pads. Second truck is leaving, and the third one is coming in. The concrete job is finally done, and now the horses will be able to come underneath their shelters, and not only will their hay be dry, but their hooves can be dry. In Tennessee, we see a huge amount of rainfall. Uh, we can get six to eight inches dumped in one storm. So having a place where the horses can come up, stand, let their hooves dry, uh, it's very important. Uh, so now our next step is buying feeders that the hay is gonna go into. And um, if we need to, we will get mats for the horses around the feeders, but uh, the way the concrete was done, it was done roughly, so uh, they'll, their footing will be good and everything on it. Um, and it's not like they're stuck here on the concrete and that's the only place they can go. They have huge pens here where they're able to walk around. It's just when they come up to eat, uh, it's a very high traffic area. So we wanna make sure that their footing is good and the concrete will greatly help with that. Wow, y'all look busy in here. Uh, we're so busy. <laughs> Giving Tuesday was such a huge success and we're gonna catch up from all that. And we are now, um, working on our new donor management um, system because just on Giving Tuesday alone on Facebook, over $15,000 was raised in one day, which we're so excited about. But we have a new system that we're trying to learn um, that's gonna help us manage um, all our donors better on our, our end um, as far as records and all that stuff. So hopefully, um, this is Taitlin's dedicated job. So <laughs> Taitlin has been it's, studying and educating and- It's been a job for sure. <laughs> so uh, once we learn how, I think it will be easy, but um, we're just kind of trying to import our mailing list 
our emailing list into this and there's over 19,000 people on our our email list so um, it'll be interesting to see if we're able to figure this out but I'm sure Taylin can she's been brilliant so far so <laughs> so this is red she's a sweet little she's a sweet little girl Did you say hi were you able to look at our website and read about her any oh yeah yeah like my angel She's camera shy. You and me were meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. You and me were meant to be. What do you think? You like her? She's like, I know what those are. <laughs> so this is the adoption form. If you just fill out everything in yellow. And then this one is a first row refusal acknowledgement. You fill out everything on here in yellow as well. Red's adoption appointment went great. They said yes to adoptive parent. We were so happy for them. And they will be back later to pick her up. They weren't able to pick her up today. You're cute. You're cute. We have two horses on their way. They're almost here, all the way from Indiana. We had some people that are not able to take care of the horses anymore and asked that they come down here to our organization. It's been a couple months in the making, but we are so happy that they are coming and we can't wait for them to get here. The horses are here. And they're off. Today I'm not actually working on video editing right now. I'm writing the guide on how to spot a fake horse rescue. And over the last 17, 18 years that I've been rescuing horses, I've seen a lot of fake horse rescues come and go. I think it's going to be very informative and I can't wait to release it. So this is Jessie, you'll be working with her today. Hi Jessie. Any questions that you have, Hi. she will most likely have the answers for you. Hi. And this is Cassie. Hey. Oof. So I saw she's about six years old. Yeah. You might have to put a little more work into her because she's just learning everything. So. Yeah. She's gated. This will be probably her sixth or seventh ride with me, period. She's not a huge fan of the bit. Okay. I don't know. I doubt she's had one much. And some horses just rather. Well, we're looking for some bitless. Yeah. Because ours don't either. They just really don't want it. Because she sticks her nose out with it, which, so I've ridden her a couple times okay. in some special halters I have, but, and she seems to do better. She's just green, so it takes mm -hmm. a little practice. You're welcome to get on her. I'm the only one that's been on her since she's been here. Sure, I'll just take a bucket and I kind of, she'll come up to the bucket, you hold it in your left hand, and then just start petting her on her neck and then she'll let you catch her. Just set your bucket down. I like her. Do you? So you want us to adopt her? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right, if you want to fill the paperwork out, you can just fill out everything in yellow. Okay. This is just to adopt her adoption. Are you going to go home with us? She is waived. So is Cassie the name that you guys gave her, or was that the name that she had previously? No, that's the name that we gave her. Okay, so, so we, we can change it if we want to? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't know her name. Okay. It's really cold outside, but we're very thankful that Cassie's adoption appointment went really, really well. There's a highway out of this town And the stars light it up as they shine on now She's driving off in this world alone No, she ain't never going home 
Kara and Bucky are on their way to their new home in Kentucky. We're so thankful that they were able to be transported there. Lady also has a new home waiting for her, so we are very, very happy for all of them. Perfect, thank you guys yeah. very much. I'll thank take you. that. So this is Jessie. So any questions that you have, you can ask Jessie. Her first question is, can she ride him? <laughs> I think we can manage to arrange that. What day is his birthday? I don't know, she didn't tell me. Hey, hey he's trying to get to you. He wants treats. <laughs> I don't think she had other horses, so he's really chill. Put in there? <laughs> the tall one. There you go. There you, are. you like that? What if I fall off? You won't, I'll catch you. But he's super easy to catch out in the pasture, stuff like that too. You guys want to adopt him? We do, definitely. <laughs> do you want to adopt Horace and take him home? Uh-huh. This is an adoption form, so if you just fill out every, oh, sorry, everything in yellow. That couldn't have been a more perfect adoption. We're so excited for Forrest and his new little family. How does this thing even start? There's it's this. in the middle. There's no middle. Hey, we got a trailer in the gate. I think it's Red's adoption. It's in here early. Oh, oh, I'll go catch Red. Thank you. I'm to grab the paperwork. This is just a little information about us, and then this is um, her microchip information here. Okay. And then um, the information for you to put her in your name, so if you want to register her under your name. I love you. Okay. You got this. You're red. Okay, enjoy your new home. You'll be all right. Shelby is brushing out Sugar's tail. And then Shine is, I think she's getting a little impatient. She's ready to get her feet done. So this is Shrek. He's a two-year-old donkey. And when he got here, he came in auction and he wasn't handled or didn't know anything. But he's super friendly and curious. We've had the halter on him about three times and he picks up leading really fast. But lately we've just been hanging out with him and letting him get used to eating and being petted on the head. Uh, easy going personality and really picks up to human attention. Benjamin wants to help Sarah take the packages out. Oh, he is such a goofy. <laughs> just a goofball. So we're just gonna evaluate Moonshine today, do her training evaluation and see where she's at.
He's doing pretty good. Standing nice for saddling. You're a little live wire. Moonshine did really good today. I'd say she's probably suitable for a more intermediate type of rider. She's very pretty forward and a little bit nervous and needs time to work through different obstacles that she comes across, but she's done really well. Moonshine is getting her picture done after her evaluation. Well, everyone, uh, <clears throat> baby Benjamin got invited to a nativity parade and he is so feisty these days that we decided he would really enjoy that. It will be great exposure for him, getting used to even more people. So we're sitting here in Big Red. Uh, Jason's gonna be driving here shortly. Um, but I think uh, I think we're really gonna have a fun, fun night. Um, if he's tired at all, we're just gonna bring him home, but he, uh, he is getting feisty. Rolling around the round pen, running around. I think he's, He's over all our worst fears of being sick from the auction. And um, he gets to go socialize tonight and be part of a nativity. So you're gonna be so cute, Benjamin. Well, we are on our way with little Benjamin. He's gonna have an interesting view of normal donkey life. But he's an awesome little guy and we'll see how he does tonight. His exciting life. The vet will be here in about an hour or so. What I'm doing right now is just getting all my vet notes together so that way I can have everything ready for when they get here. Marvel has an injury on her neck so Doc's gonna look at it and see if there's anything he can do. About 17, 18. In pretty good shape. Okay. Gums are sort of pale. Um, heart murmur? Heart and lungs sound good. So you gave them B12, Doc? Yeah, B12. Man. Oh, I didn't look at that side. Oh, yeah, we looked at the other he side. He may be sort of a cribber. Why is he cribbing another one, not? He sounds good. These guys came to us, they were at a feedlot. Their bail was paid, but they still had nowhere to go. And we got a call asking if we would take them, and of course, we said yes.
Hey, how are you today? Hey, I'm good. Good. We're just here to pick up the Christmas tree. Okay. And we just wanted to thank you guys so much for donating it to us for our toy drive. We are so excited. Sure. No problem. Awesome. Anytime. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We get to pick out our Christmas tree. I'm so excited. The smell test is important. Very, very, <laughs> very important. This one's cute. It's kind of fuller. Christmas tree is going in. It's tiny but cute. Oh no. Somebody um, gave us these ornaments as a little gift. Look how cute they are. There's little Benjamin, Tawny, and then there's Puss. So we're gonna put them on the tree. Bows on you and Christmas wrap you and you know yeah grow this fur you need it for Cole is on his way to Colorado hey pretty girl hey settled in really nicely good Took her a little bit but And that is her microchip, um, the reason why we microchip her and what you need to do with it. Okay. And then these are her Coggins here. Okay. And then this is when she had her vaccines and everything on that date. And then the last time she was wormed. Okay. It's right cool. there. Cassie just got picked up and she's on her way to her new adventure. Today we're getting a new hay feeder. Uh, we have a lot of rain here and um, it's hard to keep the hay dry sometimes. So this uh, feeder is going to go into our quarantine facility. So when we were unloading the uh, the hay feeder, I was talking to him and he has a really good story about a horse. So uh, take it away. Uh, my name is Thomas. I've always been an advocate for the protection of animals. Uh, lived on the Mississippi Gulf Coast for 15 years. I worked for turtle relief, saving porpoise, uh, doing conservation. And when uh, Hurricane Katrina took everything I had and then the BP oil spill hit, I had to move back to the horse farm. And since then I've rescued four horses. One horse, um, I went to a trainer, he had lag bolts run up into his feet. And I ended up spending 30 days in jail over that horse, but I took the horse. Now that's my horse. Ain't he something is his name, and it's the best trail horse I've ever had. It's, I work relief kitchens. It's all about saving humanity. It's all about helping the world, staying positive, and not putting up with abuse for animals. It's all about being, it's all about being human. So how did those leg bolts go up? I mean, was it just right into the hoof? How did that work? There were two lag bolts running each of his front hooves. Like into his hoof? Yeah, just run up into the hooves and they were sticking down further than the hoof to make the horse step higher. Just to get a, a fancy look, a fancy gait. Well, it sounds like you did the right thing for that poor horse. I train trail horses. I don't do show horses. Yeah. Yeah, wow. And that was, were they training him to do the big lick or another type of gait or? I'm not really yeah, sure. Just not sure. Just they, so they sent him through the top, the top of his hook? No, through the bottom. Through the bottom. That's unbelievable. But. But he learned his lesson. Huh. He left town. Wow. Because I told him if I ever saw him again, I'll put him back in the hospital. Wow. <laughs> well, horse animal abuse is something that just, makes anyone's blood boil. Right.
we are moving the horses out of quarantine. We're gonna deworm them and weigh them, see how much weight they have gained and get them down to their new pastures. He has gained 50 pounds. You're 922 pounds, dude. There's blood in our eyes, so he's a little bit nervous. So I'm trying to get Keith over here. What'd you do? <laughs> uh, I slid down into the ditch. The tractor's stuck, so now <laughs> we're gonna have to get it out. So. Yeah. So, I think we can do it. I think so. Might get a little muddy though. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Hey, there, there we go. We go. Yay! Yay. <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, unstuck now. We are getting water and power ran over to the barns. Uh, we had a contractor lined up earlier because one of our generous donors watched one of our videos and said, Oh, you're doing this in the dark, I will donate for it. So we had it lined up, COVID just kept delaying things and now we are finally getting it done. Um, and now the tractor's unstuck, we actually can. So just digging a ditch from the office uh, and the well over to get power and water running and that will be awesome. Well, we are headed off to the auction. Jason's just backing up to the trailer right now. Um, so the 16 foot trailer is going to be coming and we're taking the 24. Jason's done it a lot of times. That's what a pro does. Backs up right the first time. Done it a couple times. Yep. And we are just getting ready to pull out to go to the auction. We got a really big trailer hooked up and um, right in front of our office there. And we are going to be driving over uh, to more Eastern Tennessee, um, like Cookville and uh, rescuing some horses tonight. I just want to thank each and every person for your support. Um, you know, every person doing what they can is what makes our whole rescue mission possible. Um, you know, driving in the winter isn't, isn't always fun, but the truck's got good tires, the trailer's got good tires, so everything should be good. Um, and rescue some horses tonight. We just never know when we're going to the auction um, what, what type of horses are going to be there and maybe it'll be another orphan little baby donkey. We have no idea. Um, and we got the vet scheduled to come out tomorrow. Um, but I'm going to have to go because Jason is waiting. It's COVID testing. Tawny and Shelby are busy working the computers. And we're gonna be going to the auction soon and just save as many horses as we can. And I can't wait. We're hoping to save at least 15 horses, but we never know until the night is over. How's it How's it going on your end? It's going good. Shelby's working on the email that we're gonna be sending out as soon as we get pictures of the horses. I'm actually working on um, an awareness post about horses in the export pens leaving the United States. Um, so these are pictures of horses um, at the holding pens, these are um, livestock export facility, and these are all horses in these um, these export pens, and you can see auction tags um, on them. And so I'm going to be posting this to raise awareness because a lot of people think, oh, horse slaughter doesn't happen. If you follow our Facebook page, you know that we post the USDA export reports, and I'm just sharing these pictures to really bring home that these horses are going to slaughter. Well, every horse we save tonight will not end up there. So that's no. that's what drives us, that we're rescuing these horses literally from being shipped down to slaughter. Yeah. 
Friday, um, nearly 400 horses were exported from Texas into Mexico. And if we can save some of those horses tonight and keep them off of the USDA report from just being a, a number on that slaughter report um, and get them the opportunity and the chance they need to have a wonderful home, that's what it's all about. But we gotta get busy and uh, go save those horses. Yes, we have remote start on our truck because it's cold out here and it's nice to have it warmed up a little bit before we head into the auction. So this is the last auction rescue before Christmas. Christmas is literally just a few days away. And sometimes, you know, Santa doesn't come in a sleigh with a bunch of reindeer. Sometimes he comes in a uh, pickup truck with a stock trailer and saves as many horses as he can. And we're going to be just giving that Christmas miracle to as many horses as we can tonight. Just got back in the truck after rescuing 29 horses. Well, right now, the uh, I don't know if we can even see it out there. The uh, big slaughter trailer's leaving right now. You can uh, hear it going out. I don't know, maybe they didn't get any. It's hard to say whether they got any or not. I didn't watch them load, but the uh, big slaughter trailer's heading out right now. Yeah, it's 11.30 at night. Rescued one horse. Uh, somebody that's regular here, he's like, hey, I've got this horse at home. Really need your help. Can you buy it for 250 bucks? And I mean, the horse needs extensive veterinarian care, but he wasn't gonna give him it. He's like, most people just shoot the horse in the head. I don't really wanna do that. And so he went home and got the horse, brought it to us, and we're gonna get it patched up and it's gonna be seen as, at the vet as soon as possible. Basically, this horse probably fell out of a trailer while it was being towed down the road. Um, the guy that sold her to me said that he thought she had fallen through a trailer floor, but I think more likely she fell out of the back of a trailer. I've been communicating with our vet for the one that's really critical, and I'm just gonna give it its uh, medication to help it be more comfortable and check out its leg and wrap it if possible. A lot of pain just from the way it's standing. Um, it's really beat up. It's got multiple injuries. So I'm just gonna go in, put a halter on her and get her feeling more comfortable through the medication that our veterinarian has told us that he wants her to have tonight. Okay. Yeah, you hurt, you hurt so bad. There's just dried blood everywhere. Oh, she's a mess. So I'm gonna give her, um, Banamine. Our veterinarian has told me exactly how much to give her. That will help with the pain that she's she's enduring right now. It's just kills me when I see a horse suffering this much. Hey baby, her poor eyes all swollen. She can see me with that guy. She's watching. I'm gonna help you, okay? make her much more comfortable for the night and I'll see if I can I can wrap her leg I just don't know she's got so much swelling hopefully she's gonna be okay for a shot she's in so much pain I like to thank everyone that goes on our Amazon wish list and purchases this. It will just help her uh, stay more calm and relaxed through the night. She's been through a lot. There you go, baby. It's okay. You're going to be better, all right? There you go. Her injury is just so horrendous. There's no way we can show it on television, but we're going to uh, get it wrapped up and... Hopefully the drugs can make her more comfortable. Hey baby, I'm just gonna touch your leg. Ugh, it's a terrible injury. You know, I know it hurts. It's that 
got so much blood all over her leg. No, you're not wrapping that tight. You're just protecting it. Protecting her. it. Yeah. There's so much blood. I can I can smell it on her. People say horses, you know, don't feel the same emotions as humans, and I'm sure they don't feel the same range of emotions, but this horse is crying from the pain. She literally has tears coming down her face from the pain. Alright. Okay. So we're driving back to the auction. There was just something really weird going on there tonight, and uh, one of the horses they didn't want us to have. Um, Whoever took the horse there didn't want it on our website, didn't want it to be seen, um, and we just don't feel comfortable having that horse at the auction overnight. So it's going to go into the witness protection program until we can get it at our shelter. all about get the horse safely in our trailer now um, I don't know what's so special about that horse they didn't want it to come for us it's it's kind of skinny and the uh, only thing I can think of is it's possibly somebody famous or somebody hype and in some industry or something and they just don't want a skinny horse that they owned that information getting out I, I really don't know what that's all about they said they didn't want it going on our website right. well they were wondering if it was on our website yet or if they could buy it and we just don't tell people we rescue it's like no that's not how we do things and uh anyway it, they really wanted that horse back they literally basically said it didn't matter what it cost to get that horse back they wanted it back and it's in our trailer it's not in their trailer and that's the way it is when we rescue a horse we're committed to those horses Obviously this horse is in really horrible condition, but why did they not? Yeah, it's a tattooed thoroughbred. Okay. Can you read the number? He did the right call on, I mean, it looks like an old ancient horse, but it's not. I couldn't figure out why um, there was an issue with us getting this horse. It looks like just an old skinny horse in its 20s. When I lifted up the lip, it had a tattoo. That explains the story. Now I've just got to go research and find out who this horse is and why nobody wanted us to have it. You know, they're fine with anyone else at the auction getting it, but they didn't want us to have it. And that's because we're really good at telling these horses stories. Uh, so many horses end up in the slaughter pipeline and their stories are never told. And we try to intercept them and if we can find their stories, tell their stories, because it really raises awareness. This was a off-the-track thoroughbred. I mean, he is an off-the-track thoroughbred. He has a tattoo, and clearly he must have a story because they don't want us to know who he is. If this is him, we'll have to do some more research, but that horse won $43,000. The second, but Bow Bay Drive, gonna win it at four to five here. Bow Bay Drive geared down by five legs. Well, it's been a really long night. We were up way past midnight. Um, I got to sleep my hand is around two. And so we got a few hours of sleep and now we've got to intake, how many horses, Shelby? 29. 29, she remembers from last night. <laughs> uh, 29 horses and get them back to our shelter. So it's gonna be a very long, exhausting day. It is raining today. down which doesn't surprise me he's used to being in a stall but poor guy so skinny well the weather says it's not gonna be raining when we get back to hole in wall so hopefully it won't be 
Jason is getting all the numbers uh, off the receipts and Shelby and I are gonna check out and see if we can start tracking down where all our horses are because 29 horses is a lot of horses. Sadly, one of the horses was just so far gone, his soul just couldn't stay with us and we lost him. This is the pen that the uh, horse was in last night that the uh, people really, really wanted to buy back. and. We had taken it away last night, so it wasn't even here, and I wondered, are they going to come at like 2 in the morning, look for the horse, try to get the horse? We don't know whether they did or not, but when we got here, this pen was just left open. And it's possible that the horses had undone the uh, latch by themselves and gotten out, but it's more likely that the uh, people came look for it, couldn't find it because we took it away, and we're disgusted and just left the gate open out of spite. So this horse has got its leg stuck through the uh, rail. Hold on, baby, I'm gonna try to help you, okay? Come on. Come on, come on. Okay. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, come on. You can do it, move forward. Come on, you're free. There you go. Easy, baby, I'm so sorry. You better now? You never know what you're gonna see at an auction. Horse is blind. Easy, 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 baby. Easy, easy. I'm right here. Ho, ho. So this horse is completely blind. Very, very scared right now. I talk a lot with blind horses because that's how they know where I'm at. It's okay. It's okay, baby. Good, baby. Good, baby. You're all right. I'm not gonna hurt you. You're okay. Okay, easy. I hate it when people take blind horses to auctions because they're so traumatized. Easy, I'm right here, I'm right here. Easy, easy, I'm right here, right here. See, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay, easy. Easy, baby, good, baby. Ho, ho, easy. It's okay, it's okay. Easy. Easy, baby. You're all right, I know. You're so scared. Easy. Easy. You're all right. You're all right. Ho, 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 ho. You're okay. See? Come on, baby. I can show you where to go. I'll show you where to go. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to be scared. It's all right now. 
Here we go. Good baby. Good baby. All right, there we go. Okay. This is gonna give you, make you feel better, keep you calmer. You're all right, good baby. You're okay. You're okay. There you go. There you go. This horse has a wrapped leg. Who knows what's under there? Carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, but don't let it make you older. They say, settle me down when I can't see. This horse, this uh, poor little foundered pony, to the auction last night by a family. Their kids had gotten a little bigger and they didn't want her anymore. They said that she could be ridden by anyone anywhere. She had been foundered for the last five years they owned her, but she did fine. Anybody could ride her. And it's just so sad because this horse is suffering just standing here. And you put weight on her back and she's going to be suffering even more. It's just sad that the family didn't know or even worse if they didn't care. But this is this is the reality of, of the lack of education. People, they just don't understand that when a horse is foundered, it's in pain. It's living in constant pain. I'm going to give her some butless um, anti-pain medication right now. People bought this off of our Amazon wish list and we're so thankful because it can help little horses like this and big horses. They'll feel better for the trip back to the shelter where they'll be evaluated by a veterinarian. A good girl. Good girl. Horses kind of get put all over the place at auctions. And the, um, somebody just leaving with their horse. Uh, we have to walk around and find them. We have no idea where they get put. Um, let's see. Oh, I hear Jason said he found one. There we go. There's one of them. We found you! Hi, baby! Hey. If there's a love, there is a way To face unafraid Let me be made Fearless in I'm not scared of the dark no more I'm not running away like I did before I will bend, I will break the love I'm
puts it on our shoulders to do the right thing and you know we know it's the right thing but there are people out there that you know are like oh horse plus euthanizes horses well we're stepping in and being the responsible person because their owners walked away and totally turned their back on those horses in desperate need it is starting to trailer of three just arrived and we're gonna get these horses unloaded. Second trailer just arrived. We got two vets here right looking now, at looking at her, like seeing what's going on. About 20. 20? Yeah. Uh, she's got, looks like her right stifle is um, stuck out of place. Um, and she's so straight-legged in both rear legs, like, probably from compensation and stuff. Um, she's just probably some pretty severe arthritis. Um, and uh, just not good, not good. Next step is the draft. Nope. Nope, man. Basic thing when you're working on feet is you find the black line and you trace it down. We thought that she was limping more on this and see where you, I can put my finger in there, she could hide it. Man, anyway, and that's not even nearly down to where the end of the abscess is, but uh, she's had an old abscess that's busted out. If you don't put something, they just keep jamming rocks and dirt up in there and keep it infected, it just doesn't get any better. Uh, Farrier, you can put fair. a pad on her. Yeah. Clean it out, get a farrier, trim her up, and maybe put a pad on it. This is the third and final trailer. When it feels like you're walking back, when you're out of luck and off the path, broken and far from home, just remember that you're not alone. Try not to dig too deep, afraid of what you'll find. Give yourself the grace you show me all the time. Cause when you love yourself, you can give that love to someone else. Mornings come and seasons go and life can get so hard. It's easy to forget the things that make you who you are. I hope that when you look at you, you see yourself the way that I do. When it feels like you're walking back, when you're out of luck and off the path, broken and far from home, just remember. Hi babies, we're gonna get you off the trailer here in just a minute, okay? Hi, you guys are so sweet. I know, you guys are safe now. Shelby and Tawny are getting these two babies 
and the halter's on, and we're gonna leave them out. They're in pretty rough shape, both of them. Both of its front, Look both at this. of its feet this are horse like is, um, missing, is missing. Really beat up. It's, it, that is a front, well I think you hit yeah, yeah. Huh? We could maybe fix that with her hoof. She's only got about three quarters of a hoof back there and it's already grown down crooked. So I don't think there's any fixing that back one. She's over 25. So there's nothing we can do for her. She's in so much pain and considering her age and that um, this problem has been there for a long time. Um, but clearly she's been through a lot. Behavioral is not right. when you got uh, big numbers in hell. Look at her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's going after Jason. Oh, I can fix that for a minute. <laughs> not today, I don't have time. Okay, if you think you can fix it, I'll. I'm you. just saying there's ones in pain. Yeah. Huh? There's ones in pain right now. 558. Wow, no. So I get here working on. Good work and tagging, getting all that done. Everybody's working hard. Get these horses comfortable. Okay. Favorite time of the day. That's that was, yeah, right? Yeah. It's so cold, the glue's like frozen. It'll stay in her hair anyway. Just change. He's four years old. Yeah. Horse has been through five options and it's not a nine year old female quarter horse. I think that's sort of old. And trying to grow out. I think it's funny. His hooves look like they're in rough shape, and then somebody put shoes on them. Like his back are kind of messed up. Like you say, left them on or just put them on? I think just put them on. They look pretty new underneath. Yeah, I thought they were new yeah. too. He's four. What do you do? Claim him at an auction? I mean, claim him at a race? I don't know. But I have a bunch more pictures of him. I think that'll grow out. I think yeah. it'll take some yeah. good bear in mind. Walk him around. Let's see if he's, is he lame? He's ouchy on it. Well, well he's, he's so young, so, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Y'all vaccinate he's, him? We need to bear him? I think him. They're, they're doing it over there. Okay. So we purchased this horse through the auction. When the people saw who purchased the horse, they immediately wanted to buy the horse back. After the auction, they basically, what, type of money is it going to take to get this horse back? It seemed really weird because it just looked like a really old skinny horse to us. And after we left the auction, we decided that we would go back and get the horse because it just seemed so strange why they were so intent on trying to get this horse and they didn't, you know, whoever owned the horse before, we didn't want stuff getting out. So um, when we got the horse off of the auction property, I lifted up its lip and found a tattoo and I was able to do some research and um, he's, he's just four years old and he's just a thrown away race horse. He won races. Um, it looks like he's won uh, $43,000 in his short racing career and then he ended up like this. If you make $43,000 in a year, you'd think you should get, hang out for a while, right? Right here. Yeah. It's all done. Are we working with Doc? Well, we're trying to get the age on him. He's a little bit around 20, maybe. Come right, right on 20. His knees are both. If you come over here, you can see the amount really of arthritis in his are. knees. He's got arthritis in both of them, the right. Yeah, which right would be very right. painful. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's fussy. Fifteen hands out. Doc is giving this one all of his vaccines and everything. Ivermectin does, supposedly. Ivermectin. 
Arthritis or something in my pasterns and a knee that goes backwards when you walk. Like oh yeah, cool. Back. Let's see what let's watch that. It it warps the other the wrong way. My hands are frozen. Here. These hand warmers come oh, here. Let me trade they're you. They're awesome. I think mine's more warmer. That's what we do I had a lot of them. Oh, okay. yeah. I thought you just. I just got them out. I just thought you just. And I had them. some from this morning that are still. Huh. Well, thank you to everyone that goes on our Amazon wish, wish list and thinks about us humans and buys us hand warmers because it makes our job easier. We can actually move our fingers. Even the camera person has her own. Fourteen two. Yeah. Ancient. Forty-seven and a half. <laughs> so when a horse's tail starts getting this kind of wave, fuzzy wave look to it, when he walked away, I could see that oh, he probably has melanoma cancer. And when he came back, um, you can see here there's a tumor right here, and I can run my hand along it. He also has tumors up up in there. So we're going to give him love and uh, do the right thing for him, which his owners should have done. When you have a horse that old that has cancer, taking it to an auction where it's going to get sold into the slaughter pipeline is not the responsible thing to do. This is the one that's blind in his left eye. Yeah, I'm going to find your old teeth. 825, is it? 825? That's just all scarred up cornea. Vascular? Think, yeah. We got a, I think we got cataracts. We can we can slightly see the one with the cataract, but we can't see nothing out of this one. Completely blind in the left eye, probably down to a 30% in the right eye. Jesse, Jesse's stuck. Ah! No, I got it. There we go. A little suction in here. Yeah. Got some beautiful long, long front teeth. Stories of this horse, uh, she appears to be foundered or something going on with that leg uh, hoof and we're going to check it out um, and see exactly what's going on so we can make the proper decision for her. How much of a rotation is that? It's hard since her foot's not... Yeah. Yeah. The block was too high. We'll put her, we'll put a red tag on her and we'll reevaluate her like 
in two or three weeks or whatever it I is. I like when... that. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Twenties. Twenties. Come on. Black pony, eight-year-old female. He's gonna be like he's gonna be looking through clouds for the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah. fifteen, sixteen. We got that. I bet this they go. Is. Maybe he got kicked in the head. But this eye is is looking forward. It's stuck looking forward. So. Yeah. Really bad. It's not great. It's not great. Sixteen. Like, hello. It's a one thousand. Um. It feels like he's got a strangles abscess about ready to blow. So I'll be sure and handle it. Um. Right there. Yep. Yeah. So. What all do you want for him? Is it open? It's not open yet. It's not. And you're gonna put him in. Yeah. Well, let's just, let's just treat you for everything. What's his auction number? Eight on age, Sarah. <laughs> the left hip is dropped. Like it's broken. If you look directly behind it, um, the right side, left side of its hip is dropped quite a bit, and that's usually an old broken leg. This ain't right, right? Yeah, here. no, it's messed up. So basically, there's nothing we can do for that. Well, there's nothing to do, but the muscles attached there, but it's not that important a bone for them walking either. Mm -hmm. She's not well adjusted of being blind. Like she bunks into everything. Oh, she does. She looks young. She's, How old is she? I hadn't looked at you on the. Is she uh, easy? Oh, well, baby. She's well, not happy well, being honey. blind. Oh, uh, we need you go blind, baby. She was crashing into everything at the auction. The lens is going yellow yeah. on that. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm sorry, baby. It has been a long, exhausting day. Um, my day didn't end, this, well, yesterday didn't end until like 2.30 a.m. for me. And then we were up again after a few hours getting all these horses um, in the process of back to our shelter and their intake done. And it's been a rough day. We had to make a lot of hard decisions, but you know, the owners of these horses that chose to take them to the auction instead of being responsible for them and making these decisions you know that's really where it comes down to that horse owners need to be more responsible um, because there's so many horses that get thrown away into the slaughter pipeline just because their owners were completely just uncaring about their horse's future you know some of these horses were you know 30 plus years old had cancer dumped at an auction if you love your horse don't discard it at an auction into the slaughter pipeline be responsible, make the right decision. The last act of kindness is the right decision when it's an old horse and it's suffering. The slaughter pipeline is the wrong decision. And that's where we step in and have to make these hard decisions. Today starts our annual Homes for the Holiday adoption event and toy drive. We've done this adoption event for years. Last year we added the toy drive to it and it was a huge success. So this year we expect it to be even better. And we have lots of horses that need homes, so I'm excited to see who's gonna get adopted. What's going on, sir? Um, we're just getting everything ready. Four. For the adoption event that we're having today. Uh, okay. We're very excited. We have a very full schedule, so just trying to make sure everything's in order before we get started. This is Buddy. Is he getting adopted today? Hopefully. The first appointment's already here. They've already filled out their paperwork, and Travis is just grabbing it to take it back to the office. So if you guys just want to go to the left, how are you doing? 
one today. Good, how are you? Good, you got your Christmas gift? Yep. We bought two, we bought a boy and a girl. Oh, perfect. So, I like that. And the receipt's in there. Okay, okay, perfect. This isn't the camera, this is just the speaker. It wouldn't be the first time, it wouldn't be the so you'll be working with Jesse. All right. And Shelby. So if you have any questions, ask them. All right. And then you'll be work, uh, seeing Denali today. Oh, okay. So oh. his arthritis is to the point where he just isn't comfortable being ridden anymore. So I was like, it's time for him to be a pasture Well, pet. he's four, so he's got. <laughs> oh, he's got plenty of life yeah. left in front of him. Baby, hi, hey. And she's been sound in the swelling. Can't really tell. It just looks funny because it's shaped. Yeah. So that's something. We X-rayed it, and there's no bone damage or anything. Want to get all trained up and then be a sport rotten horse for a child down the road? How old's your daughter? She's eight right now. He's really laid back. I love. Well, my horse is laid back too. Yeah. He's a Western and he's like, I don't care. She's like, oh, you have food. <laughs> it's no, not like you you're skinny need, or nothing. You don't need his food. I, I I, don't think you've missed a meal since you've been here. Like, you are. <laughs> Did you see the comparison pictures? Yeah. Like, I saw how she looked in the dog. From... We need to do, get her all trained up for my daughter's next horse. So you think you'd like to adopt both of them? <laughs> you want him? All right, I want her for sure. <laughs> I think he he did good. I think he must be a cross, maybe thoroughbred cross. I don't know. Yeah, he's got something else in there. It would be after Christmas before, probably, unless I can figure well, out. I'll talk to her in there. Okay, <laughs> like I'm trying to work out my, the trailer that I normally use needs work. He's, he's wanting the Denali. Denali. Denali and I'm doing, uh, my brain just went away. <laughs> Mercy. Sorry, my brain okay. went away for a second. Well, you guys are more than welcome to look in the store. We've got the store open today. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll look and see what they've got available. There's Mercy's and there's Denali's. Right. There's some pens right there. All right, we will see you guys next Sunday at 10 o'clock. All right, sounds great. I can't wait for these babies to come mm -hmm. home. Denali and Mercy were just adopted. We're so excited for them. They'll be back next week to pick them up. We cannot wait till they go to their new home. Our adoption event is going really well. We've already had two horses adopted. Uh, because we have such an awesome team, I'm actually able to um, take some time and work on our website. Uh, we're having uh, two new grant programs that will be available um, at the beginning of the year, so I'm kind of jamming on those. One's the uh, Gelding Assistance and the Last Act of Kindness, which will be a national program. So I uh, want to get these uh, web pages done so uh, we can get that uh, funding out there to help even more horses next year. The one form um, for my granddaughter. And you can put her on yours. This is the best way to communicate. So, all right. Um, did you bring your uh, Christmas gift? Yes, it's a new bicycle. Oh dear. Okay. Bicycle. All right. Well, we'll, we'll. I won't grab that for me now. I'll grab it when you go over there. Then. <laughs> it's got removable training wheels. Okay. Cool. So you guys just want to pull on the other side of this um, barn right here, just park over by the office top. Okay. Mike, we're going to grab the bicycle. You're going to make one little girl's day. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little girl, I had a little boy. But I'm not going to bring this one cheap. Eat Lily first, and then we'll look at Buddy. This is Lily, we're working with Jesse again. Hi. She's obviously halter broke. Yeah. Um, She's just very pushy, can be a little bit flighty. She's can, beautiful. <laughs> that can all be Hi. With. Hi, you're very pretty. I know you're super interested in her, so wanted you to see her. Now, you've ridden her once, or no? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. she was just too full of herself. 
Oh, I'd rather work her consistently and then... Yeah, and I, I broke Honey when she was a three-year-old. Two, two and a half, started her in the round patterns. <sighs> that way you can <sighs> see how she is leading and stuff. She's like gate. Do you think she knows anything? I think she has had a little work done with her for sure. Yeah, and you know, I think uh, you as something. much as I love her, mm -hmm. um, I just have a thing for black horses. I know. But <laughs> I think for right now, from what I read, um, Buddy's profile seems a bit softer. She's and definitely a little calmer. <laughs> Hi, baby. Boy, he's gorgeous. He's just head shy around his ears. Okay. I think he probably got hit from what I'm, Ugh. I gathered. My 34 so year old Walker is also. Yeah, but he's Hi. super sweet. It looks gnarly now, but he's sound. When he came in, he was very lame. On really? It, really lame. lame. But I have the best farrier ever. I've been working Hi. with like ulcers cause he was pretty cinchy. Oh. So he was on the ulcer guard. Hi. And I am just, I'll sit, if you want him, I'll send the rest of the gastric men that he's on. Okay. And I've had him on straight off alpha pellets, no grain. I really love the way he's put together. He seems like he's got such a sweet disposition. Yeah, he's not reactive to the ball at all. Yeah, I think we'll take him. You'd like to? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I figure I'd just come out here and fill out, you fill out the paperwork out here while they're doing that. Sure. You just want to fill out everything in yellow for me. All right, one, two, three. She's got the magic touch. All right, buddy. Buddy is off to a perfectly amazing home. We've adopted to these people before. We cannot wait to see his update with them. We know that it will be a fantastic home for him. Did you guys grab the paperwork that you needed? Did you guys grab the paperwork? No, I did not. Okay. You guys just want to fill out one for each person that's in the car. Okay. And then, um, there you go. And then just ring this thing down here. I guess it's in there. Ring this whenever you guys are done to let us know when you're done and then we'll come out and get the paperwork. Let's get rocks stuck in the bottom of those shoes. Sure. Well, you can do too, it's fine too, whichever you want. <laughs> Perfect, we'll get these in and we'll get those and then we'll come out and let you guys in. Okay, thank we'll you We'll be out so in much. just a minute. They brought two gifts instead of one. Oh, two balls. And an art set for somebody who likes art. It's oh, pretty cool. Here you go. You can just tell him just to park behind the cars by the office. Okay, that'd be fine. Hi. Hi. So we are running a little short on time, but you're not yeah, looking at any horses that are rideable, so that takes some time. I mean, we're not riding them today. So you're just here to look at Sarge and Outlander, correct? Okay. So this is Outlander. You guys will be working with Jesse and Shelby today. So if you have any questions, just ask these guys. And does he, is he halter broken all or? Okay. We, we've been working on building the trust and then okay. halter breakings. Um, this, will he load it like? We have a catch pin we can okay. run him on all for right. you. Does he buddy well like? Yeah, Okay. he, he likes to have pal. He's okay. low awesome. on totem pole, yeah. likes a friend. Okay. Hello. And how old is he? I think she 20, told me, but 21. I don't. Okay, that's that's actually perfect. That's yeah. We've been looking for just a an, and you wanted a, like a gilding, right? Yeah, yeah, just an old pasture pet. Just oh. he acts like he's big, mean and aggressive, but he's now that he's put on weight, right? He's gotten a lot better. Yeah, that's perfect. Like, it seemed like he was so skinny, he had to fight for it. Right. Look, he's just there. What is that? If you uh, if you would like to adopt them, we just have paperwork for you to okay. fill out. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? Yeah. You you think so? 
he he has adopted from you guys before, okay. which is why I brought him with us. Yeah. Just to, no, that's awesome. Because uh, I knew I would have my hands full with him. Just. Facebook has a Horse Plus Humane Society adopters page. You can always update us on there or send okay. us emails or whatever. We love awesome. to get updates. All right, thank you. All right, you guys be careful. Y'all have a very Christmas. You too. This is Shelby and Jesse today. We have Quattro. And this Hi, is Quattro. It's okay, honey. Yeah. So. He's halter broke. Yeah, he's a baby. Of course you are. She picks up all her feet. She's she's broke. Hi, Super baby. soft in the mouth. Hi, you beautiful girl. We just got her in the November rescue. That's all I ever seemed to get was mares, and everybody's like, "Why do you want mares? They're so moody. I just like them. I like them." But if you want to see a lightning too, I can show you. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing her too. I don't know what She's put on a lot of weight since we got her. I saw you know, yeah. film of her. Mm -hmm. Would you like us to ride her? If you don't mind. Yeah. Definitely tell she's been been there, done that. Yes, I like that. Right in the wild hair. <laughs> You need a little practice with standing. Did you want your riding boots? Nah. She ain't gonna dump me. No, we've ridden her down the road. And she's not falling asleep, but she's responsive. Well, yeah, she is very. You can tell she's feeling better too now that she's put on some more weight. Ooh. There we go. You got it? Got it. You got your stirrup? Yeah. Thank you. Easy a girl. <laughs> of the two, though, I'd have to go with her, I think, for myself and my kids, you know, my grandkid. She's gorgeous. She loves you. She really, uh, I don't know when them pictures were taken of her, but you can tell she looks a lot better. I could see yeah, her, her ribs top a lot. Line, her ribs were so bad. You need to fill out everything in yellow on both of the forms for me. You'll stay at my place till till forever. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> I'm looking for the horses that got adopted because we have a lot on this wall. So, well, Buddy got adopted. Outlander. Sometimes it's really hard to find them. Because there's a lot of them. Denali got adopted. Yeah, right here. Sarge. Outlander, you got. And one more, yeah. Uh, Mercy. Mercy. We had six amazing adoptions today. We are so happy for everybody and their new families, and we can't wait to see everybody's progress. It's day two of our Homes for the Holiday adoption event and toy drive. We got a bunch of toys donated, and we have more appointments today, so hopefully more horses get adopted and more toys get delivered here so we can distribute them to the kids in the local community. Morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Pretty good. You got your paperwork? Yes, ma'am. All right, you guys got your driver's license and then the gift for the child? Yes. 
All right, we'll go get the paperwork together and we'll be out in just a few minutes to let you guys in. Thank you. Some days it's just quiet and some days there's like cars and cars. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? He's getting a running start. So you guys will be working with Jesse. Hi. This hey. is Patriot and this is Toby. No, Pirate and Toby. <laughs> it started with a P, Pirate and Toby. But he has the cutest know. expression when you walk out to the pasture. He'll like tilt his head <laughs> listening to you. But he's very well adjusted to it, so it's probably been a little while. And Toby gained 122 pounds in the month he was here. So he put on some good weight. <laughs> but basically, if you talk to him, if you're coming up from this side and he knows you're coming, then he does pretty good. But if you just like touch him out of nowhere, he'll jump. So we, since they just came out of quarantine, uh, we've only ridden them once, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. This is pretty fresh for you. It's adjustable in the back, too. So you guys thinking you'd like to adopt them? Or you wanna think about it for a few minutes and go talk it over? Yeah, we can talk it over. How are you guys feeling? Why are you so small and tiny? So is she up for adoption and stuff, or? She is, yes. She is. A pullover. <laughs> she likes to walk. So, of course, for us, it's kind of hard to get on and ride her and evaluate her super well, but she's a super sweet pony. She's like a dog. Don't be too scared. All right, B. I'm here, being right here at your side. Look. I was scared when I was, when I was riding a horse. It's okay. I could ride a horse. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, well, he's scared. Do you want me to walk or just stand here? See, someone's on both sides, but I'm not going in here. Here, I'll pull her away so you can. Here, go. Here, go. What do you think? Is that better now that she's moving? Yeah. Good job. Good job, <laughs> He says he wants you to fill of out the paperwork. <laughs> so each of them, <laughs> each of them have two pages. So if you just fill out what's in yellow. Look her head up. Smile. I think it goes great with your outfit. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. You guys can go out the same gate that you came in. We'll let you out. So. This is Sarah's favorite way to be on the phone, patting a cat. Hello, good, how are you? Good. Good, I'll go ahead and take that. Okay. And then did he fill out one as well? No, I just put his name at the top. Is okay. that okay? That's that fine. Work? That works. And I have both of our IDs if you need to see those. Yep. And then do you have the gift for the child as well? Yes, I do. Okay, I'll take right these now? and I'll take that. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna go take care of this and then we'll be out in just a few minutes to let you guys in. So you're gonna be working with Jesse today. So this is Jesse. Hi Jesse, how are you? Good, how 
are you? Good. Any questions or anything you have, you can talk to her about. Okay. I'll be in the office if you guys need anything. All right, thank you. You're welcome. People pass city lights all wondering where you are tonight if you find. You think of me sometimes all the dreams we chase so far oh, all the longings of our hearts echoes of your name they can fill this place About you. All right, you ready for Christmas? Uh, no. When you go around, just park in front of the office. Park in front of the office. Yeah. Okay. So this is Moonshine. Yeah. She's who you'll be looking at today. These so. are coal pulpers, which oh. I figure you guys might be able to use on the win on the minis. Yeah. yeah. We always need mini stuff. Yeah. That's perfect. Cool. Merry okay. Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, pretty girl. So what work have you done with her? So I have only been able to evaluate her at this point. I haven't got to spend a lot of time with her. Okay. But we go through everything, picking up her feet. She saw the farrier almost two weeks ago. He thought maybe she was shown once. We don't really know, but. That's what she was at the auction. Yeah, I remember That's her. That's what she is now, but, so she still needs weight. Yeah, um, baby. But I'm sorry, old girl. I'm just not the right fit for you. It's not about you, it's me. We'll find her one. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, you keep an eye out and I will. we'll try to keep you posted. What's the horses that are being adopted or transported today? Um, yeah, Toby, Pirate, and Felicity. All right. How are you guys today? Good, how are you? Pretty good. Are you ready to load up? Yes, All right. All right, hey, Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry you Christmas, guys be careful. Thanks. Toby, Pirate, and Felicity are on their way to their new home. Toby and Pirate are really, really good buddies, so we were very excited that they got to go together, and Felicity is just in that little group as well, so we're, we're very excited that they have a new adventure awaiting them. The Homes for the Holidays adoption event was a huge success. 10 horses found amazing homes, and 54 gifts were donated in the toy drive. We couldn't be happier. Not only 10 horses found amazing homes, but all those kids are gonna be so happy with their presents. We don't know what 2021 is gonna hold for us, but we know it's gonna be a great year because of people just like you. It's not even seven o'clock yet. It's a little chilly this morning. We have one of our farriers coming out really early this morning. The thoroughbred that was off the track isn't doing so great this morning, so we're going to have his feet looked at and see if there's anything that we can do. We also have the vet on call. We have him under vet care, lots of medicine and stuff, so we're just hoping he gets better. So I'm kind of thinking that might have something to do with the intended right here. I'm going to clean this out just to make sure first before we look at pull it. See that right there? Yeah. like a hole right there. It's 
so see that see that infection coming out mm -hmm. yeah so after checking his foot out and seeing what was going on we took all the debris out from the shoe and around the frog and we found infection down in the back of his foot and i really think that's where a lot of the pain is coming from a lot of the swelling and inflammatory issues are the best gonna come out and do some x-rays make sure we don't have anything major going on on the inside of him and uh, we'll go from there and see if we can get him back sound so we can do it on the back side well i thought we'd or, do both okay. let's do a side shot and a back shot all right we don't know and we got one ap so you can just punch punch pick one I don't see anything. Uh -uh. I really don't. Is somebody down there with him? Yeah, uh, Jesse is. Okay, I'll go get his camp. You want to explain what your what your plan is, there, Doc? We are going to his temperature is one hundred point six. He's we uh, the farrier is nice enough to find and drain an abscess today, so <laughs> we're going to put some Epsom salts in a diaper. It's strange at my age going and buying baby diapers, but they usually lead me to the adult diaper line when I go in there. But it's a whole different story. Anyway, um, and this usually draws out most of the infection, seems to help. And then we're going to really step up to the antibiotics. And, no, don't. Usually we're going to start him on uh, Enrofox IV and uh, give him a shot of penicillin. And if those two antibiotics don't take care of it, we're in trouble. And what are you giving them? This is penicillin. This is Epsom salts. Okay, what was this temp? 100.6. Aren't they supposed to be? Supposed to be about 99. I've been doing a lot of research about Comet. That's his name with us. And apparently, uh, when he, one time when he was racing, he did injure himself, and that's what ended his racing career. He was apparently rehomed to a riding type stable or something, and they're the ones who didn't do right by him. And ultimately, he ended up in the slaughter pipeline, and that's where we rescued him. So. His original owners, breeders, they tried to do the right thing as far as finding him a new home after his racing career, but um, it just didn't work out. And we see a lot of thoroughbreds that go through their whole racing career and then end up in a bad situation just because it's hard for thoroughbreds to be rehomed, especially when they're injured. And so in his case, he really fell through the cracks, but we're thankful he's here. We're going to need a load master. Oh, yeah, wow. Open. Yay, and I was so excited. I was like the dinky donkey. So yes. Dr. Myers had to play us the song uh -huh. that, cause he knows and I don't know because mm -hmm. I, yeah. But he's like, that's what goes with that. I'm like, the okay. I was like looking at all the- yeah. Oh, did y'all want to get a picture? Yeah, yeah I think we're getting yeah. us a picture. I think Doc's playing with his favorite toys right there. That's right, man. Very good. <laughs> I'm so So where are the toys going from here? Okay, so the toys are going to the Little Swan Hunting Club. So they do, um, have been doing it for years and they usually have a um, fish fry every year, but that was uh, canceled due to COVID. So they will be so thankful to get all these extra toys being as they didn't get to have some other fundraising. And then they distribute them. And they distribute them all, yeah, to all the kids in Hornwald. It stays all local. There were so many cool little oh, animal related toys. So like, Hungry Hippo, I remember that one. Did you ever yeah. have to use one of these before? Uh, we were on a party line when I was a kid. And you pick the phone up and somebody would be talking. Baby, baby. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. <laughs> that box will grab me and wait for Okay, ready? Yeah, Whoa, whoa, whoa.
Thank y'all so much. Yeah, yeah thank no, you. For sure. And I'll send the picture in to yeah. the Herald so okay, that way I'll they'll put it in. Got too. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, awesome. Are we well, I'm so phone? glad we could do it again this year. Yes, I I look I look forward to it. And we had a lot of a lot of support from people around the world. This That's time. amazing. There's people in. Um, well, we're, we're Australia, all Australia, UK, Germany, oh my UK. Goodness, Germany, all donating toys to help kids here. That is amazing. That is so good. Merry Christmas, everyone. It's been an amazing, wild, crazy year, and I'm glad it's almost over. I hope you all are enjoying uh, this Christmas. And I just want to thank you all so much for your support. We've been able to transform the lives of so many horses. And with your help, we can continue rescuing, sheltering, and protecting horses across the United States. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you all for everything. Well, I guess this is the end of the year for us here at Horse Plus. We have had fun here um, almost normal in a not normal year. Uh, hope everyone has, is safe and sound and is enjoying their family from a distance if you have to. Just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and hope uh, 2021 gets some kind of normalcy. Merry Christmas y'all. Thank you so much for your support and helping the animals here. Merry Christmas. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season full of laughter and love and family if at all possible. And I hope that 2021 brings everybody a lot of success and that we're able to rescue a lot of horses. Happy holidays, everybody. I hope everyone has a great new year and we're looking forward to what it holds. Merry Christmas, everybody, and a happy new year. Merry Christmas and thank you for all your support with Horse Plus. Merry Christmas, everybody. We cannot believe it's almost the end of December. It's almost the end of the year. We've rescued almost 400 horses so far this year. There's probably more to come and many adoptions and we couldn't be we couldn't do this without you guys. Merry Christmas, guys. Hope you guys are having a Merry Christmas. Um, we're so thankful for all of you guys' support to Horse Plus Humane Society, and we can't wait to see what 2021 will bring. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you have a happy holiday. Benjamin says Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. It has been an absolutely crazy year here at Horse Plus, hasn't it? It has been. It's been crazy. And this is the last episode for our first season of Horse Shelter Heroes. We look forward to seeing you next year. That's right. Unfortunately, there won't be the weekly episodes of what happens at the shelter that week until March again. But in January and February, we have special surprises every single every week. Every single week. You're not going to want to miss it. So we hope you enjoy these new episodes that are coming out. And we look forward to seeing you in March.